Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. How's it going today, chat? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I am I am here. Sorry about the delay. Uh my sometimes you just gotta reboot. <laughs> so, sometimes you just gotta reboot. Oh boy. I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning. It is, uh, oh, let me repin the message here. Oh, it is day 14. We have today and effectively tomorrow. And then I believe we are on a 10 day break. What are we going to do for 10 days without this trial? What, what what should we do? What's up, Jamoon X? We're going to sleep some. Yeah. Yeah, sleep sounds good. How do I function on such a low amount of sleep? Uh, consistently for 30 years is the answer. <laughs> That's, I don't I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Effectively, imagine if I had a full hours of sleep, full hour of sleep, what my or full night of sleep, what my um, what my effectiveness would be. Mm. Yeah, the judge has a conference to attend. Tom L, I did install my video card, my video card processor, and uh, and M.2 hard drive have been installed. Uh, I get to, I can maybe try it out. That'll be fun. I have not played a single game with it since, uh, since installing it. So we will whoo, get things going as soon as possible. I got to. Gonna have to find, oh my gosh. Good logic. What is he doing? Joe, what are you doing? He's got his stream watching other people's streams. It's very, very weird. Very weird. Uh, okay. Johnny, trial. Gotta get. Hmm. <laughs> Got to get the new uh, thing going here. What's this? Nope. That's not going through the right output, is it? Weird. Okay, yeah, they are. There it is. Okay, here we go. Woo! Just getting everything loaded. I hate rebooting my computer. Uh, I I really I really hate it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm always like, I well, I don't want to reboot it. Like I'm I'm not ready to reboot my computer yet. I mean, I'll say that for like a year straight, but um, man, it, well, it, maybe it's just me because uh, to run. Like the show, I have to have so many different windows open that uh, rebooting my computer means reloading all of those windows independently and, and trying to get everything set up and remember where they are and readjusting the, the volume booster and everything. Oh, my God. It's... My, my life is very challenging. I hope you understand what I have to go through for you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I know it's a good practice to shut it down frequently. It's just, it's just a massive pain when you've got, um, I mean, right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six different windows of browsers open. And each one of those browsers has various tabs. I don't have any of my social media open yet. It's insane. 
just set up a macro that launches everything. Well, but not everything, uh, not everything works that way because it's it's all different websites with different addresses. Uh, but Chad is buying you a hot tub. I already have a hot tub. And so people keep asking about my sleep. Look, uh, last night I got a um, little over four hours. I'll probably take a nap uh, after this show. Show last night. But then I, I decided to because it was, uh, you know, there was stuff to talk about, and I was delightfully raided on my show by Adam Krigler and Brandon Herrera, uh, Soy Jesus and AK Jesus. Although Adam Krigler says that Soy Jesus died, but he has risen again. Um, but uh, and it and it ended up being a blast of a show. It ended up just being a, a good fun show. So it's like, man, that was that was cool. That's good times. Uh, okay. So anyway, let me, um, let me hit these early super chats that came in. Uh, this one can go away. This one can go here. Early super chats. God, I wish YouTube would go back to the system that didn't do this. Lincoln loyalist. It says, hey, Nick, am I crazy? Yes. I figured she would simply win by going, there were mutual scraps. Abuse does not cancel out abuse. It sounds like, oh, it sounds like we are getting the lifetime movie treatment. Why isn't this a lot more difficult? Well, does abuse not cancel out abuse for you? Like, uh, d you got to, um, <laughs> <laughs> Alpha Bear says Nick's whining like a bitch. I'm not whining. I live a charmed and wonderful life. Uh, is does abuse cancel out abuse for you? Because if if someone engages in routine hitting of someone else, for example, screaming, manipulation, and the other person hits him back once, is that abuse? Is that spousal abuse? Is that domestic abuse? to them or even if even if and i'm not saying this is what happened but even if let's say they initiate violence one time but every other all the other times the the other person is is hitting them berating them um you know uh controlling them and one time wham they just they just wallop them right in the mouth and they're like you're a bitch what is that abuse i'm not so sure it is I'm not so sure that that would live up to the definition of domestic abuse, because if you're engaging in domestic abuse, how can you become the face standing up against domestic abuse? Right. Like, how can that work? How is it gender based violence if it's. Uh, if it's actually, you know, uh, how do I word this? If it isn't, <laughs> if it isn't gender-based violence, because if it's just this uh, spark that ignites after taking beating after beating, like we would not say that a woman hitting a man, if, if, a, if a man hits a woman 20 times, right? 20 different occasions initiates violence. And one time a woman hits the guy, right? Like, like on time 14. Uh, or between time 14 and 15, she, she socks him. We would not say that she is domestic abuser. I don't think. Right. So why do we do it in the opposite? When, uh, when a woman has hit a man several times and there's an allegation that he hits her once that he is the domestic abuser. I see. I, I don't think that that's how that works. I don't think I, I don't think that's how that works. Just my opinion, of course. You didn't start your stream with a trigger warning like like Alita did, bigot. Trigger warning. 
<laughs> Here's the trigger warning. Get offended. This is weird. This is pre-recorded. Because I actually just watched Johnny Depp walk into the courtroom, and now I'm watching him get out of the get out of the car. They went back to this. <laughs> who's who's winning the trial? <laughs> Let's see what happens when Amber arrives. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Hi. Uh, gee, I'm not. I don't know. Guys, who who's winning the uh who's winning that one? Big oof <laughs> for Amber Heard. Holy shit. <laughs> uh oh my goodness. Um no, Lincoln Loyalist though, that is a good question, right? It it seemed like a simple thing. Oh, just prove the the domestic abuse. But the question is what is what constitutes domestic abuse? What is an acceptable um, and reasonable definition for it? And and when is it when does it become not a lie? And I I don't know if there's an answer like that. There's not a simple answer. That's why a jury is actually appropriate for this type of thing. The jury gets to be a microcosm of society deciding what is an acceptable way to state this. Um. I would consider what Amber Heard said a lie at this point. Even if Johnny Depp had hit her uh, on on the the like two occasions that she has claimed or whatever. Not now, Doctor Karen uh, came on and dropped like all of these different uh, allegations out of nowhere that aren't aren't corroborated in any way. But let let's go with the. Let's go with before yesterday with all the new claims of sexual violence uh, that that spring up conveniently at trial time to to try and engender support. Um, but the the like two times that were out there that that she claimed she hit him or he hit her, uh, I, I would consider what she said a lie. I also don't believe the uh, the other accusations at this point. And that's going to color my opinion. Right. If you believe the. Uh, uh, accusations, then, well, then you're going to think she's not lying. <laughs> Guys, I, I'm going to, I'm going to share a DM, even though I don't uh, do that very often, but this one's just too good. Uh, Mr. Andrew Branca sent me a DM this morning and he says more irresponsible than leaking Supreme court decision. Visiting Disney's Star Wars theme park without realizing it's May the 4th. <laughs> oh, no. That poor man. <laughs> He's getting destroyed. <laughs> Everybody, if you have thoughts and prayers to spare, make sure. Make sure you send them to Andrew Branca. He is uh, he has, his, he's with the wife, apparently, in, in uh, Disney, it sounds like. Uh, she's a big Disney fan, so... Um, Oof. Oof. Okay. Send out some invitations here. Unfortunately, I think the lawyer you know. Uh, is in trial. I think he said he's got a hearing or something this morning, so he's not available. 
this would be an apt time to, I guess, to remind everybody that uh, I do have a an exclusive community. It is uh, it is on locals, RicadaLaw.locals.com. You can join it uh, if you're if you're interested. Um, the cool thing about locals is you can join it for free, right? Like that's that's great. You don't have to pay anything, and you'll always get announcements of whenever I'm going live, you'll get a notification because I do two live shows a day. We have multiple video releases some days and uh, notifications don't always go out appropriately on YouTube. So um, you can join on locals if you want. All right. If I get a council approach for a moment, please. Uh Oh, council can approach, but you can do that. Uh, and, and that's a, that's a great way to make sure that you're keeping up with any notifications that um, that happen. Uh, also, if you're on Rumble right now, if you're watching over there, what up, my Rumble peoples? Uh, we got about a thousand people over there. That'll probably kick up as the day goes on. Uh, if you're on Rumble, you can click the red join button, and it'll take you right to that locals page. You don't need to do anything else. And, and you'll again, the main thing is completely free. You'll always get notifications. You can see uh, many of the posts that I do there. If you want to participate further on locals, you can. There are exclusive videos. I do. I do cooking videos and hot tub streams. Not not sexy ones. Just I'm sitting in a hot tub talking and it's a little bit of a different environment, different vibe. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so you can you can check that out if you want. But that's completely optional. I want I, I mostly want people to know where uh, they can find me. Also, if YouTube ever decides to completely kill me, which you never know these days, right? Uh, I'm, I'm approaching 400,000 subscribers. So it's possible that they will at some point just go, you know what? <laughs> Done. Uh, if they do that, locals will be a great place to find out where, uh, <laughs> what what the next plan is. So, what do you think they're talking about? My hunch is whether or not past acts doors open, which it is. Um, I don't think the judge would call them to that unless they, they may have filed overnight motions for it uh, or inform the judge by email. So they, it could be, it could be, but they've only got uh, Depp's team only has one lawyer up there. It's Ben Chu, who's not doing cross-examination. I would imagine it's something else. Look at the pretty duck. What pretty duck? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay, let me read a, another super chat here. Um, Mia Wall, morning. How do you manage both streams and sleep? Not effectively. But I take uh, I take nice breaks on the weekend. Um, I don't I don't stream a ton on the weekend, or I pop on someone else's show, and and you know I, I'm not as beholden to to the long streams. So that's that's one way. IFID. Hey Nick, did you hear about the robbers who stole all the Viagra from a pharmacy? Authorities are warning uh, uh, the public to be on the lookout for the hardened criminals. Anyway, I've lost thirty pounds in the past four months. I'm breaded. Um, your pun was terrible and, um, and you should feel bad about it, but I'm really glad for your weight loss journey. And I, I wish you much success as it goes on. Uh, da, da, da. Jeff, welcome to paralegal status. Lurkmore 101, welcome to paralegal status and superstitious oblivious B. Thank you for being a super lawyer. 17 months, man. That's awesome. Uh, Mist, Miss T. Blue, uh, a huge thank you from across the border in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Hey, thank you, Miss T. Blue. I, I really appreciate you being here. Oh, one thing I do want to say. Uh, if you have a crude and crass sense of humor and you like laughing at the world and you like making jokes, the nighttime show. The nighttime show every every weeknight at 11 p.m. Central is a good place for you. Uh, if if you don't, if you do not like crude jokes, crass humor, uh, a little bit more political opinion, but uh, no, you know, no shaming of political opinions, just sharing of political opinions, more politicized stories. 
Uh, if you don't like that stuff, um, don't come to the night show. Don't do it ever. <laughs> Save yourself. But if you want to remember what it's like to have fun talking and telling jokes and not being so worried that uh, that your life will be ruined for it, because the only person whose life is going to get ruined for it is me, because I'm the one telling them. Uh, the nighttime show is is where you can hang out. Do you guys remember the shock jock? Like, it's it's crazy because Howard Stern, like the the quintessential the the un, the uber shock jock or whatever he's a giant pile of garbage now like he's calling for censorship of speech and all of this stuff it's like wait a minute what the hell what happened to you but there was a time in this country where you know you could appropriately uh section out a place to have have jokes and have levity i try and do that at 11 p.m every every uh weeknight and we all i mean we cover serious topics all the time but it's also fun remember when we used to do that when we used to have fun and it was like it was like oh i get get a little bit of spicy fun sometimes that's great yeah we we, we do that every night so come hang out sometime hyperbolic terroristic threat reenactments that's correct we have that too uh it's it's beautiful it's beautiful. It's it's a it's a it's a good time. It's a complete accident that that we built it. But man, it it feels good to. It, it's like hanging out and talking with your friends and not worrying, right? That that one of them is going to go. Oh my god, that was that was too far. Like they might go, dude, <laughs> that was that was uh, a bit much, right? Like that might happen. That that could happen. But no one's going to like call your boss the next morning. Never, uh, Nevar Elix to solve your issue of too many browser tabs, windows session, buddy for Chrome edge or tab session manager for Firefox allows you to save the exact tabs and windows you have open. So you can restore after restart. Yeah. I'd still have to go individually to all the different pages, right? Like, cause I have different, there's a different browser or a different page created for Streamyard every day. Rumble has a different. Because I got to have the Rumble chat, the Odyssey chat, the YouTube chat. And those, ch many of them change. The Odyssey chat ch doesn't change. That one's static. But all the other ones are are variable. But thank you. I'll, I can look into it. Thank you for the suggestion. Oxoa, Amber left a yellow notepad at the desk for her PR guy to pick up at the end of court. Yeah, I saw a lot of this yesterday. People talking about this. There generally shouldn't be any issue with Amber Heard giving a note to her PR guy. The only issue might be that the judge has issued some order around uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp not speaking publicly about the trial. So th there could be an issue if she's speaking through the PR firm directly about, you know, the trial. Which I don't know what extent the speaking publicly entails. Uh, right. Like is, is making a suggestion to a press person. Is that speaking to the public? I don't know. And how much of it's at her direction, but that that's the one thing I could see being a big problem, but otherwise like you can communicate with people in the gallery. That's, that's okay. You can't disrupt court and you can't, uh, you can't, you know, send inappropriate stuff to witnesses who are called, but if he's not a witness, I mean, who cares? Uh, Des Decano says, let's be honest, while some luck is involved, you've been working your ass off. That's true. What I meant, what I meant with the, the accidental thing was like, I just, I wasn't ever planning on building a, a nighttime, like schlock radio show <laughs> that was not in the cards for me. It just worked out that way. Now it's, it's great. And yeah, I, I, I work at it. Absolutely. And thank you for. Uh, thank you for your acknowledgement of that. But um, but yeah, the, it, it just wasn't intentional. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Dr. Burnt Raw Toast. Back to stand for me, please. Hey, Nick, thanks for the streams. Have you ever tried peanut butter and ketchup on a slice of toast? Don't nog it till you try it. That is horrifying. I'm going to turn me down. I think I'm probably going to be way louder than the court today. So let me, uh, let me think. Good morning. Good morning. Me kick myself right. down to about here. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Dr. Hughes. I'm Wayne Dennis. We haven't met before. 
No, good morning. Good morning. You testified yesterday that you have to give uh, careful attention to gendered stereotypes. Correct? That is that is correct. Uh, correct. Uh, when you're talking about in intimate partner violence, you have to pay attention to gendered stereotypes. And during your testimony, you in fact paid attention to gendered stereotypes. Can we correct? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, you said we were going to have there. to pay attention to gendered stereotypes. And then you testified at length where you referenced both men and women. You paid attention to those stereotypes during the course of your testimony, correct? Uh oh. What I was saying was you have to pay attention to gendered stereotypes when you're conducting these evaluations. You can't assume all the time that the male is the perpetrator and the female is the victim. You have to go oh, but you the did, evaluation though. understanding that the male also could be the victim of intimate partner violence. In fact, you're aware that there are large scale studies that do say that IPV towards males does exist. Of course. Okay. And every time you referred to the characteristic of a victim. I can't turn it up anymore. Of intimate partner violence. You can only turn me down more. You used the pronouns she or her, didn't you? I was using the she and her pronouns in this case because my determination was, as I stated, that Ms. Hurd was the victim of intimate partner violence. That is why I was using the she, her pronouns. You have it max boosted max volume. into the relationship so. for all the right reasons. That's what you, you said. Woman gets into the relationship for all the right reasons. And then you say difficult for her, for victim to extra, extricate herself. You go on to say that she can and she should. Over and over, you use she, right? I believe in this case I did because I was referencing this case where I found Miss Heard to be the victim of intimate partner violence. It doesn't mean that men don't get into the relationships for all the right reasons, too. I believe they do. Nearly every time you referenced the perpetrator of IPV, you used he or him, didn't you? And it goes back to the same reasoning as I'm describing my understanding and my evaluation in this matter. Of course, men can be perpetrators and victims of intimate partner violence. That's well established in the research, and that's well established in my clinical practice as Keep well. Keep railer on the this. The reason that you used the pronouns that you did, that you almost always testify on behalf of a woman? That's not correct. You don't even remember the last time you testified on behalf of a man. Well, I don't testify on behalf of someone. I testify as to the results of my evaluation. I frequently treat and assess male victims of childhood sexual abuse who are coming into treatment for abuse by their Boy Scout leader, by their cat, by their coach, by their teacher, by a trusted adult. I see them in therapy. I see them in forensic matters in criminal cases. So, so I, I treat and evaluate men I, all the time. I didn't ask you about treatment. I asked you about testimony. You, talk, you broke out your practice between treatment and testimony. I'm not asking about treatment. When's the last time you testified on behalf of a man? I testified recently in a deposition on behalf of a man who was traumatized because he was wrongly convicted. At the time of your deposition six weeks ago, you couldn't remember a single time you had testified on behalf of a man. I testified in my deposition that uh, I testified in a case of a man who was wrongly convicted about 20 years and suffered physical and sexual violence in prison. And I detailed the traumatic effects of the, that that happened on that gentleman. In right. prison. Why don't we take a look at the deposition? Sure. In prison, he suffered violence. So again, not in a not an intimate partner relationship. He needs to sledgehammer this over and over speak to bias quote her Qu yes i would have built a list of quotes Thank you. every single time she said she right they could have gone back they could have watched you know any any of the streams that are out there and just marked them all, all right. transcript of the deposition that you gave march 28th 2022 correct yes all right let's go to page 
This lady's daughter describes her mom as a heroic feminist, by the way. Let's look at Let's page 70, line eight. So you can't recall a single instance where you were hired by the attorney representing the male in an IPV matter, correct? In an IPV matter, not in a trauma matter or a child sexual abuse matter. Okay, so that's the <laughs> distinction. You, yeah. not, you don't have any recollection of ever testifying on behalf of a male in an IPV matter. As I stated yesterday, the very first case that I testified in was in a same-sex intimate partner violence where the man was the victim of another man. I uh, okay. routinely treat and assess same-sex couples where the, then the female can be the perpetrator of another female and the male can be the perpetrator or a victim of, of his partner. So let me get this. You, you testified in a case where one male is alleged to have engaged in uh, IPV against another male. Correct. All right. Okay. Still working but on that's uh, the only one you remember. That's the only one you remember. You remember. Still working. No, on the I've volume. done this frequently, as you well know. Most cases don't go to trial. I've worked on hundreds and hundreds of cases. You've limited to testimony. Many cases don't come to trial, but I've issued reports and worked on many cases of same-sex intimate partner violence where men are- Same sex, but, but I did always ask you same sex. And, 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 and <laughs> limited your- Pick your up on the same sex. And the only testimony that you remember is the, two, is the same sex couple, right? There were multiple same sex couples, I believe that I testified. <laughs> that you in. testified in court at trial. I believe so, yes. All right, but you didn't remember that in, in March. I did remember that in March. Okay. Uh, you're a professional witness, correct? That's not correct. No, you make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year testifying in court, correct? Not testifying in court. I conduct thorough, comprehensive psychological evaluations of individuals who are involved in a court case. The majority of those cases never show up in the courtroom. And half of my practice and half of my income is about my clinical work with people who are coming to me for therapy. I didn't ask you about the other half of your income. I'm, I'm asking you whether you made a hundreds of thousands of dollars a year testifying as an expert witness in court. As you're phrasing that question, that's not correct. I, that would be the amount of income that I generate from my forensic practice. I testify perhaps maybe once or twice a year. The best, of, most of the work is done behind the scenes in evaluating individuals and issuing reports. But you'll agree with me that a big part of that practice is providing expert witness testimony. That's not correct. No? That's not a big part of your practice. If I testify twice a year, that's not a big part of my practice. All the other time is doing the work for the cases and evaluating the individuals and issuing reports. Hammer, hammer on it. Keep going. All right. What percentage of work do you devote to forensic psychology? As I stated yesterday, I, I say half and half clinical, half forensic, but I also have a substantial amount of time that I use in the professional activities and serving on uh, professional boards. So what portion of your practice do you provide expert witness services? I think you're using the expert witness services synonymous with the forensic psychology part of the practice. So the forensic psychology practice, what I do here today is one part of it. And it's a smaller part as opposed to all of the evaluations and individuals that I'm assessing. When do you do your forensic psychology? Practice is like, successful enough what, that you maintain your offices on Madison Avenue in, in New York, correctly? Correct. I've had that office since 2005. Right. Um, and you're sufficiently successful at your uh, forensic work that you're able to perform unpaid work at a hospital, correct? Correct, and I also do pro bono work as well. There. Um, in fact, you actually instruct others on the use of expert testimony in court cases, correct? 
on the use and understanding trauma and violence abuse in the courtroom and how to, for advocates and people who could not have this level of training or experience, how to come into the courtroom and talk about very difficult issues of domestic violence. Yes. All right. Can we pull up PX 1241? I wonder if they went through a literature at all. I mean, they, they need to just keep hammer smashing. You only testify uh, again. You recognize when, that when was the last time you uh, testified yes, like that a male was a victim of a of woman? A PowerPoint presentation. And it's a PowerPoint presentation given by whom? By myself and Mary Ann Dutton, who is a uh, very well-known and respected researcher and clinician in the area of domestic violence. And what's the topic of the PowerPoint that you're giving? Expert witness testimony in cases involving domestic violence. Okay. And who did you give this uh, presentation to? That was to the National Clearinghouse for the Defense of Battered Women. Um, that is an organization that provides legal services to women who have assaulted or killed their partners in self-defense. And mostly people who these individuals, the, the women who they've seen in treatment are through shelter-based programs or through advocates. And those are individuals who don't really know how to come into the courtroom and talk. And that's what, what this um, presentation and training was for. I'm going to move uh, PX 1241 in evidence. Any objection? No. All right, 1241 in evidence. You can, do you want it published or? Yes, let's publish it to the jury. Thank you. Okay. All right. Why don't we pull up PX 1242? Right. Do you recognize this document? Yes, this also looks like a PowerPoint presentation that I gave. All right, and what is the name of this PowerPoint presentation? This is called The Use of Psychological Experts in Cases of Domestic Violence. It was presented to the Kings County Bar Association, which is in Brooklyn. And what this presentation talked about was some of the things that I talked to you all about yesterday, the myths and misconceptions in intimate partner violence, when women use force, what happens if they drop protective orders, how they present in court. And that's what this presentation was to attorneys at the Bar Association. Okay. But this is another presentation that you gave uh, as to the use of psychological experts and you gave it to a, to a Bar Association. Right. They were prosecutors and defense attorneys in attendance at that Bar right. Association. At your deposition, you testified that you were going to be paid $100 an hour for your time in this case. I did not testify to that. You did not? That's an error in the transcript. Oh, that's not, oh. that's not right. That's correct. So, and you what are you getting the transcript? Paid? We did not do an errata in the transcript at uh, this point. So you knew there was an error in the transcript, but you didn't fix it? There were several errors in the transcript. And but you didn't, didn't fix, fix them? There was no time to fix them. That's correct. All right. So you're not being paid $100 an hour. How much are you getting paid? I'm being paid five hundred dollars an hour. Five hundred dollars an hour, and that's what. Um, Dang it! I said four hundred. That's the bill you ah. sent for your deposition, right? Five hundred dollars an hour. Correct. Right. Uh, you submitted a number of uh, disclosures in this case. Um, you have not formed an opinion as to whether Mr. Depp committed. Intimate, intimate partner violence against Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. I formed the opinion that Ms. Hurd's report of the intimate partner violence is consistent with what we know in the literature about intimate partner violence. You have a limited role here comparing individual data to group data and then just determining whether it's consistent, right? I wouldn't say it's a limited role, but that's generally correct. You wouldn't use the word limited role? A limited role in terms of how we go about a, a forensic evaluation, do not you know a limited you, role in this case. Do you remember whether you use limited role in your deposition? I don't. If you have it in front of me, you probably think I did, but yeah. sure. Uh, and you She's have no snippy. independent knowledge of the facts underlying the alleged abuse, press, correct? Press, 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 press. 
I have the knowledge of the plethora of documents that I've reviewed in this case. No, I'm asking you your independent firsthand knowledge. You have none of that, right? You mean whether I was there? Yeah, you of, weren't there. Of course not. Okay. Um, and you're not testifying to the veracity, the truthfulness of any of the allegations. Correct. I'm testifying to the consistency of the data points of all the different documents, including the psychological testing and the clinical evaluation that I conducted of Ms. Hurd and how that comports with the therapy records and all the other documents and the photos and texts that I reviewed. She says and data no points, but she doesn't actually any have any. Abuse. Correct. Personally. Correct. Right. And all you know is what Ms. Hurd self-reported to you and others. That's not correct. Because you did collateral interviews? And I reviewed medical records and I reviewed other witness statements of All what of those they are witnessed statements and what they saw. Origin. And all of those statements that you reviewed are self-reporting by Ms. Hurd. Those were statements that started with Ms. Hurd, correct? Not necessarily. Yeah. Well, the medical records did, didn't they? Well, the medical records, if she's self-reporting what happened to her, sure. I mean, that's what we do oh, when well, we go to a physician sure. and we say, I have a headache. We're self-reporting our difficulties. Yeah. Um, everything Ms. Heard reported directly to you was after she was sued by Mr. Depp in this case, correct? Correct. And you didn't meet Ms. Heard until, what, September 2019? That was the first evaluation appointment, correct. How'd you get engaged? Engaged? How'd you get hired to oh. do this work? Um, I was contacted by the legal team. Or were you interviewed by her legal team as to whether you were going to testify here? I was not. You were not interviewed? I was not. They didn't even contacted. interview. Correct. Had you worked with that legal team before? I had. Yeah. So they already knew who you were, right? Correct. Right. And at any time that you were working with Ms. Hurd or assessing Ms. Hurd, she could have chose to fire you, correct? I suppose her legal team could have chose to fire her. I was not her. She is not my client. The legal team is the one who hires me. I am responsible to the legal team, not Ms. Hurd. And this you say legal the, legal team? And the legal team that hired you already knew who you were because you worked together previously. And clearly they knew of my expertise in this area of intimate partner violence and traumatic stress, which is why they contacted me to work on this matter. All right. Several times yesterday, you used language about assessing Ms. Hurd's relationship with Mr. Depp. Do you remember talking about that? Sure. You can't assess a relationship without talking to both parties, can you? You certainly can get a lot of information from one party. Absolutely. But and especially gonna... when it's buttressed by other documents, including four years of therapy records and couples therapy records, you can get a lot of information based on those documents and that content contemporaneous reports of the relationship. Respectfully, I didn't ask whether you get a lot of information. <laughs> I asked whether you can assess a relationship without talking to both parties. I believe you can. There are certain really? limitations inherent in that. But you certainly can explain the limitations. Don't let her weasel out of that. You talk what to limitations? Miss Heard for what? Approximately Would you 30 say hours, there are? Right? Correct. How long have you spent with Mr. Depp? I did not spend any time with Mr. Depp. It was my understanding that he did not sit for a psychological evaluation. Right. In fact, you never met Mr. Depp, have you? I have not. But you purport to be able to assess the relationship between Mr. Depp and Miss Heard. But I also read Mr. Depp's transcripts of his testimony. I watched his deposition testimony. I reviewed his medical records. I reviewed his text messages. So it's not necessarily totally blind. I did have information, although I'm not making a conclusion about Mr. Depp himself. Is the standard now not necessarily totally blind? <laughs> That's how sure. you assess the relationship? If it's not necessarily totally blind, I can assess it? Good. No, we assess as clinical psychologists relationships all the time. That's what we're trained to do. It's certainly someone psychology, trained in not forensic violence to understand and look for the dynamics that happen in that relationship. 
And then when we have external data that supports what the individual is telling us way before this legal case even came on the scene, that becomes very strong data to support that conclusion. Let's talk about some of that data. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, you chose to conduct some collateral interviews. Correct. Right. Um, and you interviewed Dr. Bonnie Jacobs. Correct. And you, re- you looked at her notes. Correct. And, and you know that Ms. Jacobs, Dr. Jacobs, uh, doesn't know anything about the version of what happened in Australia until Ms. Hurd had already been sued. Correct? I believe she was not in treatment with Dr. Jacobs at the time the Australia incident occurred. So that would be correct. She did reach out to Dr. Connell Cohen about Australia, who she was treating with at that time contemporaneously. I'll ask you about Dr. Cohen. We'll get there. We'll we'll get to Dr. Cohen. Don't you worry. uh, Don't you worry, bro. You know that Ms. Hurd stopped seeing Dr. Jacobs in August 2014. That's correct. And she didn't go back until after she got sued, right? I believe that's the date. I'd have to look for, to make sure, but I believe that you're correct. Yeah. And you said you reviewed Dr. Con- you, you interviewed Dr. Connell Cohen. That's correct. And you also reviewed his deposition testimony. That's correct. And you know that when that he testified that when he was treating a patient, he assumes the patient is telling the truth, correct? I believe he said something to that effect in his deposition. And if he, he has no reason to believe otherwise, if there's no other data to believe otherwise that your patient's not being totally honest with you, then you believe what they're saying. Right. Uh, no that's other not data how that to works. believe otherwise. But the sole thing that's happening is Ms. Hurd is talking to Mr. Cohen or Dr. Cohen. I wouldn't say she's talking to him. She's going to him for therapy and he's using his clinical psychological expertise to understand the connection between her symptoms and what she's reporting what's going on in her life. All right. But you understand that he testified that he assumes the patient is telling the truth. Again, I understand that statement in his testimony. I have a lot more rich information of having spoken to him for two hours and reviewing his clinical notes. Testified he was making a leap of faith with respect to that, right? (laughs) With respect to the truthfulness. Again, that was not my understanding of speaking with him and reviewing his notes. Right? He testified something to that effect. Um, And you testified yesterday that Dr. Cohen never diagnosed Ms. Hurd with any personality disorders. You remember that? Yes. In fact, Dr. Cohen's deposition testimony reflects the fact that he doesn't make diagnoses. Correct. Correct. And I asked him specifically, did he have any indications that even if he doesn't, as his practice, use them, does she meet criteria for a personality disorder? And he told me she did not. She doesn't diagnose them. So you asked him specifically with respect to a topic that you haven't disclosed in your uh, expert report. And then uh, he made a conclusion that's reflected in no document. It's reflected in my notes. It's reflected in, in my his notes. notes about what he's treating. He's treating the symptoms. He's not focusing on the diagnosis, but he is treating the symptoms. You talked about Dr. What Cohen's symptoms? concern for Ms. Hurd's safety. Correct. He wasn't talking about her physical safety, was he? Yes, he was. No, he was talking about her emotional safety. Wasn't that what he was talking about? He was concerned for both. Okay. Was he? Did Dr. Cohen testify that he never had the feeling that Johnny intended to hurt Ms. Hurd? I believe he said that. I mean, he talked about Mr. Depp being very poorly controlled, and that's what made him, him, Dr. Cohen, concerned, because in those moments when he was not controlled, that he could accidentally seriously hurt Ms. Hurd. Let's do this again. Ms. Hurd told Dr. Cohen that Mr. Depp was poorly controlled, correct? That's not correct. He determined that from the the treatment he was providing Ms. Hurd. And he also had a couple session with Mr. Depp, and he also had correspondence with Dr. Kipper. So he had other information as to Mr. Depp's functioning. All right. You talked about Dr. Banks. Correct. 
Dr. Banks was doing Dr. relationship Banks. consulting, right? Consultation and relationship. Correct. And Dr. Banks only met with them once. Correct. All right. And you did an interview, I think, with uh, Ms. Hurd's mother, Paige. That's correct. All right. You'd agree with me that a person's family member is not the most objective source of information? Sometimes you have to certainly uh, control for that, that the person may be How did you wanting to be protective of, um, of their daughter, of course. And you interviewed Ms. Uh, Paige Heard after Mr. Depp had already, been sued, uh, had already sued uh, Amber Heard. Right. The entirety of my work in this case happened, obviously, after the lawsuit. Did you review, in that context, any of uh, Paige Heard's text messages with, with Mr. Depp? I'm not sure if I saw them with Mr. Depp. I do believe I saw some with Ms. Heard. I mean, Ms. Ms. Heard, Ms. Page Heard, Page Heard, Amber Heard's mother did talk to me about her relationship with Mr. Depp. And she told you that she loved Johnny even after Amber alleged abuse, correct? She did. All right. Now, you testified that you approach a forensic evaluation with, I think you said it again today, a healthy degree of skepticism. Correct. All right. This skepticism didn't uh, cause you to conduct interviews with, for instance, Laurel Anderson. Right. I did not speak to Dr. Laurel Anderson. And you chose not to speak to Dr. Laurel Anderson because you disagreed with Dr. Laurel Anderson? That's not correct. All right. You know, what did Dr. Laurel Anderson do on behalf of um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp? She was a couples therapist that they sought. They had four couples sessions, um, as I stated yesterday, one of them in which Mr. Depp uh, stormed out of. She did have a long, I guess, evaluation or interview stormed with Mr. Out Depp. Of individually and with Ms. Heard individually. Wasn't the testimony. And then she saw them um, inter intermittently after um, the May 21st, 2016 incident and they when they were filing for divorce. Uh, What's up? Well, you didn't interview. Well, let me turn uh, you down. <laughs> that always starts like that. But you know what she did? How'd you figure that out? Because we had her redacted notes and her deposition. All right. And you understood from her deposition that Dr. Anderson didn't believe Ms. Heard to be a victim of spousal abuse? I believe those were her words, yes. And you also understood from her deposition that Mr. Depp had not had a very long history of being violent with any of his wife or women. That she said that as well. Yeah. But that something about Ms. Heard significantly triggered him. She talked about that as well. And Dr. Was it when Anderson she was beating him? Mr. Depp had been, uh, her words, well, interesting that Amber agrees like he has no history. 20, 30 years, correct? Up until this point, I believe she said. Right. Uh, I know that you testified that you reviewed medical records. Yes. All right. So, you know, Miss Heard had a personal nurse. Correct. Uh, Aaron Filotti. Correct. You didn't interview Miss Filotti either. I did not. Uh, you know, she spent time with Miss Heard on a regular basis during her relationship with Mr. Depp. Correct. I had her clinical notes that I reviewed. Right. And you reviewed her test, her deposition testimony. Correct. Some of which the jury's heard, right? I believe so. Uh, and you reviewed, reviewed the, the nursing notes. Yes. So you know that Ms. Hurd admitted to a history of eating disorders to Ms. Filotti, correct? I know that's in the notes. That's nowhere else in any other record. So I'm not sure where that came from. But you Ms. relied Hurd. on it everybody else's notes. So she lied? The nurse lied in her notes? And there are some things that I disagreed with. Like I disagree with Dr. Laurel Anderson about it being mutual abuse. Right. So the stuff you disagree with, you disregard and the rest you keep. Correct. Well, that's not correct. But that's what you did. That's not correct. <laughs> Get her. Um, you know that Ms. Filotti saw Ms. Hurd immediately after she returned from Australia. 
I'd have to look at the notes again to be sure, but I know she did see her when she came back from Australia. That's correct. Did Ms. Filati document any injuries to Ms. Heard in her notes? I did not see that in the record. Okay, so you looked at her notes and there's no injury to Ms. Heard documented in her nurse's notes following her return from Australia. Correct. Okay. You talked about uh, this concept, uh, which you then defined uh, lethality. And you testified there are certain factors that are present relationship where a woman ends up uh, murdered by her partner. Correct. And that's one of the ways you look at, as to whether a woman is in a very dangerous situation. Correct. Can we put PX92? So it's it published to the jury. Yeah, it will be published. <clears throat> Do you know what this is? I believe this is the um, knife that Miss Heard gave to Mr. Depp as a gift. All right. And you speak Spanish? Un poquito. Do you know what it says? Yes, it says hasta la muerta, until death. So a woman you suggest has characteristics of being afraid for her life, gives her intimate partner a large knife, which she has inscribed until death. That's your testimony? Well, there's context. Oh, is there? Okay. <laughs> we can do that later. Uh, so we talked about, you talked a little bit about uh, Mr. Depp purporting to demonstrate uh, jealousy with Ms. Hurd. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Uh, and you specifically talked about Mr. Depp displaying jealousy regarding uh, the actor James Franco. Correct. Yeah. Now, the very first time you met with Ms. Hurd, she talked to you about Ms. Franco, Mr. Franco, James Franco, correct? I don't know if it was the first time, but I did ask about some other relationships. Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's go uh, PX 1246. I just want to go to the first page. All right. So... It, do you recognize the document that's in front of you? Yes. All right. And what I would like to do, what is it? Um, it's one, uh, a top sheet of a background information questionnaire that I use to help guide the evaluation. Okay. So. What's now, on Johnny's desk on council table? This is, is who like a bunch of gummy worms or I something? Whose form is it? My form. Mm. All right. And a bottle of urine? It <laughs> looks like. Just the first page into evidence because it, we're going to talk about other people. Yeah, a pile of candy, people. Say. Back, I guess she wants to see the first, whole first page. Any objection? Okay, I can't. Our, we will admit the whole thing into evidence. You want the whole thing in evidence? Sure. No objection whatsoever. All right, 1246 in evidence in full. Okay. They must really, they must be happy are about any, that. Are there any identifiers that need, or are we just, we're just going? Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be some. I'll All right. Probably. Okay, so you owe me a redacted one, correct? Don't know what the nature of the redactions are going to be, but okay, well, yeah. you can oh, discuss. We'll work, we'll work with okay, you on thank that, you. I, All right, positive All right. there's identifiers. All right, um, 1246 uh, has been moved into evidence. Can we blow up the bottom right hand corner? All right, you want to publish to the jury? Yeah, let's publish it to the jury. I, I don't. Well, we can, it won't want you. Um, I don't see anything on the first if page. If you want to look at that, any objections? Have a look to at that? the first page. Well, that's what they're going to show. That's right what now. we're going to show. Okay. All right, publish it. All right. All right. So this is the bottom, bottom corner, um, your notes. 
Um, and it's under the section of your notes that's entitled intimate relationships. Correct. Right. James Franco, and friends got close, but really wanted one to One of the be notes Johnny. here on the right. That's what I thought it said too. JF, that's James, James Franco, right? Correct. Got close, but really wanted to, to be with Johnny. Well, it says JF friends. They were friends. All right. It said friends, but you put him under intimate relationship. Well, there's a line there because I was asking specifically about other things that were allegations in this matter. There's a line there because you did not believe that they sh should go under intimate relationships, but it's on your form. She wasn't telling me that this was an intimate relationship. I queried as to what's going on with James Franco, because that was something that was raised in this case. And there's a note for December 2050. Her, her data point of um, Amber's story did not agree with this. Right. And that was a period of time in which Ms. Heard was married to Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. So she became close with Mr. Franco in December 2015. And uh, at least you put it under intimate relationships. With a line differentiating another part of this document. Okay. Did you provide another header? Like the header that says friends? No. No. Well, let's look at the next one. Elon Musk. <laughs> Nails the it. The next one says, I think it says Elon. Correct. It's Elon Musk, right? Correct. All right. May 2016. Correct. Met him Met Ball. Correct. That's a big fancy party in New York, right? Yes, it is. All right. Um, and she says she dated him after Johnny. Just Correct. happened. She met Elon Musk in May 2016 when she filed the TRO. Uh, the last answer was May 21st. I believe it was May 26th, 27th. I'm correct. When did she start dating Elon Musk? Sometime after that. All right. yeah. Sometime after the TRO? I believe so, yes. OK. Why didn't she hit on the fact that you she put talk, an intimate relationship time. under friendships with James Franco? Like that, Elon you Musk talk, was an intimate uh, relationship, wasn't it? About this concept of uh, reactive violence. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, just so I understand your position on this, is it your position that if Miss Heard was abused she gets to hit Mr. Depp. That's not my opinion. But you know she hits him, right? And I testify to that. Right. And how many times do you believe that she told you that she hit him? Do I believe that she told me or how many instances were there? Well, I don't know. How, you, how would you know other than her telling you? You weren't there, right? I was not there. That's correct. All right. How many times did she admit to hitting him? She indicated a number of times in a number of instances. Right. Um, you indicated that you'd listen to audio recordings as part of the work you did in this case? That's correct. All right, I'd like to play you a portion of one of those recordings. It's plaintiff's exhibit 343. It's already in evidence. And for the record, the portion I wanna play is two minutes, 46, uh, 24601, to 247.20. Um, I said to Travis, I said, no, I said to you, hey, tell Travis what just happened. Well, you told me to do it. You told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, you tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you, you figured it all out. And you said, no, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched punch you lie. And then I didn't I punch said, you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. But you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, even a lot of fights have been around Ooh. a long time. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I, when you fucking have a close You didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. 
I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about, about it, am I? You are. Not That's hitting. the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you, start you are such a baby! Grow the fuck up, did you Johnny! Start physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes. This sounds like an you abuse did the right for sure. thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Oof. You agree with Miss Heard that it's admirable to retreat from a fight? Is it is it admirable? To, it is admirable to retreat from a fight. Yeah. Did she just get louder? Um, Anything about this tape suggest to you that it's characteristic of reactive violence? In this instance, if true, if she said she hit him first, then that would not be reactive violence. All right. You testified that Ms. Heard reported to you that she engaged in low levels of violence, correct? Well, I don't think she said that. I think that was the characterization of knowing the types of minor and severe levels of violence. Okay, I, I, I got it wrong. You consider low levels of violence. Well, I consider what the literature and the research talks about low levels of violence as opposed to severe um, levels of violence. And I, I think you, you suggested if you, that uh, Ms. Hurd sustained more severe uh, injuries, correct? I think I said more frequent injuries. More frequent, but not more severe. Well, certainly the incidents in Australia and the sexual violence and the incidents on December 15th, 2015 were quite severe. Um, I would have just taken that answer. You said you reviewed said medical records. Instead of reacting. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and you, re you reviewed photographs? Correct. Now, other than the reports to her therapists, which you call medical records, right? Yeah, I would call those medical records, right. sure. Other than the reports to her therapist, there's not a single medical record that reflects any injury to Ms. Heard, is there? That's not correct. No. There is not a, other than what doctor reflected injuries to Ms. Heard? The note by Erin Borum, her married name, Philot, I'm not recalling her married name, indicated that she was headbutted by Mr. Depp and that she went for a concussion check and she had a busted lip. And then she went to Dr. Kipper's office in order to get checked. What? And there's a medical record other than that note that reflects it? There's a note that she showed up at Dr. Kipper's office. There's a note in the but similar two days Dr. that Dr. Kipper, Laurel Anderson saw the two bruises from that same incident as well. All right. Um, you reviewed photographs. Yes. Um, I'd like to put up PX 144. Uh, it's been published as a jury brief, very briefly. That photograph doesn't reflect a low level of violence, does it? <laughs> that reflects a severe injury, I would agree. Yeah. Why don't we go to PX 145? That's a severe injury that ended up with Mr. Depp on a gurney, correct? That is a severe injury, correct. Yeah. All right. Is it your testimony that throwing a can of mineral spirits at your spouse is characteristic of reactive violence? If you are running away from your spouse who is trying to hurt you, yes. All right. Bad so, question. So you, you can throw a can of mineral spirits. What about if you throw a can of Red Bull? Again, it depends on the incident I think that you're referring to that was not necessarily reactive violence. That was in a state of frustration or anger. Oh, is it okay then? So when you throw a can of Red Bull in a state of frustration or anger, that's not reactive violence. No. What about if what you is throw it? a bottle of vodka because your husband fell off the wagon? Is that reactive violence? Are you asking me hypothetically? 
I'm asking you, would that, would that be a characteristic of, of reactive violence? Throw a bottle of vodka because your husband fell off the wagon. If it's in the middle of an assault, perhaps? Not a good question. If it's independent of that, no. Right. So, for instance, if your husband was just having a couple of shots at the bar. Again, you would need more what? information Finish the question. to no, make right. that determination. All right. I, you don't think that's a, a reflection of, reflective, uh, of reactive violence. And you'll agree with me that when you throw the second bottle, that's not reactive violence. If somebody's throwing multiple bottles, it can psychological violence and abuse is psychologically destabilizing, which destabilizes individuals' coping strategies. That is absolutely true. That's not at all related to this Lost question. Thank true. you. Um, is it your testimony that once you've thrown one bottle and missed, when you throw the second one, now it's reactive violence? That's not what I'm saying. I don't think throwing bottles is acceptable in any context. All right. That's a good Just admission. Just move on now, buddy. Move on. Leave That's that great. one there. Yeah. Why did she say that? That was But dumb. he's doing a good job saying like, it, this makes no sense. Like you yeah. can say whatever you want. Common sense says that's just ask you about some not of the true. Testing that you uh, did. Um, one of the things that you uh, did was a uh, was a form like uh, called a CTS two relationship behaviors form. Uh, the conflict tactic scale, correct. The, the, so CTS2 stands for conflict tactic scale. That's correct. And this is one of the documents that um, you had with you on the, on the stand yesterday. I had all my testing with me and all my clinical notes from my evaluation with Ms. Hurd. And you gave me a copy of it because you looked at it during the testimony. Because you asked me, so I gave it to you, yes. <laughs> right. All right. I like it. Um, Actually, the judge but you have a good give it to recollection of what that test is about, the CTS2 test. I have a very good memory and a very good recollection. I want to give Ooh. the jury the most She's so um, mad. accurate and thorough information. I have a half. You should call her Dr. Curry a couple times. With so many questions. I wanted to just be as accurate as possible. The, I'm sure my memory would miss some things that might be relevant. All right. So let's talk about the CTS2. It's dated 926, 2019, uh, 2019. Correct. 926 2019 and it goes through and it asks a whole series of questions about what you've done and what your partner has done that's correct there's tons of these questions correct and every single one of those questions is preceded by the same question right how often did this happen in the past year. Correct. You knew that as, uh, as of 926, 2019, not a single one of the things that Ms. Heard identified happened to her in the last year. They'd been Correct. broken up. She was years. oriented this to a different dumb. time frame to get a checklist of those behaviors. Right. Okay. And one of the, one of the, the, uh, Although it says, please, how often did this happen in the past year? One of the questions is, my partner used force to make me have oral or anal sex. Correct. She went with zero on that, right? I'd have to see if you'd like to show me. Do right. you have any recollection that she, she didn't go with zero on that? I have a recollection at that point in time, she was framing those type of acts as angry sex. Right. She and wasn't framing them as physical force as most women don't on these measures. And you helped her to reframe it as something other than angry sex, didn't you, doctor? My job was not to wow. do treatment. My job was to do an evaluation and that's what I that's did. That's why it took 29 hours or whatever. Right. Um, so you did an evaluation and one of the evaluations you did and one of the diagnoses that you ultimately made relates to PTSD. That is correct. All right. And you diagnosed 
Amber Heard with PTSD long before you made use of the gold standard test for PTSD. That is correct. All right. And I make the diagnosis of PTSD in my clinical practice without using the CAPS all the time. All right. So just so you and I are on the same page, and I think it we mean are. It's correct. Uh, this gold standard test that I'm referring to is the CAPS-5. That is correct. That's the one that Dr. Curry administered, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, you didn't administer the CAP-5 until A, after you'd already diagnosed Amber Heard with PTSD, right? She had PTSD in 2019. She had PTSD in the beginning of 2021 when I evaluated her. And then she had PTSD in December 27, 2021 when I administered the CAPS. That's correct. All right. Um, I think I asked a much more narrow question than that. You, you didn't diagnose, uh, you, you didn't give the CAPS 5. Well, no, I'm going to strike that question altogether and start it again. You had already diagnosed her with PTSD before you did the gold standard, correct? Before I administered the CAPS-5, there was enough data in the psychological testing and my- He's not controlling them enough. To establish that she met criteria for PTSD, that is correct. Uh, um, you submitted a expert disclosure in this case on January 11th, 2022. I believe the attorney submitted that disclosure, yes. Uh, you participated in that? In the, in the January 11th, it was the same disclosure that went before. There were no changes on that. Did you reference the CAPS-5 in that at all? I don't believe I gave the results of the CAPS-5 to the attorneys at that point. All right. Um, you met with, oh, I, I got dates here. This time I'm using the cheat sheet. All right. Uh, you met with Amber Heard on September 26, 2019. I would love to have my cheat sheet, but I'll take your word for it. I'll share. Thank you. October 11, 2019. When did you give the CAPS-5? The CAPS-5 was administered the last time that I saw Ms. Heard. I saw her over as is stated multiple times over the past two and a half years and having not seen her in about a year to get an accurate assessment of her current symptoms, having had all the background information, the CAPS-5 is a great structured clinical interview to do that. All right, so you hadn't seen her for about a year before you, b before you gave her that test. That is correct. Um, and you did it over Zoom. That is correct. All right. All right. Um, Why don't we pull up uh, PX 1247. So no chat, you're really concerned about the lawyer stuttering. Um, smooth lawyer questioning and smooth testimony only happens sure. in the movies. It's just to the witness right now. So. Okay. This guy's directed or crossed like five experts already in this trial. It's it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, Being up there with all the pressure is not easy. Dr. Hughes, you can actually help with that question. This is like 20. I like his personality. Actually. That's 20 he comes across right. very likable. All right. Let's get copy. That, that kind of stuttering thing. When, when you're um, testifying, when you're examining an expert too. This is a series of questions. A little Jimmy Stewart to look a little bit less qualified, but ask really Correct. good questions. All right. Um, and you recognize the first page. This is the first page that you um, you filled out. That's your, your that, handwriting. That's correct. I'd like to publish the first page to the jury. Do you wish to have it in evidence? Are you moving it into evidence? Yes, I am. I, I, I'd like to have a copy of it before I... Well, he's just publishing the first page. Any objection to the first? Okay, first page in evidence. I think you're out of the future, at a minimum, give us a copy of Kind of like you should have given us a copy of your notes. I'm just having. I don't have the ability to scroll down, so I can't see the rest of this. All right. It's a brand new exhibit. I'm sure I'll get you a copy of it. Thank you. That's fine. Um, 
I'd like to go to the second page. Can we put up the second page? Are you second page is in blackface, very Not offensive. Yet. And I can't put it up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like the I'd like the witness to see the second. The witness can see the second page. Thank you. This is the second page. This is instructions on how you do it. Correct. All right. And then we'll go to the third page. Let's let the witness see the third page. Now this is entitled scoring. Correct. So when you score, you look at two things, right? You look at frequency and intensity. Correct. All right. Those are the two factors you use to score. Correct. All right. Can we go to the fourth page of this document and just show it to the witness? So, Dr. Hughes, this is the first page of the CAPS B, where um, other than the identifying information, where where there's any input into the document, correct? Uh, the CAPS five. You said the CAPS B. Yeah, I, I misspoke. Okay. Yes, this is the um, the criterion A, which means that in order to, as I said yesterday, to obtain a diagnosis of PTSD, you have to have sustained a very specific traumatic event. That's the first B. To get through the door. All right. So Your Honor, I'm gonna um, I, I'd like to be able to get them a copy of this. Is it is it too early to take the break or a little bit if you all can. right, I can do something. Else. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um we'll circle back. All right, so do you recognize the first page or the fourth page of this document? Yes, I do. And the, the handwriting on the fourth page is yours? It's all my handwriting. All right. The entirety of it is your. I'm going to move uh, this uh, document into evidence um, uh, along with the first page. Um, and that one is what number? I think it is. Yeah, people are asking how this is going. It's going just fine. 1247. This is a professional okay, so witness. You, you have to be very careful. Yet. Yes. Have to be very Do careful with a, a professional witness. It's exhibit 1247. Um, she feels a little different than a professional yeah. witness to me, though, because she went yeah, so far off the rails that it almost does feel like she he does have to argue with her and quibble on some stuff she said that usually you'd stay away with, stay away from uh, with an expert. 1247. Yeah. I would have stuck more on the bias that he opened up with. I think he could, or, or, and go back oh, to it, it. It's throughout. I would mention I think, it throughout little snarky comments, but well, that's only female victims, right? Something like that. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, he's eliciting good answers. Uh, she's going to, she's going to take and run with things if he's not willing to actually shut her down which he hasn't done really so far. She's done but, a good job um, kind of explaining context with her answers. Right. And this judge, we saw, she'll let you shut him down as the lawyer. So you got to do that in a nice way. Did you want to take a look at the court's copy? Would that be it's, easier for you? Yeah, it's, a, it's 59 pages. Um, I, take a look at this real quick, Elaine. What it's is the 59 in? pages, I, Judge. I think, I think he's moving the, in, are you moving the entire document in? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to move the entire document in. Her They've entire seen report? this document. The I test. I have an objection. Oh, the test. No okay. objection? No Did objection. you want to take a look at the court's copy or you're good? Uh, yeah, I would. Thank you. It's, I mean, of course they're going to let it in. It's, or wait, are, no, we're not doing the test right now, right? Because she doesn't have a copy of that. This is something else. It's going to show the evaluation too, right? No objection, though. All right. So even though I pulled it from um, defendants 1435, we want to make this 1247 plaintiffs, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. But yeah, you're a man. This lady doesn't like men. Press her and press her and press her and get her to go crazy. We'll just change the number on it. All right. All right. So it's 1247. I said, okay. 1247 in evidence. Plaintiff is 1247 in evidence. And now it can be published to the jury. Thank you. Why don't we publish the fourth page where we're talking about? All right. Um, so 
what this reference is, is uh, the event you said was the worst. Um, and what you have filled in here is three words. IPV by Johnny, right? Correct. All right. And then what happened is the next box. And you've not written a, a single thing in the box, right? Because I've already spent 20 some odd hours with Ms. Hurd, I know what goes in that box. Oh. If you look at the top, it says administer the life of check checklist or an other structured trauma screen. That screen had already been conducted. Right, but there's a box on the gold standard test that asks what happened. And it says, how old were you? How were you involved? Who else was involved? Was anyone seriously injured or killed? Was anyone in life danger? And none of that information you provide in your um, analysis on the CAPS file. Your Honor, I, I hesitate to object, but that's very Tom Park. It is. Okay, I'll sustain <laughs> the objection if you want to rephrase. <laughs> we can do it uh, okay. the slow way. Do it the slow way. The first question is, how old were you? That's been the miss with these compound questions the is that would go the that chats box. love them, but you let you let us ask compound questions to move the stuff along. So, not to lay witnesses, but... It would have been incredibly redundant to do that again here. But you knew other people would review this, didn't you? And I knew that they would have my clinical notes as well. Oh, so they're supposed to parse through your clinical notes. You're the so expert, they're they not. they can figure out what you chose to be the anchoring event. Nailed. I didn't choose to be the anchor. The client chooses to the anchor to identify what the worst event is for them. What? You wrote IPV by Johnny. That's what you determined to be the anchoring event. When I asked Ms. Hurd once again of the traumatic events that she experienced in her life, which one is the worst? This is what she indicated. <laughs> A generality. Did, did we consult the ACLU or the Washington Post for this? There are de a plethora of details in my 80 page is a handwritten, single-spaced clinical notes. Why didn't you put any details in? Because there are no right. details for this Let's event. Go to it's an event, not a series page. of generalities. All right. You felt it appropriate to fill this page out, didn't you, doctor? Well, these are the questions about the symptoms. So I'm asking specific questions and getting her responses. Didn't you know this already? <laughs> I was making sure at this point, having not seen her for a year, what is the trauma expression at this time? It can change over time. It could go away. It can get better. It can get worse. But not for the other thing. Right. Here we go a couple more pages. So the life-threatening uh, one. Let's go. You didn't decide to add any of these details or refresh uh, any of these details or check to see if there were new details. Seven of 20. Just on the other ones. On the life-threatening one, though, that's the one you leave off. Now, there are a couple Just say of it. It's because there wasn't one. Boxes wasn't that you it. filled in on this Let's look at item five, B5. You don't provide any indication of what kind of triggers what kind of reminders trigger these reactions? She answered that on the previous questions. All right. And it, you didn't provide any answer as to how long does it take to recover? She has some difficulty recovering. Okay. But you didn't answer that. And then there's this question that says, how often has this happened in the past month? Number of times. Correct. And we talked about how these things are scored. And we looked at, you got to look at frequency and intensity, right? Correct. And you left the frequency box blank. Well, no, if she said several times a month, then that's what the frequency is. And you didn't fill that frequency box in at all. Because she told me it was frequently several times a month, which is one of the anchors encoding the caps. All right. Let's she told me, but one. you didn't write it down. You're a professional who's the supposed to take notes box. and catalog all of this stuff. Again, you, this is scored by frequency. Her memory is good enough, Nick. We don't need the notes. How often in the past month? Correct. Blank. Pardon? How often in the past month? You left that one blank again, right? 
she tells me it happens at least twice a week. So certainly I could multiply two times four and put an eight. And you certainly could have written the number two. But it wasn't two if it's oh. happening two times a week. All right. So two times a week towards the times the number of, of months. Now you got two digits in, instead of one, right? That's all it took to write that down. This is in, in a one month period. So it would have been a four week period. Right. How, after, how often in the past month? That's what it says. Correct. You, you said months. not to answer that question. Uh, let's look at the next page. Again, scoring is frequency and intensity. How often in the past month? Again, you left it blank. If you look on the right-hand box, that is where we are indicating the frequency and the severity. If you can see where I circled moderates happening more than twice a month, that's where I'm indicating the frequency of the symptom expression. Okay. But you're, aren't you skipping a step? You're supposed to do intensity and frequency. And when you're, somebody says it's happening more than twice a month, that is a frequency indicator. All right. Um, it makes no sense. You wouldn't answer the question in bold right there. How many times a month? Right. To the next box. And again, for the again, accuracy of the test and for the benefit of the people reviewing the, the test how many of that the you know is going to be reviewed, event it best to be complete? Difficulty remembering number of important aspects. And they're going to ask Curry okay. if that moderate well, actually means more than two times a month. Well, I listed two specific where she indicates she has important aspects that are missing. But, but all you have to do is put a number in here. You right. know you had to, you knew how to score this thing. Well, this measure actually doesn't get scored by the frequency. All right. You you know something, you're right. Let, let's look at the next one. I know. No, that was, keep, keep hitting her. Her laughing saying, I know I'm right. Yeah, do it. The next one gets scored by the frequency. That's blank, right? Well, I did not code it as a PTSD symptom. Okay, let's go to the next one. How much of the time in the past month have you felt that way as a percentage? Right. So as you can see, I circled 20 to 30% of the time. Right. Yeah. It's just, it, it just I'm putting it on the right side in right. the box where I'm coding the instrument. We're, we're going to talk about the right side in a minute. Um, you took issue with the way that um, Dr. Curry did this test, didn't you? Correct. All right. But your test, in every instance where you're asked the number of times and to fill in the blank, you leave it blank. They're on the right side of the document. All right. So why isn't that's where the question is then? Right of the document. Let's the person that wrote the test did it wrong too, just like Dr. Curry? Exactly. Her answers don't make common sense. The caps five for the uh, anchoring, the three word anchoring event, IPV by Johnny. You went back through again and said, you know, uh, maybe I should consider childhood trauma as well, right? I wanted to test for the limits and see at this point in time, Miss um, Heard had had a child. And sometimes when people have children, their trauma gets evoked. Is she having those symptoms as well? She already had, based on this instrument, the PTSD from the interpersonal violence. I wanted to see if there were any additional symptoms. All right. In every other question, had had you added notes. Severe child abuse as a young person. That is correct. She grew up in a home full of heroin addicts, right? Opiate abuse, yes. Yeah. And uh, and there, there was IPV between her parents. Correct. All right. And so you wanted to make sure that there wasn't some impact with this childhood trauma in the diagnosis of PTSD. Yes. Right. And so you decided to give her the test again. Well, I didn't give it again, what's called testing the limits. I went back to some of the um, questions where she answered in the affirmative and said, and is this also happening vis-a-vis -vis your childhood abuse? Are you also having intrusive thoughts and feelings about childhood? Are you avoiding thinking about things about childhood? Is that happening for you now as well? All right, so there are a series of notations on the right-hand side. Let's go to 
page um, five of 20 in the test. All right, why don't we highlight the, the, the right-hand notations that start under the word childhood. All right. So the way you tested for childhood PTSD is to write a notation in the corner and answer a couple of questions. Same test. Well, I wasn't administering a whole CAPS again. What I was doing was seeing, as we know with people who have what we call polyvictimization or revictimization, someone could in fact meet criteria for the PTSD from the domestic violence, but then they're also experiencing some symptoms as a result of the childhood abuse. Both can occur. Right. But Mr. Depp isn't responsible for her childhood abuse. That is correct. Right. And the way you tested this childhood abuse PTSD is you made notations on the right hand in the right hand column of a, of a form that you partially filled out for the IPV by Johnny, right? Well, I disagree with the partially filled out. The frequency was clearly filled out in the box where we score the caps. But yes, I did write about the childhood to the right of that box. Nope. What about the notes in the IPV by Johnny that isn't filled out at all? And that. That's what you're trying the to pr appropriate way that the gold standard test for PTSD for childhood trauma should be administered. If there were any affirmatives and I needed to go further, I could have administered another CAPS-5. There were not. I did not need to do that. Okay. So you chose not to do a second CAPS-5, although you knew that she had suffered from severe childhood trauma. No, because she wasn't suffering symptoms at that point in time, PTSD symptoms from the childhood trauma. All right. Mr. Dennison, are you moving to a different topic now? Oh, yeah. just, okay, all right, this might be a great time to take our morning break then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll take our 15 minute break. Please do not discuss this case with anybody. Don't do any outside research, okay? Thank you. I would be, I'll be going back to her bias okay. every couple we'll go minutes. Go ahead and take, Your Honor, before yes. we take the break, yes. may I get a copy of That's exactly what she did during her testimony. Yeah, I don't know if we can do it before, but we'll certainly get it to you. Well, I mean, I need to be able to sure. uh, redirect, and I have never seen the case. Okay, well, we'll, 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 we'll go through it. That's right. fine. All right. It's, 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 although it's in your exhibit list. So that's well, fine. If, it, if it's in my exhibit list, if they just tell me. They tell you the fine. exhibit numbers, that's fine. We'll work okay. through it. Okay, we'll take a, let's take a recess of 1140 then, okay? Thank All you, right, back at 1140. That's always an interesting thing when you start arguing about not knowing what's in a document when it's actually one of your exhibits. That's happened before. It's... It's not as unusual as it may seem, especially in a six week trial when you have just tons of documents. You right. You can't tons possibly of, memorize everything. And tons of medical tests. I mean, this is, these are all like from different, different therapists and different evaluations. This, man, this, this guy, he is pissing me off though, because again, you've got this big blank box and that is your canvas. This box that says, describe all of it. And she's like, well, it, it's somewhere else. On every other question we've seen, every other one, you have copious amounts of notes, you have uh, frequency, you have events, you have, uh, you, you know, your, your, uh, your observations. And for the lethal one, which you indicate that she's at risk of lethal violence, you testified dramatically yesterday. She's at risk of lethal violence and all the risk factors are there. And you didn't write a single damn one of them down, did you? Well, they're in my other notes, but they're not here and they're not here because you didn't want to try and put specifics because you couldn't put specifics down. Well, well, I could have put specifics down. Then why didn't you? Because they're in my notes and you get her, get her into this stupid circle of apologetics for why she chose to write tons and tons of things on every other question, but not this one. <laughs> like you just sit there for I'm a while. I'm interested to see what curries if we're going to see curries and see kind of how they look different because this experts literally pointed to curry said curry did it wrong her outcome is wrong and the way she administered the test is wrong and i would just think it was hilarious if curry just went down the line and filled out every blank 
and that's what Curry's looks like. I mean, that would be hilarious yeah. to me. Just anybody uh, that's filled out paperwork before knows how that works. And unfortunately, we'll have to wait until rebuttal to see what happened. But it, it it's like that one just mm. that one just really annoys me because it's like here is this this like look at it like a painter's canvas, man, and just go to town, sit there. This would be a really uh, fun expert to cross. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can go after. A lot of and, stuff. And I would keep going back to the bias. I mean, she she gave him a gem and and he like kind of walked away from it. It's like, so the only time you can remember testifying for a man is when it was another man committing the violence. That's that's the only time you remember doing it. Well, I've done work on other cases. Name one. Tell me and about he said, it. When when he, was it? her prior answer at her depot was she can't remember a time. And this is why, so there are different philosophies, right? Whether or not you want to actually write down the questions you're going to ask or just write down topics. My outlines are a mix of topics, but also very specific questions for exactly what you're saying. Cause yeah. I want to make sure I'm saying certain things like about that test where you picked out that part of the canvas you can paint. You want to write down that exact question. Same thing with he was fumbling over a couple questions because he's trying to get a specific point or exactly when he's going through that bias, he needs to say, other than the prison same-sex violence, you have never testified for a male for IPV violence as the abused, only the abuser, correct? So you write it out like that so you make sure it's a very narrow, specific question that she can't dance out of because he can't just say, you've never testified for a man before because now she can say yes because he's not being specific enough. So sometimes you right. do want to write down a couple specific questions to get the building blocks of where you're going in your cross. Right. And 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 that's so important because she said and and he even said this is just 6 weeks ago or whatever mm -hmm. that they did this. So 6 weeks ago you couldn't remember but today you're telling us you can suddenly remember some other man who who you did work on. It's weird because you didn't mention it in direct at all. Right. Exactly. And she said in her answer, which was a bad answer for Johnny, well, I was applying it to this case. In this case, I have found that the male was the abuser and the female was the victim, but she was clearly testifying to generalities and what the research and study shows for a big part of her direct. So she wasn't right. just testifying about this case, and yet she still used she and her as the victim and he and him as the abuser. Yeah. And, and that, that is a place to go and, and exactly saying that, but at the beginning of your testimony, you were speaking generally, not specifically, weren't you? Yes. And in every single instance, and you weren't done when I, when I mentioned it, but what I would have done is gone through and uh, gone through the video and word for word grabbed every oh, single yeah. time when she used a, a gendered pronoun and say, let me just read you your answers to every single question. I represent you. This is every one of your uh, answers. No, Nick, Women you would have done it. The, the young guy sitting behind you at the table would have probably done it for you and then handed well, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but seriously, that guy would have gone through. But that's, the, that's, that's why you have 15 lawyers because exactly. you're focused on the questions and then you whisper to him, Every time she says he or him or she hurt, write it down, go back tonight, get it all for me. And, and, and listen, some people in the chat would be like, this is boring. Why is he laboring over this? But if you have 15 questions where 15 times she referenced she and every single one, it was the victim, that's powerful to me. And that's things you can use later in cross, I'm sorry, in closing, um, or when you're crossing other witnesses. I, I agree with you. I think that's powerful. And that's something I would have hit on over and over again if I was him. Especially because have we gotten confirmation that the jury is mostly male? I, 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 I want to, well, I think it's six and three. Oh, okay. Um, well, it, it's six and three, seven jurors though. Right. Uh, so six. So it uh, could be six and one. Yeah. I, it, it could be six and one. It could be, uh, it could be what? Four and three. And two, two males have already been let go for whatever various health reasons or whatever. Right. So it was, it was even, even heavier, um, male, I think at the beginning, but yeah, that that's going to play poorly, you know, with a lot of men sitting on the jury, even if they like, I don't feel like I've ever been the victim of, of any domestic violence or anything like that. Um, but, but even, even though I haven't felt like I've been, because if they've been a victim of domestic violence and you're sitting there as a guy, you hate this lady. I mean, you hate, yeah. it. but if you're sitting oh, there you like me, 
Go they'd ahead. have to have struck any victim of domestic violence from this like preemptive strike on it. How many uh, men do you think would write down on a jury questionnaire or true. raise their hand or stand up that they feel like they've been a, a victim in jury selection? That's true. You're right. They probably answer would be zero. Yeah. <laughs> like, like literally I, I can't get people to admit things that are like very obviously true in jury selection half the time. If they have the opportunity to say nothing, that's usually what they're going to do. Um, uh, but you're right. I mean, if somebody said, you know, yes, I feel like I'm the victim big time. I have all this. They probably would have been struck. But if somebody kind of thinks in the back of their head, maybe I was a victim. They hate this lady. But even if they don't ever feel like they were a victim in the past, being called the abuser over and over again is like, man, th this sucks. Like I, I can see myself in Johnny's shoes at this point. And, right. you know, I, I hope that would never happen to me, which is always what lawyers want jurors to do, even though that's the golden rule and you can't put them in the party's shoes. But you know, that that's what they do at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and of course, like any guy up there listening to her hears you're a potential abuser. You're a potential abuser. If you ever get accused, research shows you're the abuser. Right. I mean, just it's amazing. So I, I think that uh, they could have. I think you could have done uh, that just a laundry list of those those questions. Um, but if you're not going to do that, or even if you do go back to the bias, how many of these caps tests for PTSD have you administered to men? How many times have you diagnosed men as intimate partner uh, violence or, or as victims from that from, getting yeah, PTSD. From, right. Getting PTSD from a female uh, perpetrator. How many times? And that's Ever? a question you write down. And actually what you say is, you never have, because you know that's the right. answer. Yeah, I mean, you, just, you know that's the answer. And exactly, that's a question you write down because again, just listening to you and I talk about it off top of our head, we're fumbling through it. But when you're sitting down, you're thinking, you write that one down and you just read it, straight up, read it right off your notes. And then if she argues with something, you said, no, no, no I have this question written down. I've done that before. No, no, I have this question written down. I'll read it again for you. I've done that right. because they can't argue with, because then the judge is not going to say, oh no, that's not what he said. They'll be like, Yep. Answer the question he asked. So that's exactly why, because it's hard to get through all this IPV, PTSD, victim, abuser, male. It's hard to get all through all the language and verbiage. So sometimes writing it down really helps. And then like let her, let her equivocate and say, well, but I, I primarily treat women because I work at women's shelters and blah, 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 blah. Let her say all that. Like, that's fine. Oh, so you're not really that familiar with male victims of intimate partner violence, are you? You, you, you're, vast amount of your work experience is lens through this very particular type of violence that you see with frequency. Wouldn't you say if someone only sees one particular characteristic of, of someone, they might start to develop a bias. Just, oh no, I'm, I'm very smart. I can avoid biases. Oh, well, I, it's great that you can avoid, bias, but like not you, but like, let's say somebody other than you saw only intimate partner violence from a man to a woman. You'd think maybe they could develop some generalized, ideas about male female relationships wouldn't that wouldn't that be fair like wouldn't that be a nice psychological analysis just let her say no while the jury goes well obviously that's how this works <laughs> yeah. it's like somebody who's only ever met bad cops and every cop they've come into to contact with has been a bad cop and has wronged them they're gonna think cops are bad like that's what of happens course. if you if you come into contact over and over and over and again with your life and your experience with one certain thing like you're saying as soon as you change the facts on her she would be able to see it and be like, oh yeah, I guess that does make sense. It's like, exactly. And that's what you're doing because all or you ever see are female victims. Or she'll deny it and it'll look completely flaccid because Either no, my, my education win. and training lets me eliminate bias. I, 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 I do all this training because we, you know, you know, we have to do this, right? We have to do continuing legal education on the elimination of bias every single year. And, but we also know that in those trainings, they basically say you can't eliminate bias. <laughs> you can just try and guard against it because that's the whole bias narrative. It's very in vogue right now to say that it's impossible to eliminate those things. So yeah, press her on it. I mean, that yeah, I, I, mean, I, we, it's like me saying that, like, like if you talk about money for pain and suffering, I'm biased because I think that's fair. I think you should get money for pain and suffering. I have people that are very good friends of mine and we align on a lot of other topics and they're like, that makes no sense. Money's not going to make the pain go away. And I say, and you're never going to be on my jury. But, you know, that's what it comes down to. It's like you have right. biases with where, where you work. And even if you think you're helping people like I think I am and she thinks she is, I believe that she can still be biased a certain way and probably not a very good expert for this case. Exactly. And I, he didn't, 
he kind of let it let the question just hover out there. But he says, did they interview you for this case? And she said, no. And it's like, isn't that like to me? They knew they what she was going to say. They, yeah, they didn't interview you. They have uh, someone claiming to be a victim of domestic violence and they didn't even need to interview you to hire you. Well, they, they, they knew my reputation. Yeah, I bet they did. I bet they, they did. They've read your reports that all look the same. Like right, exactly. we, we have experts, the same thing that the synopsis or diagnosis at the bottom is the same paragraph, copy and paste it on multiple cases. And guess what? <laughs> I read them from other cases to him. I'm like, hey, look at that. Same exact verbiage. He's like, well, I do a lot of these. And when you start dictating this paragraph, you start to sound the same over and over. I'm like, exactly the same, like periods and commas in the same spot. <laughs> like it literally, it's copy and pasted, dude. But oh, yeah, I mean, it's... you can use that stuff just like they're using her PowerPoint presentations. I mean, they're using those. That has nothing to do with necessarily the content of this case, but it shows this is what she does. And I bet those PowerPoint presentations use certain pronouns in certain situations. I was annoyed that he didn't go into it. Like he just brought up the first screen that he's like, let's move to this thing. It's like, well, why do we just. He entered publish... the whole thing into evidence too. Yeah. He got the whole thing into evidence and then he avoided actually asking a single question about the evidence. It was, it, that was odd. It was like, did his brain skip like a record or something? I'm not sure what happened there. Um, they were happy to have that in evidence though. They had no objection to it. Um, well, exactly, because they can probably use it now as as research. Here's what the research right. shows. If you're going to put it in here, I'm going to say this is an evidence. Research shows 99.99% of the time when uh, Dr. Hughes looks at something, it's a, it's a male abuser. But I think maybe what you've kind of already mentioned before is that she's done a pretty good job dancing around or giving context. Maybe they didn't want to bring up those other slides in front of her, but now that it's an evidence, they can do whatever they want with them in closing. So maybe they're yeah, just going to put their narrative on them in closing, not give her an opportunity to explain them, which if she needs explanation, redirect will probably hit some of those. So we'll see. Well, now it's an, the, actually, here you go. Now she has uh, admitted to the, the presentation. They've accepted it as evidence. Rebuttal witness, Dr. Curry, mm. can now come and talk about it as an expert without the opportunity for her to respond. So maybe that's, uh, maybe that's the trick. This is just the way lawyering goes in a trial. You know, you bounce around the best strategy to use pieces of evidence and witnesses, and then you end up coming up with whatever you think is best, and you hope to God you made the right decision. <laughs> yeah, because they would not be able to. Uh, so just a, a, as a brief point to the chat, if the way evidence works normally, not in all cases, Rittenhouse, um, but the way evidence is supposed to work is you have to have a uh, a witness be able to, in some way, authenticate the the document you did a presentation a powerpoint presentation for this uh for this group right yes i did and this this is the title of the powerpoint presentation it's this many pages right yes it is you pull it up on screen this is it this is that this is it right this is the first page yes it is okay we want to move this into evidence no objection now you've got that whole thing in there if they tried to do that with dr curry she would have had to even if she was a witness to it, it would be a hearsay objection at that point. Like this is someone else's statements. So unless Dr. Curry was co-author of it, she wouldn't be able to introduce that thing um, unless somehow she had reviewed it for her yeah. own notes or something. In rebuttal but for to, to uh, potentially impeach Dr. Hughes, maybe, but this is the best way to do it. No doubt. Exactly why you explained yeah. it. This is the cleanest, easiest, best way to get it in because she's not going to argue with her own PowerPoint. And, and the, the, her lawyers that chose her better not argue with her PowerPoint that she did to present to a bar association. Like, what, what are they going to argue with there? Now, I have a question. What do you yeah. think about, so this whole, this team didn't interview you. To you, that came up like a big point. Um, I understand the thought process, but I really only understand it from my own experience dealing with experts. But if I was a lay person, I'm not sure I would have cared that they didn't interview her versus drinks and dinner and muffins and a little starstruck potentially uh, with Johnny Depp. How would you kind of compare the two interviews of these experts um, as far as which one you would think was more positive or negative? Because I got to be honest, interviewing an expert and trying to get them to say what I say versus, okay, this guy's a board certified radiologist who's testified a hundred times. He's really good. He knows his stuff. I'm going to hire him. I don't need to interview him. What do you think about that? 
Well, one, I think both were completely inappropriate. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm with you. I think I'm with you. The best and, way and, is to say, here's his resume. Hey, can you look at these films and give us an opinion? That's it. Yeah. Right. I'm just, I'm talking from my, my point of view, but from this point of view, it's like, okay, you look at their credentials, right? You don't right. need to like interview them and see how pretty they are. <laughs> you know, like you don't need to do that as a legal team, you know? The, the only pushback I would have um, is, and there's no way to explain this in court. Like this is all just uh, outside of it. But when you've got a client like Johnny Depp, I think uh, you, you mentioned the muffins and a little bit starstruck. I think that's the critical aspect of the interview is you need to see how they are going to handle themselves around this person. How does she deal with top uh, S tier celebrity? How do you, how are you going to be with a charismatic, almost billionaire in front of you? And, and is that going to come across poorly in court? We need to see how you react that way. Um, and, and I think that is the difference in this case versus other cases is you have celebrity clients, um, who, who are going to be, uh, and they had to know they're going to be fighting for this thing in public because that was the whole purpose of this trial. And you'd want to see how they, you know, how they react in, in interactions with this person. I, I just think that might be the key dinner and drinks might not be the best way to do that. But I do think an interview would be appropriate. And I do think having Johnny Depp present for that interview might be appropriate. They should have done it at her office yeah. or maybe at the law office. Uh, I agree something with like that. Yeah, I agree with you. And I see people in the chat saying you have to see if they're well spoken. Um, you have to see, you know, how they, how you think they would do on the stand. Looks can matter. I agree with all that. But the way I would do that to avoid any appearance of impropriety is you get a testimony sheet from all the places these people have testified and you can see the lawyers on those cases and you call the lawyers on those cases and say, how did they yeah. do for you? Did you like them? Were they well-spoken? How did they testify? Especially if you have, you know, medical doctors like I deal with who some of them have the worst bedside manner ever um, and are not <laughs> good testifiers. So you want to find out like, yeah, they're good at surgery, but can they also explain what they're doing? And I, I think that's fair game. But again, just like you said, Nick, dinner and drinks, not the same as getting references and having them come to your law office and sit in the conference room and kind of talk through the case with them. Right. And, and, uh, to be, to be fair on, on this, both parties failed to explore both of the failures of these approaches. I think, uh, his, he could have gone after her on those, on the fact that they knew you, you worked with them before he got that and was like, well, that doesn't really mean anything. If she's an expert, that's reliable. They worked with her before. That's not a good answer for you, but then you followed up. So they knew exactly how you would testify. They not only did they know how you would testify and they knew how, how you would evaluate this case. They were confident in your assessment, weren't they? <laughs> like they yes, they have confidence in my answers. I bet they did. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter how she answers. You, you get the answer you can use. Yeah. So they should have explored it. And, and Amber Heard's team should have really pressed on, on this interview with Johnny Depp uh, a little bit, a little bit harder. Um, you're an expert witness. How, how many other times have you been interviewed over dinner and drinks before testifying? I and think they said some question like, that's unusual, right? Not a good question. Word, right. Vague words are not good in cross when you have an expert on the stand. Exactly. It, you, you're an expert witness. This is part of your practice. You do this with some regularity. When was the last time you had dinner and right, drinks for, for three journey? hours with a potential, uh, with or, a potential law firm client? Or you've never done that before, have you? You've never gone to a client's house for drinks. <laughs> it's right. Like, I mean. Uh, oh, by the way, if you missed it, her rate is $500 an hour. Ah, what, what did we say yesterday? We said higher than that. I think I said 600. I said 400. Oh, okay. So we someone right said not, someone said 950, which Oof. was, I thought that was really high. Oh yeah. Because she was in Manhattan or something. Yeah. 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 No, I, you can tell kind of a, I feel like we're getting a gauge based on the other witnesses and you could tell she definitely wasn't going to be the highest, but she, I didn't think she was going to be the lowest. She was, I mean, her office is on uh, Madison Avenue or whatever. Uh, so right. pretty, pretty ritzy, but um, yeah. And, and I think, I think it would have looked really improper if she would have charged four figures in a, in this case. Oh, uh, and, and there was something that he said, like you charged a hundred dollars an hour. That must've been what she said in his, in her depot. Well, the, so yeah, she said that 
it was erroneous in the deposition. He said, so you didn't correct the, the errors Thank in the you. deposition? Uh -huh. she she said there, were, there were numerous errors and you didn't correct them? Well, we didn't errata have a sheet. Let's get to the errata yeah. sheet. <laughs> Why don't we put it uh, back up, plaintiff's uh, 1247. Um, again, this is the caps five. Um, you didn't administer this until you already had Dr. Curry's scores, did you? That's not correct. No, you, you administered it after Dr. Curry made a disclosure, correct? That's not correct. You administered it um, after Dr. Curry had administered hers. I learned that in late February when she submitted her report, but I had no way of knowing that in December of 2021. And you didn't make any reference to this uh, in your disclosures until after Dr. Curry made reference to hers, right? I don't recall the date of the final disclosure or the fourth disclosure. So you don't know if the we'll disclosure the was made. You don't recall the date, so you don't know if it was made prior to you. The Let's go to the test. top of the page. We'll blow that up. Instructions start with standard administration and scoring of the CAPS-5 are essential for producing reliable and valid scores and diagnostic decisions. See that language? I do. Right. You don't contend it's standard uh, not to fill out the frequency line. I think if you're filling it on on the right side of the box, I think that's perfectly fine. All right. So you think it's standard administration to, to simply leave blanks that are already in the form? I didn't leave blanks when I needed to find out the frequency of the symptoms. All right. Let's go down a little bit further. Uh, let's go to administration. It says, number two, read prompts verbatim, one at a time, and in the order presented, and then has a, has a variety of exceptions. With respect to the childhood trauma notations you made in the margin of the CAPS-5, you didn't read the prompts verbatim, did you? I read the first prompt. If there was a yes, then I would have made a decision. Do I need to administer a whole nother CAPS? Right. And you ultimately didn't do that. You just simply wrote the margin of the last one. Because she wasn't endorsing those symptoms. Okay. Um, you, you talked about endorsement of symptoms. Um, ultimately, what you're looking for with respect to uh, PTSD is... Uh, functional deficiencies. That's one of the things you look for, right? Well, with any uh, DSM diagnosis, you're looking for what are the functional impairments as a result of the symptoms that the individual is experiencing. Okay. So, and in fact, if you go to the, all the way to the end of the form, uh, one of the things that we deal with is uh, impairment in occupational function, right? Correct. All right. What's Ms. Hurd's occupation? She's an actor. All right. And she's in, she had just wrapped a major motion picture, correct? That's correct. So you didn't determine that she had an impairment in occupational function. She's still performing at literally the highest level of her profession, correct? She had a number of PTSD symptoms while she was filming Aquaman 2. Right. That interfered with her ability to Is Aquaman like chocolate organize a lot of resources <laughs> yeah. for herself in order to go forward and film that. I, I asked you whether production. she was performing at the highest level of her profession. Yes or no? I don't know if I'm qualified to answer that. Okay. Um really? but did she always fun when they say that. that she loves to cook. She loves to cook, yes. Yeah. Hike. I don't recall hiking, but. Read. Yep. 
spend time with friends. If she can, that has been significantly diminished as a result of her PTSD symptoms as a result of this case. Uh, she just had a baby. Unless Coachella is going on. Yeah, Exercise no kidding. every day. The, the most that I can tell, she does. Yeah. Uh, completed level three sommelier training. She did? <laughs> all right. She did all these things. Look at her smirk. Look at her smirk. She's trying so <laughs> hard not to. Determination that she is impaired with respect to her occupational functioning. I made a determination that the symptoms interfere with her functioning. She does these things, but it's not like the symptoms aren't there. She has to continue to work even though she has a panic attack, even though she has an intrusive recollection of the trauma, even though she's having heart palpitations and sweaty Do palms. Do we have records that show panic attacks? Mind. It does not stop I, I, her I, I don't doing remember what she any. needs to do, but it does interfere. I haven't heard it testified to anywhere. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask you about. We also have no record of any testimony of any interference with any professional work. Um, she just, that came out that of nowhere. Called the PAI. Do you know that one? Yes, I do. Uh, the, that's the personality uh, assessment inventory. That's correct. Why don't we mark, uh, why don't we uh, put in front of the witness the PX 1244? All right, 1244. Thank you. All right. So, Dr. Hughes, do you uh, recognize uh, PX 1244? Yes. And it's a list of critical item endorsements? Correct. And, and that's derived from the PAI? Correct. Um, and this is the PAI that you gave 926-2019. Um, I don't have the cover sheet in front of me, so. Uh, why don't we scroll down to the bottom, Tom? And there it is. Yep. There it is you. down there. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Um, now, critical item, in, why not, I'm going to move uh, this document, uh, PX 1244, into evidence. Your Honor, I would uh, request that the entire document be taken away. Uh, I'm only going to ask her about this piece. I still would ask her. Well, he, it's, his, it's his exhibit. Do you have any objection to his exhibit, which is just the first page? All right. You can move it in on rebuttal or re redirect. So critical item endorsement. This starts a total of 27 PAI, PAI items reflecting serious pathology have been very low endorsement rates, have very low endorsement rates in normal samples. These items have been termed critical items. You're, you're familiar with that concept? Yes, I am. All right. And I just want to ask you about a couple of the critical items. The first one is uh, potential for aggression. This was deemed a, under your PAI a critical item. And it says sometimes my temper explodes and I completely lose control. How did that uh, potential for aggression bear on your analysis? Well, there's a few things. Number one, certainly Ms. Hurd reported to me that in her relationship, that would happen. Her anger and her affect regulation would become impaired. Um, number two, you have to look at the total scales where that scale is not elevated, so it would not be a major cause of clinical concern. Number three, she had four responses that she could say to this question. Mainly true, very true, mainly true, sometimes true or false. She chose sometimes true. So she's answering honestly about her experience. So sometimes she's answering honestly, is she? It's sometimes true. Sure? That sometimes my temper explodes. That's Correct. what you're testifying. Correct. All right. So you've talked a little bit about this concept called malingering. 
And there's one here for potential malingering. It's one thing to say that what they're saying is true versus they're not malingering. This is another one That's the point of malingering. You're not supposed to say what they're saying is true. These are uh, serious pathology, right? Well, as you can see, it says endorsement of these critical items is not in and of itself diagnostic. No, so you I, need to review the content of the item. And that's how you make the determination. Is this something of clinical concern that you need to do more understanding about? Okay, so this critical item endorsement, this one reads under potential malingering. I think I have three or four completely different personalities inside of me. Correct. And she endorsed that as sometimes true. Correct. Okay. And there's not one elevated malingering scale on the PAI. Let me ask you about uh, another document. Mark the documents PX twelve forty eight. Twelve forty eight. Twelve forty eight. All right, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Can you put up PX 1248 just for the witness? Dr. Hughes, do you recognize this? Yes. All right, and these are critical items that were deduced uh, on the TSI two critical items list. Correct. And what's a zero mean? Means that she scored a zero on that item. She said it's not something that's relevant for her at the time frame that the test was administered. Um, and these are all self reports, right? Correct. Um, and so she scored a zero on doing something something violent because violent because you were so upset. Correct. See that language? You knew. Um, Ms. Heard to do violent things when she's upset. This test specifies how often have you had these symptoms in the last six months? Just in the last six months. Correct. All right. So she hadn't had them in the last six months. Correct. This test uh, also asks and inquires about intentionally hurting yourself. Ask about cutting. the framing of the time. In the last six months. Right. Is the prompt. All right. In the last six months. Correct. On all the other tests, Had she framed it back to her relationship. Been previously time. indicated Why not this one? To, your, to you that she cut herself. She indicated one time as a teenager in a reckless moment she did. It was stupid, and I never did it again. Good memory there. Didn't need notes. Great memory. I would say that on cross sometimes. Some people may think it's too sarcastic, but for a witness like this what, that has literally had well, to read notes. That was the first time you met her. She indicated that she she's uh, arguing for Amber. Cut herself. Yep. What did you do to Sounds satisfy like yourself advocacy, that she not didn't forensics. continue to engage in that behavior? As with most things, I asked about the frequency of the behavior and had it ever occurred again? Had she ever engaged in suicidal behavior or suicidal gestures? That's part of that screen. Where did Ms. Hurd cut herself? I'd have to look at my notes to be sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, but quote, she said it was reckless and I never did it again. End quote. Intake note, correct? Verbatim quote. Can't remember um, where, though. Let's, let's I don't see. recall. All right, why don't we go to PX 938? And again, that's one of those where you say you just quoted her exact wording on it. But you can't remember what location. Like, and, so that seemed uh, like that was important to you. Right, it seems like it. that quote struck out, uh, stuck out with you. So the subject seems important to you. Why don't you, 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 and you can't remember where she cut herself? Oh, I'd have to check my notes. What about a general area? 
Because it was probably your arm, there right? We go. Should uh, be obvious. Where she yeah, has the stripes. We're, we're on the third. Stuff. We're on the third page. Um, this background information uh, sheet has uh, already been it already been admitted into evidence. Um, and there's a discussion here uh, we talked about earlier uh, about intimate relationships. I'm, I'm sorry, the question? Yeah, let's go back to the first page. All right, there we go. Um, what number is this? This is in at 1246. So I. This page anyway, I'll ask that it be um, published to the jury. Right. We're going to do it again. What, what you said, 1246? 1246. All right. Okay. It, it, it's in evidence. I, there's supposed to be redactions, though. But, okay. I think those are all medications all right. on the table in front of Johnny, right. actually. Um, it almost looks like, like a mix of pills and candy. Relationships. <laughs> yeah. Section. Uh, there's intimate relationships here uh, relative to a variety of people, um, including a, a person called Tasha. 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 Uh-oh. Uh, who's she? Um, she was Miss Heard's wife. Okay. Is this then, the prior uh, DV? What's uh, up, DUI guy? Relationship with Mr. Depp. That's Is correct. this her prior DV, Tasha? I don't know if that... I think so. Did you say on direct that you saw no previous interpartner violence? Just oh, there it is. I don't believe I did. Yeah. Oh, yes, you, know, you did. You, you saw interpartner violence or you didn't say it on direct? I don't believe I said that yesterday. None in the past. No Ask indication. Her now. Did you see? Did you see intimate partner violence? Or pull up the testimony Do where not bail she's on lying. Us. Your Honor, can we approach? All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, we can read her testimony back, Your Honor, if we need to. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to approach. Um, let me get something. Your Honor, we're about to drill the fuck out of this lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to go down, Your Honor, so we just need to discuss how it's happening. Wow, uh, she just said no. I didn't say that. But again, this is why I don't. I don't think his question is actually perfect because I don't know if she said it exactly like that she didn't say there was no inter whatever violence in the past she said when in when looking at whether or not somebody is the abuser you look at if they have any indications of, of violence against partners in the past which she doesn't it was something more along those lines which is yeah. why you got to have you know buddy in the back give me the quote from exactly what she said and that's how you write down that exact question as opposed to kind of a vague similar question which is what he went with yeah well, we'll see how they handle it, but they're they're asking permission right now to. Yeah, well, it seems impeach. like the judge said they opened the door yesterday when they went to sidebar. She's like, "You can deal with it on cross," is what it sounded like. Oh, this is fun. I mean, if they if they get this in, it's devastating. I agree, it's devastating. Oh, he's he's animated. He he's is pointing. He's pointing. I've got he's, the quote right here. He's using intimidation tactics, though. I don't know. This this psychiatrist or, or psychologist won't like it. <laughs> he's look committing the, sexual violence. Look at that power violence. stance. He's yeah, committing look. sexual violence against all the women in the courtroom According right to her now. definition. <laughs> oh, boy. What's going on, DUI guy? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic, man. Just came to join the party. Excellent. Excellent. So far, this cross has been uh, a little wishy-washy, not terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been, there have been a few missed opportunities, but all of those go away if they can get this in. Like that's what I'm it'll, hearing. It'll, so I'm, it'll, I'm trying to catch up. <clears throat> it'll destroy this entire narrative of this lady. If she just decided to omit the fact that there was domestic violence from Amber Heard and, uh, and they, they just skipped over it on direct and, I All think the that. best the best way this could play for wow. the defense is if she didn't know about it. Not that if she lied or hid it, but if she didn't know about it yes. and she's like, crap, how did you guys not tell me about this? And now it changes all of her opinions. That's yeah, the best way it can go for defense. Right. Because you, you, you'd say, so, so they, she didn't report this to you. She now, wouldn't you, 
Well, agree it, that that would be crucial to your evaluation. It, it so your sounds evaluation's like the, inaccurate. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say they, they put her on, and I remember like yesterday, three or four points during the direct examination, I was going in my head, and I think I even said a couple times out loud, where are you going with this? Like, where's the link to Amber Heard? Like, are you just here to talk about what domestic violence is generally? Like, who gives a shit? Give us the, the meat, the beef, trim the fat, you know? And looks like they haven't gotten to the to the meat, even when with direct being I over. I don't think they're getting it Did in. Did you speak with Ms. Heard around the circumstances that gave rise to the... Um, TRO. They didn't get it in. With um on May 21st? Yes. The judge said you uh, got to live with your today? answer basically? Okay. No way. Did Miss Heard ever tell you that James Franco spent the night with her at the ECB wow. between May 21 and May 27? I recall, I mean, again, it would be helpful to have my notes so I can tell you exactly what, but I do recall that she did see him at some point. Right. I do not know if he spent the night. Do you know if Elon Musk spent the night during that period? I don't know. You can get her transcript. He should have gotten her transcript. Get the video. Play a video for her and peach her. Play this stream from yesterday. I mean, come on. You cannot let that slide. I'm shocked. Yeah. She's up there going, thank Christ. Well, the people are saying the judge is biased, but that's not. He, she did give an answer, and her answer was a lie. So if he can't figure out, I don't know why he has to approach. I would have just impeached the answer that she gave. I don't need to ask the judge anymore. If the judge already said I could do this, I will. I will fight with this witness right now and play her own testimony back for her. Make him make the objection at least. Yeah. Why don't they you want to talk about this relationship? Cannot testify. That Johnny Depp was not abused, Kenya. I I can testify that he had physical acts of violence perpetrated on him, as well as psychological aggressive acts perpetrated upon him. No further questions. All right. Oh, right. fucking hell. I mean, they have they they can Dr. try to Hughes, get it in under you were Amber. Asked fire. about some presentations. I think plaintiff's twelve forty one was the first one. If we can bring that up, Tom, could you help me out with that? Twelve forty one. Yes, and if you can scroll down. What was the significance of this presentation? And and can you can you give her control or do you have to have control of the document? It's just one page. Oh, it's not the entire presentation. Okay. Can you please tell the jury what you provided in this presentation? Um, to the best of my recollection, it was what I spoke to you about before of how people who are not trained in forensic psychology, but who are working with victims of domestic violence can go into court and navigate with the court system and present and talk about domestic violence in a, a legal setting. Okay, thank you. And that's been moved into admission, that's been moved that's in, it. correct? Yes. Okay, well, let's go to the one that I don't think was, 1242, please. Tom, if you could bring that up. Oh, I'm still annoyed. That's right, a, and is that just one a, page too? Big, big loss. Okay. Um, do you recall this presentation, Dr. Hughes? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, could you please just, well, let's, I'm going to move the admission of plaintiff's exhibit 1242, first of all. Any objection? All right, 1242. Okay. And um, could we publish it to the jury, please? Yes, and Dr. Hughes, could you please tell the jury, explain to the jury what this presentation entailed? Um, so I was asked by the head of the Kings County Bar Association to give a presentation about uh, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, and how psychological experts can be of assistance. 
Um, this was um, just because of how Brooklyn is a, a bar association that was attended by many of the prosecutors from the Kings County uh, District Attorney's Office, as well as defense attorneys. And as I stated before, this presentation was about how to really understand cases of domestic violence, how to understand what if she drops the restraining order? What if she doesn't call the police? What are the myths and misconceptions about intimate partner violence? Um, and when she uses force, what does that mean? How do we understand that? How do we evaluate for that? Um, so again, without seeing the rest of the presentation, I believe that was the thrust of this presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, uh, you testified about the notes you took and the notes you reviewed, um, and you were asked about some limited questions on testing. I'm going to ask for Defendant's Exhibit 1434. No, oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, I need, we need, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Mm. But you were doing a fine job, Tom. I didn't mean to take it away from you. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Uh, Dr. Hughes, is this your CV? Yes, it is. All right, I'm going to move the admission of, of defendants 1434. You're out of completeness. They've got all the other records in here for Dr. Hughes. I'm trying to see completeness. I understand. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Let's go to uh, defendants 1435, please. So you just tried to move her curriculum vitae into the into evidence, but that's a hearsay document. No, Dr. Hughes, you, you've testified about the different uh, 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 testings that you administered, and this is one of the ones that I believe you testified to earlier, correct? That's correct. And this is the DSM-5? Um, this is the clinician-administered PTSD scale for the DSM-5. Okay. Um, I'm going to move the admission of 1435. Any objection? Wait, so the, the reason they were trying to go to side or they went to sidebar was to try and get. It's not the caps. It's the DSM five. But but she administered all these tests, Your Honor, and they came for completeness of record. They can't put in partials and then not have the rest of it. Um, I think well, they, I mean, we can. There was no objection to when they put theirs in. Now, I would now say, they're objecting to you putting. I, I would say rule of completeness, Your Honor, rule two, Virginia rule two colon 106, um, that they can't just put a partial in and then not, not have the completeness of the testing in the documents. Well, you, they put the, their test in, now you want to put more tests in, correct? Co correct. Well, that's not completeness. That's, that, that's not a completeness argument then. That's just a different test. Well, it's, all, it's also, but what's the objection though, that there's, okay. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Oof. All right, well, then we'll go for the other ones. Um, you did the TSI. What, before we go on to the others, let, let's talk about, could you please tell the jury what you administered in this DSM-5 and why this is significant? Sustain. Can you tell us why the DSM-5 is significant that you administered? So the, the DSM-5 is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for psychiatric disorders. It's published by the American Psychiatric Association. That's where it has all the criteria and all the information for our major mental disorders like major depressive disorder or panic disorder or PTSD. What the CAPS is, the Clinician Administered PTSD Scale, is it follows all of that criteria that's in the DSM-5 so that you can make a very accurate diagnosis. And what, if any, diagnosis did you make as a result of this DSM-5? Right. So not only on this, I mean, this instrument can stand alone where she meets PTSD criteria just by virtue of this instrument, <clears throat> pardon me, but also the, the other testing that I gave where she had elevated scales on PTSD measures which correspond with the DSM-5 symptoms of PTSD. So there were multiple measures that are consistent across time that she meets criteria for PTSD. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. Now, you were also given one page of the scoring on the TSI-2 uh, and one page 
with respect to the PAI. Do you recall seeing that? Uh, it wasn't the scoring. They were the critical items on those respective tests. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 1858. which is the full PAI. Um, and was this the actual testing and scoring? Um, yes, this is the, the profile, um, the scores that are generated from the 344 questions that Ms. Heard uh, answered on this test. And, and what did you, what were the results? What, what did you determine based on the testing of this PAI? Well, that the results were valid and reportable. Um, there was no evidence of exaggeration or malingering on this test, and there were significant symptoms um, that correspond with traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder symptomatology. And I, I believe you said again that there was um, that there was no elevated scores. Can you explain to the jury what you meant by that? Objection leading. O overruled up. Okay. So elevated scores are a, a way that we get to know where a cutoff is to say that something is clinically significant. And that follows very um, standard statistical principles. So when a scale is elevated, it means that we have sort of greater confidence that this individual endorsed a lot of different symptoms that make this scale relevant. And then we want to figure out why um, that person is having an elevated score. I've got to run, boys. I'll try to come back later, though. Anxiety. Um, it gives us greater confidence that, you know, this person's maybe reporting depressive symptoms like people who are depressed. Okay. And what, what would constitute an elevated score? Well, on different tests, it's different things. Um, certainly on the PAI, um, it, it doesn't follow linear T-scores. It's a little different statistically, so you have to look at it differently. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, it's usually about a T-score of a 65 and on some, it's a T-score of a 70, which is a, a T-score is a normative curve, is a way of allowing us to compare people's scores, comparing your scores to the normative group of scores. And would it be at all helpful to have the entire uh, test as opposed to a, a one piece of paper or one page? Well, certainly you cannot tell the entirety of how um, the symptoms that Ms. Heard endorsed and the scales were elevated just by the critical items. All right. I'm going to move the admission of plaintiff's ex or defendant's exhibit 1858. Objection here, sir. And this is the completeness, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Let's bring up 1859. <laughs> How'd you lose that one? <laughs> And this is, you were shown one page from the TSI-2, the Trauma Symptom Inventory 2. Do you recall that? Correct. Okay. What is the significance of the TSI-2 exam, the full exam? The Trauma Symptom Inventory is a test of common symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and related traumatic symptomatology. And um, on this score, she had, you know, elevations in intrusive experiences, which is the um, intrusive component of PTSD where thoughts or memories or feelings come into your mind when you don't want them with accompanying distress and then the defense of avoidance doing many many different things to push it down to try not to think about it to try not to talk about it um, so that you don't get upset um, and she also scored high on a scale of relational avoidance having difficulty feeling close in relations and uh, relationships not only intimate relationships but friendships as well and um, that's a related trauma symptom that individuals have after having sustained um, an interpersonal trauma like domestic violence. Okay. And would it be helpful to have the full exam as opposed to one page out of it? Are you just going to hear? As with anything, seeing too? an entire uh, profile gives one more information. Your Honor, I'd move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 15 for 1859. Objection, Objection hearsay. hearsay. And if, I would argue the complete rule again. For this. Well, the judge just sustained the exact same objection with the exact same arguments for another document. So I would, I would think by logic, she needs to sustain this one. Now, maybe there's another rule, uh, another exception to hearsay that she could try, but it didn't work on completeness on the exact same scenario with, with a slightly different, with a different test, but the 
the same set of facts. So if the judge were to allow this one, that'd be very weird. Real quick, uh, why they went to sidebar earlier, guys. Um, Amber Heard was, I believe, arrested for domestic view abuse in her prior marriage with uh, Tasia, whatever, uh, that they were they were talking about. He had asked the question about that. He was trying to open the door on introducing the jury to the uh, to that arrest for domestic violence. That's why it was critical for them to get it, and they they lost it there. They can now, still try to I impeach Amber Heard with it, asked, but it would have been great here. You were shown a couple of finger pictures um, of Mr. Depp. That objection was sustained, by the way. And I believe you indicated th those were shown to you, and I think you were asked uh, if you were uh, if these were severe injuries. Correct. Correct. All right. Did you have any understanding of the cause of those injuries by Mr. Depp? I do understand that there's competing accounts of what happened for sure. Right. Let's bring up defendants' exhibits 373. Gates of Above says, if two gay guys in a relationship get into a fight, is it domestic violence or just a fight? <laughs> also, here's to your fun for getting that new license for YouTube. <laughs> Thanks. Your Honor, I think this is already admitted. Uh, according to this it. one, they would both be the perpetrators of domestic violence. I can mark and it, there would be no victim. But it's not admitted yet. I think... There was Unless a it's, version of that. If well, I may, I don't know that. Honor, I can just tell you that 373 has not been emitted into evidence. Your Honor, it's not redacted, no. and I don't okay. believe it's been admitted. It, it, the, the part I'm trying to admit is in another exhibit, so let's let's go in a different way. We'll take that one down. Let's go with 398. 398 redacted is in evidence. That's that might be the one. That might be the one. <laughs> well, is it? All right. If you could lower that up. Frederick Little, hey, Nick, great coverage of the trial so far. For, also, happy Star Wars Day to you in the chat. Now. May the fourth be with you. There we go. You can blow that one up. Does Mike and Tyson do cameo? Email from Mr. Depp to David Kipper. His, your understanding was that was his doctor, correct? Correct. Okay. And then I'm going to draw your attention to the last part of this. And this is on 319, 2015. Thank you for everything. I have to figure out how to do this. Why I'm is she asking her opinion on, on this? this. Thank you for everything. I've chopped off my left middle finger as a reminder that I should thank you, Your Honor, that I should never uh, cut off my finger again. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's Mr. Depp admitting that to Dr. Kipper. The finger he cut off is on the right hand. Objection leading. Okay. I sustain the objection. Next. Okay, that's that's fine. I, I'm good with that. Um, let's go to my left finger. It was a joke. That he's chopped off his left so he would remember to never chop off another finger again. Uh, the one that got cut off was on his right hand. And, Your Honor, I believe this one is in as well, or is it, is it the redacted? It's a redacted one. Yes, that's okay. One. Thank you. Uh, and then if I could draw your attention, this is a, a text message from Mr. Depp to Erin Falati, we talked about her earlier, on 10-31-2015. And it says, this is the second time he's held off giving me my meds by blackmailing me into seeing him. The first time I had just chopped my finger off. Do you recall seeing that as part of the documents that you reviewed? Mm, I believe I did. Okay, thank you. We can take that down. Now, you were also asked to listen to an audio tape and it's plaintiff's 343 i'm going to and, and, and you recall here listening to that audio tape at some point as part of your review 
Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to now pull up that same audio tape from the same day, and I believe that's June 2016. And if we could go to, and we're going to have a few different ones, so so hold in there with us. We're going to start with two minutes, 40 seconds, zero, zero, going to two minutes, 40 seconds, and 21. knocking on the door. I don't because get that why is a I fucking want to dance irrational and violent fucking maneuver. How so a man would want to get it? out of that area so that he doesn't get so fucking angry that he actually does pop the fucking wife. That's one important. Oh, go home and listen to the tape. Now that was just before the punching hitting that was played. Do you recall that? Just before objection she leaving. In. Well, I, the the tape recording that you listened to was at two colon forty six oh one to two forty seven two colon forty seven twenty, and that was two colon forty objection leading to two colon forty twenty one. She wouldn't know that, correct? I understand. Objection that. leading. Okay. Now let's go oh, to after. Oh, that. Overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. Now let's go to after that two colon fifty two. Zero zero to two colon fifty two thirty four. It's yesterday because of how it's been lately, like since Australia, and I have been on the road with you. I haven't been working. I don't know what else I could fucking do. Since Australia, you were on our own. You had a great time out there in the back. You had a fight in each other. Yeah. No. And then let's go to three colon twenty zero zero. Can we not just three play colon the three minutes of audio? We gotta we gotta bounce between twenty second clips. Like what what's between them? This is where you could object on the rule of completeness that, and have uh, them I'll play just the, ask you the question, Doctor Hughes. Straight do you through, recall if you want. that Mr. Depp said that they had fights in the places that he listed on that audio tape? Objection leading. Sustained. All right. What do you recall Mr. Depp saying about fights that they've had <laughs> on that audio tape? Um, Objection, I, no foundation. She just listened to oh, overruled. Okay. Yeah. I've, um, I think it was hard to hear in this one. I had listened to it previously, um, just acknowledging that there are fights previously. Okay, thank you. I will recognize when I'm fucking starting to go sideways. I will recognize. Do you recall listening to that part of the tape, the audio I, tape? 
Yes, I do. And, and what do you recall from that portion? Again, I know it's hard to hear, but it's hard to hear. But um, what I recall from hearing that was the, the, the negotiation that the couple is trying to do and, and trying to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do better. Okay. Is it possible to turn that up anymore? Or is it, I have one more. I'm just. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. My last one is three colon 26, 20 to three colon 2950. Your Honor, can we approach? Okay, yes sir. Okay, I'm not sure what they're thinking they're getting out of these audios. None of these are admissions of violence by either party. Um, it's just admissions that there is conflict. Well, we know. <laughs> There's clearly been a conflicting tumultuous relationship between these two. Uh, that that's, that's not revelatory. I don't know why this lady's testifying to it. Um, I don't know what this has to do with her analysis and evaluation, her, what her expertise. You you're different in the moment when you're mad and you go, fuck it. And you just decide moment. all bets are off. Moment, well, look what I did on Australia. Look what I accomplished. I put the fucker away. I told myself every fucking day. By a list of the things that I feel that fuck you over or make you feel shitty or anything like that. I fucking, when we're in the moment, I remember it. I remember what I put on my list. I remember it. And I try to, 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 to bring it down notches, many notches. I'll try if we're heightened to say I don't want you to feel this I don't want I don't want to feel this Let's, I not I need to know what we need to do different I need to know it's be done with your mind and your heart. what do we do different if well, I have a problem you no. need to tell me how to tell you no. different if I'm hurting you you need to let me be able to be mad. Sometimes you're gonna make me mad. I'm a human. I cannot live where it's like. Well, then it's the same thing goes for me. Then you're gonna have to allow me to get mad. Yes, exactly. If okay, I do something that makes you mad, you start fucking yelling. I, 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 I don't have to start yelling. I think I start yelling once it gets fucking heightened. I've gotten a lot better about that. It's just only no, I only start no. yelling when it's fucking hour eleven and we're really in it. I'm talking about the yelling. Yeah. You witnessed it. You're the one that brought it up. Australia was fucking great. You just argued. Let's go back there. Let's go back there on our fucking heads and on our hearts. Go back there. And no, on your list. Is the monster gone? Did you put him away? It's been so, when you get on that train, you get angry, you stay on it for so long and you won't come down, you won't talk to the person that's that not, is you. That's not always, that's not always. It doesn't been. have to always be the monster, but what is it? Can you put that away? Can you remember the bigger picture? You don't want to spend your life. I've asked you this so many times in fights. You want to spend your time like this. No, you don't, but I ask you because this is something you're choosing. I'm saying to you, Olive Branch, and you don't take my olive branches. You made me feel humiliated for offering them. You asked me to stay in Australia. I stayed. And then you walked out on me all the time. You've got to take some olive branches from me. You've got to offer them too. You've got to be bigger than what you feel at that moment. And so do I. So do I. But if I call you on it, will you hear it? Will you call me out on it if I'm doing it? Again, what is the do you purpose of listening this? Listening to that, Dr. Hughes. Yes, I do. And, and what is your interpretation of that? Emotional impact on the jury. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. She's an expert. Overruled. Uh, yeah. 
I, I think this is more of the, how this couple is trying to negotiate in the face of all of the um, the turmoil and the violence and the abuse. Um, I think it's important pointing out is my recollection is that there's two Australias. They're talking about the honeymoon Australia, not the honey, not the Australia. Oh yeah, that's the a, incident. Of happens. course, they go back and that becomes a honeymoon time for them. Um, and I think certainly hearing how this couple has talked about the monster and and the person who comes out as we talked about that cycle of violence where the person who you know hurts her and hits her and, and controls her isn't the same person that she she loves and she cares about and that she wants to be with thank you dr hughes now we they, you also were asked about dr bonnie jacobs and her <clears throat> treatment and her treatment treatment notes uh, and you did you review those treatment notes from Bonnie Jacobs? Yes, I did. I'm going to ask you to turn to. Can we bring up defendants 1059? And do you recognize these this document? Yes. Okay. And what is it? Um, this looks like the first of Dr. Bonnie Jacobs uh, treatment notes starting in October 17th, 2011. Okay. And do you recall whether Ms. Hurd was already in a relationship with Mr. Depp at that time? Um, yes, she was. Okay. And you testified quite extensively yesterday about Bonnie Jacobs notes and, and entries there. Uh, were those reflected in these notes? These were the notes Section that I was leading, Your Honor. I can ask it differently. And what, if any, uh, of those uh, <laughs> citations that you gave to the jury were in these notes? Objection compound. Uh, overruled. Um, these were the notes that I was referring to okay. yesterday. A and what was the significance of these notes to you? You were asked again about them on cross. I, again, I found the, the treatment notes very significant because they had contemporaneous reports of what Ms. Hurd was going through, not only what she was reporting in her relationship with Mr. Depp, but her accompanying symptomatology. Um, what the notes revealed was there's a significant amount. Well, we see it unfold in time. We see where the violence starts and we see how it unfolds. We see at least three indications of, of sexual assaults. We see constant um, pleadings and, and, and upset about his substance abuse and trying to find ways to get him help. And she joins Al-Anon to get herself help as a family member of someone who struggles with substance abuse. We see how she's reporting a lot of controlling behavior and obsessive behavior. Um, we see that there's two instances where the police were going to be called and when in her apartment in Orange. Um, because of the fighting um, at that time, once they actually were called and once they weren't, from what I can amass from the notes. So what it does is it really shows how this relationship is unfolding over time and actually getting worse. And then you indicated that Amber Heard moved from Bonnie Jacobs to uh, Dr. Cohen, and that was in 2014. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And what is your understanding of the relationship between Dr. Cowan and Dr. Kipper? Um, they were professional colleagues and they were friends. And um, Dr. I mean, well, it's it's understanding why Miss Heard left the relationship with Bonnie Jacobs. It was it became a tumultuous relationship for her there because she was doing a lot to um, protect Johnny and Bonnie Jacobs had concerns. Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? No foundation. I established the foundation. She she reviewed the notes and she interviewed Bonnie Jacobs. I'll, I'll overrule the foundation objection. Go ahead. Objection non-responsive. <laughs> I'll overrule non-responsive. Please continue, Dr. Hughes. Um, the reason that should have led um, with that. Miss Heard left her treatment with Bonnie Jacobs. Well, one that. Mr. Depp continued to denigrate that relationship, her therapeutic, therapeutic relationship. But number two, really more importantly, is that she wanted to protect Mr. Depp because she didn't want, Ms. Dr. Jacobs had some concerns about perhaps his substance using in front of his children and that she would be a mandated reporter. Um, so Ms. Heard did not want to do anything and talk more about what was going on with Mr. Um, about Mr. Depp with her therapist for fear that 
um, something might happen. So she left that treatment really to protect uh, Mr. Depp. Really, Here, I'd like was, to move the yeah. admission of uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1059, the treatment notes. Objection to hearsay, Your Honor. This is what we dealt with yesterday. Your Honor, I, I think that the, for completeness here, she has relied upon these and they reflect the present sense impressions. I'll sustain the objection to hearsay. All right. Let's go to Defendant's Exhibit 1057, please. Defense is getting their ass kicked on these hearsay objections. And not Dr. That, Hughes, that big you also of a deal, indicated but... that you relied on the treatment notes of Dr. Uh, Conan, correct? Cohen. Co Connell Cohen. Cohen, yes. That's it. Okay. And and you also interviewed him as well? Correct. Okay. And and on what what was the significance of what he reported to you that related to your opinions? Well, this was a continuation of her treatment and the treatment here where it seemed like Dr. Connell Cohen was going was a harm reduction model, really trying to um, help Amber stay safe in the relationship by not talking back, by leaving, by not engaging. Um, and those are very sort of short term strategies when you're in uh, a relationship mired with interpersonal violence. Um, what we also see is what I mentioned yesterday is um, I mean, her psychological status and functioning <clears throat> continues to deteriorate. She continues to have more anxiety, more affect dysregulation, sort of feelings are coming up and down all the time. Um, she's having more sleep problems. She's going on more medication. Um, and the sort of the conceptualization and understanding of that is, you know, sort of exposure to repeated trauma causes psychological disequilibrium and destabilization. Um, and that's we're sort of, again, seeing the trauma unfold over time. And also in these notes, I mean, certainly there are those contemporaneous reports um, that correspond to specific incidents. Like I was speaking with you yesterday about the Boston plane incident. There are actual notes where she called him after objection, her, your she honor. called yes. him. What's the objection? Yeah. Beyond the scope of the question. I, I, right. I think I'll so. sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Um, what, if any, uh, additional information did you get from Dr. Cowan that assisted you in your opinions? Um, well, certainly from the notes, as I was stating that, you know, there were times where right after an incident, you know, Ms. Hurd wrote, um, she contacted Dr. Cohen either by text or by email and saying, you know, Johnny did a number on me tonight. I really need to see you. Um, I'm safe. I'm Objection hurt, I'm hearsay. Safe. I think she can rely on hearsay. Sustain the objection. It looks like Amber has not slept at all. Well, Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to uh, move. Does have some bags under her of, eyes. Uh, the notes, uh, defendants 1057. Get some cucumbers objection on those, girls. Sustain the objection. Thank I'm you. Move to strike the hearsay testimony as well. No, we'll continue on. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, you were asked about a knife. You were shown plaintiff's exhibit 92 and a knife that's, uh, I think, is till death. What is your understanding of the significance of that knife and that phrase as it related to Amber Heard? Uh, objection, you're under no foundation. He was. He showed it in cross-examination. I'm, I'm able to ask about it and what her understanding was. He cut her off when she was trying to talk. I'm just letting her go back in. Her understanding of a knife? It's, it's irrelevant. Let, let's pull up plaintiff's 92. Tom, can I get you to do that, please? Can we get a ruling on the objection first before we pull up the exhibit? Like, <laughs> Judge, where are you on this? Like, what's the ruling? I believe you respond in response to the questions asked by counsel for Mr. Depp, you said it depends upon what the context is. What did you mean by that? Well, if first I believe that this is the knife that has a turquoise end, um, and this was when a time when uh, Mr. Depp was filming The Lone Ranger and he was in a, a turquoise phase, um, and she purchased him that because she thought it would be um, a kind gift. Um, the phraseology is that Mr. Depp told her the only way out of this relationship is death. Okay. Objection hearsay. Uh, I don't. Well, that'd be a party admission against interest. I, I don't. But. I don't understand the objection. I think she was. She was entitled to be able to speak to that. She definitely she, was not. It, it, I, I don't. Yeah, care it's what Mr. Depp's saying. statement. 
the party right, opponent I'll admission. I'll the objection. Thank you. Okay. Um, and what is your uh, opinion? How, what, what do you think of that as a, a clinical psychologist in specializing in IPV and trauma? I mean, objection, Your Honor. Can I, uh, can we okay. approach? Sure. <laughs> Your Honor, yesterday uh, you let her, you let them testify for Amber Heard through this witness. Like you let them just give Amber Heard's recollection of events through this witness. Can we be done with that today, Your Honor? <laughs> um, what, what her understanding of the significance of the knife? Like th this isn't relevant to any of this. Um, it, it, I don't think it's particularly damaging. But her getting to say, well, she wanted to do something nice for Johnny. Is that in your notes? Like, where are you drawing this conclusion from? As an expert, you're you're allowed to draw, uh, you know, Dr. Hughes, clinical you inferences. Think that but the this phraseology is mind reading. on the knife uh, bears any relationship or significance to the opinions you've had in this case. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustained objection. What, if any, significance <laughs> does the phraseology on the knife it's the same uh, question have in to the opinions you have provided in this case objection your honor beyond the scope of the disclosure that's a, Ooh. Th he brought it up in cross your honor. Objection. thank you um so there are several things i i certainly am aware that at this time that um miss heard purchased this knife for um mr depp she was um engaged in a her whole lot of denial and minimization about the extent of the violence in the relationship. Um, there is a notation in, in Dr. Bonnie Jacobs' notes about um, when Mr. Depp uttered this to her um, was under the, around the discussions of the prenup. And he said, I don't want one because the only way out of this relationship is depth. Um, Dr. Jacobs didn't think that that was funny. Ms. Hurd was taking it like, oh, maybe it's endearing. Maybe this is OK. Um, but it was definitely a, a clinical cause of concern um, at the time um, that that phraseology Till was Till death used. to us part is a wedding Thank vow. You, now, you, were, you listened to an audio tape, and then we showed some additional ones from that. Uh, what, if any, photos did you review as part of your examination? Objection beyond the scope of cross. He was asking all the different authority. I'm just establishing that she also looked at photos. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. It's beyond the scope. Dr. Hughes, um, based on everything in the cross-examination and the redirect, what if any go. changes do you have to any of the opinions that you provided to this jury yesterday? Objection have... compound. Overruled. I, I don't have any changes to my opinions that I gave yesterday. Okay. Um, and do you still hold those within a reasonable degree of psychological probability or certainty? Yes, I do. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ma'am, you can't discuss your testimony with anybody, but you're free to stay in the courtroom since you base your on expert testimony, okay? Thank you, Your All right, Honor. Thank you. All right. I think we'll go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. They're going to take a lunch break? Um, likely. Likely. I think the judge was about ready to say that, and then <clears throat> they asked to approach. Yeah. Uh, and I think they may be calling Amber Heard next. That's what I'm thinking. That'll, that'll be big. That, man, that, that redirect was... Uh, kind of pointless i i don't know I, they had to rehabilitate a little bit they didn't really hit any of the points i would have thought they would want to hit on redirect i would think they'd want to speak to her elimination of bias i mean that that's part of the the best some of the best part of cross was up at the beginning unfortunately i'm still reeling from the fact that they lost that domestic violence uh entry like how do you not get that with her testimony and and peter was very correct. Like, why don't you have the the exact answer to the question that she gave yesterday? Going up before the judge and saying, here's what she said. We right. get to impeach it. Impeach her and, and to just move on. 
this one impeachment can discredit all of her testimony, like in in the drop of a hat, basically. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I, like, I I saw okay. a video or like a, a piece or something that originally they wanted to put Amber Heard on first, but the overwhelming like public opinion was put on the psychologist first because that's going to make Amber Heard's testimony more impactful like let's go ahead and take our lunch break now um just to not do any outside research and uh don't talk to anybody about the case okay we'll see you back here too okay so like having this this underlying cloud of smoke of the the psychologist is going to make amber's words more meaningful was basically yes. the overwhelming opinion that's why she testified first that's why they didn't put amber heard on first is my understanding all right. i think Maybe that's the right you? move for that's the defense right too i agree i thought putting amber heard on first would be a, a a terrible plan um even putting her on second is a little bit weird uh, i agree but um i think they may be concerned that she will end up being um awful as a witness uh, that they need the facts from her testimony, but that she will be unlikable. And so what they need to do is get those in early, then have the, you know, the jury drown that out over the next couple weeks um, and, and forget that she's kind of unlikable mm. and then use the facts on, on uh, close. It's not a bad strategy. Yeah. It, it all depends on if she's an effective witness and if they've determined she's not, then get it out of the way mm -hmm. uh, quickly. But Man, that that domestic violence thing, you that's the that's the time where we really want to hear what happened at sidebar. Like what was what were those questions that you were asking? What what was the advocacy going on there? <laughs> because I feel like the door had been opened. I yeah. feel like that had happened. But um, you know, it, it all depends on what was said, you know, and and this judge might just still say, no, it's too prejudicial and it's not probative. Yeah, uh, but but they'll have to look for it on Amber's testimony on her cross exam. If she says anything in regards to her stances on domestic violence or her, you know, like her uh, belief in uh, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, then then they've got another opportunity. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, at this point, if if she's up next, um, like you said yesterday, I think. Nick, you alluded to the fact that she can, the door is going to be wide open. She can literally talk about anything and everything from her own personal experiences, whether it's going to be the truth, where it's going to be a lie, whether it's going to be a 50 50. She can literally make shit up and people will have to, to listen and take it in. And unless there's a way to impeach her on it, because nobody else was there when the two of them were having these fights. Some right. of them are recorded. Some of them have photos. Some of them have maybe video, whatever. But at the end of the day, she can, she can literally say anything and get away with it. Uh, is the follow up? And you know, I'm sure Chad is going to explode about. Well, get her on perjury. Get her on perjury. Well, perjury is actually one of the hardest things to get a person on if you don't have two contradicting sworn statements. Now, you can catch her in a lie, maybe that's not perjury, doesn't rise to the level of perjury, but rises to the level of impeachment to show the lack of credibility and therefore the statements and claims she's making are not as credible and discredit her as a witness, which is going to bolster Johnny's case. But to get her on perjury, depending on what she says, is going to be extremely difficult. Near impossible. Like... Mm -hmm. uh the, the amount of people who intentionally lie on the witness stand and get charged with perjury is an almost zero number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's, 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 it's frequent. Uh, and, and the way you handle it is with impeachment. I mean, the, but if the, the, the converse side of that is if we were charging everyone who lied on a witness stand with perjury and prosecuting, then people would just be extremely evasive witnesses. Um, they, they would, they would not have any level of candor to the court. Uh, it, I say candor knowing that it tends to mean truthfulness, but I open in openness, I mm -hmm. should say, because if, if any misstatement could be construed as perjury, then you wouldn't get honest testimony at all. You, you'd get nothing. You'd get no testimony. People would, uh, resist 
going to the court and then they'd resist saying anything while they were there. Cause you don't want to go to prison for it. So, um, they, they just tend to not do perjury charges. It's a, uh, unless you're talking to the FBI, then there's perjury all the time. <laughs> don't, don't talk. <laughs> the to one the, except, FBI. the FBI exception to the perjury rule. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so this one though, she's going to get to narrate the rest of the day is going to be her narration. Probably a good deal. If not all of tomorrow is going to be her narration. And then they're going to go into the break and we probably won't see cross exam until after, uh, after we come back from the break on so, uh, Monday. No, no, no. Uh, court is not in session next week. Um, the judge has a judicial conference. And so, Oh, uh, we're taking a long break then. It'll like be 10 May days. 16th? Oh, yeah. Even longer. Wow. It'll be the, it'll be the next Monday, the next I Monday, believe. the 16th. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Tomorrow That's my is understanding. My Tomorrow is my birthday, so I'm super excited today and tomorrow. Uh, Amber Heard's going to be testifying right on my birthday. That, that's, <laughs> you can't beat that, man. Like That's the best <laughs> birthday present I think anybody uh, could ever receive, so I'm excited. It, it's going to be a good one. It'll be, again, it'll be really interesting to see how this plays out because like, you, like you're just uh, elaborating, there's a ton of room for her to say whatever she wants. And the defense is going to, or the plaintiffs are going to have to sit there and grit their teeth through it. And uh, this, Johnny got to do it. This will be her chance to tell her life story. It's talking about how she was a victim of intimate partner or of uh, domestic violence from her parents or whatever, uh, to talk about how, you know, her tumultuous upbringing, but how she's strong and, and she, she was able to secure her modeling jobs and, and her acting jobs and build a career out of nothing etc. Until Johnny came in and suppressed it and ruined it with his psychological violence. Right. Like that's, that's going to be the story. <laughs> the The question is, will she gloss that previous marriage with the domestic violence uh, charges and, and stuff like that? And, and will she open the door to anything juicy on cross exam? But just a warning to the chat, you're probably going to be pissed off for the next day and a half. If you're on Johnny Depp's side, if you're on Amber Heard's side, uh, First of all, welcome. You are welcome here as well. Um, if you're on Amber Heard's side, you're going to really be waiting for this. Like, tell me why I should believe you because right now there's some there's some questions to your story. So give me give me everything you got. And this is her shot to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think how she plays out on the stand determines who wins and loses this. Personally, I that's that's my opinion. Um, oh, her I, versus I wholeheartedly Johnny Depp. agree. I mean. You know, I try, as, as you know, Nick and chat probably knows by now who know me, I try criminal cases. So th this is a civil case. It's a little bit different. But uh, in a lot of even criminal cases, when you, you know, you have a right not to take the stand. You have a right not to testify against yourself. You have a right to take the fifth, plead the fifth, and just not provide any testimony that could potentially be incriminating used against you. But I can tell you from experience, jurors love hearing the defendant speak. And that is just, even though we don't have to, you know, constitutionally, blah, 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 rules of, we don't have to present any evidence. The burden is on the prosecution. You can, you can talk about that all day long, but nothing beats your client actually going up there, taking the stand, taking the oath, and telling their side of the story, even though they don't have to, you know, obviously you can't do it in all cases, but in the cases that you can, I, I mean, I urge uh, up and coming attorneys to absolutely consider that uh, because, and li like you already alluded to, having Amber Heard take the stand and testify after Johnny has already put basically his balls in a vice, he exposed himself to potential ruthless cross-examination and yeah. if Amber Heard does not follow suit, I am a firm believer that this it, it would be heading towards chaos and disaster for Amber Heard's uh, case in, in chief uh, for the defense if she does not testify because Johnny did it. And now everybody's expecting Amber to do it. And if she doesn't, then it's it's destructive. It's more than just hurting. It is at that point, I think, destructive to the case. Yeah. And and so uh, and and she has to be she has to come across as not crazy and not evil because Johnny didn't come across as crazy or evil. In my opinion, he came across as troubled. 
uh, he came across as, um, you know, a, a, an addict who struggled with addiction. Uh, he came across as um, very like oddly introspective and maybe a little eccentric, but I don't think from his testimony, people got the idea that he was a hothead who was prone to violence. It just didn't really come across. Um, and, and so if Amber comes across as like jittery, excitable, angerable, if she comes across in that way, that's prone to violence. I mean, it, it's crippling for her, for her credibility in this thing. Cause he came across calm and collected and, and you can, you can show all kinds of, uh, pictures and tell all kinds of secondhand accounts of, of what may have happened somewhere. But if someone's on the stand, you're like, wait, this guy's supposed to be a violent monster but he doesn't seem like a violent monster. No one around him uh, saw violence. Only this person is saying it. And when they're on the stand, they're coming across as the instigator or the violent one. That's going to be really bad uh, yeah. if that happens. And and her, her other appearances have not gone great. So I'll, it'll be, it'll be something I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Same. I'm looking forward to it. Very excited. A uh, couple of quick housekeeping things. Chat. Uh, DUI guy and the lawyer, you knows links are in the description. Uh, would appreciate it. If you go check out their channel pages, uh, give them a follow, watch some of their content. We all, uh, all of us weirdo lawyers who are on YouTube produce all kinds of different content on all kinds of different subjects. There's no way any one person can get it all. So make sure you check out everybody's stuff and, uh, you'll probably find something you're into somewhere. If you like this law stuff at all, you'll find something on one of our pages. So make sure you look around for that. Also, if you uh, are tired of not getting notifications for this stream or for the night stream that I do, make sure you join my exclusive community on Locals, ricadalaw.locals.com. You can go ahead, follow there for free. No, no, anything other than, you know, just signing up with an email address or something. And you will always get a notification when I am going live because I post on there. It's not like YouTube that determines when it's going to send a notification. They send one whenever you, whenever I make a post. So uh, you'll get one. Um, if you want to participate further, you can. That's that's like participating in the community. That that does cost a little bit of money per month, but that's completely optional. Go there for the notifications. Also, if I ever get tossed off of YouTube, that's uh, the place where I'll be easily able to communicate with people who want to follow my content. So some of the stuff I say, <laughs> it's a little bit edgy from time to time. And there's always the uh, the sword of Damocles that is the YouTube ban hammer hanging over my head. So that's a, that's a great way to follow along if something weird like that happens. Or if I ever get a strike or something and I'm down for a couple of days. That being said, we're going to start catching up on these super chats. Uh, I know there were a lot of them that came in this morning, but I, I try not to go over the speak over the testimony too much because I know people want to hear what what is happening in court. And so do I. <laughs> That's the, the key thing. Uh, Lancelot says, I watched Emily and Legal Bites opinion on Dr. Karen and no one likes her or thought she was a good witness. Also, I'd send thoughts to Branca, but he's married. Um, I didn't think she was a good witness yesterday. Today, she wasn't a great witness today either, but I think the cross was weaker than it than it needed. It needed to be stronger. I mean, ultimately it did. And and really, uh, without being at the sidebar, we can't know, but it sure seems like there could have there should have been more advocacy in getting that that prior. And your honor, this is critical. It's not listed in any of her notes anywhere that this domestic abuse thing happened and it's integral to someone's opinion. I think that, and who knows what was said uh, and who know the judge, maybe the best argument was made ever. And the judge still just says no. And then they have, they have an appeal point, but that's a loser. Uh, but anyway, that, yeah. Other than that, um, that she is imminently unlikable. So that, that could play against her. Uh, I would have spent a lot more time on the bias, a lot more time. Red Rhodes, Heard is making a mockery of those of us who've actually experienced real domestic abuse. What a spoiled bad actress. Yeah, it. this is always the problem with false accusations. Assuming Amber Heard's accusations are false, I tend to believe they are right now. I'm willing to be convinced otherwise. Or at least I think that she is uh, exaggerating the abuse she sustained and mitigating the abuse she uh, doled out. Um. 
that's my personal opinion. But uh, again, I, I don't think that Amber Heard is, is what people expect when they think of domestic abuse. Uh, I don't, I don't think they expect someone who's admitted multiple times to, to hitting their partner and instigating fights. They think of, of someone who is controlled, who is submissive, who is hit despite uh, trying to avoid the violence at all times. That's kind of the, that's the image that I conjure up with it. I think that's, that's common. I think if, if that perception sticks and she doesn't live up to it, I think that's a big problem for her case. Rebecca Sanchez. I feel bad for her. Like I feel bad for uh, Azula at the end of ATLA. No doubt she's cuckoo bananas and has mental health issues, but she definitely has earned everything that's coming to her. Gino fast. I used to stay up for Letterman. Now I stay up for rackets. Hey, thank you. Jared Holbrook, Chris, Corey, and Jeremy are all uh, Arrowwoods, and I'm paying the rack to announce this pu uh, publicly. What a waste of money. So Chris, Corey, and Jeremy are all Arrowwoods. Yeah, get wrecked, scrubs. Um, ingest, nine. My dog pooped in my mom's bed. In, the de in his defense, he is 12 and declining. I guess he is part of the hashtag turd herd now. <laughs> hashtag he too. Thanks, Nick. Love what you do. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and you sent that twice. So thank you for that. I'm not, I'm not sure why, but I appreciate it. Sergio Guzman. Hello, Mr. Nose. Thank you for the coverage. I sent you a DM on Twitter. Some guy ran on stage at a Chappelle stand-up and got wrecked, both arms broken and face stomped by bouncers and Dave himself. <laughs> oh no. Uh, might be watching that tonight. That that's pretty good. Primer. Hail Nick. I hear people say that Amber's clothing and hairstyle choices are terrible, but it makes sense. She can't play up being the fragile housewife because that would fly in the face of the media's strong women narrative. But she's not dressing like a strong woman. She's dressing like a, like an effeminate man in my, like it, it, she's not, she's not coming across as a strong, confident woman in her dress to me. That's my opinion. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a fashion person. All of my lay fashion commentary is, is exactly that. But uh, to me, she just doesn't come across that way. She is uh, for, you know, for whatever it is, she's a pretty lady. And I think she could, play that up without coming in. Like she should not come in a full length ball gown or anything every day. She shouldn't look like a red carpet appearance, but prof uh, a professional, you know, uh, dress of some sort, uh, you know, a long skirt with a suit top could, could look really nice. You know, things like that. She has just not been pulling it off lately. I haven't looked at her too closely today, but yesterday, like she's in this weird tuxedo top. That was super awkward. It's like, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. That, again, this is just me rambling on. I, I have no expertise uh, in, in this at all. It's just literally my, my impressions of it. Nick is just a misogynist that wants something to look at. Yes, that is, that is probably the most accurate. Uh, no, uh, like... Assuming that's a joke, but, but taking that joke and running with it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like you. Men in particular are a sucker for, for prettier, for pretty women who look nice. Uh, you want them to look nice. I, I don't want to see Amber Heard looking like a man. I don't think that's an effective strategy for her. Um, if I'm her and if I'm her team, I want her to look like a woman who men would be angry that another man hit. That that's, that's what I would want. I want those. Uh, I want the men who are watching to empathize, not to sexualize completely different, right? I don't want her dressing slutty, but, uh, I, I would want the men to empathize with, um, with this, with this person uh, who they think should not be struck. And, and I don't think she's pulling that off at all. It's, it's weird to me, but Hey, that's me. That's me. Mirna, uh, if he hits the hammer too hard, you know, media will call him sexist and her team will object badgering the witness. Uh, badgering the witness isn't so simple. 
badgering the witness is like belligerently asking the same questions over and over, like the same question. Uh, and, and when someone doesn't know, like you do know, don't you like just really trying to drill past their under oath answers that they're given. Like you can push a little bit and prod here and there, but, but like trying to suggest to the jury that they're lying by, by, by badgering them is, is a little bit different. Uh, a W M fishing and gaming coworker question. What happens if Depp or her dies during the 10 day break? Is the trial over? Uh, their estates would likely take over, uh, would continue the case. Uh, in jury selection, are they probed for simp tendencies? Only if, only if, uh, the lawyers establish questions like that. Uh, Registoge, notice how Chu's, Chu let cross-examine witnesses talk at length for rehabilitation while Rottenborn and his cronies shut down when a witness is saying stuff they don't like, speaks to the confidence of the plaintiff and the defense. Maybe, I, I do think they should have shut this witness down more, this expert witness on her cross-examination, that she got to ramble on for long periods of time. Um, here, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is going to be just me when, when DUI guy comes back, I'll bring him back on the stream, uh, on the screen, but I am, look at me. I'm the streamer now. Uh, I will be the narcissist and have me blown up in, in, uh, not, not in the terrorist way. Desert rat thumbs up chat. Oh, and thanks for what you do. Nicker. Thank you. Brian Miller. Why is she facing Johnny's team today? Yesterday she was facing the jury. It's, it's subtle. Subtle sort of thing, right? She doesn't want to be uh, to the jury. She, this is my amateur psychology. To the jury, she probably wants to um, provide the positive answers while looking at them. Positivity towards you and me. We're positive, positive, yes and no. My camera goes on. And while I'm doing it, the positivity wants to be there. Yes, you and me. When you're saying no a whole lot and co being contradictory, don't be contradictory with the jury. To me, that's that's good amateur psychology. She maybe has better psychology. Uh, who is hotter, Doctor Muffins or the lawyer chick who's always sitting next to Depp? Make a poll. Well, that that seems a little misogynist. Let's definitely do that. Uh, most attractive person in courtroom. This is what you don't get on the Law and Crime Network, uh, right there. Um, you don't get this on the Law and Crime Network. You only get boring, stupid polls over there. Here, you get the real, the real questions. So there you go. Simps of the world unite! Hit it. That poll is up. Uh, hey, what's up, Sean? You are completely quiet hold on yeah i can't hear you are you muted yeah you're muted on the hardware side or on your end not through Streamyard. you're you're unmuted on the program but i forgot the i forgot the green one well i only have four slots on the poll unfortunately all right when when sean comes back we'll uh i'll again look this is this is me. This is about me. This this is my moment. This trial between two other very famous people is my moment. Uh, okay, next, next. Uh, Fluffy Cakes Lives uh, says, "When I was diagnosed with PTSD, I was given this test by my specialist. You don't leave any questions unanswered." Matthew Self. As an oil and gas industry inspector who has to fill out detailed reports that will always be reviewed by a third party and the possibility of litigators, if there ever happens to be an incident, this is unacceptable. Absolutely. And they, they, he kind of was getting there, but again, you have that one big box that is just nothing. And, and the event for the post-traumatic stress is just IPV by Johnny. The most generalized statement you can have. Is it all of the IPV? Is it one instance of IPV? 
Is it the bruised uh, vagina IPV? Is it the bottle incident? Is it the, uh, you know, is it is it Australia? What is it? And and to have no specificity and to not just reel on that over and over and over. Like, oh, wait. Hey, Sean, I think I hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. I got gotcha. you. Uh, welcome. Welcome back, man. How are yeah. you doing? Uh, good. I had some uh, client meetings this morning, so I had to catch up at two speed. Oh, my God. That is the – I mean, it's great for Amber, but, Jesus, that is the worst expert ever. Oh, yeah. Like, you mean not worst as in, like, worst in – you would want that person if you're Amber Heard. Yes, you, yes. You mean worst as in for credibility purposes of, of the expert witness uh, industry? <laughs> yes, yes. God, that was awful. I – I think I think you're right. This is like her moment. This is her chance to become. Uh, I don't I don't know why, but yeah. The, oh god, it was so cringe. And the, I yeah. don't understand why the judge didn't let bring up her uh, issues with Tasha or Tasha or whatever. That that was perfect. That that had been laid open. Yeah, that has to be open. But maybe maybe mm. he just said the wrong things at sidebar, or the judge <clears throat> just said no. It's too prejudicial. I mean. Well, it's prejudicial, but that's... I know. It it should yeah. be impeachment. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't matter how prejudicial it is, Judge, if we get to impeach them. Yes. Um, her, her evidentiary rulings are starting to... I'm starting to get concerned about them. Like, they're starting to... Like, that's a serious one. I think that, that is a, that's a huge one that she did allow in. Yeah. Of course, we are assuming... I mean, it's the logical reason why that would come up following that question, but we're, we're making yes. assumptions about what the, uh, what the, uh, or what the question was. Mm -hmm. We're making assumptions about what the question was. And then we, we can only assume that he made some passable argument. Yes. If, if, if like, for, well now four, right. Uh, you, me, a uh, DUI guy and, and lawyer, you know, if all four yeah. of us can come up with some basic on the fly assessment, having no knowledge of this case other than yes. what we're kind of being presented. If, if four random lawyers on YouTube can come up with something, this ex very experienced trial litigator, who's like the litigation expert from the firm, I believe uh, someone oh, was he, saying. He did a great job. And I know, I think you mentioned it. Yeah. It, it, it's never, you're never like you're on law and order, just machine gunning out questions with the, without stumble stutters or dead air. I thought he did a really good job for what he was able to do. Yeah. I mean, for the most, th that one critical element, which might not have been his fault. We don't know the conversation at sidebar, mm -hmm. but that one critical element <clears throat> is the biggest failing of his cross exam. It, the mm -hmm. problem is it was just, it's a devastating miss. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like you said though, it's just like, if there's a, you know, the ref calling it an incomplete pass versus not like sometimes out of your hands. But I, I yeah. think because Amber's next, they're gonna. I think they'll. I think she'll. She'll screw up. I think they'll get it in with her. I have a feeling. Uh, well, apparently, lots of people are getting it in with Amber. James Franco, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's great. Yes. Oh, that was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah what funny. did you think? Of, like, I've been harping on because this is my my personal tism. Like this. That blank box on the lethal violence risk uh, question. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I saw this. I saw that. Yeah. I I just feel like I would I would still be there. Like if I'm that guy, I'd be asking questions about that all day. That would be my hot tub. Oh, like while the kids are at the pool, I'm sitting in this thing waiting. Like, oh God, go play. Oh, yeah, I, I would just I keep asking questions about it. Like, so you didn't? She didn't fill that in, no. And then you know, like everything else, she didn't fill all the stuff in, no. You but you wrote in stuff for her. And I, yeah, I would have just kept on going. Like, was this your test? Were you feeling, were you deciding if you suffer from PTSD? I would have just, I mean, I would have been a big dick about it and made it seem like she had issues, but uh, yeah, no, I, there was so much, but I, I, I think they made a decision. That's probably, they don't want to harp on that because for whatever reason, like, I don't know if they wanted to come across as like them picking on her. But it's an I expert. See, so I, it's, it's an expert, so it's not like a victim. You can yeah, you can beat you, them senseless. And and you 
they opened i was i was encouraged because they opened with the bias like they're, mm-hmm. they're right there bias bias yeah. bias and of course you know what what's crazy about how witness testimony goes in front of a jury is yeah. the jury may only remember those first couple questions about bias and they may have tuned out yeah. after that we will never know but mm-hmm. uh they hit the bias i, I would have liked to see him go back to it a couple times but uh, that being said, you're establishing her as a biased, motivated person who cannot mm-hmm. see men as uh, as victims of domestic abuse and is is mm-hmm. treating people in ways that are uh, uh, purportedly consistent with that opinion. She's a monster. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's a monstrous approach <laughs> to, to psychology. Oh. That, uh, yeah. To, tr- and to I... treat her like a monster. Yeah. And. I ended up watching bits and pieces of her direct yesterday where she said, oh, I just got disregarded outright, um, Dr. Curry. You know, I, I, I would have gone down that road. Like, do you just, you completely disregarded? You found nothing informative or redeeming in her work? Because if she right. says, oh, yeah, it was complete garbage, that makes her look bad because even on a jury, they're not experts. They're like, wait, nothing was right? And they're going to say, I find that hard to believe, especially if the court picked this attorney this this psychiatrist um well and then you introduce that. into evidence you, you judge i'd like to introduce yeah. into ev- evidence exhibit z and it's just a picture of of the uh the other doctor it's like mm-hmm. so you're you're telling this lady that her, her th- <laughs> remind the jury yes one of the, <laughs> like play on play on that uh misogynistic idea that uh that the woman might be intimidated by the much better mm-hmm. looks and much younger demeanor of the other woman right like yes oh yeah i, I, I would play I mean, on the cattiness of it because i'm an asshole oh yeah I would, oh yeah you go down the mean girls road yeah and I, I think that's where you get her to admit like okay some of it was right oh okay well some of it's right now well how much of it's right um but yeah this whole where she's filling in questions for her this whole thing's sketchy and then they didn't bring it up and I wanted to ask her, you know, like, are you aware of female on male domestic violence? And if she says no, obviously that's impossible because she's lying or she's an idiot. But I'd love to hear her take on that. Because she they asked her some questions about female on male yeah. domestic or well, no, I don't think they got specific they don't really, female they, they on, focused, on male. They focused they on male uh, victims. Homose- yeah, but they she said they let her go away with the whole, oh, it's only in homosexual relationships. Yeah. It's, so, and, yeah, I think they thought they left that hanging. Right. It's like, uh, and again, uh, Peter and I were talking about this. You you go ahead. Yeah. So wait, you, you said it in your, uh, who, when was the, you said you did work yeah. for male victims of domestic violence. What was the last one? And then when she says it, you said in your deposition, you couldn't even remember the last one. But you're mm-hmm. testifying now that you suddenly can uh, on the sand remember remember the last one and it oh it just happens to fit mm-hmm. the bill. What about the one before that? Like what mm-hmm. what was it? Just uh, but but I think he's right because you know the answer is never. She's never yes. uh, she's never had a male victim with a with a female perpetrator. I guarantee she doesn't believe it happens. Yeah, and that and that was clear from when. Oh, so if you throw a bottle at somebody, like how many bottles can you throw? You know, is that reactive violence? Oh, no, that that's okay. She and did. I, I, uh, they got one really good admission there out of her. Yeah. That, she said yeah, that never uh, throwing throwing a bottle at someone is never yes, okay. Yes, exactly. Well, she okay. finally did after a minute or two. But she was initially saying like, oh, well, that's reactive violence. And he yeah. said, well, what part's reactive? Yeah. I, I, yeah there's I, nothing I in just... that story that, that says that Johnny Depp was in any way perpetrating some sort of violence, psychological or otherwise, mm-hmm. against Amber Heard. It's, yeah. He had had a couple shots of vodka. That's it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And I would have just gone further. It's like is stubbing a cigarette on somebody violence. And I would just, I would have, I would just covered all those and see what she says. Um, yeah. That, that one too. How react is that reactive violence? Yes. Is that a war crime? Are you familiar with war crimes? <laughs> yes. Putting out cigarettes on someone's face. Uh, Cause you, you can't do that in Guantanamo, ladies and gentlemen. No. You can yes. only do that in the fun black sites in Finland and Sweden. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I, I'll give him them credit, especially Johnny's team. They've got a plan, so I, I assume they've got something worked out. Um, yeah, well, I mean, Am- Amber is the 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 book, right? She's mm-hmm. the book waiting to be opened, and she yeah. has a very risky direct exam. Yes, she does. So. 
Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, again, the, the first question, uh, the first line of questioning to Amber Heard could just simply be, um, what is your experience with domestic violence? Mm -hmm. On cross, let her openly talk about it. Like, because she's already yeah. going to say all this shit against Johnny Depp you know, on direct. Uh -huh. So she's not going to introduce anything new. She said, what is your experience with domestic violence? And then when she gets done telling her story about how she grew up with all of the abuse and, and Johnny Depp say, is that your only experience with domestic violence? And then when she says yeah. yes, then you go, mm -hmm. okay, Automatically here we go. Open. Yep. What about, Oh, I think there's, yeah, I think there's so many ways. And if she says, no, it's not my only experience. Even then, the jury's going to say, "Whoa, what's going on here?" You know. So yeah, if she's if she's smart, she answers no. That still hurts her, but yeah, it's far better than her saying, you know, "Yep, this is all I've ever had dealt with." Yeah, there's there's it's almost like they should try and and maybe this is the point of their objection because they know this thing's going to they they almost should try and bring it in on direct and have her mitigate mm -hmm. minimize it straight out. But I don't I don't know if she admits to being the abuser. That's, I mean, admit to the arrest, but say that the charge. Yeah, is, I, I don't think she was ever convicted. No, I know, but I, I guess I look at it this way from a defense standpoint. Once somebody hears you got arrested for domestic violence, most people on a jury think you're a huge piece of shit. So they're gonna say, "Oh yeah, yeah well she did it," or "Oh she got off on a technicality," or "Oh she bullied her," because they can go back to immediately this doctor's testimony. Hey, sometimes does a victim try to minimize or mitigate or say, it's okay, I love you, it's no big deal, they'll drop chart. Like, you can use all that stuff, she, you know, all for PowerPoints. Like, don't would the victims try to beg with the prosecution to drop charges? Don't they agree not to testify and sabotage the, the prosecution of cases? And you can use all that to say, well, yeah, it's clear, you know, and you let that in. So I, I, they need to stay away from it. But I, I don't know if Amber's going to be smart enough to stay away from it. Bacardi herself. Batman says that uh, no, she claimed it was homophobic by the officer who happened to be gay. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, I, I think, I think they're waiting on that one. I mean, if, if she tries to claim it's homophobic, they can get have that officer be like, Oh, Hey, cause yeah, I assume that, I, that officer was deposed. I assume. I hope you'd, you'd have to think, I, I mean, I, you'd have, to I would. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tanya Mailhot. And so I hope uh, she's like the butchest lesbian ever because that would be even better. <laughs> yes. My name's Hot. Officer Stevens. <laughs> My first message was blank. <laughs> anyway, if Amber Heard calls Hughes on rebuttal, then can Johnny Depp bring up uh, prior IPV with Ta Tasia and show she lied? Thanks for all you do. Tanya, uh, Amber cannot call anyone on rebuttal. That uh, rebuttal is for the plaintiffs. Um, although. Who's Hughes? Hughes is uh, who was just on the, the expert. Oh, oh okay. Side. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, although this is a, there is a counterclaim here. Is mm -hmm. defense going to get a rebuttal? I, I think they would have to, if, there's, if they have a, if they have their own claim they're trying to prove because they have their own. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the civil stuff too well. Civil law, yeah. civil law, civil law is not real law. <laughs> It, um, it, it think, is the resolution of squabbles versus yes. the protection of people from government. And, and I do think yes. there's a distinct difference there, but, uh, but uh, it, civil law gets yeah. infinitely complicated because it of, does. because it is like uh, criminal law is all done by statute uh, effectively. I mean, there's some common law principles that you'll mm -hmm. hit on in courts, but yeah. th there are rules that are laid out on how this stuff works out. You either did this and broke the rule or you didn't do this and you didn't break mm -hmm. the rule. Civil yes. law has been building for hundreds of years through England. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, through today on all of these little, not necessarily yeah. rule breakings, but bendings and discomforts that we cause other people. Yeah. It's like in, in criminal law, like uh, you, you throw a bottle at someone and chop their finger off. It, I mean, yes. you're going, you should go to prison. Like yeah. that's just how that goes. Yeah, you don't get the cream lashes as a defense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he should have, yes. should, should have brought it up yes. earlier. Uh, okay. The DCV Titan for the love of corn and everything. Oh, so uh, to answer that question for the rule of completeness that uh, Elaine seems to misunderstand over and over. Um, but to, to answer that question, um, I, I, do not know that the defense will get a rebuttal in this case. 
the plaintiffs will get a rebuttal uh, assuming mm -hmm. time allows for it but um uh the defense would normally not get a rebuttal unless uh in the case of this counterclaim that might give them mm -hmm. the opportunity to have one so we'll see yeah I, I wonder if it'll just be they'll have to make an argument that enough claims have been presented right the DCV Titan, for the love of corn and everything holy, stop being nice to this Slaneshi learning scene and claim her skull for the throne and her blood for the blood god. Uh, and yeah. if you can bring in the prior axe by turd. Yes. Uh, oh. Unfortunately, they, they did not get them in. Jesse YKM, I'm a law student here to learn cross examination. What do you think uh, the doctor, what do you think of the doctor in the case doing a bad job? No, I think the, I think the, doctor who was just testifying did a great job for amber heard i mean i think she she mm -hmm. earned her money very yes. well she was a like she was a professional witness um she mm -hmm. answered questions uh in favor of the, the person who hired her yes um, and she didn't lose her i thought she was going to lose it a couple of times but she kept it under control yeah i i, I see that's why you've got this lady who thinks that men are abusers and women are victims. Mm -hmm. You've got a white male questioning her. A white you have male. Every opportunity to get her to lose her shit on the stand, like just push and push and push and push. Ask her if she's ever been in a uh, intimate partner violence. Like <laughs> when was the last time you personally experienced intimate partner violence? Were yeah. you the perpetrator? Have you ever felt like you yourself might have crossed the line into intimate partner violence? Have you ever struck another person? Like just push on her until mm -hmm. she's like, just can't take it anymore. Uh, have you ever wanted to hit one of your male clients? Like yes. just, <laughs> have you ever told one of your male clients to stop being a little bitch? Yes. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Stop being such a pussy. Just get, get, get under her skin. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, again, stra strategically, I think they disagreed with that approach because they didn't push her hard enough to make her pop. But yes, I think, I think it could have been valuable to do so. They also might know because those guys are the local team. I think, aren't they? Yeah. They might know we can't do that in front of this judge. Right. Right. And that, that, that's the thing we're not talking about so much, but uh, mm -hmm. people with trial experience in front of a particular judge uh, or, or in a particular circuit of court are, are going to maybe know where you, where you have to peel back a little bit. Yes. Yes. So it's very helpful to know that. Right. And, and we as online commentators from other jurisdictions can only speak in generalities. And, and if they have specific strategies around this courtroom, then, you know, we, the wisdom of those will bear out in the verdict. Uh, T cool. The real question isn't how many jurors would admit to being victims of domestic violence. It's how many jurors are realizing they're victims of domestic violence because of this trial. Yeah, could be. Could be. Henry Benton, thank you for the super chat. There's no uh, nothing attached there. I'll assume YouTube censored it because they're evil. Brian Ploss, it's a shame that you talk like experts on trials involving male domestic abuse without having anyone with actual experience from at least the victim uh, to give actual experience. So you're saying, uh, uh, so you're saying that you would like us to have a male victim of domestic violence to discuss oh. the issues, is I think what's going on. Um, Go get your wife and have her start throwing shit at you for a minute. <laughs> it's like, okay, I got, I got experience now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I typically during trial streams, I try to keep it to just lawyers, because that's kind of the areas we know, and I, I don't. I value expertise and input uh, on these subjects. However, I think there's a risk of having like expert analysis of what's going on outside of the legal portions because that expert analysis isn't available to the jury at all. Um, so I, I'm happy to talk to people on non uh, on, on shows that are not trial shows about those subjects. And we're about to have a week of no trial. So that could be a time when maybe I'll do that. I think I've got an email from someone who is, uh, who is actually an expert on this. Um, yeah, actually someone emailed me today, uh, who I think might be an expert on this. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that show. Um, I, again, it's not devaluing their input. 
but for the purposes of the trial, I prefer to have attorneys on. Now, other other people have different uh, opinions on that, and that's cool, certainly. But this is this is how I do it, and I'm stubborn in my ways. Um, Igor Slagathor says, "Do you think that?" Well, except for that umbrella guy who I had on for many shows, just because he'd been covering this so much, uh, and he's a buddy of mine, I, I trusted his uh, input and knowledge on the subject that I I didn't have. So that was there's the exception before I get called out as a as a bigot hypocrite or whatever. <laughs> Igor Slagathor, do you think this psych sees herself as Amber and is taking her defense of her personally rather than professionally? I think the psychologist saw herself as a feminist uh, defending women. I, I think oh, that's, yeah. that seemed yeah. to be pretty clear. I don't, I don't think she it matters if her. it was, it could have been Amber Heard. It could have been any, any other woman on that stand. And I think she, mm -hmm. and let me be clear on one thing. That makes her a valuable advocate and uh, possibly a, a pretty good therapist to be able to put herself in the mind of, of maybe I, I, I'm not a psychologist, but uh, certainly a valuable advocate. I don't know that makes her mm -hmm. a valuable expert. I think it really no. damages her credibility. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it makes her horrible in her. Uh, Cameron <laughs> Dragato says, can Camille and Dr. Mommy oil wrestle for our, uh, our affection? I, you know, I don't, I don't know that that's going to happen. Maybe in the week off. We'll, we'll see. Cameron Barnes, I'd imagine you'd be showing more PTSD symptoms while going through the audio recordings of your alleged abuse. The only thing I actually saw was feigned guilt. Not saying she doesn't have it, just saying it's a little odd. In Celsius, uh, I initially thought Johnny Depp's team was just being classy, but I take it back. JC, the number of missed opportunities. Where's all the piss and vinegar from yesterday during the motion to dismiss? Well, that was Benjamin Chu. There's a different attorney making that argument. So that, that could be mm -hmm. one thing. But uh, yeah, who knows what the what the strategy is on this. We can only mm -hmm. guess Darius Harvey. He seems scared slash not confident the whole time. I think that's his manner of speaking. Um, he seems mm -hmm. to be the guy that cross examines experts. I think he's done all of them so mm -hmm. far, in, or he's done the examination of all the experts so far in this case, I believe. Um, that wasn't scared at all. That was a guy who, I mean, she is a dangerous expert because she is that true believer, not just a educated person. Like you have to be very careful with your words and, there's nothing wrong with thinking them through as you're asking them again to make sure you're good based on the way your examination's going. So no, I wasn't there's a, scared. He was just doing his job. To to give you an idea of the danger of this witness, we yeah. found out from from exam and cross exam that she was not interviewed in any way. They hired her because of their prior experience with her. That she does her clinical work for free. And that half of her income is derived from her forensic psychology practice, which she tried to delineate from her testimony as only a portion yeah. of the forensic psychology. But the reason that she does forensic psychology practice, she didn't testify to being a forensic psychologist for the police or anything like that. She's mm -hmm. doing it for the purposes of, uh, of litigation primarily. And mm -hmm. so this is a person. And, and she also, they, they also, she didn't admit to it, but they also got in that she makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just doing this part of it. Yes. So what, what you need to know is that, and, and again, her clinical work she does for free because she's an angelic saint who makes probably uh, north of a million dollars a year doing If she has an office work. on Madison Avenue, yeah. Right. And her other work, the other portion of paid work that she does mm -hmm. are these speeches and ex and, and presentations towards the Bar Association uh, in Kings County, New York, for example, on domestic violence like that, that can you can infer that that's the other portion of her income. Mm -hmm. I think she said about half. So a full 100 percent of her income is advocacy about violence against women. This is a person who may not be the best expert psychologist, but is an mm -hmm. excellent expert at uh, violence against women specifically. Mm -hmm. And, and she's extremely dangerous because if you let yeah. her go, she'll do what she did yesterday. Everything is framed subtly. Yes. Men perpetrator, female victim. Mm -hmm. so. um, somebody actually, I just wanted to steampunk her ex was, you know, why are we timid about criticizing him? Um, I, there's things he could have probably done differently, but he did a 
good job. I didn't see anything glaringly bad. He didn't screw up massively. The Maybe he could have done the questioning about the DV and Amber's past differently, maybe. But he didn't do anything horrible. I mean, he didn't screw up like you watched Elaine or Rottenborn do in their cross-examinations. It was adequate. I don't think he left anything on the field unnecessarily. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, mean I thought it was okay. Him him losing that that uh, prior domestic violence thing yeah. could it be entirely not his fault. Again, he could have gone up yeah. and made a perfect argument and the judge could just make a bad ruling. We won't we mm -hmm. we don't know. We can't know. Uh, I think the other reason yeah. we might be hesitant to to be too critical of him is because uh, I've I've done exam and cross of witnesses before and like yeah. you, you you never you're not perfect. Like you just mm -hmm. you 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 do your damnedest and you uh you you try and get the right mm -hmm. result. But you know you, when you're done with it, you look back and you're like shit. I, I could have done this maybe. Might might have mm -hmm. missed something here. Could I have prodded there? So uh, mm -hmm. it's it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, for sure. Um, Lancelot says, what is this idiot doing? He's losing the case. I think that's a little dramatic. I don't think he's losing the case, but it, it would have been just really a good bullet point to get that domestic mm -hmm. violence in there. CS, the problem that I am having is that none of the symptoms she is reporting are specifically tied to IPV with Johnny. So how did she make that distinction other than one uh, perhaps arbitrary report from Amber that she connects it? Yes. And, and that is uh, another one where he kind of got this. He could have, I would have liked to see him spend more time on it personally, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, like uh, again, and that's where I go back to that blank box. You have, she's at risk of lethal violence written down. I think that's going to be left for Amber that you said, you didn't say you were in fear of lethal violence. I, I think that because they're clearing, they're making it clear. I didn't check that box. I was talking with Amber. And now she's going to have to say, yeah, right. I did not check that box. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that may be where they're going to go with it because it's more powerful from Amber than, you know, Karen. Yeah. If they can, everybody. if they can use Amber to, to pick apart the doctor's credibility and biases, like you get, mm -hmm. you get Amber to talk about all the, you know, talk about those times when you hit, you know, you're, your person just testified you were in here for it. You heard yes. the doctor. Uh, you remember your interviews with mm -hmm. the doctor and you talked about the times that you had uh, hit or struck Johnny Depp. Uh, let's mm -hmm. go through those. And then you, and then they, you, and then they could bring that doctor up on recall and say, Hey, um, because if she's subject to recall, they can call her as well. Say, yeah, hey, they, doctor, they could call her. Hey, Dr. Yeah. Hughes, Amber just told us all this stuff. Would that change your opinion? Yeah, and but I I do think that the the other the other side of this coin is that there's going to be a big final word takedown from uh from Doctor Curry. Uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna call mm -hmm. likely call her back on rebuttal to defend yes. her work for one, uh, and to point out and to just like maybe they show her test right, which has all of the boxes filled in, which has mm -hmm. all of the frequencies laid out and her to say maybe she didn't like the quality of my work because i did it correctly like, yeah yeah i'm curious yeah. to see what all that from amber like her test looked like because i know yeah. those didn't get introduced so we'll uh but we'll see i mean they if they if they bring her back as she's been sitting in the or she was sitting in the courtroom yesterday for this doctor's testimony mm -hmm. i can only imagine she's sitting there today at least for this testimony mm -hmm. but i i would think she's going to sit there for amber's testimony too because if if amber mm -hmm. gives her something that she finds inconsistent with her examination she can speak to johnny depp's team and tell them this is inconsistent you'll want to that's you know, not what she told me yeah Right. You'll want to review the notes. So you want to review this. We can point out dishonesty here. Um, you know, those, those types of things. So all of those experts are being paid to sit there. Everybody who's subject to recall mm -hmm. is still getting there per diem. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure hers is a couple grand a day. Yes. So, uh, it's, Aldrich, it's, it's a sweet gig if you can do it. Aldrich Xavier, I could really see the bias on this judge not calling bull on this witness acting beyond her scope and using three syllabled words to draw the jury. Uh, Lancelot 652 should find the coin the judge used to rule on objections. <laughs> Mo, why didn't they have her exact quote ready before asking Natasha question? 
Literally quote from yesterday's transcript. Come on. He had to know he was going to ask that. I'm sorry, but this team is pretty average for the money. Oh, like, uh, yes. <laughs> Again, going yeah. back to my before this trial started uh, statement of this, you are about to see some of the highest paid lawyers uh, in the industry. Some of the best representation you can buy prepare to be underwhelmed. That, that and, is my quote for a reason. And somebody who was complaining that we're not critiquing him, yes, that was a big fuck up. That should have been prepared. He should have had that ready, tabbed up, and like, oh, here, here you go. Um, yes, there are things they didn't do right, but that is not a, that's not a critical failure. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, he might have gone up to sidebar and said, here's the quote. Here's the quote, Your Honor. And the, the judge could have said, I don't agree that that's an impeachment. It's not a proper impeachment go sit down mm -hmm. and you can disagree with the judge all day, but you're not, if they make that ruling, you're not winning <laughs> on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a few good men. I strenuously object judge. Oh, Oh, strenuously objecting. Oh, well now I changed yes. my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Now, no, now you convince me. Uh, but yes, it, it is, it is a big mistake to not have the exact quote because the precision of the question could have changed the outcome or it could not have. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll never know. Uh, Mikkel Ninau, is the door still open for Amber's past abuse? Yeah, just not with this witness. Uh, can they ask it's Dr. Curry about it? Over. Uh, can they ask Dr. Curry about it since Dr. Quack said there was no evidence of past violence? I think they'd have a hard time asking Dr. Curry about it. Yeah. I, because this is excluded. Yeah. This is excluded pre-trial. Um the defense needs to be the ones to open the door. Now the defense in theory could ask on, on rebuttal, could ask Dr. Curry a bad question somehow uh, mm -hmm. or something like that, that that's a possibility, but it'd be really tough to introduce it through her. Oh, I was going to say this earlier when, um, when the crazy cat lady was trying to get evidence in and then, uh, and, it, and it didn't work, for example, um, and, and also using the evidence of them bringing in PowerPoints, but not, not, actually using it, but surmising that maybe they want to save that and have Dr. Curry talk about it so that it'd be a more friendly environment. Uh, but they have to get it into evidence first. I learned this in my advocacy class in law school, that if you do not get evidence in through your witness, you are, you're hand boned if the other witness has any savvy at all. And so, um, that mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the problem that they, they're facing. You you need to get someone who can uh, lay the foundation for the evidence to come in. And yeah. if you don't do that and you're trying to do it on cross, it's it's going to be really, really difficult. All she, I mean, especially in this situation, she could say, I did not do this research. I don't know her methodology. She, you know, she, as an expert, she's going to say, it'd be foolish for me to comment on a PowerPoint slide. Like, with what? That just on that alone? Yeah. Yeah. We, the jury, when a witness is starting to answer a question and an objection is stated, is the answer automatically stricken from the record? No. Does the lawyer have to ask for the answer to be stricken? Uh, if the judge doesn't say uh, disregard the answer or strike the answer, then yes, you have to ask for it. But mm -hmm. a lot of times, remember that asking for something to be stricken from the record calls attention to the thing that you're asking to be stricken yes. from the record. Yes. And and you might also get the the weird thing that happened today where the lawyer asked for the hearsay testimony to be stricken and the judge said, no, move on. So you've yep. not only called attention to it, but now it's in or like it, it's, it's also still in. So, uh, and, and you look like you look like you've asked the judge to do something. The judge said, no, no I understand her logic on that one. I don't like it, but I understand it. Well, also the hearsay testimony to be stricken. What, what was the hearsay testimony? Like, you need to maybe go up at side, but like it, it would yeah. have taken five to 10 minutes to suss out what needs to be stricken precisely from that. And well, and that, that's, that's my point. She's not going to mess around. Yeah. Uh, Davy man says, are we going solely on looks for the poll? Well, I, I worded it as most attractive person in courtroom. So you can go off of whatever you find attractive, like, you know, Dr. Muffins is winning by quite a bit currently Johnny Depp's in a, in a long shot second place with Camille Vasquez in third and Amber Heard pulling up the rear. Very, very, very bad. 
Uh, very, very poor. Um, Doug Murray rackets. Can we, the chat start a GoFundMe for the DUI guy? If Amber Heard testifying is his greatest birthday, that's sad. <laughs> we could get him a cake, some balloons, <laughs> a dog, guitar, oh. skateboard, maybe. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. Turn also, 34 I, I, tomorrow. No. Oh. Um, I did want to say, uh, I've watched your stuff before. I like your, uh, like your work, like your cross exams. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, that's literally when I started my channel about like seven or eight years ago, I, I thought my audience is mostly going to be like retired judges, law school students, and lawyers. I had no idea this had appeal to the general public. So it's unexpected where the channel has turned, but I'm very happy for it. People are eating it up, man. Uh, Aaron Dahlenberg, thanks for the donation. Scooter McDooter, can Mark Richards tell 4% of the chat to get Minecrafted? Um, listen here, chat. I know there's about 4% of you out there who think that maybe Amber Heard is the most attractive person in the courtroom. I'm going to have to disagree. And I would tell you to Minecraft yourself if you get my drift but i think if you ended up in a relationship with her she would take care of that for you okay <laughs> uh james trammell amber claimed her nose was broken there's no sign of a break who said it for her why are there no records and why is no one asking for them um they they the defense attorney uh, the plaintiff's attorney did get there a little bit he's like so there's a note Amber reported that Johnny Depp hit her and broke her nose, basically, and that mm -hmm. she went to Dr. Uh, Kipper for something. But there's no medical record that this actually happened. Mm -hmm. that, that's there. Um, and, and they've got that to use on clothes. Remember that mm -hmm. we are. This is one thing that's hard to remember with ongoing commentary in this trial. We're three weeks away or two and a half. No, over three calendar weeks away from closing arguments at this point. Um, mm -hmm. They might be able to make a big stink about something here, but the critical element of exam and cross-exam is to get the facts that will, you will use on closing to punctuate your argument. And they've got the fact now that there's no medical note. There's no medical record of this injury or any injury of Amber Heard. And they can just go up and flat out say that on close. Despite Amber Heard, claiming to be a victim of domestic violence, of frequent domestic violence. There is not a single medical record that she was injured at all by domestic violence or otherwise. Despite the fact that she has a private nurse in attendance with her at all, effectively 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You or I might have to wait to go into a doctor. To You might have to wait a week to get in, to get an appointment, maybe two weeks. Amber Heard had ready access to excellent professional medical care at any point in any day, anywhere in the world. Her doctor went with her and still not a single medical record of injury, much less injury relating from domestic violence. Like that, that fact is in the court right now and they don't need to say mm -hmm. anything about it. They have it. They can say that on quote. So uh that that uh that's there and that's the important part getting those facts in um principal potato nbc article at 1000 today webmd profile of amber heard expert witness flooded with negative reviews amid trial apparently others agreed that she isn't a great expert witness i mean the the whole trick this this just what this should tell you is that johnny depp is winning the war in public mm -hmm. like, and he, he very clearly is. Uh, that That is evident in every chat room that you can visit, uh, including the like presumptively neutral ones like Law and Crime or whatever. You go over there and you're going to see overwhelming support for Johnny Depp. Uh, the clips that do best on uh, on YouTube, the little, little short clips that are getting millions of views, those are all primarily Johnny Depp clips. I'm not really seeing a bunch of anti johnny i haven't seen any anti johnny depp clips going around um so he's he's winning the war in public he's accomplishing a big part of his goals through that so that's and that's what that review bombing which i do not condone or endorse uh personally but um no. that, that's what that should tell you 
Don't do that stuff, guys. That's something Amber would do. Uh, pretty sure that's something Amber did do. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, and they tried to get yes. permission from the court to, to do it more. And the court said, yes. yeah, no, no, you yeah. can't keep doing that. So yeah. that's great. Uh, next. Principal pondering. Doctor said she did work with men abused as children and IPA for men against men. Why did they not ask if she had supported adult men in situations where women were the offenders? Again, a place where they, they could have gone farther towards her bias. Um, personally, I would have liked to see him return to the bias between every line of questioning. Uh, just have a couple bias questions uh, set up. And then, you know, you go through one subject with them, then you with her and then you go back to her bias. And, and mm -hmm. just tie that, tie the bias into every single piece of the testimony. Uh, but it's, that's a stylistic preference that I would have preferred, but uh, you know, who knows funeral man. I think Amber's team hired the priest. So when she loses, he can stop her from levitating and vomiting on everyone. <laughs> and my sister <laughs> and my sister's still a putz. Yes. Uh, knockoff Stanley Tucci did apparently get in, in some trouble with the court for having his phone on twice yesterday. Uh, and people are suggesting that he was improperly just, uh, intimidating the court uh, court TV cameraman. I don't, I don't, I need more to say that he was intimidating, but I, it's his, as a PR guy, if you wonder why he's sitting next to the court TV people and trying to talk to the cameraman, he wants them that's to take better pictures of Amber yeah. Heard. That's his job. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if he gets disruptive, the judge should throw him out. I think that'd be great. That'd be funny. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's what he's trying to do. He's, they're really trying to reframe this thing. Have you guys noticed? Um, I've noticed that the camera that was on Amber Heard, the video camera that's on Amber Heard has moved. And, the angle and now seems it, higher now. It seems like it, well, or they're using a, an, an extra camera that comes across the uh, the podium over to her mm. and gets the table in a different way. It's like more from her side than from the front on. So yeah. I've seen that. It's kind of weird. But I wonder if, uh, you know, I, I, I do wonder if that guy has used, has uh, been working with Court TV to maybe get some better better images of her that it didn't help her today at all though i don't no. think so no i don't i don't think it's helping i'm just wondering if they're trying different strategies like okay maybe that he, he calls up the court tv guy okay maybe you can't get a better picture but can you get a less bad one like can we try that yeah, yeah. uh here you go uh sr20 shane hi nick could you say as elmo i don't know if i can um right now my voice is is kind of struggling <laughs> but uh Hey, tell the world, Johnny. Tell them I, Johnny Depp, a man. I'm a victim of domestic violence, too. <laughs> uh, by the way, I love your content, man. Uh, there you go. That was the Elmo voice. It's kind of, it's a struggle Elmo today. Uh, Andrew M., when this is all said and done, I'd love to see you interview Big Dick Richard Marks. Make it happen, sir. <laughs> I would love to interview that That would that be guy. awesome. Uh, that guy's hilarious. Um, I, and I think that guy could probably tell stories for, for millennia straight. Yeah. Like, let me tell you how we convinced, uh, George Luke or uh, Steven Spielberg to use, uh, giant boulders in temple of doom. <laughs> like, like, that was me actually. Yes. Uh, and I, I came up with the idea because I kicked a rock and it hit a frog and I was like, Oh yeah, that's terrifying for the frog. That's much smaller than the rock. <laughs> welcome back man How's what's up uh we're just we're schmoozing on the uh on the break here reading some super chats i uh i did see one thing come through a super chat that i heard you guys answer that i just wanted to just jump in real quick oh, and yeah. it's on the uh, rebuttal for a counterclaim they can only mm -hmm. have rebuttal amber i i believe and because in civil cases how it works when there's a claim and a counterclaim they can only mm -hmm. have rebuttal on their counterclaim meaning they can't come back with rebuttal with this Dr. Hughes to argue about Johnny's case in chief. So it's basically okay. if it's some expert that's going to talk about Amber's damages and they don't feel, and they feel like Johnny brought some evidence and rebuttal about those damages as the counterclaim defendant, because that's something else Johnny gets to do in his rebuttal is not just rebut his case, but also uh, defend himself as the counterclaim defendant. And then if something like that comes out, she has to stay within that scope. So a lot of it will probably be arguing 
what's within the scope of the counterclaim for it to be rebuttal. Sorry if that was confusing, but it just popped into my head when I heard you guys talk. No, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. That's uh, yes, very, very helpful, actually. Um, winning reality. I've sent super chats for weeks, tweeted, joined Discord, and locals messaged you there. 12 years of detailed experience uh, plus wow. education with exact abuse. No, you're busy, but please give this survivor a chance to join the conversation. Want to help. Uh, like I said, during trial streams, I prefer to keep it to lawyers because I'm snooty. Uh, but we're about to have a week of, uh, of testimony or uh, of no, of no court. And so there'll be ample time in there, hopefully to do something like that. I would, I would, uh, be happy to talk to you, but, uh, yeah, during during the trials, I try to keep it just lawyers. It's it's my dumb policy, but I'm sticking with it. Uh, but I appreciate that very much. Um, Warrior Biatch, Nick, my birthday is Saturday, and I will be in Minneapolis. Want to meet for dinner with my family? It would be a great birthday present. Can I get a toast to the memory of my birth mom who chose life? She passed a day before my birthday four years ago uh, oh. at... Uh, at la at least I met her. Um, yeah, a absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I don't know if I'm going to be anywhere near the cities on Saturday. I don't know what my schedule is like. Um, so I, I would have to check into that. You could certainly email me and I can see. I, I But I, I can't promise that. I have no idea what my weekend looks like. But to your mom. To your birth mom who chose life, uh, could have taken a different decision, but um, underwent underwent the trauma to her body and her life to bring you into the world, even though she would not ultimately be the one to raise you. Uh, that shows uh, a level of love and compassion that we can all aspire to, knowing your limitations, but not taking them out on someone else. I'm glad you got to meet her uh, and cheers to her peaceful passing. You're here. Okay. Blaze of ice. Uh, and by the way, if anybody in the chat thinks that's weird, um, I, I'm happy to meet with people all the time. Usually I do that around my home because that's where I am. But if people like, if, if you guys want to meet up with me and you're ever in the area of Wilmer or Spicer, Minnesota, I mean, shoot me an email. I'm happy to go to a bar, grab a drink, grab a sandwich with people, complain about the sandwich. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's perfectly acceptable to me. I'm, I'm not one of these people who's like, Oh, well, I, I, I don't talk to anyone. No, I, I love meeting with people. I love uh, hanging out and having discussions and hearing your stories. So, um, but uh, Minneapolis is, is a couple hours away from me. So that, that one's a little bit harder to, to do, but who knows? Blaze of Ice, any chance that Depp's team is waiting to bring up the lack of any medical record for when Hurt is on and for closing? Lying about all the physical violence sounds like easy impeachment for a cook such as I. Well, they've, they've got it. I mean, they've got the lack of medical record in evidence. Uh, they, they have that. They have the testimony from the person who reviewed the medical records saying, no, there, there was no medical record of it. There's just a note somewhere. So they, they have it. They can bring it up on clothes. They can harp on it all day uh, if they want. It's, it's there. Mm -hmm. That is a fact in evidence. And uh, un unless there is some medical record that for some reason hasn't been brought up yet, which is certainly, I guess, possible. Uh, oh, here we go. I should probably unmute it. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be seated. All right. Your next witness. Your Honor, we'd like to call Laura Amber Heard to the stand. All right. Amber oh, Here we go. I'll be right back, gentlemen. Seriously? Nick's out. He's like, I don't want to hear. No, no, no. He's probably we'll posting just a tweet it. or something right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. He's, he's like, he's going nuclear on this bitch. Here we he's go. Grab the good stuff. Here we go. Holy shit. Laura God can't save you now, Amber. Amber Heard is taking mm -hmm. the stand. The turd with the most. <sighs> this actually. All right, thank you. All right. History in the making, you, you guys. Yep. Yeah. This is exciting, Will you actually. Please state your name. Yes, it's Amber Laura Heard. And what is your address? I live in Yucca Valley, California. 
And how old are you, Amber? I am 36. I just celebrated. Okay. And do you have a daughter? I do. Uh, she also celebrated her birthday recently. She's one. Okay. Do you beat that daughter? And what is your profession? I am an actor. Uh, I don't like mostly. her face, like her okay. smile. Now, mm -hmm. why are you here? I am here because my ex-husband is suing me uh, for an op-ed I wrote. And how do you feel about that? I, um, I st struggle to have the words. I have PTSD. Struggle to find the words to describe how uh, painful this is. Um, this is horrible for me to sit here uh, for weeks and um, relive everything. Um, hear people that I knew, um, some oh, well, some not. Here. My ex-husband, with whom I shared a life. I don't life. know why this is relevant um, to defamation. Yeah. She's got to start crying right away. Um, Immediately. About our lives in the way like that William Shatner style delivery. Um, this has been one of the, this is the most painful and difficult thing I've ever gone through, for sure. So the abuse wasn't that bad, no. I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, yes. <laughs> exactly. Why, <laughs> compared to getting bent over a table. July of yeah. 2020, where Mr. Depp had sued the Sun newspaper and Dan Wooten. I don't know why her hair's Did covering call her that? face. Yes. Uh, and what was your level of participation in that lawsuit, in that trial? Well, I was uh, not party to that lawsuit. I was um, a witness, um, I, I suppose the primary witness, since it dealt with the truth of the relationship um, that I shared with John. Objection, legal conclusion. Ooh. And what, if any, role did you have to play with respect to, for example, witness statements and testifying? Objection, compound. I don't think for example, uh, overruled. Are they going to let her talk about the Sun case? I had to write, um, I think I gave seven witness statements um, under oath testimony. Oh, my I goodness. sat on the stand. Um, for four days, um, under mostly cross-examination. And up until this point, it was the hardest thing I had ever had to do. You can't sue someone for damages for being sued. Thank you, Amber. That, that's what yeah. she's explaining right now. I'm gonna take you back yes. and okay. you just yeah. tell the jury a little bit about the your background. This, but you can't, you can't, that can't be, that's not yeah. damages in the case. I, no, I know. Austin, Texas, I assume they're gonna talk about the damages. A small town outside of Austin that you probably haven't heard of. No one has. Um, it's called Maynard, and uh, I was raised by my mother and my father, and I grew up with a little sister, although I have a big sister as well. And your little sister's name is? Uh, her name is Whit, Whit Hurd. And how, how much of an age difference is there between the two of you? Whitney and I are about one year, I think we're 16 months apart, so right next to each other. And what did your father do for a living? My father um, broke horses and did construction. Had um, he painted houses, um, and uh, hunted and fished, but that was for fun. And what did your mom do? She worked for the state of Texas. Um, let me just, since you talked about the breaking horses, can you just tell the jury what your role is in assisting your dad on that, and what? Is it involved in breaking horses? Objection leading. Objection leading. Can you just tell me about? Oh, overruled. I mean, this is super foundational, though. Uh, I don't care if it's leading. Just got to stay on, basically. Who cares about yeah. breaking horses? I would help him. I don't know why I wouldn't have objected. Trying to paint a her as a human. Test dummy, you know, when you train a horse. Point, she has been, yes. it's like an well, ethereal being. doesn't necessarily being. like to be. The horses saw my face and um, we were treated ridden. to the barn. And, uh, she's an animal lover, there therefore there, she's likable, um, bullshit. I don't who are know. Yeah. crazy enough, Which, like my dad, to pick that as a profession, I guess. And he was really good with horses, and um, I was the son he never had. So it was my job to, you know, stay on. How does that affect what Dr. Hughes' assessment? From your father about yeah. how to react to the horses. Yep. 
Well, with training horses, um, I guess the key, the, the key things are to not show fear. <laughs> there it is. Mm -hmm. Not, mm -hmm. not show fear, be tough and calm. Fight back. Tell the jury a little bit about your educational background during those growing up years and your work experience. Uh, I, I worked uh, any job that I could from the time I was really young. I wanted to get out of Texas and do something with my life and see things and do things. Um, so I was in school and really pushed myself to, I, I just always pushed myself to um, be able to accelerate the process. I wanted to, you know, get out of school as fast as I could and I wanted to do I wanted to do more things with my life than stay in Texas. So what types of things, so where did you go to school when you were um, younger? I was a scholarship kid at a Catholic school um, growing up, uh, several different Catholic schools, but they were always in the other, you know, on the other side of town in the wealthier part of town. And um, I grew up quite um, working class and, uh, and, and thankfully with, um, you know, as long as I maintained an A average, I, uh, I, I enjoyed the benefit of a scholarship. And I did that until I realized that I could take my GED and SATs early. And I did that and placed out of school and effectively left school uh, at 16 years old, I believe. And what did you do for work during those younger years? I took any job that I could. I worked at my father's construction company, sometimes, um, you know, just administrative stuff. I mean, it was a small company. Um, was on the lookout for which actors. I answered phones and I uh, worked at a, like a modeling agency that was also, you know, um, offered photography classes, makeup classes, hair, hair and makeup classes for people that were pursuing a career in so entertainment. I'd like to qualify her as an makeup and expert. And I uh, started taking um, classes that I paid for by working there effectively as a trade. Uh, and I eventually worked there long enough to be able to pay for my headshots, which are the pictures that you use in the industry to promote yourself, you know, in, in whatever, acting, modeling, or both. And what, if any, charitable work did you do when you were still young? It started off as a, a requirement for the school I went to, and then I liked it so much, I think, because it, it meant I wasn't at home, and that was important to me. It's just to not spend time at home. Uh, and I, um, I really... I really loved meeting people. So I worked at the soup kitchen every morning before school, um, oh, during the school year uh, for about four years. She's now a homeless volunteer. Were, I didn't go on weekends, um, but on weekends I would do um, various things, worked at children's, um, like at children's uh, museums typically, because they would work with younger volunteers. Um, and mostly soup kitchens and things involving children. I worked at the, um, with, deaf kids for a while and uh yeah i really I, don't I want to scoff and roll and my eyes worked with because you know this is all good stuff but it feels to tough to learn to yeah uh -huh. she taught blind penguins how Actually, to read sanskrit and relevance you want overruled um well i i taught myself how to sign the basic female lawyer that's been sitting language. next to johnny's and hindu cross then i um I pursued it. I audited a uh, a translate um, a course at the community college, which I ended up going to um, to get out of high school early um, later on. But I would audit classes. The teachers never wanted to kick the you know random twelve year old out of their class, I suppose. So I remarkably was able to audit. Uh, um, I think the majority of two semesters, and that's also helped helped me learn. <laughs> So how did you end up in Los Angeles? I use, I met, I did a, I did a small job in Texas uh, where I played a part in a movie and the actor in the movie that I was playing opposite had an agent visiting him from LA 
and I met her on set and she said that she had heard about me from another bit part I did. You know, I was taking jobs in Austin for really anything to be an extra, to apply my, I did makeup once. I, um, you know, nothing, no job was too small or, you know, for me. So I, I put myself out there and she had heard about me and she said, I have heard about you in this town and I'd love to meet you in LA if you're ever out in LA. And I was like, um, well, when can I come? Uh, and she made an appointment with me for the following week. And I used all but $180 or something um, to get out there. And that's, I landed, I didn't know anyone. Uh, I was 17. Um, and I, I've effectively ever been there ever since, I suppose. So when you arrived in Hollywood, please tell the jury what you did to get moving there, get going. I beat the first man I, I saw. I uh, went to every audition, every casting, every meeting, every appointment that I could. I I put myself out there. I didn't have a car um, because those were expensive. Um, so I took the bus around L.A. It was before smartphones. I had a, a Thomas guide in my bag and a change of tank tops. Um, not that it mattered, but I went to about 10 auditions sometimes a day and would change clothes if I needed to in the back of, you know, the bus I was taking. And I just hustled from one audition to the other. And uh, I got a bit part on one thing and then I got a bit part on another thing. And then eventually my roles kind of became more important or bigger and um, it's been a slow progression, I guess, since then, you know, of doing either tiny bit parts in bigger movies or doing, you know, larger roles in movies that no one would see. And I guess, you know, it still is kind of like that. So I'm going to ask you to go from 2002 to 2009. If you could just describe for the jury a little bit what types of parts you had, um, I think, They've indicated they didn't. You you have not been well known here uh, in this courtroom compared to Mr. Depp. So perhaps just take them through a little bit of that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I did small roles in big films like you know, Zombie Land and um, Pineapple Express and uh, movies that were well known. Um, my first one was Friday Night Lights, uh, but again, I had small roles in those bigger films. And then I would do larger roles in um, kind of s smaller films. Like I brought, um, I did a project where I was the lead in a John Carpenter film and he came out of retirement to do that. And that's kind of the, how it was in terms of my career for those initial, that, that first initial 10 years or so. It was just going from slightly bigger role to slightly bigger role and just working my butt off. So I'm going to take you up to 2008. Did there come a time that you auditioned for The Rum Diary? Yes, I, um, I auditioned for that in about 2008, I believe. Please describe for the jury your experience in auditioning for The Rum Diary. Well, I auditioned a few times, which is common in my work. You know, um, you get a call back, as they say. And I think I had um, at least one, maybe two callbacks with the director and then I got a call saying that Johnny, who at the time was, I think I knew that he was producing it as well, um, was doing a project that was something very personal to him. He was reprising his role as his late friend, Hunter S. Thompson, and it was a very important project to him and that he wanted to meet me in person. Um, I thought I would be going for maybe an audition, um, but it was just a meeting. I went to his office um, and, and met with him for a few hours. And what did you talk about during that, those few hours? We talked about books and music, poetry. Um, we like a lot of the same, we liked a lot of the same stuff, you know, obscure writers and, you know, interesting books and pieces of poetry that I haven't heard anybody else reference or know or like and he um notice how she still has pleasant well memories when she's remembering 
you know, I think I left the office with a few books that he gave me and we spent the whole time just pay attention that she still has a positive care about and memory was, about Johnny. I was so general. surprised that somebody, you know, I knew who he was. I wasn't familiar, you know, I wasn't a fan of his work. I wasn't familiar with him, but I knew who he was, you know, he's mo one of the most famous people in the world. So it was all, already a weird thing to go and get called into his office and, you know, I'm a no name actor. I was 22, I think. And I thought it was unusual. It was weird because he's, he was twice my age and he's this world famous actor. And here we are getting along about obscure books and weird, you know, old blues. And we just, it was, mm. I thought it was remarkable. You know, I just hadn't really, I thought it was unusual and remarkable. I left there just feeling like, wow. So did there come a time that you learned that you were going to be cast for the role in The Rum Diary? Yes. A few days later, my agent um, said that Johnny's going to call you. We gave him your phone number. I was like, oh, okay. And shortly after, I my phone rings, I pick it up, and I hear, you know, this like deep voice on the other line and he said you got the you know you, you're it kid you're the you're the dream hunter wrote this part and you're the dream you're it kid like, and amazed. please describe for the jury what that means what what was the rome diary and this hunter thompson what what was the concept here and what role were you playing um well it was my understanding that he was bringing to life his late friend and what he told me was that this character is supposed to be the dream woman like the dream american dream and um so i knew what he meant he indicated to me when he told me i got the role that i was i was that you know that he i was the dream kid that's what he said so did there come a time that you started filming The Rum Diary? Yes, I'm not quite sure how much. I think we started filming in maybe March of 2009. And where did you film The Rum Diary? We shot it in Puerto Rico. Um, and describe, if you can, the events of the filming and your interactions with Mr. Depp during that time. It was a bit surreal, you know, uh, filming in a place like Puerto Rico, it was beautiful. Um, it takes place in the fifties. So everything really looked beautiful and, you know, cars and clothing, the music, it was just, it was a very colorful, um, shoot in general. I, I, I couldn't have asked for, you know, a, a, a better scenario. I, I, I was on, on film. I mean, I was on set, um, reading my books and every, occasionally Johnny would talk to me and then he started to be really kind to me, um, like more open with me, uh, when we'd have hot days filming, it, you know, there'd be this big SUV pull up and a security guard would kind of usher me into this car and it would have the AC blasting and I'd be <laughs> sitting in the back of the SUV, just thinking what a strange experience the whole thing was. And, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of interaction on set until um, until we did a scene that involved um, kissing. We, we had a kissing scene and it didn't feel like a normal, it didn't feel like a normal scene anymore. It felt, a, it felt more real. There are certain things that you do in the job to um, be professional, like when you have to do that sort of scene and you don't like, you, <laughs> you don't use your tongue if you can't, if you can avoid it. There's certain things that you do to just maintain a certain line. And it just felt like those lines were blurred. I mean, he grabbed my face and pulled me into him and really kissed me. Did, but we were filming a scene. Did he use his tongue? Yes. 
Did your birthday, did you celebrate your birthday while you were in Puerto Rico? Sexual abuse has started already. I did. I celebrated, I think, maybe my 23rd birthday there. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp do for your birthday? Well, we were already kind of talking about books and poetry and things like that. He gave me a few really beautiful poetry books. And uh, he gave me a bicycle, uh, like a vintage bicycle, because at the time I was riding around in, on a bike and I had a lot of time off since I was a smaller role in the movie. And um, yeah, I think that was it. Okay. Now, did there come a time that um, you ended up visiting him in his trailer? Yes. Um, I think there was a, we would hang out if, you know, after or in between scenes or in between setups, we often were, you know, talking about things and would continue the conversation into the trailer, um, often with the director, Bruce Robinson was his name. Um, and then at one point we, we talk about wine. It's another thing that Johnny and I shared in common, a love for uh, wine, red wine. Uh, and we were talking about um, a kind of wine that I enjoyed. And I was, you know, going on about how great this bargain wine was. And I didn't understand, you know, how much more sophisticated Johnny's taste in wine was. Um, so I was going on about the virtues of Malbec or something. And I brought him a bottle of this wine and I set it down. And at some point I'm, I'm, I'm going back to get back to set. And he kind of kicked his like, you know, foot up in the air and basically kind of lifted the back of my bathrobe up. And can I just stop you there? Why were you wearing a bathrobe? Because I was doing a scene. Um, it was a period film. So it uh, took place in the fifties. And so I had all of this um, old undergarments that are for that time era um, on. And the scene involved me changing. Um, so I had all the, the costume on. And he kind of picked up the back of my robe with his boot. And I kind of turned around and like laughed, like giggled, you know. Um, it, I wasn't, I didn't feel... I just didn't I, like I didn't know what to make of it at the time and it just kind of I just kind of giggled and batted it away playfully and uh he he kind of playfully kind of pushed me down on this like bed sofa uh that was in his trailer just playful um and flirtatious and he said uh yum and he kind of like lifted up his eyebrows like that and I just giggled, laughed it off, kind of batted him away and, you know, moved on and went back to set. And were you in a relationship at that time? I was. Okay. And was Mr. Depp in a relationship at that time? That was my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and did anything else of significant happen during that, that time period while you were filming with Mr. Depp, other than what you've told us? We just had this, you know, it, it was a friendship, a flirtatious thing. We, I felt chemistry. I felt this other thing that was that went beyond the pale of my job, for sure. Uh, Johnny clearly felt that way about me. Had indicated to me that that's how he felt in many different ways, and but at the same time, that's you know, we were both in relationships and it is a job and, you know, uh, it was intimidating. And I, I just remember feeling kind of intimidated and a little nervous about that. And I also was in a relationship. So we went our separate ways and we didn't hear, I didn't hear from him for a long time. And, and that's so approximately how long were you filming in Puerto Rico for the Rome Diary? A few months is my best. All guess. right. And when you left Puerto Rico in the filming, when is the next time that you had any contact from Mr. Depp? And contact could include a anything, uh, uh, communications, written communications, uh, as well as uh, telephone or otherwise. Uh, we had no contact until uh, Johnny called me on the phone one day and I was driving and he invited me over to his home in, in California, I mean, 
Beverly Hills. And I, um, I mean, it was out of the blue. I didn't even have his phone number. Um, so I was, it was quite unexpected. Uh, he called me a second time, but I, I don't think we actually connected or we didn't stay on the phone um, because we didn't, well, yeah, we didn't really speak. But the first time was the only time I actually spoke to him and he invited me over to his house uh, under kind of the, he said that, you know, we could get Bruce, who was the director, uh, to come over, something about the movie, but it was clearly not about the movie, if you know what I mean. It was, so I said, um, I, I said, my friends are in town uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm busy with that and kind of hung up feeling really startled, you know, that didn't know what else to do. What if any gifts did Mr. Depp send you during that time period after you filmed The Rum Diary? Uh, he sent me several gifts. He sent me a beautiful dress, uh, one that I wore in the movie uh, with a beautiful handwritten note. So this is to Daddy. make him look like a cheater, I assume. And, um, and a groomer. Made a reference to the dress being wrapping paper. Uh, he sent me a few gorgeous, expensive, what I can only assume are expensive, um, collectible books, uh, items. Uh, and then when I was away filming on a different, you know, a different job, he uh, attempted or he did send me um, some guitars. Uh, I know one delivery. I was informed about one delivery um, and I, my partner at the time uh, intercepted the, the, the attempt to, to deliver and called me immediately and said, what should I do? And I said, well, send, I said, send it back. And she did. And she indicated that there was at the time that there was another one that had already previously attempted delivery and it was also rejected. We sent it, I sent it back because I wasn't there and I wouldn't have accepted it anyway. Okay. Did there come a time that you ended up having to go on a press tour for the rum diary? We, I got a call for the rum diary press tour in the fall of 2011. So that's close to two, two and a half years after you filmed? Um, I'm an actress, not a mathematician <laughs> for a reason, but roughly, yes. Okay. And um, could you please describe for the jury what a press tour is? Just explain it to them. Well, you take a, a movie once it's completed, and uh, if it doesn't have distribution, you, as part of the promotion of that movie, you go to these I gotta go. You kids have fun. places, normally cities um, like London or New York, and you do press events in those cities to kind of promote the film, and you go to place to place talking about the film. And so you were then called to participate in the press tour for The Rum Diary? Uh, yes, I had um, just, I was going, I had just finished going through the process of uh, separation with my former partner and I was moving and going through that. And I got a phone call saying, remember that movie you did in Puerto Rico? Well, they want you for the press tour. And I said, well, perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> and we did that, I think, October, late October, 2011. So describe for the jury your interactions with Mr. Depp during the press tour. Well, on the first stop of the, well, first stop, the beginning of the tour was Los Angeles, where we both li lived, and we did a press day, normal press day, and then at the end of it, uh, I was invited uh, by Johnny to come up to his room to have a drink with uh, him and the director uh, of the film. And I went up to the room um, to see both him and Bruce. Um, but as soon as I got there, Johnny said Bruce wasn't going to make it. So I stayed. Johnny and I started talking. Uh, I told, he asked me about my relationship. I said, well, you know, I'm going, I'm going through it. Um, I'm going through this the separation right now. And it's been, you know, rough couple of months, but that's normal. And he said, well, that's same with, same with me. You know, it's been, I, I can't remember exactly how long he said it had been, but that he had split from the mother of his kids and uh, said that he understood. All right. And then what happened next? 
Uh, then we drank red wine and continued to talk. And the talking became us, you know, reconnect, you know, it was like reconnection was almost instant. Um, it was just chemistry. It's hard to explain that, but we sat on the couch and we talked and, um, you know, it, it felt like there was, uh, it, it felt like there was an electricity to the room. And that's how I felt when I was alone with him anyway. And it was instant again. I was like, whoa. So uh, on the on the couch, we, we talked, finished some wine, and then I got up and left. And as I went to leave, uh, he grabbed both sides of my face, uh, similar to what he did in, in, in Puerto Rico when we were filming that, that scene. And he kissed me and I kissed him back. And what happened next with respect to any relationship with Mr. Depp? Well, then we fell in love. Uh, we went on this press tour and we went, it, it was, it was a beautiful and strange time. You know, we went from, we we're flying from one, not together, but, you know, going from one city to the next, Europe, um, New York, Los Angeles, as I said, and we're just traveling around talking about this movie that we did together, that we participated in together. And we were falling in love. I mean, it was just, you know, at the first dinner in London, he sat me next to me, you know, he produced the film and was a part of controlling the film and was responsible for different things. And I was as a small, as an actor, having a small part in it. And um, we went on this press tour and I think in London, he sat, had me sat next to him at this, at a dinner. And then we ended up spending the night together in my hotel room. And for the rest of the press tour, we were, it, it was on, I, I'll put it that way. All right. And how long approximately did the press tour go? I don't know exactly how long it lasted. Uh, I think, you know, there were uh, press engagements in this city for a few days and then another city for a few days. And then there was a break and then, then there was another press opportunity, I believe. So it was kind of spread out over, a, over maybe a month, if I'm guessing. So when you returned to Los Angeles, what, if anything, took place with any relationship with Mr. Depp? Well, once we were back from the press tour, you know, we had this, you know, whirlwind romance kind of just in these like beautiful places all over and we're falling in love and not able to really show it because um, he wasn't, that the world didn't know about the split between he and his former partner. And of course, um, as a woman, I was like, is that troubling? You know, and I, I'd ask him, he, no, you know, he swore to me that they hadn't even shared a bed for a year and that they were, but they were protecting the kids and not publicizing it. So, or not making it known to the press. And so we kind of had to be a little bit under the radar, not a little bit, we had to be really under the radar um, because as Johnny pointed out that the world would blame me um, and call me a homewrecker, uh, even though I had nothing to do with it. So we were secretly dating and then, you know, it was, it was, it was beautiful. It, it was, um, I felt like this man knew me and saw me in a way that no one else had. I felt he understood me. I felt he understood where I came from. I, I felt like, I felt that like when I was around Johnny, I felt like the most beautiful person in the whole world. You know, it made me feel seen, made me feel like a million dollars. There it is. And there's the tears. That kind of feeling where, you know, he just, lavish gifts and lavish expressions of love and how he had never met a woman like me. I mean, I remember he took the foil off of the, off of this uh, bottle and put it on my ring finger. And I had only been with him like 
days, you know, or maybe, maybe it was weeks at the time. Yeah, it was probably about a few weeks, but it just felt very intense. But we weren't doing normal life stuff. We weren't like stuck in traffic with each other. We weren't going to the grocery store and doing life. We were like hiding in these places around the world. He had a lot of, he has so many homes. And so we'd be in one of those homes or my home at the time. And it would be like a bubble, like a, in, like we were in this little bubble of secrecy and it felt like a warm glow, as we would say, just music and, and, and the kind of books that we both loved and poetry that we both knew by heart. And it, it was, um, it felt like an, it felt like a, a dream. It felt like absolute magic. So while you're dating, I take it you're dating at this point, right? Yeah, sorry, you're falling, while clear, you're fall, yeah. falling in love, you're also dating, right? Okay. Yes. Um, did there come a time early on that you ended up going to his Bahamas Island? Yes. Uh, so shortly after, you know, we, I think started dating October of 2011. And, um, the, you know, as I mentioned, this bubble, you know, where he'd come over to my house and not leave for like three or four days, you know, just smoking cigarettes and playing music and reading poetry to me or painting me or, you know, just talking. Um, and then he would disappear. And there'd be just no way to get a hold of him, no way to contact him. At, at first, I didn't really think anything about it, but um, he disappeared uh, at one point uh, and then came back and said he was dealing with something, some health issue, and uh, would I join him in the Bahamas? And that I think that's when I learned he had an island and I was on a trip with a, a friend of mine in Spain and I, it was for the holidays and I kind of rerouted my trip to, so I could come and land in LA instead of, I mean, landing in Miami instead of LA so I could go and meet him on the island. And he had uh, Keenan come and meet me on that, um, on that trip, like in, in Miami, I get off one plane, get onto another and go and join him on his private island. And uh, I noticed he was drinking Bex and uh, tea, like lots of tea, like lots of tea. Uh, and I, I didn't foolishly think anything of it. Um, I just, you know, thought the man really seriously, I missed it before, but really, really loves tea. And we had this beautiful, I don't know, less than a week probably, um, trip in, in the Bahamas, a private island, beautiful sandy beaches. Scene, it's a scene that you just don't, I had never experienced anything like that. Um, it was a beautiful place, a beautiful time. And uh, we fell, um, I fell head over heels in love with this man. So after the Bahamas, I assume you came back and we're talking, are we talking now early 2012? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So what were you doing work-wise while you were dating him in this early stage? What I always do, I would be taking job to job to job, going from one movie to the next, um, mostly not filming in LA. So weirdly you live in LA to, to go shoot on location in other places. So when I was in town, we would go back to this bubble, like insular bubble with beautiful, blaringly loud music and no one else and nothing else. And then, you know, I'd, I'd go off to, to work. Uh, and so would he, uh, well, eventually, yeah, he left to shoot Lone Ranger, I believe. Okay. Now, We've heard a little bit about Lone Ranger, and that that's about mid-2012, is that right, when he was shooting that? That sounds right, mid-2012, yeah. And were you shooting anything at that time? I was shooting... Um, machete I, Kills? I believe I was shooting Machete Kills in Austin. <laughs> Let me help you. Robert Rodriguez film that shot in Austin. Machete Kills. Uh, but, uh, you know... 
I think Johnny was shooting and then having some time off and there was just a lot of travel, a lot of movement. So, and, and so what, if any visiting did you do with Johnny while he was on his set for Lone Ranger and where was he? Well, he was filming all over the Southwest. And at some point I came to visit him and uh, on one of his locations and I would stay in the house because I couldn't really, you know, occasionally I would leave with his security guards, but I, I didn't really have anything to do but visit him for a few days. So I'd cook and um, kind of stay at home and paint or whatever and wait for him to come home and have dinner ready. And Line. Um, it, it was, we would have these little bubbles, but kind of scattered throughout the Southwest and as he was filming. And at the time, um, Johnny had, you know, when I first arrived at one of these locations, it was the first time that Johnny told me that he had had a health issue. Uh, something with his liver and that he wasn't um, it, that's why he was not drinking. Um, he was drinking a lot of tea, like a lot of tea. Okay. And so I, we've heard a little testimony about boots. What, if anything, did you do to help Johnny with his boots? Well, I mean, I, um, I suppose that I took off his boots uh, and it made an impression on him. And I would, I was happy to, you know, anything I can do to, to show love. Um, certainly how I felt about him. But if he wanted to take off his own boots, he, he certainly could. Well, we have testimony that says otherwise. Knives but. during that time period. Objection leading. Sustained. What if any? Uh, what if any? What if any did knives you did you buy <laughs> with respect to knives during the time period you were with him in the Lone Ranger? Objection. Leading. What if anything? Overruled. This is so I, bad. That's not a rule of evidence. For turquoise, and oh uh, that eventually, you know, being in the Southwest, it happens really. It can happen really quickly. I also too, really love turquoise, and he has a. Um, he loved knives. He loves a lot of things. When Johnny loves things, he does it a lot and lots of it. Uh, so he had these daggers that he had given me that really, they were beautiful in design. Um, and uh, they're, you know, long curved daggers. Uh, and he just talked a lot about knives, had a knife and gun collection, uh, and was quite proud of it. And at some point, I, I don't really remember exactly when it was, but I, at some point I picked up a, what I thought was a really beautiful turquoise handled um, knife. And I uh, had it engraved with a saying um, that Johnny would say to me all the time, uh, which I, you know, thought was romantic as funny as that is to say now. Oh, yes, yes. And, and all right. Because it was romantic, you dope. Uh, until death, uh, um, hasta la muerte in Spanish. Now, by the time that you're visiting Mr. Depp in uh, during his shooting of uh, Lone Ranger in the June through August 2012 timeframe, uh, what, if any, relationship has he developed with your family? Oh, well, starting really early on, Johnny was so kind so generous to my family, but especially, especially my mom and dad, he just really, he met my dad and, um, my dad's a big personality. Uh, he's a, he's a rowdy guy. And, uh, Johnny just all of a sudden, I had never noticed, you know, Johnny have a Southern, all of a sudden Johnny had the Southern accent and was really like buddy buddies with him. And they really seemed to get along very well. They're, you know, just like instantly he was giving my dad gifts. He gave him guns. He gave him knives. They had this, I mean, Johnny just really just showered my dad and my dad's a, a working man, you know, um, salt of the earth guy. And he was just like, you know, floored. He's getting all these amazing gifts and being invited to come on to these locations. And, you know, Johnny's this big movie star. And my dad was just like, you know, I think my dad would have married him himself, not <laughs> if I hadn't. And he just instantly, he gave my mom jewelry, brought her out to come and see me while I was visiting Johnny uh, on, on 
Lone Ranger in, in some part of the Southwest. I think it was Colorado. She was we like a giddy. beautiful turquoise necklace. And I mean, that, yeah, they were, they were definitely um, taken by him. And what if any uh, relationship had Mr. Depp forged with Whitney by this time, your sister? I believe the relationship came a little bit later as they got to know each other, but he did the same thing with my sister and just really found um, a bond with, with them that, you know, was, it, it was, you know, he, he tried to do anything and everything he could for, to make them feel like special and they did. You know, my mom, my dad, and my sister. What a jerk. What, if any, relationships did Mr. Depp form with your friends? Well, Johnny's so generous and can be this really, like, overly generous almost, you know, like showering you with mm. gifts and compliments and just, I mean, like, you know, and he has access and means to really you know, we're not talking about giving you a card. We're like talking about just these like extravagant trips or these extravagant gestures. And it's, it's a lot. And he's, he did that with my close friends. I'm relied heavily on, on my, on my friends and had a pretty strong support network with them. And he really just showered, showered them with generosity and love and light and invited them to come to these exotic places and flew people here and there. I mean, it's incredibly, incredibly generous. So going back to the filming of the Lone Ranger, what if anything did Mr. Depp do with respect to a horse? Junction leading. What if anything? <laughs> I can't ah! believe that that's her response. Johnny at one point insisted on buying me a horse. And I, of course, said that's extravagant. I, there's no way I could accept that. That's how, also how will I take care of that? Or, you know, it just, it's just so extravagant. So I said, no, of course, eventually he got a hold of my dad and worked it out with my dad, like what kind of horse to buy. And then showed me a picture of this horse and said, it's yours. It's, it's, it's coming here. I think it was being transported and he said you know that he had my dad's help on it picking out and you know I grew up on, on my dad's horses I grew up riding with my dad so you know I, I went I had I had um, resisted for I think about like a month and a half or something of him kind of bringing up the idea and me saying that's a crazy gift no thank you no that's incredibly generous but I couldn't accept to all of a sudden I had a cult so, um, so let's, let's take you through 2012 and your relationship. Could you just describe for the jury a little bit about how that relationship evolved through 2012? It was always intense. It didn't become intense. It almost started that way. Um, I... When I was with him, you know, I, I felt that electricity in my body. I felt like butterflies. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't see straight practically. It was just, you know, head, I was head over heels in love. And he felt like that to me. He, he felt like he was also in love. I didn't feel like he was faking it. I, I felt like we, what we had, it felt like to me at the time, there wasn't any love like that, you know? I mean, and then uh, he would, he started to kind of do this thing again where he'd disappear and he'd come back. And I remember it, at first he would, when he first started drinking, I didn't really think much of it, but all of a sudden the behavior kind of started to go in line with the disappearing and he'd come back and he'd just be different. And I, I'd say something and 
he'd accuse me of saying something else or saying it in a different way, or he would, um, it was mostly my clothing at the time and me working. That was the main thing. Like I found myself trying to not talk about auditions because it was, it would change the mood so dramatically. I, I tried to, you know, he would make these comments about, you know, whoring myself out, but do so in the context of me acting, you know, and he would talk about other actresses who do my role in this way where they were worthless whores, that they were, they were, you know, uh, uh, fame hungry, you know, expletive, expletive, you know, just this, the point is it felt were they? Really dirty to be an actor. It, never mind that he was one. It was more, it was dirty that I wanted to do this job that I wanted to do. And I was doing the job of an actress. It was everything I, every time I was walking out of the house, I, he would ask me, that's really what you're wearing, kid? Oh, I see. You know, I, I wore a dress to an event once and I felt, I felt beautiful in it. <laughs> like stupid as that sounds, I, I felt pretty in this dress I picked out and I showed him, I don't know, of, you know, it's a carpet, it's red carpet. So it's like, she's, you know, seems like she's publicized and I kind of thought it was weird. He didn't, wasn't saying anything about it. You know, I left him to go do this red carpet and I sounds like she's speaking at the feminist like, voice. Did you awards. see the, the, you know, the event I went to, you know, basically I just, I, I, I felt pretty and I thought like, did you see that? You know, I wanted him to say something about that, I guess. And, um, and he said, well, this is after he stopped talking to me for some time. Didn't tell me why, when he came back in my life, he wouldn't explain why he was acting different. He just kind of acted mad at me and know what I had done wrong. And when I brought up the dress and the event, because it was an event to support a charity I was really involved with at the time. And the ACLU who would help me write a novel. I said, you, you know, did you see that thing? And he said, yeah, yeah. I think the whole world saw that kid. That's how they'll remember you. That's how the world will remember you. And I was like, oh, what come event? on. Let's I mean, get it's the picture. like, but it, you know, I felt, I felt good in it. I felt good. And he said, yeah, kid, that's what you're putting out there in the world. No one will ever forget that. And that's all they'll see you as. That's what you, that's what you wanted. That's what you were going for. You know, my dress was slow cut. I get it, slow cut. But I felt, um, you know, uh, I felt really embarrassed and horrible that I wore that. I felt like, how could I have made that choice? Of course, you know, he's right. You know, you start to believe it. I, I started to believe that, that that made a lot of sense, of course. Um, but it didn't stop with that. It was just, it, it was clothing in general. And when I walked out of the house, it was never, it wasn't just like, hey, you're not allowed to wear that. It was like, Oh, really? That's what you're wearing. No wonder. No wonder you get cast in those roles. No wonder you, 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 that's what you are. That's what you're making it. And it just, it, you know, it continued. And then, then there would be a blow up. And at first it was just to throw something, smash some things. Um, it loves to smash up a, a place, an apartment furniture. That's what it started with. Um, glass threw glass at me. And I remember it was summer. Um, and he just threw this glass across the kitchen and I, it didn't hit me, but I, I, it shattered behind me. And I remember thinking that it like very easily could have hit me and that calling me a whore. All, it didn't start with using the whore word. It was just comments, um, until it would escalate. And then I started to notice the pattern of escalation where he'd throw glass or turn over a table. Then he would hit the wall and then he'd hit the wall really close to my head. You know, like when I'm standing there, you know, just hit the wall screaming at me. Um, but then he would um, disappear and get clean and sober. And he'd come back and tell me that he, had, he was done drinking. He was over it. It's done, cleaned himself up. He had done it before and he'd do it again. And then he would go back to this like wonderful, like almost like just unreal, 
like but real, you know, but un, unbelievably nice, sensitive, kind, warm, generous, interesting, funny man that I loved. And he would make me feel so loved. Like it would get, I would feel so distant from that thing that was so scary that I would not even recognize it too. And that was how, you know, our relationship kind of started to develop in that first year. Do you remember the first time that he physically hit you? Yes. Please tell the jury about it. <laughs> You're so, it's seemingly so stupid. So in, like insignificant. I will never forget it. I changed. It changed my life. I was sitting on the couch and we were talking, we were having a, like a normal conversation, you know, just, there was no fighting, no argument, nothing. And um, he was drinking and um, I didn't realize at the time, but I think he was using cocaine because it was like, there was a jar, a jar of cocaine out on the table. I, re I realize that sounds weird, but it's like, a, an actual vintage jar of it. But I didn't see him use it at the time, so I, I didn't really factor that in. I just, you know, he's drinking and we're talking and it's there's music playing and he's smoking cigarettes and we're sitting next to each other on the couch. And I ask him about the tattoo he has on his arm. And to me, it just looked like um, black marks. It, like, I didn't know, I didn't know what it said. It just looked like muddled, faded tattoo that was hard to read. And I said, what, is it, what does it say? And he um, said, it says, why no? It says, why no? And I, um, I didn't see that. I thought he was joking uh, because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. It was that simple. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking. And slapped me across the face. And I laughed. I laughed because I, I didn't know what else to do. I thought this must be a joke. This must be a joke because I'm, I didn't know what was going on. I just stared at him kind of laughing still thinking that he was going to start laughing too, to tell me it was a joke, but he didn't. He said, you think it's so funny. You think it's funny, bitch. You think you're a funny bitch. And he slapped me again. Like I was clear. It wasn't a joke anymore. And I stopped laughing, but I didn't know what else to do. You know, you, I, you, I didn't know what to do. You, you would think you, you would have a response, but I, as a woman, had never been hit like that. I'm an adult, and I'm sitting next to the man I love, and he slapped, he slapped me for no reason, it seemed like, and I missed the point. It was that stupid. Second slap, I know he's not kidding, but I don't know what else to say or do, so I just stared at him. I didn't say anything. I didn't react. I didn't move or freak out or defend myself or, or say, what are you doing? You're crazy. I just stared at him because I didn't know what else to do. And he slaps me one more time. Hard. Machine gun slappy. I lose my balance. Um, at this point, we're sitting next to each other at the, on the edge of the couch. Or I was on the edge of the couch. And I'm all of a sudden realizing that the worst thing has just happened to me that could possibly happen to you. I realized that I, I wish so much he had said he was joking because it didn't hurt, didn't physically hurt me. I was just sitting there on this, on, on this carpet, looking at the dirty carpet, wondering how I wound up on this carpet and why I was never, why I never noticed that the carpet was so filthy before. And I just didn't know what else to do. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to react. I just, sat there thinking, how much time do I have to I figure out what I need to do? Because God, did he just hit me? 
no, I didn't want to leave him. I didn't want this to be the reality. I didn't want to have the man I was in love with. I know you don't come back from that. You know, I'm not dumb. I, I know you can't hit a woman. I, you, you can't hit a man. You can't hit anyone. You can't just hit somebody because they... Doors open. I knew there was no... I knew it was yep. wrong. And I knew that Game I had to folks. leave him. And that's what broke my heart. Because I didn't want to leave him. I thought if I got up out of that room, I would leave the best thing that ever happened to me. And I wish I could sit here and say I stood up and I walked out of that house and I drew a line and I stood up for myself. I was just looking at the dirty carpet trying to will myself to get up, to walk out of the door because I knew I needed to. And I really slowly, I stood up and I remember looking at him in the eye and just looking at him, frankly, because I didn't know what else to do. And before I know it, he starts crying. And, you know, like I, I had never seen an adult man cry. Um, I didn't even really see my dad cry at my grandma's funeral. You know, it's just, it's weird. And he's crying. Uh, tears, I mean, just falling out of his eyes. He gets down on his knees and he grabs my hands and he's touching my hands and he's saying to me, I will never do that again. I'm so sorry, baby. I, I put the fucker away. I thought I killed it and it's it's done. I, 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 I thought I put the monster away and I've done it before. It's done. But on his knees and I... I, I, I didn't have words. I didn't know what to say. I just remember thinking that it was just, he was crying. He seemed so sorry, but I knew I couldn't just forgive him because I, right? I mean, it will happen again, no? You know, like I've seen the health class videos like everyone else. And I got up in my car. I walked to the car. I didn't say anything. I made a point to not say oh it's okay or anything like that i just didn't say anything i got up i went to the car i sat in my car and i felt like i sat there forever i didn't want to turn the key i just leaned my head up against the window and i remember just seeing my breath on the on the windshield you know on the the glass of the uh, of the window of the door just seeing my breath and trying to will myself to have the strength to know what I should do in this moment because I was heartbroken. The dirty carpet and the breath on the window are like time and eventually... details from a book. Like if you're yes, writing I was a book, try to put people there. Yep. This is an actor trying to be a writer. Yes. I was going to talk about this on break. I don't know. I, I don't remember what I did when I got home. I don't remember. Um, I went to Jesus my therapist. expression is hilarious. I told her. Objection hearsay. I, I'll sustain it as to what she may have told her. I um, went home and I, um, a few days Camille. later, uh, started getting, I actually don't know how many days later, but I started getting calls and texts from Johnny, um, you know, apologizing profusely. I mean, just, you know, he was, he said, I'd rather cut my hand off than ever lay it on you or lay it upon you, you know, and he had that way of talking. It felt like poetry. <sighs> And uh, he showed up to talk, like with the understanding that, you know, he understood I could never forgive him and it was done. So I felt kind of safe and saying, okay, let's have a talk or, you know, yeah, we'll talk. I, I, I think, I, you know, I, I know I just wanted to see him and he comes over, brings me gifts. He brought me a couple cases actually of that Vega Cecilia wine that we've heard about. Um, which is a really nice, expensive wine that I could never, at that time, dream of affording, you know. Um, 
and we talk and he tells me that he had put this thing away that I could trust him that it would never happen again of course it would never happen again that he put this thing away he had killed the fucker is what he said to me over and over again I put that fucker away I killed that monster I'll kill it again it's done I'll never lay a hand on you again and I wanted to believe him so I chose to So then the next the time, though. Yeah, I did. I I believed it. But, you know, I believed it wouldn't. I believed that there was a line he wouldn't cross again, and that was it. And so you stayed. Correct. You stayed in the relationship. Yes. Okay. So, just, is this a good time? You no, want to it, it, break? keep going. It's a little longer. Please. Okay. Thank you. But we so really want the could dramatic you pause. Please describe for the jury. Is um, now a good time, Your Honor? The evolution of your relationship after that time with Johnny. Um, I don't. <clears throat> I don't know how long it was until. Things got bad again. Um, he did start drinking again. Uh, I remember the, it was, it was almost, you know, he start drinking again, the disappearing thing, the coming back. He'd come back at ran, like in the middle of the night to my house. Um, and he, it would be unclear to me, you know, drunk often really drunk and kind of accusing me, but not directly. It was nothing was very direct. It was a lot of accusations, but they were bailed. Um, you know, what I was wearing, who I was with, why didn't I text him back? I didn't text him back right away. Um, when I, this is when I was at my place in Orange. Sometimes he would show up to catch me. I, like that was a pretext for coming over. And by the time, by the time we were done talking, would be, I would have thought I had convinced him that I loved him, that I only loved him, there was no one else. And then that we were back in an upswing and would go back to good, loving, like sick, romantic love, like kind, sweet, velvety love. <laughs> and then it would be something I said, why did you say it that way? Um, you know, if I had to leave for an audition, I could guarantee that when I, not couldn't guarantee, but two of those in a row. And when I came back, he was angry at me, you know, and I wouldn't necessarily know why. And then he started accusing me of things probably like at first it was indirect and then it became really direct. Then the punching uh, of the walls next to my head was, which is a constant at the, at, at that time in 2012 when he was drinking. Um, eventually that became a, uh, you know, him accusing me of cheating, I'd defend myself. I'd say, you know, that's crazy. You're wrong. I would never, the normal things. And uh, it would escalate to the point where he would push me or shove me down and then I'd get back up. And this happened several times. That's why it's not more specific, I suppose. <laughs> it, when I'd get back up, I'd, I'd, I'd look him in the eye, I made a point of getting up and looking him in the eye. It's my way of defending myself at that time. And I'd look at him and he'd ask me if I wanted to go again and shove me back down. Eventually it just hit me. Uh, remember he hit me in the face when I denied having an affair with my ex-wife, my ex-partner at the time. Um, and he said he had proof, I denied it. And I was walking out of the bedroom slapped me across the face. I turned to look at him and I said, Johnny, you hit me. You just hit me. I'm going to ask you, Michelle, can you bring up 1783, please? What number again, please? It's got I'm a big sorry, credibility what, issue. Defendants 1783. Yeah, she doesn't remember anything of, now. Well, none of this testimony 
sounds at all like Johnny Depp from anywhere else in the trial. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize this? Let's experience? see what recordings they have, because I think that Let's could give it. her good context if the recordings make sense for what she's saying. Uh, it's a picture of my face with um, a note that Johnny left uh, for me by the coffee. Typically is where we'd leave notes like that. And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? It was one of those scenes. I um, One of those? One of those scenes? I, as embarrassing just, as it sounds now, I don't know which scene this came from. That's not embarrassing. That's it not credible. It quickly, fast. And is this from the rum diary? Uh, let, let me ask it a different way. I'm thank just, you. Um, is this a picture of you? Is it a an accurate picture of you? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 1783. Your Honor, we have an objection. May we okay, approach? Sure. Yeah, like what's this picture from? Yeah. yeah you're, she just explained all, Honor, that story. Right. Yeah, she says it's we object to the up. foundation of this. She has not yeah. properly laid foundation for this picture. Is it an yeah. accurate picture of you? Okay, well, then we have relevance issues. Or if they've even agreed that this picture can come in, fine. But you're not going to explain a story about how you got slapped in the face, then put a picture where your face is red and say that's where he slapped you in the face when you're obviously not laying that foundation for this mm -hmm. picture, which right. is clearly what they're trying to do. Yeah. But uh, but but going back to what I was saying, and, and when we get to the break, I really want to talk about that novel thing that you mentioned because uh, – as a writer, <laughs> it's, a, oh, it's, it's exactly what you do. Like the, so I want to talk about that. But um, what she's doing here for me has huge problems because this is a problem with her going so early. Only people who have laid evidence down in this trial are Johnny Depp's team. Now she's testifying yeah. to something that is completely atypical of the character that's been built over the over the entire testimony and they mm -hmm. haven't had anyone else come on and break that down. They haven't had anyone else come in and say, yeah, Johnny could lose his temper. Yeah. Johnny could do this. Yeah. But if she Will doesn't get out in front of this, I think it's bad for the jury. The uh, some of the cycles you had with they Mr. Lost Depp in picture. through 2012. Ooh. So Good. at least for now, in 2012, the violence yeah. was pretty, you know, relative to what it became pretty, you know, slapping, uh, backhanding. Well, it went from, it went from this eggshell kind of, you're walking on eggshells, nothing you're doing is kind of right, but you don't know what you're doing wrong. Uh, and then I was doing something wrong clearly, but they were, it was unclear within the scope of an argument what I was defending myself against. So it would shift from, uh, a rumor he had heard that I was with um, my a friend or I had been photographed standing too close to a male person. That was a person I'd have a, a and if I had had something with and I was lying to him about and the, it would be egg, it would be eggshells, accusations, accusations, and then he would explode. Um, it started with throwing things, um, uh, destroying the property and screaming at me. I remember the screaming at me was the worst because I kind of always felt like I had done, you know, I had to defend myself. I had to tell him I, so he didn't think these things were true. And sometimes, you know, I, he would shift accusations while I'm trying to dispel one accusation, he'd start another one and um, nothing I could do to calm him down. It seemed like I'd walk away and that would make it worse. Um, I remember he, in my apartment in Orange, it would, he would grab me by the hair or he'd grab me by the arm, base, pull me into him, scream at me that way. He'd smash things around me. Then he would smash things very close to me. And then he would just hit me. And it started with slapping um, and it got to be like repetitive slaps where he'd hold me um, in a position and slap me multiple times um, in a row. Uh, then it would be, you know, eventually I later would either push him off of me or I'd try to hit his hands away from me. I tried it not in 2012 so much. At that time, I was mostly, um, my defense was, uh, I'd go some other place. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how to describe that. It was, you I'd hadn't been through your training else. montage I'd yet. Stand up, look at him, try to stand up to him that way. A later, I adopted other kind of, strategies to deal with it but at the time in 2012 it was he'd have this blowout and then he would leave 
disappear and he would, I'd be committed to not talking to him. I'm done with this relationship. I can't take it anymore. I said that so many times. And then he'd come back clean and sober, telling me either he had a chip. He didn't have any chips, but he would say, I've, I've gone to meetings. I have a, I have a, a sober companion now. Um, I'm doing this program. I'm reading this. I'm doing this. And he was done with drugs and alcohol for good this time. And he'd come back in my life. And with the combination of him being sober and having gone through this horrible thing where I felt like my heart ripped out of my chest, you know, like a relationship ending is hard, I think, for anyone. So but she popped the bottle of wine and did a line. Circumstances really painful. And so when he'd come back, it would almost That's feel the like evidence, a right? She just a kept using to that. And it would feel great. And we would be good again. And it would be he'd be extra nice and extra apologetic and extra loving. And it would just, and we'd be back in, in, in the good bubble, the warm glow. And eventually it'd get bored. And then I'd see him drinking again. Um, When I started to get upset, noticing the pattern um, of the violence going with the, the drinking and drugs, then I, then he started sneaking it. So it became less clear and I'd have to look for clues as to what he was on. So I just knew how to react, you know, uh, Johnny on speed is very different from Johnny on opiates and uh, Johnny on opiates, very different from <sighs> Adderall and, 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 and cocaine Johnny, which is very different from Quaaludes Johnny. But I, I had to get good at paying attention to the different versions of him. Uh, 2012, I was, in, um, multiple personalities I was in the beginning of stages of this, just learning these patterns. I was just learning that drinking kind of correlated with the violence. I've never heard of him doing PCP Did in this you trial. confide in anyone about these issues you were having? I think she Objection can say. Here, she, say? I, I think she can say if she told anybody. As long as she doesn't say what she Yeah, said. she can. Right, right. Not a, did, yeah. did you con what did you did say? You yeah. Tell anyone. Yes, I did. Who did you tell? I told my therapist. I told. I eventually told my mom. And let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Defendant's Exhibit One Fifty. One Fifty One Five Zero. Your Honor, I'm going to object on hearsay. Yeah. Camille is all over the hearsay objections today, and and she's getting ones that a lot of people miss. Mm -hmm. uh, the the objection she's doing is objections to Amber Heard's own statements that are made out of court, which uh, people often go, well, if, if it's the person referring to their own statements, then that's not hearsay. But but that still mm -hmm. is. That's still Absolutely. hearsay. Yes. It's it's one of the most common statement. ones when a party's on the stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. and you have to keep those out because it's basically bolstering her own testimony to say contemporaneously, I told this person or I said this to Johnny mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. But I mean, this this is always a funny thing, right? A lawyer objects to hearsay. No, 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 no. no. Just did she tell anyone? Well, yes, I did tell someone. I told my therapist. Okay, now we're going to get to the statements that you told them. It's like, well, this yeah. is my objection, Judge. This, these are mm -hmm. the statements now. Right, and I mean, I, uh, I know the the fact of her telling someone is is not effectively hearsay, but I mean the the what she told the person is implied in the fact that she told someone, right? Like, because yes. if did you tell someone that you were being beat? Uh, well, yes, I did. Right, and also <laughs> she she indicated what she was saying beforehand. All this stuff happened, and she told somebody that. Yeah, I mean, and, and honestly, you don't really need it. Like, okay, I saw Johnny do speed. I saw him do open. She doesn't need to say, "I told my mm -hmm. sister that I saw him do." Like, I mean, I think it's a little excessive, except for the fact that they're just trying to get out the fact that what she is going to say she told her therapist is true, and it proves it's true because she told her therapist. That's what you yeah. can't get into because that is hearsay. In my opinion. Welcome, Andrea. What up? Uh, your mic's muted on your end. <laughs> I, I love the whole issue of uh, PCP now being introduced into the story. Well, that's why I think they were specific on Johnny's side as to what drugs they were going to admit to. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I also think you admit to all these drugs. If you did a little PCP, I'm, you probably would admit that too. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably a prude when it comes to drugs, but they're just, they're just massive, uh, leaps in this story for me. And, and I think the defense needed to build the bridge to these, to these little islands of Johnny Depp. Cause the story is not consistent with him slapping her multiple times uh, in this way uh, the, there's there's no consistency of, of of her going or him having uh, any of these sobriety meetings like I don't remember that being testified to at all She's, now suddenly he's going to sobriety meetings it's like either the either the plaintiffs or cross would want that in earlier yes. she's creating a burden for herself she is just creating uh -huh. this bigger burden to prove Johnny is the monster from the texts when we've just heard four weeks of what a great guy he is and we saw him on the stand for four days to make our own assessment, which to me is night and day with how it's starting for her, in my opinion. Anyway, hi, Andrea. How are you? Hi, Nick. <laughs> my Welcome. defaults don't Why like your channel, I guess. No. Did you decide to confide in your mother about the issues you were having with Mr. Depp? I... I think I, I felt safe talking to my mom because I knew that she understood these dynamics and she my wouldn't dad me her. for staying with him, for loving him, even though um, this was happening and was happening to me. I knew she would understand. And when approximately did you start confiding in your mom about your issues with Mr. Depp and the physical abuse? Objection, hearsay, compound. I sustained the compound. When did you start confiding in your mother about the abuse you were, be, were, were suffering at the hands same of Same objection, Depp? Your Honor. Same question. Yeah. I, well, I still think it's hearsay. Why is it? it is. I was confiding in her son. from the and very leading. beginning about the abuse, the psychological abuse, the kind of control, the disappearing, the not knowing where he was, the then he'd come back and sometimes in the middle of the night, the constant accusations, like that sort of thing. I, I talked to her about probably from the very beginning. Um, the fact that I was secret, I had to hide. Um, I couldn't tell any of my friends that I was with him for a long time because he told me everyone would blame me for the split with him and his partner. So I had to kind of sneak around and kind of get brought to his house, typically in, in a secretive way. And then he'd come to mine in a secretive way. And it was just all very, you know, so very isolating. And uh, I, I confided with her at the very beginning on that sort of thing. And then later opened up to her about some of the violence. I did it gently, you know, um, first I just wanted to have someone to talk to about how scary it was, you know, he, his, the rage and the, the uncontrolled violence, the rage that this man had and why it Objection, was Objection, your honor, hearsay. May we approach this? Okay. She's on it. She's on it. And the, the objections here, I think, are really important because uh, Amber Heard is is writing a novel uh, yes. effectively from the stand. She's she's weaving a story and breaking up that story is important. She's going on these long expositions about everything. And uh, and I think I think dropping an axe in the middle of them is good. Uh, I think she, they mm -hmm. should be objecting um, with some frequency whenever she's doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take our 15-minute afternoon break. So please do not talk about the case. We're doing the outside research. Okay, we'll see you soon. Are we going to get an argument at break? Oh, we might. It was just a weird, abrupt time uh, for the judge to do that. It's so obviously self-serving hearsay and, and hiding behind her dead mother that they haven't been able to depose. Mm-hmm. Right. And Andrew, did you hear the entire testimony? And you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys, okay? All right, so we'll be back. Let's make it 3.45, okay? 3 Thank you. Thank you.
Me? Did I hear it? Yes. Yes, I heard it. Did she talk about abuse from her dad in the beginning or no? <laughs> right, where she said she'd never been hit, uh, never been hit before. Um, and how great yeah. her dad was, salt of the earth, working man, that yeah, Johnny tried yeah, to mimic the with his southern and stuff. Act. While she's telling the forensic psych that dad, you know, was apparently some type of terrible child beater. Yeah, that was, I was, I was seriously asking Nick in the mm -hmm. chat, I was like, did I miss the abuse from her dad part? And then when she talked to her mom, because she could understand staying with him, I thought she was going to say, because my dad was abusive. I keep waiting for it. It's like that movie where the guy lost his arm and you kept waiting for him to put it in the, the elevator door or whatever. You're like, keep waiting for it. And it's not coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, Nick, she... talk talk to us about about the novel. Let's hear what you have oh, to say about it. No, <laughs> you you brought up the point. She did these two things, and these are uh, what I call shortcuts and exposition. Um, you have you have a limited amount of attention span, and unless you're George R. R. Martin and you're going to write like seven million words about embroidery, what you do <laughs> is you you cheat your way into the reader's emotions. So she, she noticed the dirty floor, that dirty floor. I never noticed it before. Well, suddenly Johnny goes from this pristine, uh, very, very wealthy, refined man talking about uh, old novels and poetry and blues to he's got a dirty floor, more like what you would picture in a, in a wife beater's house, right? Disheveled, disassociated, uh, not on top of his life and disorganized. She did that. And the other one was that I could see my breath on the window, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, it's cold. It's not actually cold. We have no, where do they live? Fucking They're Los, in Los Angeles. Angeles. Like, you know what gives it away? <laughs> I'm sitting on the floor thinking, am I going to get out of here? I'm sitting in my car and I see the, my breath and I'm thinking, what am I going to do next? It has nothing to do with the breath on the window. It has nothing to do with the details mm -hmm. that she's adding, but these are unimpeachable details. Right. Nobody's right. going to be able to prove that the floor is not dirty. But if she would have said he hit me with that lion ring and I had an imprint of a lion on my cheek and I took a picture of it, those details you can confirm. Mm -hmm. And it's like those are damning. When you give those kind of details, you're screwed if somebody can impeach you with those. But when you say the floor is dirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, these are narrative devices that you use. When you when you have, uh, especially in a short story, a poem, uh, a, 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 they do this in commercials all the time. You take little things that bring people to a spot in their own memory, so you don't have to explain where the person is, where the actor mm -hmm. is in in the scene. And and she did that to me. That that's like again, that's my own personal thing, but it is destroying her credibility for me. I believe yeah. none of those stories that involve those cheap details. Also, I mean, to me, this is, uh, I mentioned it sounds like an actor trying to do writing. She's smarter and a little more creative than Jesse Smollett, because I will give her credit. That's a lot more of a descriptive picture. But she's trying to paint this in a way that she thinks a domestic violence victim would describe stuff. And it's never like that when any of the trials I've ever had, you know, on either side of the aisle the victims never talk about like, oh, the floor was so dirty. They talk about, oh my God, I thought he was going to kill me and I was in fear of my life and he just kept hitting me. There's never this artistic uh, monologue that goes on. It's and like the a commercial for a domestic violence shelter that mm -hmm. runs on TV. Like you yes. can you can get help, right? Like yes. that's how it feels to me. The, the condemnation from her entire side on drug and alcohol abuse is mind boggling to me. Uh, yeah. Did they not hear all the testimony and evidence that she spent tens of thousands of dollars a month on wine and did cocaine? And she admits to her therapist of mixing MDMA and mushrooms and her medication and alcohol and puking because she was so wasted and laughing when her therapist warned her against that. Like that's, that's objectively an evidence and to condemn it. Like that's when the monster would come out is a miss to me, but yeah. I, I don't know how the jury's viewing it obviously, but to me, all I'm thinking about is, are you really going to condemn cocaine and alcohol? Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's going to mock him for uh, going to meetings. And, oh, he, he never got a chip. Well, did you ever go to AA or NA? Yeah. It sounds like you like using drugs or alcohol. And she'd probably say, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm not addicted. I know when to stop. I just well, do he it to get her. over my abuse when I party with yeah. my friends to try to feel better. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> he, he asked her. He's like, will you quit with me? Will you help me? And she said, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, why would I do that? Why would I do that? She says. It's really yeah. not uncommon. I've had friends try to quit and mm -hmm. you know their wives are like, well, I don't want to stop drinking wine. I don't have a problem, which again, mm -hmm. their own prerogative. But I mean, 
I, I just don't think that she should be so condemning of something that she also partakes in. Obviously, she's going to say to a much lesser extent. Yes. Um, but I'm sorry, but sommelier level three is not to yeah. a lesser extent. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, so wait, as you're traumatized and suffering PTSD over the rabid alcoholism of your partner, yeah. you go, you go become a Somali. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go to bartender school. <laughs> that was, that was a glorious little detail uh, from mm -hmm. there. Um, Andrew, what, what did you think of the uh, cross of uh, Dr. Karen? Oh God, what a shit show. What an absolute shit show. I'm disgusted at the, the, the quality of the lawyering that was on display there. Um, just completely un underperformed in, in every, every way imaginable. Um, did nothing to undermine the basis of her opinion, despite having abundant evidence to be able to do that. Um, did nothing to try to flip the script on her. You know, she, she described all these categories of abuse. There's so much opportunity mm -hmm. to present the evidence of Amber Heard engaging in these activities, in the audio recordings, in the text messages, all of that type of thing. Perfect opportunity to square that with Amber as being the abuser. Never went down that road. I was disgusted by this performance. He used one. And it was really effective, the one that he used. So I don't know why he didn't use other ones. I actually, I liked his personality. I think he's kind of mm -hmm. calm with the witness, but you can see how that can flip the other way in a trial. And everybody's complaining about Rotten, Born, and Elaine for cutting off witnesses. This judge lets you cut off witnesses. So these yeah. out-of-town lawyers need to get with it and say, you know, cut these witnesses off. This is not how you do it wherever you're from. Cut these witnesses off. Get the answer you want. Say that's not the question you asked. Um... I don't know if I would be quite as harsh as you were, but I do agree that he missed tons of opportunities, tons of opportunities. I thought he missed. Um, and I thought he got some good shots. The worst one we've kind of been talking about is not getting into that open door of the prior domestic violence, which it seemed like the judge was going to allow him to. He asked one question, got a bad answer, then asked to approach mm -hmm. and like asked the judge for help. I guess that that was the biggest miss for me. That was a big miss. And there were just, there are other things that he left on the table, given that she had indicated she reviewed all of these audios. She reviewed the text messages. She reviewed the emails. Johnny has text messages with Amber Heard's mother talking about her abusing him. He's got text messages with her sister talking about Amber Heard abusing him. He's got text messages with his security where he's begging them to come and get him because she won't stop hitting him. All of these things could have been on the table and he just left them there. It's almost like sometimes they don't want it to take too long or something. I, I, like I would, you could take two days with that witness going through all these things because she said she, her, uh, Amber, is always the victim and he, him, Johnny yeah. is always the abuser. So you, you <laughs> they, she opened the door to all of that. Exactly what you just said. He, they could have gone through the entire trial with her based yes. on her testimony. And I'm sympathetic to the use of time, but when you're prioritizing her freaking PowerPoint presentation over this actual substantive evidence, you know, that, that undermines her opinion, um, that to me, you can't justify that. You just can't justify that. Well, and, and remember that they they prioritize the PowerPoint presentation only for admission and then no follow up, which like I've I've speculated maybe they're gonna have uh, Dr. Curry talk about it or something on rebuttal, but still it was it was awkward and it took ten minutes uh, of of time to get this thing in for. For nothing. Yeah, and like, I mean, and that's also really setting up a, a, a big, a big hurdle for them in terms of just getting to rebuttal at all. You know, we have a limited time frame here. We don't know how much he's going to have left to be able to both, you know, effectively cross-examine Amber Heard's witnesses and still be able to put on rebuttal, rebuttal evidence. Um, he's already got some very high priority witnesses that he's got to call in rebuttal. Um, Jennifer Howell being like front, front and center on that. Um, but, but now, you know, we're adding to sort of the must haves with more from Dr. Curry and it's just very concerning from a time management standpoint. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, so I, I I think we are all in agreement that the door should have been opened on cross of the uh, the doctor. But do you yeah. think that when she said uh, 
I know you can't hit a woman that that opens the door for, for full on impeachment. I think so. All I, all I can think of for why the judge isn't letting this in is just the fact that it was an arrest and not a conviction. And we do know that um, Tazia Van Ree made subsequent statements where she said, oh, no, you know, that's not what happened. It was the cop that was a, was a misogynist and was homophobic and stuff. Um, so she may have made a determination that there's not enough there to find that this prior incident happened. I really can't think of any other possible justification for why that door wouldn't have been opened. But so the only, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, but now we've got, I mean, none of Johnny's were ever result in an arrest. Number one, I, 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 if I were Johnny's attorneys, I would counter that by saying there's never been an arrest for Johnny. And also we have these experts now, both Dr. Curry and Dr. Hughes would say, well, of course, Tish is going to say, oh, nothing happened. It was all a misunderstanding. That's what sure. victims do. So I think the door has been completely open. The foundation's been set. I think they're ready yeah. to, they can go for it. I think, Nick, it's a good last straw on the camel's back. But usually when we talk about opening a door to something as damning as this, at least in my experience, it's got to be pretty clear. And when you say something like you can't hit a woman, I think you can say that and it can be true. And you can also have hit a woman in the past, kind of how she's explaining it. You can't hit a woman. You can't come back from that. But what you can't do is say, I evaluated somebody psychologically. And one of the things I took into account is no history of hitting people yeah. when there is, in fact, a history of hitting people. That yeah. to me is hook, line and sinker, because that's now damning evidence that we all know is a lie. That's really what you want to keep out in trial. You want to yeah. keep out things that are just categorically, verifiably false. And right. you can't hit a woman. You can't come back from that. That's true whether you've hit a woman or not. But I have nothing in my past, as Amber heard, is just false. And that's what you want to correct in the interest of justice. That's why, in my opinion, it should just come in. Or they should yeah. at least be saying, you've been accused in the past from other people. How about at least that? Or yeah. if they if they want to say that's the change of the story, be like, you, you guys say cops showed up to investigate Johnny beating you. Cops have shown up to investigate you beating someone, right? And leave it at that. You know, at well, least this is something a that's the truth. And this is about accusations that are presumptively mm -hmm. or, well, uh, arguably false. So, well, you've been falsely accused yourself of domestic violence, haven't you? <laughs> How did that make you feel? <laughs> well, and, and the point that I've seen some people make that I think is very legitimate is when I think it was Richard Marx was on the stand and he made some comment about how, oh, I had no reason, you know, to know about Johnny being violent. And they're allowed to bring up this pending civil suit that this guy Rocky Brooks, you know, has, has brought against him. So that that was enough to open the door there. But Multiple like you're saying, lawsuits for Johnny yeah, brought in. And, and, and but like you're saying now, then with the expert saying specifically, I relied on her not having the history of abuse. Okay, let the expert explain why she discounted this, why she doesn't consider it credible, or maybe, you know, nobody brought this piece of information to her attention. All of those things are extremely important for evaluating the basis of her opinion. And that's that's what you said earlier, Peter, is that it's it's maybe worse if she or it might be the best way to have a come about is that she didn't tell the expert about that allegation of domestic abuse, because then you get to without being a dick to the expert, invalidate her entire evaluation by saying you didn't you you couldn't have made this determination. You didn't have the evidence. And now uh, it, that would that would completely change the idea that that she was never, uh, never a perpetrator of domestic abuse. Right. Like it. Absolutely. It, it gives yeah. it gives us now. I don't think she'd take the step out. I think she'd say, oh, my analysis is the same, but of course, of course. <laughs> because she's committed to the cause. <laughs> But yeah, yeah it's uh, this, it, that's a very common thing to happen with experts. That's why a lot of sides argue the garbage in, garbage out method. Yes. Because if you can find one thing they don't know or that's different on their report, then all of their analysis is wrong. All of their diagnosis are wrong. In our cases with back injuries, radiculopathy, pain down the leg. Oh, well, the client said she never had it before. So it had to happen in this accident surgery. And then we find a record from three years ago. She complained of radiculopathy. If nobody told the doctor, now it's a lot harder to prove where it happened. Same exact thing here. You bring one thing in that changes the analysis and it's all garbage out on the other side. So that, that happens. And I think juries do buy that and understand that. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll have to see where it goes. Um, let me see. Uh, Merrick Kaladziak, Zijak, that's a fucking Eastern European name. If I've ever seen one, uh, <laughs> says in a crazy cat lady's voice question to Andrea. <laughs> Are there any simps in your life? And if not, would you accept one? And then in Camille's <laughs> voice, 
Objection compound in crazy cat lady's voice. What, if any, simps are in your life and would you accept them? <laughs> yeah, how is this what, what if any uh, excuse for getting around the, the leading question? That's hey, just law ridiculous. clerk in the back, get this judge a bench brief on what, if any, and how that does not change whether or not a question is leading. Like, the only thing I can say, though, is that both sides have been doing that for the past several days. And, and, yeah. Now that the judge has let that in, if she Correct. suddenly is like, well, no, the magic words don't work for you or work for you, but not for them. That's that's where a problem comes in. But it, it was a stupid thing to let in. I've been bitching about it the whole time. We we had uh, the same thing happen in the Curtis Reeves uh, popcorn shooter trial down in Florida. They would just say agree or disagree. <laughs> and it's like that is a I mean, that's still a leading question. Like can agree be. or it disagree. This guy's an asshole, isn't he? I said yeah. agree or disagree. They actually said that. It was like, that doesn't make it not a leading question. But in that courthouse, there is a bench brief. That's why I mentioned it. On yes or no answers are not necessarily uh, leading. It has to have the answer suggested in the question. And you can only answer yes or only answer no, not have both sides. So that actually is in, has been in that that courthouse in that courtroom. Um, so, so that is, you know, why they do the agree or disagree thing there. Although that doesn't matter. There's no magic words that make something not leading. It can still be leading no matter what you say in the beginning of it. Um, the, the embarrassing part to me as a lawyer is that's her legal argument in response to a proper hearsay objection or whatever leading objection is. What if any, it's like, <laughs> no, that that's was... not how it works. <laughs> yeah. The, the proper is, is the question does not suggest the answer because yeah. th she has multiple options to answer. I didn't there suggest the answer in the question, judge. Yeah. It's, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It's so what, a, what a, what a disaster. Uh, <laughs> it's been pretty boring. Like uh, the whole lead up and how they fell in love was incredibly boring. Maybe that's just me, but now we're getting into the abuse, which is the interesting part because is she going to build this mountain of he's a monster that she now has to prove? And it seems like that's the way they're going instead of taking the simple defense, which I think is their best legal way to win. Um, but I'm glad we're finally getting into stuff because it was it was getting boring there for the beginning. Well, so this morning uh, I, I was on with Alita and I have a $50 bet with uh, with Nick the lawyer on uh, actual Nate. liquid tears. And I have to say, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm sitting at that you point. You almost won a that bet in under five minutes. In there, not a drop. <laughs> when they start yeah, blinking that, a lot, that's what happens. Her, uh, <laughs> yeah, her, her, her cry <laughs> modes are not strong. No tears no. produced there. And she's out of them in seconds. I mean, mm -hmm. to, to me, it, I know there are people like that, but it looks deceptive. It looks manipulative. And, she's and had I, almost right, 15, for the jury? 15, yes, 15 okay, years to absorb this advice from Johnny Depp about learning to be still. And she still hasn't learned it. She's still overacting. Yeah. Seth the Ballin stated that she wrote the article. Well, case over. <laughs> we know she did that. And we know it's about Johnny Depp. Uh, Darius Harvey. Oh, God, she's one year older than me. Kiwi Kel E says, uh, Amber, my ex-husband is suing me for an op-ed I wrote. She just testified she wrote it, so she is responsible for its content, uh, not the ACLU. Um... Next, Carts, three minutes into her being on the stand and she slipped up in the to saying the op-ed I wrote. A lot of people are la are, are latching onto that. I mean, that's going to come out either way. An it, important thing is she's definitely going hard into the sexual violence, so I think the jury's more likely to believe and connect that headline to her now based on mm -hmm. this testimony. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Please be seated. Your next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Amber, I'm going to take you up to March of 2013. Um, can you describe your relationship with Mr. Depp during that month? And we'll start there. I remember um, that was after a period of uh, really, some, it was after a period of some peace and then um, he, in sobriety, Johnny was sober. Um, drinking Becks. And my uh, dad, uh, who was struggling with alcohol um, and 
drug addiction at the time had fallen off the wagon. And, and I remember he said, why don't we send it? I want to send a picture to you, to your dad of support. Cause uh, yeah, my sister was upset with my dad. Um, and so uh, he poured a shot and, um, and, and, and kind of, said, let's take a picture. Uh, I don't, I don't drink spirits, but I, I, I know that, you know, I kind of held up in that picture. It's kind of eerie because I just think it's bizarre. He had broken this long period of sobriety that I thought was going to be the, the end of him drinking forever. I <sighs> sounds foolish now, but I, you know, held up this kind of glass with him and we sent the picture to my dad because it, <laughs> You know, I didn't know what else to do. And I remember thinking it was weird that he was drinking. And um, and then the month got really crazy from that point on. It was um, a bit of um, a revolving door of accusations. Uh, he was accusing me of having affairs with, um, well, frankly, just one person I had, an, I was an acquaint, I had an acquaintance with somebody and he was accusing me of, of, um, of, of being with them. And then it was accusing me of being with my friend, the one I had seen in Spain. Uh, I, I'm, you know, in these kind of arguments, nothing I do is working. I've uh, walking out of the room is me leaving him walking away from me, the you know, strong hey, you going? I'm talking other to you. Dudes. That it, it, it went from that to, um, pulling me in by, by my arm, um, still shouting at the, about the accusations. Um, I'm trying to diffuse, diffuse the situation by trying to tell him I'm not sleeping with this person and I'm not sleeping with that person. And it was kind of, as soon as it seemed as though I had convinced him of one, there was somebody else he was sure I was sleeping with. Um, and he, he, it was a revolving door at that time. Um, a painting I had hanging on the wall done by my ex, who's an artist, that was... One day he he was convinced that that was proof I was sleeping with her or having an affair with her. I didn't really love him. And all the while I'm madly in love with him and trying to convince him. So March started with this picture of him doing a shot and he's kind of saying, let's send it to your dad to show support. And what I remember of March is just uh, like an almost no it's almost like it was a never ending fight it was just there were breaks in it what kept me in it is because because i kept waiting for the other shoe to drop you know the sobriety shoe if you will i kept waiting for him to get to the point where it's not supportable or anymore and he's done with it and he's ready to get clean and sober again because there commences a period of like pure joy and so let's pick the time when he's hanging out with right after the other March. So, so let me start with the painting incident. Please tell the jury what happened on that particular incident with the painting. Uh, as I mentioned, she just did painting objection asked an answer for uh, months. Uh, one day he he kind of stayed up doing cocaine, just drinking, doing cocaine music, which is un not in and of itself that weird in my relationship with Johnny at this point, you know, like he stays up and keeps weird hours and smokes and stuff. But the, the, he was drinking um, brown liquor and doing a lot of cocaine. And it was like, it became clear to me in that argument, if you will, that it would, he wasn't making sense. He had effectively just taken, it seemed like, a turn and had decided that the painting was the big the, an offense that he could not forgive me for. It meant I was having an affair with my ex-partner, whom I had already split, with whom I had already split. And it made no sense to me. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of quell the accusations by saying, you know, it's been there. And what are you talking about? And it's like, that doesn't mean anything. And, you know, he was demanding I take it down. He eventually takes it down and tries to burn it, but was unsuccessful, luckily, because he was not, he, he didn't, he wasn't <laughs> with a, uh, one of those normal, what do you call them, Bic lighters. He wasn't very successful at doing it while drinking. 
um, to the extent he was, but I remember it was this kind of ridiculous fight, like didn't feel like it needed to be an argument, but it seemed like nothing I could do, nothing I could say. I uh, tried leaving. I um, left the room. I left the house. I eventually came back. It was, it was like a whole night, uh, an evening, a night, and then a morning of this. So this morning in particular, I think it was the like 22nd of, of March. There were several incidents in March though. Um, but in this particular one, he had something to go to. He was filming with Keith Richards and um, uh, Tom Waits. Well, let, let me, before you go into that part, let's, let's pull up uh, Defendant's Exhibit 161, which is already admitted into evidence. And I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. And the date on this is 3-12-2013, and it's a text exchange between you and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? I do. Okay. Um, and the first one is from you to Mr. Depp. Just thought you should know there exists a book. Is that to you? Is it to Mr. Depp from you, or it's vice versa? Isn't um, it? It's Johnny texting me. Just thought you should know there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. And then you say, we need that book. And you say, is this about last Friday night by any chance? And he says, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? Uh, and I'm not going to repeat the rest of it. Um, could you tell the jury what happened on that Friday night? Um, um. There were, like I said, there was a few different the answer Incidents is no. in March. Um, I believe this one happened in the Eastern Columbia building, which are one Action of Johnny's speculation. penthouses. They're in downtown, so a different part of Los Angeles. And we would sometimes go there. Uh, I remember he was accusing me, again, of um, sleeping with this artist, this musician who I'd never slept with. Um, I was denying it. I, I barely knew the person. Uh, and then he was accusing me of, of, of sleeping with my friend in, in Spain. Um, and I, I remember nothing I could do. He like called this person on the phone and screamed at, screamed at him. Um, he didn't speak English. So he was really confused as to what he was being yelled at by Johnny. Um, but I remember those were the accusations that that was the fight that, it, but it was one to the next accusation. And I remember I was kind of doing that juggling act. I was in his, one of these fights, I believe it's this one in his downtown ECB, we call it um, loft. And we're in the kitchen living room area and he backhands me. And, you know, it was, um, you know, he wears a lot of rings. Uh, I remember kind of just feeling like the, my lip went into my teeth. And uh, it got a little blood on the wall. It, just that simple, a little bit of blood on the wall. As hard as it is, as hard as it is to explain this, why is it hard? I I was so caught up in the relationship and also very occupied in defending what I only as could assume he believed these accusations. Um, that you know I didn't I didn't internalize like I didn't make that big of a deal of it. I'm you know I kind of pride myself on being tough and you know I don't make a big deal out of I'm not dramatic you know, smaller injuries and I know that sounds horrible because it and hard maybe to understand but um I mean my best way to cope with it is I kind of you know minimize it make 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 sure no one <clears throat> make sure he knows that I'm I'm tough and can't knock me down and Make a joke of it, clearly. Make light. 
I'm Please. going to, uh, Michelle, if you can take this one down and um, bring up 170A. Did there come a time in March? I don't make big Amber, deals out of little things. A so therefore, what I'm mom? saying now is very important. Uh, yes, this is um, sometime in March uh, 2013. I just, I, I sent it to her because I had been texting about some of the craziness and I- Objection hearsay. I'll sustain as to what she may have texted. All right, next question. Uh, it, it, Without saying what you said in the text, explain why you were sending it to your mom. Objection hearsay. I was reaching out. Yeah. Uh, it's very lonely in what I was living in and I wanted help. I wanted advice, help. It's some, it's water I blood from her face across the wall, but wait to see the bruised arm. And figure out how I can make this stop. And and is this a picture that you took of yourself in March of 2013? I did. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 170A. Any objection? I got to run, no, but I'll keep listening. See you later. Show you guys later. And how did you sustain that bruise, Amber? Um, I was, I had thrown a, um, I, Johnny slapped me. I walked away from him and that made it worse. We got into a, like a, a shouting match. Um, and he kind of did this thing with his body where I could tell he was going to hit me again. Um, I picked up, um, like, a. I remember it kind of like a, um, like a little pot, not a pot, but, um, like a vase. And, uh, I, I remember, um, I got away from him enough as he reels back. I threw it in his direction and got actually managed to get away before he got, before he got me. Um, he grabbed me by the arm, um, and he kind of just held me on the floor, screaming. He said you got away. Um, I don't know how many times he hit me in the face, but uh, I, re I remember being on the floor in my apartment. You got a bruise on your arm, but not and from the multiple. Yeah, what, what are you worried face. about your arm? I remember thinking, yeah. how could this happen to me again? Can you bring up 170? Was the floor dirty? How dirty was the floor, Amber? <laughs> oh my God, she's trying so hard to cry. She just could they run a shark on the floor to out. clean it? Thank you, Michelle. And her hair is that's not. That's why you don't get the good rolls, lady. We can. Yeah. And just for to, to start, it's three twenty three two thousand thirteen, and if we can scroll scroll up. Worst screen test ever. This is Nick. a text message exchange with your mom, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go and scroll down and then. Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay. Right, let's wait until we get to the spot. <laughs> no, I know where I know where you're going. We're going to object to it. All right, and is this the picture that you sent to your mom on three twenty three two thousand thirteen? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 170, just that partake, that picture that's on the text. She's trying to get those tears Along out. No, with no words? Uh, well, it says from two weeks ago no. on it. Your Honor, I'll sustain the objection. <laughs> Camille's like, if we redact the from two weeks ago, can we admit it then? Keep, and then just have it. the showing that it, she sent no. it to a we approach no. okay. Nothing. Good job, Camille. Be hard nosed about this. Yeah, and Your Honor, she's she's saying what the hearsay is right now. This mm -hmm. is the objection. Her saying it in open court doesn't somehow make it not hearsay. It's it's extra double secret yes. hearsay, or <laughs> whatever. God. Yes. Uh... For whoever is interested in the preview of cross examination, uh, obviously a really good source is going to be Amber Heard's witness statements from the UK. Her first witness statement 
does go through all these events um, pretty systematically. These March mm -hmm. ones that she's talking about are ones that she's had to change repeatedly because um, she got the time frame wrong when she uh, first wrote it. So she had to go back and, you know, revise her recollections of, of when mm -hmm. things occurred in order to make them add up right. with and things like this disco bloodbath text and photo hey, evidence. Andrea, um, those statements, did she have those notarized and sworn here in America or in Britain? No, they're, uh, they were for Britain, and uh, they're not sworn when she signed them, but they're sworn uh, when she adopts them in court. Okay. So I just think if they were, like, sworn here. And that's the picture you sent to your take mom. Care of it. Yes, it is, on March 23rd, 2013. Yes, it was from a previous fight. Okay. The bruise. All right. Now, did you have any other altercations in March 2013 with Mr. Depp? Yes. Um, we had um, we had a couple of these fights in Orange that were around this time, one of which I started to tell you about the painting. You know, and I know I've interrupted you now twice on that, but I realize the jury doesn't. Can you tell them what you mean by Orange at Orange? Uh Sorry, Orange was my apartment that I kept in Los Angeles at the time. And it was an apartment. What type of an apartment? I rented the top of a duplex. So it was a house um, with the landlord living on the bottom floor. I rented the top floor. Okay, thank you. Now, please continue with the painting. I'm sorry. Um, I, nothing I could, it seemed like nothing I could say to Johnny would convince him. He wanted me to remove the painting um, and he wanted me to admit to this affair that I wasn't having. And I didn't want to admit to it because it's not true. So I held out and he just started, I mean, he just drank more and did more cocaine. And I woke up the next morning, I think it was on the 22nd or the 23rd, I woke up in the morning and he was the breakfast table was like cocaine and booze. And I realized that there was a Hollywood breakfast. Yeah. So I had a bump as well. I wasn't going to be able to talk my, like I wasn't going to be able to talk our, 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 our situation down. I wasn't gonna be able to talk him out of it. And he was just so convinced that I was fighting with him or, or, or at the reason that he wouldn't leave the house and he had something to go film that was important and there were important people waiting for him. And I remember people were reaching out, his assistants, his manager, sister, you know, everyone was wondering where he was. And I kind of, I kept feeling embarrassed and unable to move this person out of my house. I couldn't calm him down. I couldn't change. He was just so intent on me admitting the details of this affair that I, I wasn't having. And me pointing out that the cocaine wasn't making his situation any better made me the bad cop. Then I'm the nag. Um, so eventually I called well, my I sister. A lot. Uh, he had a kind of a buddy, buddy relationship with her at the time and at the time she occasionally did cocaine i didn't but she did and so i was like hey come take over you know maybe you can buddy buddy him and talk him into leaving the house just getting out of the house and she did um i remember his assistants trying to get him out like we eventually in the evening i think early evening he finally um agrees to leave, but I can't tell our relationship status. I can't tell if he still is convinced of these things or if he's just going to sleep it off and it's going to go back to normal sobriety, sorry kind of phase. And uh, he was still upset, but uh, like seemingly calming down. So I, I agreed to go with him. He wanted me to go to the, to the, the shoot. Um, I had planned, so I kind of reluctantly agreed, but didn't want to set anything off. I didn't want to engage anymore. I didn't want to do anything that could be perceived as antagonizing him or engaging more. So I went with him. 
we grab the dogs, we get in the car, we're on the way there, we're headed up Sweetser is the street. It's a major street that um, leads up to Johnny's houses. Um, he effectively oh, owns the orange. end of the street. It's like a cul-de-sac. Um, so we're nowhere near his home, but we are driving up this street and uh, he has the window down, he's smoking. Um, it wasn't all the way down, but you know, he's constantly smoking. And at some point he starts howling out of the window and then grabs two small dogs. Well, one was Johnny's dog and one was my dog, but he grabs, if I, if I remember correctly, Boo, the, the, his, his dog, um, slightly chunkier, um, teacup Yorkie. Is he, he going to have and he grabs the dogs? this teacup Yorkie and holds number? Boo out of the window of the moving car. And he's howling like, like an animal while well, holding the dog out of the window and everyone in the car, I'll never forget it. Everyone just froze. No one did anything. And I, I too was like torn as to what I should do because I didn't want to do anything to cause him to react, drop the dog. You know, it was just this eerie moment where he's howling and holding this animal outside of the, the car window. And more than that weird memory is the, that I have a, more than that weird memory, I have a memory of everyone just kind of not really reacting to him. Like no one really kind of did anything. They, I eventually kind of pulled his arms gently back into the, to the vehicle and kind of got the dog back on the seat and we continued driving, but no one reacted. It just kind of avoided dealing with it. We get to the place, the house where he was filming this thing that he was late for, I suppose, for the day. And we walk in. Meanwhile, I've been bombarded by text messages and, and calls and conversations with everyone seemingly so stressed about- Objection hearsay. Goes to state of Where are these texts and messages and evidence, Amber? I understood yeah. everyone was stressed. They and nobody in this car is here to testify about, about just the you. tardiness. Where is he? Let's get him there, you know, so we get him there. And no one reacts when we get in. I mean, we walk into this house where everyone was waiting for him. Who are these fictional people? And everyone smiles and says, Didn't you have these people you know, on hey, cross well, exam? hearsay. Okay. So, Sorry. Okay. Let's, yeah, we uh, can, Michelle, can we pull up uh, 167? Wouldn't his driver 80. have been on cross exam? Couldn't you have yes. asked him about this? You knew this testimony was coming. Didn't this Probably. happen on this date? Were one of his bodyguards there? He, he the one that's in 167B is already in, right? Not going to like Johnny Depp coked up sounds like a blast. Oh, okay. With. okay, then go ahead and pull up eight. Hey, don't get me wrong. I would hold the Yorkies outside too. <laughs> Does your honor show that one to be in? I'd throw them over the car to the other window. Think they're not skunks. <laughs> De defendants. It's, it's, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it, this might be your 167A, but it's in evidence as a plaintiff's number, and I'm not sure which plaintiff's number it is. I don't need it in twice, so I, I would agree. Do we would you agree, Elaine? Your Honor, I don't think it's this version of the photograph that's so been admitted. So, so it's, it's a, a it's different a, version. It's same a different photograph, but a little different. Is that what we're? It's not the same photograph. Okay, not the All same. Right, photograph. Well, then, then, then we'll go with it. Then what's your, what, okay. what number is it? Do, do you recognize this photo? Yes, I do. Please tell the jury what it is. It's uh, a picture I took of my breakfast table uh, that morning. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of. Oh, is this the one with the tampon applicator? 167A. 167A. Any objection? Your Honor, may we approach? Sure. Andrea, Here comes the, the tablescape. Yeah, is this the one where it's all Which neat, draft like, of the Instagrams? tablescape are we going to get into evidence? Because there are. Oh, many. so is this why they want? This is why she wanted to make clear that there's a different picture because these are staged. Is that what that is? Yes, these pictures are staged. Yeah, it looks like an there's Instagram several shirt. drafts where items are moved around, you know, to get the best angle and things like that. Mm -hmm. 67A is in evidence. You can publish. 
So we may we publish that. Thank you, Your Honor. Nick, is your nose too big, or could you do each line individually? Well, you said that you took. I this can't do that cocaine because I do all of it at correct? once. <laughs> could you tell the jury what the box is that has the property with the skull bones property of JD? It's where he can um, just kill this. Johnny's. Um, yes. The rings box. he hit me with. He used for pills, but at the time it was um, bags of coke, like okay. dime ba bags of coke. Okay. And what are these white lines on the table to the left of that box? That is cocaine. Okay. Um, and do you know what is in these two glasses that have kind of a gold colored, colored liquor? Uh, yes. They're different, actually. It's confusing. They're different. Um, different liquids. Uh, the one in the back in the larger glass is, um, I, I believe at the time I um, was doing these tabs or Barocca, that's what they're called. Objection, speculation. Um, tablets. And um, anyway, uh, I remember at the time that that's what I was putting in my water because I had just come back from France where they sell them. And then the brown liquid in the shot glass is um, Johnny's liquor. I don't know what it's called, but it, we kept it in the freezer at the time it was before, bef you know, at that time, March, 2013, I hadn't, you know, um, I still didn't have the, you know, hard line. I yeah. won't even keep that, you know, in my freezer sort of attitude or posture what? with him. I wasn't that bold at the time, you know, what? I didn't like it. Wow. I, I didn't have that strength. I kind of, at that time, I think was doing things like trying to pour it out when I could. This is a mess. So um, what is the bag, the brown bag on the left side? What is that? Uh, that's um, a dop kit. It's um, like, you know, his prescriptions and um, cigarette, tobacco, weed, things that, like that. Okay. And then above it, there appears to be a, a CD of some sort, a DVD, something do you recognize that? Yes, it's um, the single, I, I, I believe is what it's called, the single he was making at the time. I think that's the song that they were filming a video for, if I'm correct. Okay. All right. Now, did you end up sending a copy of this picture to Rocky Pennington that day? I did. I sent it to my best friend at the time and, you know, it was like, Look at my so morning. Objection. Hearsay. Okay, you can't say what you said, but you sent it to your friend, correct? Mm -hmm. Let's go to 167, friend. please. And is that the email in which you sent this picture to Rocky Pennington on 322? Yes. 2013? Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of the picture with the redaction of the message on it, uh, with the top with identifier redactions, and we take out the rest of it. Uh, all right, any objection? No objection. All right, so we those redactions, 167 and evidence with redactions. All right, and may we publish, please? All right, and is this the text message, the email that you sent to Rocky with this picture? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to. Why do we need the email if we've got the picture already in evidence? Take you to. Yeah. Let's go to Hicksville. Let's tell the jury about Hicksville, May 2013. Can you tell the jury what transpired at Hicksville? Uh, it is a, it's a, like a fancy um, trailer park, like a little hotel in the middle of nowhere, um, set up with these little trailers and, uh, we had made a, a, a plan to go there with friends and um, we were going to do 
you know, like Cocaine. Laffy, as we said, Laffy drugs, like mushrooms, eat mushrooms, sit by a campfire. Only the little drugs. Yeah. Um, not like cocaine. There's really not a whole you lot of don't understand do this. out there. It's like a getaway. Um, we had made this plan uh, and it was going fine. It was like a, you know, kind of like a party out in the desert um, with a few friends and campfire and music. And um, I, I don't know who brought, somebody brought MDMA, um, was being passed around and somebody who, who took it um, kind of, was starting to feel the effects of it, I guess is the best way to describe. She kind of reacted in this way where when the MDMA hit her, she kind of, you know, we were sitting around a campfire, all of us, and she kind of just leaned into me and put her, you know, head on my shoulder and kind of grabbed my arm. I took it, you know, to be the effects of the drug. Um, and, uh, I think I had eaten a, a mushroom cap, um, but was not feeling anything at the time. Um, I don't remember feeling anything um, because the night just kind of changed pretty dramatically um, before I really felt anything of the effects of that. But that was the environment we were in. And, um, and, as soon as she kind of did this thing where she leaned into me, um, Johnny um, gets really activated. He gets really upset and he starts, well, at first it, it, she thought he was kidding too. I, she thought he was kind of making a joke. I think we all did. Everyone kind of responded at first, you know, that, that it, like it was a joke, but he it was like, um, hey, man, what are you doing? You know, what do, what, do you, what do you think you're doing? And she kind of giggled and kind of leaned into me more. And I knew in my body just instantly that it wasn't a joke. Um, but she didn't. So she's kind of still attached to my arm when he says it again to her louder. He says, hey, man, you think you're touching my fucking girl? You think you're touching my fucking girl? That's my fucking girl. And he gets louder and louder. And she kind of did this thing half understanding what was going on. I think she kind of started to cry at this point, but she kind of threw up her hands and Johnny grabbed her, her wrist and kind of twisted it and pulled her into him and said, do you know how many pounds of pressure it takes to break a human wrist? <laughs> In the midst of your huh? drug induced days, Amber. And he kind of held her and she just, she just looked frozen. And uh, she's crying and she was just denying, understanding what was going on. I stepped in. I kind of take Johnny's arm around, kind of take Johnny's hand. All the witnesses of, around the campfire, start, not a one of them can I don't this. remember if yeah, he well, immediately all me, their minds or if it too. was sometime uh, after. I wish I remembered. But any of them called? We agreed yeah, that we'd no, go no. and talk about it in the trailer. Uh, so we walked to the trailer, um, and when friends. we're in the trailer, Johnny, by the time we get into the trailer, Johnny tells me that I um, had been instigating the, uh, uh, like, you know, in asking for this, and that I had invited it, and that I, I hadn't been honest with him about my relationship with this woman, and not to... I didn't really know her Who that well. I mean, I actually don't know her at all, but I had met her. And I remember in the trailer, um, choosing me of, of a line about it. And that I, you know, that I, that I had something with her. I'm trying to diffuse that. I'm trying to calm him down. And um, he just turned all that. Um, it seemed like he turned all that rage onto the trailer itself. And he just started smashing things. Um he picked up something on the table and threw it right into the glass cabinet. Um, he hit with his hand um, a, a wall sconce. Um, he cleared the tabletop on the little fold down, oh, yeah. um, like kitchen dining room area in this trailer. I mean, it's a trailer. That narrative together. There's only so much you can do. And he's screaming at me, just screaming at me. This incident um, was so important in her memory that she didn't I, bring it up I, until her uh, third witness. Eventually, go back into the back. 
the bedroom area. And doesn't know uh, the name of this person. He comes into the bedroom yeah. area. We had what I can only describe as um, a... Uh, Johnny has a thing for breaking scones. Sounds like apparently. nonsense from him. It wasn't making sense. And I realized that he's just probably really high um, because it wasn't making sense anymore. It wasn't like a direct accusation. I wasn't, he wasn't hearing was me when I was saying, I, 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 I wasn't involved, wasn't cheating on him. I wasn't secretly trying we to hear the audios, Amber. We know who's not sort of making sense of them. Um, and, and then it became clear to me, he was like looking for something. He, um, cleared things off the bed. I went into the bathroom and as I come out, um, he's, he asked me where it is and how long I've been hiding it. And I, was, I was like, what are you talking about? And he says, you know what I'm fucking talking about. You know what I'm fucking talking about. Be honest with me. Where are you hiding it? And he kind of like makes to look into the bathroom. Um, and I gestured to the bathroom, which was to my right. I kind of like gestured to him and I said, like, what? What am I, where am I going to, what am I hiding and where am I going to hide it? And, and we're standing in this little hallway Your area talent. outside of the bathroom and he starts, you know, pat, pat, what it feels like patting me down or saying he's patting me down. I can't recall, but he ripped my dress, the uh, strap top part of my dress. I had just dyed this thing um, myself. Where's pink, the ripped you know? dress, Amber? Yes. This is one of those things I... <laughs> Monica Lewinsky kept one for how many no, years? Time. Where's yours? Well, Monica dress. Lewinsky kept that to not die. And um, he's like grabbing my, my, my breasts. He's touching my thighs. Um, he rips my underwear off. The sexual violence. Um, and then. Remember, so important. He came up first time in her third witness statement. Mm. <laughs> Gotta believe them women, he yo. to do a cavity search. Where's the wetness? Any wetness? No wetness. He said he was looking <laughs> that cuts frogs. both ways. Literally, right? yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> I was wondering how I, somebody who didn't do cocaine and was against it, that was in and of itself causing problems in our relationship. So you how don't do I hide? Why would I hide? His drugs weren't oh. like, like he was insinuating that I was doing Tell it. me you've never had a cavity sense. search without telling me you've never had a cavity and search. Yeah. He was telling me we're doing, we're going to, we're going to conduct a cavity search. Shall we? Like just shoved his fingers inside me. Is this why you were super high on mushrooms still? <laughs> uh, Still haven't produced a tear yet. Just, just, just stood there staring at the stupid light. I didn't what, what? You know, I didn't know what to do. I just stood, I just stood there while he did that. He twisted his fingers didn't around. Move your hips a half inch to the left, maybe. He did. Yeah. I, I don't. I didn't say like stop or anything. I just. So the next morning, she can't cry. She's getting morning, pissed. What what transpired? The attorney can see her getting lost. Jumps in with a new yeah. question. Yeah. She's sending out that I look. Help me, help me. Thinking that Johnny would change his mind. She's good now. It's fine. Um, and it would be. Um. Yeah, I thought it would end differently. I, I kind of froze. I don't know how we went to bed that night. I don't know how I went to bed. I don't know how I slept. I don't know how we woke up. I don't remember having a conversation with him the next day. I don't remember talking to him about it or confronting him about it. I'm, I'm, I remember wanting it to be okay. I remember just wanting whatever fucking weird trip, excuse me, whatever trip that was to end you know just to be over and for it to just go back to normal um and i remember my friends were out by the pool 
like the, the there was a pool in the center of the trailer park and I remember putting on my you know just putting on my base and going back into this like crap, you know, and they, and I remember seeing my friends by the pool thinking they were just having a great time and no one knew what was, you know, I felt so lonely. Like no one knows what's, everyone was just having a good time, you know, like normal stuff. So I just smiled and made a joke about how trash the trailer got and we had to get the manager uh, who started off furious that Johnny had wrecked the thing. And then you have a witness statement he had from this him? Like, black mesh tank top, not tank top, but it was like a meshy kind of shirt on. And I remember he came into the trailer and looked around and was like, whoa, what happened here? Whoa. And Johnny had an exchange with him. And I remember wa watching this man be so charmed. It was just a kind of a surreal experience. And, you know, it just went away. You know, that just got fixed. We walked out of the trailer at some point. My dog stepped on a bee, we went to the vet and went on with our, you know, vacation. We actually went to another location after that and then eventually went home and went about our, like. I'm gonna ask you to take a look. Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 176? I mean, if you're going to keep fake crying, like one of them should have a tear somewhere. Like, uh, you don't look like you're fighting back the tears. Like, you're not sucking it down. Jesus. You're. It did. I, I, I try on the bottom not of your shoe my, and step on it. Come on, Amber. You got a plan. Time that you I try not to let my biases show through, but email. I have to think Objection, the jury's. Objection, leading and hearsay, Your Honor. May we approach? All right. <laughs> oh, my God. This is bad. This is almost worse than her losing it on the stand. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, she's going to lose her temper on cross. Sure, but yes. I mean, this this whole idea where she's like weaving stories together, she's trying to tie things together, like the sconce. Oh, there was a sconce on the trailer too. You know, that this is how you can tell somebody's doing a shitty job of lying. They're trying to weave little threads together they can rely on and try to point together but god it's awful well okay so johnny depp grabs a woman's arm and threatens to break it says you yeah. know how many pounds of pressure which of course is just the stupid fucking 80s action line anyway yes <laughs> where is she where's the yeah. witness statement yes where's the deposition yeah. where's anything from all the people who are there yeah. no Any one of the people who were there these were my friends but i don't know her name and i was super June stoked. 2013. this is classic amber this is what she does she hides behind people and evidence that aren't there yes and we have the exhibit taken away okay, from you sure. thank you i um by June, Camille's kicking their I ass. By was the way, on objections. So torn. I was so in love with this person because when it was good, it was so good. You've never felt love like that. At least that's how it felt. <laughs> so much. The mouth is bad. Felt like he recognized me, and I recognized him, and there was just something. There that that is the love of my life. Squeeze it out. Squeeze one out on the bed. Squeeze one out on the stand. And he was. I can't do it. He was, but he was also this other thing. He was also this other thing. I cannot wait for the body. And the other thing was awful, awful thing that would come out and. take over and it was you couldn't see the Johnny I loved underneath it it was this other thing and no one told him no one was honest with him no one you know he'd pass out in his own vomit he'd lose control of his body his 
you know, he, he'd lose control and everyone would clean up after him. I cleaned up after him. I mean, this man lost control of his bowels and I cleaned up after him. His, his, his security cleaned up after him, changed his pants in front of me. He would pass out in his own sick. Had them on the stand. Where was you know, that? And then he'd exactly. walk around saying he didn't have a problem until he did. Until he couldn't support it anymore and he'd get clean and he'd get sober. And then he was this thing again. This thing that made me feel so loved. That made me feel like. Look at the light. It helps. It helps with the tear. Like my soulmate, as cheesy as that sounds, I just felt like he knew me. And I recognized something in him. Either some part of my makeup and my background or something that I just got it. And I loved him and understood him. It, it just got so scary, the other part of him. And in June, I wanted, I wanted to leave him. I wanted to... I didn't want to leave him. I wanted to want to leave him. I wanted him to get better. And he expressed to me so many times when he was in that period of getting clean and sober, he would tell me, you saved my life. Baby girl, you saved my life. Everyone else was saying that to me and I believed it. You know, if everyone else was saying it, he was saying it, I thought, just like his other friends who had gotten clean and sober and stayed that way, his older friends, these rock stars that he hung out with that had like gotten clean and sober and they had 20, 30 years, something, you know, I thought, and Johnny told me he w would be that person, that he was going to be that person. And I believed it. I had so much, I looked at that man twice my age, you know, I was 25 looking at this man twice my age and I saw hope and like promise. I had so much hope, you know, the whole thing, kids and growing old together, sort of hope. If it was just for this, this one thing that he could do to the jury here. It's great. Yes. Which would save his life, which would be what to get clean and sober. I love that they're just letting this go. Get... Let it go. And I wrote this letter to myself among many letters to myself. Objection. Because I say. Thought, writing letters to yourself. To that she wrote it. She isn't saying. Amber loves saying. to corroborate herself. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yep. I wrote that letter because I. I know I it. thought it would be read to him. I could read it to him. I could say it to him in intervention, you know, in help. And he would. He would later thank me. For. As he did, as he used to thank me all the time for saving his life. Just, I. Did there come a time later in June that you finally met Johnny's kids? <laughs> Objection leading. That, that, yeah, <laughs> it is Sorry. definitely leading, um, but. The question is, give when us did a you moment. She needs kids? to play overwhelmed. <laughs> I, um, I finally met them in the summer of 2013. I had been with Johnny for over a year, maybe like a year and a half at this point is my best guess. And I was dying to meet them, you know, dying to get to know these kids. I felt like I knew them already. Uh, I had his daughters uh, and actually, and Jack's, it, both both of his kids art on my fridge and I had never even met them. You know, Johnny had brought them over one day and kindly given them to me. And I had them up on my fridge because I felt like I knew them, just how much he talked about them. And I finally got to meet them um, at the Lone Ranger premiere at Disneyland. Uh, yeah, summer 2013. So then I'm gonna, Jump to, and, and it's not much of a jump, to June 26, 2013. Um, there was a plane ride to Russia with Johnny. Do you recall that? Yes. Well, no tell the jury about now. this particular event. Uh, well, that was the first and last time I ever um, <laughs> decided it would be a, a decent idea to do drugs with Johnny. 
um, I did MDMA with, or did MDMA with him on the plane, which was as stupid as it may sound. Um, this is a new one. I just had never, I was very against, obviously, the this cocaine. Is not a, this is not part of the canon? A, a problem. I was very no, much against this is, uh, erota. I was no. against the drinking. Amber's fan of this variety, I, you know, but I'm 24. Six maybe uh, ish, and I w I wanted you know I had never heard of anyone making MDMA uh, like what I had I had done MDMA before you know I thought it's a lovey drug it's a you know it's like a kind of I never knew anyone to uh, very get opposed to drugs except it. when I do them and um, you know I thought well this is a relatively contained environment maybe this will be different. Maybe I can be a good cop and be part of the, you know, like I don't have to be the lesbian counselor all the time, as you would say, you know, I can maybe be a fun girlfriend. And I learned the hard way that that was not happening. <laughs> um, so what happened? Well, we took, um, we took MDMA. I took a, a capsule. Um, it's like a powder in a capsule. I took a capsule and Johnny took uh, several. I didn't count, but um, you know, it's very different when you see someone take one versus a handful of something, but nothing seemed to set any alarm bells off and it, things were going fine until, <laughs> until, the uh, until the flight attendant got this involved. The flight attendant came by, is engaging with us. Uh, I, I don't think that they're really, it felt like it was before the effects of the drug um, took over. It was, so it was relatively quick, soon after we first took our dose, if you can say. And the flight attendant, um, Johnny offered her some, she of course said no. And then after some back and forth between them, Johnny convinced her that it would be fine. So she acquiesced and took uh, MDMA with us. It's Oh. oh, so the flight attendant's and doing within, Molly you know, now, we're too. We're by and yeah. it, the, the same thing happened um, that happened on the mushroom. Did he try to break her uh, wrist? Until, uh, with the woman, Kelly Sue, who oh, I told you about. Oh, the same thing. Another woman came uh, on to you. Then got friendly yes. with me, but just friendly, just like MDMA friendly, you know, was just cavity search I'm friendly. a woman. He's a man, so she was well, naturally. How do you know what MDA friendly is? Tell the jury what MDMA friendly is, Amber. Tell the jury what MDMA friendly is, Amber. Tell the arm of the chair yeah. I was sitting in. Tell us about your coming parties. I mean, after all, she, yeah. she's on drugs. And, the cuddle puddle. Um, Johnny uh, grabs grabs her hand and tells her not to touch me. And she kind of reacts um, in a way, uh, like, you know, like she's defending herself and was trying to clar clarify and um, grabbed her by the wrist and slammed it down on the table. And I fucking called it. I called it. And I remember thinking, I've heard this before. And that was a pattern that would repeat itself a few times. These things would happen in these kind of cycles where there would be a certain element that would get filtered for a while, whether it's an accusation or a gesture. And that would be the thing that he looped on. I called it looped. Loops. And he grabs her wrist and he tells her he could break her wrist. She cries instantly, denies it, is so apologetic. Go eventually he lets go. She goes to the front of the plane where the flight attendant, you know, normally hangs out and He's the door's closed. And I don't this see her much wouldn't have sued Johnny Depp for millions. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we land in Russia and I don't really remember God. You know, any, I, there was, I don't drugs. recall any violence on the plane um, between Johnny and I, but I remember feeling this tension because I was wondering when uh, it was going to aim at me because he had this particular thing about, well, at the time I understood he had a particular thing, a sensitivity about me and women because I had had a female partner. So I, I was feeling nervous anxious and um i remember we had a very quiet ride at least i didn't say anything um to the right to the hotel and almost as soon as we get into the hotel room 
um, going to accusing me of effectively having um, engaged that, uh, caused that. Um, I, of course, deny it, uh, point out what I thought was obvious, that, you know, like we'd, we'd given her drugs, you know, it's, it wasn't an affair, wasn't, you know, and I'm trying to argue and defend myself at the same time. And um, at one point, Johnny just shoves me, like, I mean, just shoves, shoves me hard. And I fall back onto this glass table. Um, I catch myself on the table. Um, I don't know how some furniture got knocked around. There was a, you know, I, I, I'm trying to stand up for myself. I'm trying to stand up, literally. I'm not, you know, at this point, I don't even try to hit back or try to run. I'm in this hotel room trying to do my best to fight mostly the verbal accusations, but also I try to stay on my feet, you know. Um, at some point, uh, Johnny whacks me in the face. And... Wax you. I don't even... I don't remember feeling pain or like awareness of my nose or anything. I just, I don't remember thinking that. I remember kind of crying and feeling, I went into the bathroom and I, I wanted him to have a, like, I, I, I just remember wanting him to realize what had happened. I wanted him to kind of snap out of it. I wanted him to care. I wanted him to realize what was going on because a big part of this I felt like he wasn't aware. There was a sense that he didn't know what was going on. You know, again, I don't know how much of the drugs or alcohol is a part of this, but I remember crying. I came out at some point because I don't hear him in that room. I remember we had been arguing in the main room, but I went out to the hallway, which is where I presume he walked out. And his bodyguard, Jerry Judge, was in the hall. And I don't recall seeing Johnny in the hallway, but I remember seeing Jerry Judge, who um, gestured to Objection, my nose. Objection, hearsay. She's just saying gesture. He hasn't said anything yet. All right, uh, gesture's fine. Oh, oh, really. Convenient that dead Jerry he Judge is now one of her nose, witnesses. Um, and holds out his um, yep. handkerchief, like a cloth handkerchief. Uh, and I instantly felt just felt really embarrassed. Do you, I felt like I felt ashamed. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I just felt like just really embarrassing. And I went inside the, the room. What if any injury did you have? I had a little blood coming out of my nose. Uh, I didn't know it. I didn't feel it at the time until Jerry gave me the Jerry. Let me know. Is this a broken and nose? And I went inside the um no, this isn't no, the broken room. nose. And, okay. So, uh, it is so embarrassing. Is it, Come on, Nick. This, is, this is extended universe. This is outside. I, I cross it. Maybe a broken nose. I just wanting. I remember just wanting Johnny to say sorry. I wanted him to realize it. It's so stupid, but I like the emotional part. You know, I just wanted him to acknowledge that this was um, that he like he could hurt me. You know, and I wanted it to be okay. I didn't want him to think I was interested in this flight attendant. I didn't want him to think that I would be capable of cheating on him. I was in love with him. I wanted, you know, I just wanted things to be okay. Let's take you to July 9, 2013. Did there come a time that you went for a ride on, you went to the Bahamas and went on a ride for the yacht with Johnny and his kids? Well, it's less like a, we flew out to the Bahamas to his island. Um, he was selling the yacht to J.K. Rowling, and he wanted to kind of have a goodbye trip on the yacht. So it was docked uh, off the island, and I went with him and his uh, kids, who I had quickly developed a bond with and loved. And we brought a friend uh, along with us, I think, to kind of help and Okay. T tell, tell the jury what happened on that trip. Johnny was uh, upset. Tell the jury is a weird way to boat. phrase a question. Yeah. Uh, and he was tell uh, story, off the wagon Tony. again, but he didn't want to tell his kids. So he was hiding it from them. 
Uh, How was he, he was on the wagon at any point if test. something is happening and every week in 2013? And the behavior just kind of like, yeah. he was upset, he was emotional, and it just, he just, you know, that's how he dealt with it, just drink. But there's just no off button with Johnny. So he just kept drinking and the behavior kept getting more obviously drunk. And Lily Rose, his daughter at the time, was young, just like maybe 14. And she started to um, get panicky and asked, started to ask me questions about his drinking. Objection hearsay. Objection hearsay, yeah. Without yeah. saying what Lily Rose was saying, please continue on. Um, Sustained the objection. Thank you. So she was asking me questions about the drinking um, and was very upset. Sustained the objection. Yeah, you, you yeah. can't say what Lily Rose said. Oh, but yeah. you can you can tell gestures, Sorry. you can tell, and you can say what you and Mr. Depp said, okay? Sorry. Maybe. Um, Maybe you can say so what you and Mr. Depp said. You can't just automatically and, say that. And uh, Johnny kind of, we were with the kids and he kind of threw himself off the boat in a half playful way, um, like a dead, he like dead fish kind of way. I don't know how to describe it. Almost like a belly flop. But we were on a skip, like a, a smaller boat parked next to the yacht and he's jumping. Well, he jumped off the front of it, but kind of in a, a face chest forward way like it looked a little scary like not something somebody would do if they're completely okay you know it was it, it was started off all of us kind of no amber we don't know into the, yacht, uh, into the water and then he at one point kind of throws himself over and it looked a little scary um the way his body fell into the water and Lily Rose um, it was a scary started to cry and expressed to me that she Objection here was say. upset. Objection here, sustained. You, you can't say what she said. You can say, you can tell expressions or observations, but you can't say what Lily Rose said. So okay. Lily Rose is crying, and then the crying becomes like a, like a panic like, like almost like a panic attack, uh, it, it, like rapid breathing, crying, lots of questions. And I'm holding her, kind of comforting her, and Johnny comes in. And within a few, um, within a few seconds, I realize that he, you know, kind of shifted his attention on me. And then he seemed very angry. Uh, he asked Lily Rose to leave. Lily Rose leaves, looks at me, leaves crying. And Johnny, in uh, I don't remember the words he used, but starts accusing me of kind of like telling on him and calling him, um, uh, you know, a drunk in front of his kids. I hadn't, I hadn't done that. I was actually trying to protect Johnny. Uh, I wasn't, it didn't feel like my place at all to share that with, with his daughter or, or anyone um, at the time other than adults who might help with it, but not his kids. So I was trying to tell him, I'm, I was just trying to comfort her. I was trying to protect you. He uh, basically was accusing me of doing this thing and of, of making them aware of his, uh, that he was drinking again. And he slams me up against the the side wall of the bedroom of the cabin. We were in the bedroom this whole time, but up against the wall of the cabin. And slams me up by my neck. And holds me there for a second and tells me that he he could fucking kill me. And that was an embarrassment. This is new. I was embarrassing. It was an embarrassment. This whole thing was a joke. Is this All still embarrassing. More, I made him feel more sick. apocrypha. And yeah. I'll, ne I'll never forget. <laughs> How is it I'm, embarrassing? I'm, I'm, Who are you I being was, embarrassed? I'm very, very too. Very yeah, much in love with this whole family your neck now. For the wrist. And he's saying I'm embarrassing to him. Oh. And that somehow amazing. stuck Got in it. in in me more than the I could fucking kill you. It just sounded like hyperbole. It sounded like something he was just saying, but the, the names that he was calling me. So it wasn't a threat, names? just like and pushing me up against the wall by my neck, you know. I, 
hurt hurt my feelings it hurt um i uh when i communicated with when i saw lily rose again we get uh i won't say w what she told me but the you next can't. thing we do is we call for uh, a helicopter to come and take us off of the um boat or off of the island so we leave the boat go to the landing um of a of, of a part of the island or maybe it was a different you know island we had to get to to leave and we we take off i'm holding lily rose in my and literally holding her under my arm while she's crying and we're lifting off why is it lily here? jack ended up not coming with us at the last minute he stayed behind um and we were taking off and i remember being really torn about leaving i i i felt bad about leaving even though that 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 had happened i i still felt awful leaving i felt awful leaving him i i i also felt like i had done something wrong you know he, like he was mad at me i wasn't lily rose sure, on rebuttal you know yeah what i had done but i i remember not being you know I'm, I'm i'm getting all these text messages from him calling me all these names and it barely coherent barely and i'm where are those texts text, amber yeah and let me just stop you for a moment michelle can you pick pull up defendants exhibit Hold 180. On. nick i just want to ask her was he looping in it's your already, terminology it is developed? already in the evidence your honor yes so may publish it to the jury it's like a fucking anthropologist and I'm, I'm so going to ask you to take a look at 180. And this is text messages from Mr. Depp. Like Matthew Harris. Harris. Do you recall these? Yes, I do. And and are these the text messages? Yes. That's what he was sending me while I was taking care of his daughter. It looks like an unbreaded text. Yeah. Eat salad with your equine and bovine yurps. <laughs> leave me, leave me be Officer Squarehead. Oh, there's a lesbian camp counselor thing. There we go. Done. Hup. Done. Pulley. Your Honor, I'm about to go into another event. Should I keep going? Right. I mean, that, that's fine if you think this is a good point to, to break probably, for the day. Okay. I think it's probably a good point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and conclude for today. Again, do not so are you going to ask anything about, anything case, about the public, any outside research and don't text, discuss it with like, anybody, okay? Have a good evening. We'll see you in the morning, okay? Thank you. And again, on a look, on a list of names to call people, <laughs> there were very few actually offensive names in that. That was supposed to be like yes. the names he was calling me. The most hurtful me, and you... thing ever is Officer yes. Squarehead. Yes. Really? Well, hey, if you ask, if you ask Doctor Hughes, calling somebody Sapphire must be part of some interpersonal dynamic that shows abuse. And again, ma'am, since you, you still understand, understand, you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys. Okay. All right. Anything further before? All right. We'll see you in the morning. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. She's going to have a long 10 day break of not discussing her testimony with her attorneys. I'm sure she's going to abide by that. Oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> Even then, she's going to have to remember that spot on, and she's not going to be able to. Andrew, why does she keep wearing men's suits? I don't have an explanation for the style choices. I, I really don't. I, I can't get into this woman's mind. Because they're like even men's cut suits. It's yes. Yes. It's it's not like she's wearing suits that a woman would wear. She mm -hmm. That's why they hang off her so awkwardly. Yeah, I love how how many dead people have stories. Johnny's here. like you can uh, believe that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What are the body language guys going to do with do this? The black guy laughing at her fake tears. That was amazing. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows she's faking it except her. I think she's, I don't think she realizes it. That director that first introduced her to Johnny Depp should call her up tonight and be like, this is why I had to audition <laughs> you five times. Five yes. times. <laughs> yes. 
It was, uh, God, yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder how many more times this magical wrist MO is going to happen. I could break your wrist. Well, I did do a poll on that, actually. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you did? Yeah, I said, how many wrists has Johnny Depp broken? And the result, two wrists got 3%. Four wrists got six percent, and not enough got ninety percent. So, <laughs> well, I don't know if you heard me, but I said too bad he didn't mistake her neck as a wrist. Oh, geez. <laughs> I guess I guess lucky for her on that one. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, this is this is kind of what was expected, right? Um, yes. Hyperbolic stories, new stuff. She has the opportunity to say anything she wants and and be litigation proof for it so anything mm -hmm. she can concoct into some realm of semblance of reality she can she can say and all of this stuff happens behind closed doors at various locations so sure the body cavity searched her uh, as if that's how body cavity searches are done but um he's he's just digging for cocaine in her lady bits i guess um that because that's Again, and guys, what, what I just story. I can't I can't overstate this enough, right? This is the first allegation of sexual violence. She submitted a 39-page witness statement in the UK where she gave detailed accounts of all of these other incidents and neglected to mention the sexual assault until the third witness statement. It's just it's just mind-boggling um, how she ups the ante, you know, when when she gets called on her bullshit. Yeah, it's uh it's really wild. And and in these stories, you've got other people involved. The, a, like you said, there's a Johnny Depp mm -hmm. gives drugs to a flight attendant and then pins her wrist down and threatens to break her arm and she doesn't sue Johnny yeah. like he would settle that thing with an NDA for hundreds of thousands of dollars the next day. I mean, without, without a thought, Disney may yeah. pay the bill, right? Like th this is insane. Where's the flight attendant? Like, Where's the pilot? Where's the assistant yeah. pilot? Oh, Where's all exactly. the people that would have had knowledge of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something Richard Marks would be in charge of like helping take care of. He'd be paying <laughs> up people left and right. No, really he would. Seriously. Yeah. And where's, where's his bodyguards? Mm -hmm. Like we're on that plane. He's, he, he's in that. Uh, presumably, the bodyguards are flying with him on the plane. Uh, he's he's having to defend himself ostensibly. Like you've got bodyguards, you're not enforcing on someone else because your bodyguards are going to move people away from you if there's any tension. That's their job. Whoa, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little close here. Even if it's you causing it, they're gonna be like, yeah, yep, we need that because you know, the lady scratches his face or something that could be, could be huge. Paparazzi takes a picture, Johnny Depp claw marks on his, well, kind of like when Elon Musk was walking with Amber Heard, right? The big, the big red mark on his face that we all want to know where that came from. But it, this is not the, uh, this is not the way that people with bodyguards and personal security behave. They, they don't get the opportunity to do that. Yeah. So, I, so where are they on this plane? This plane ride to Russia. I mean, they've got to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, well, uh, like I said, it's it's kind of what we expected. Hyperbolic testimony. Um, a lot of a lot of crying. Whether there's six or seven crying episodes with no tears, but crying. <laughs> hey, hey, Andrea, was the thing with the trailer park they went to? Is that part of the canon that we know about? That is, that's the one that okay. got added in the third witness statement um, that okay. did come out in the UK. The details have not previously be come out because she was allowed to testify behind closed doors uh, in mm. the UK <laughs> about God, that specific this. incident, about anything that alleged, you know, some type of sexual assault. She did not have to do that in open mm. court in the UK. Yeah. They tried to do that. Speaking of her being the face of the Violence Against Women's Act, that's what they have tried to do through the Violence Against Women's Act is is offer various levels of protection um, when when able to. Because the you know the tactic used to be if there was a sexual assault charge, you just bring up all the times that person had sex with anyone ever in their life, mm -hmm. and uh, and so they've they've tried to limit that type of testimony. I think it's interesting that now, of course. Uh, 
maybe the ACLU will will use her again. Well, look what she had to go through. Yeah, uh, on the stand. But I I did not find it, I did not find her credible at all. And I know I am firmly biased against her. But I I mean, come on, that this thing like turning towards the jury is good. Turning towards a jury and like stoking up a campfire and telling them a story is a completely different thing. And when Elaine's like, why don't you tell the jury this? I'm like, I, I think with this type, when you've got a credibility issue here and the whole case is about lying, like that's the whole case. I don't phrase it that way. I ask questions, you know, kind of the way you're supposed to, but, but yeah. Uh, well, any other thoughts before I, I, I've got a bunch of chats to read and I, I will address all of them, but um, I wanted to give the opportunity for thoughts before I do. Just oof. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We see why Amber's acting career has never taken off. I mean, yes, it's, it's on display. She's Russian she's meddling. Not, yeah. She is not compelling or convincing from the stand. Uh, no. It it's, it's a mess. Um, okay, here we go. Let me, oh my gosh. My stupid window got reset. So I got to find the, first we have to find the, the super chats and then we will read the super chats. But uh, okay, so is this, I'm still confused on this. This is confirmed that tomorrow is the last day for 10 for approximately 10 days until the 16th yes. is that correct mm -hmm. okay yes the, the judge is at a judicial conference yes they love that they love their conferences and Get can the judge be like why don't all you judges come hang out in the courtroom watch me do the biggest <laughs> trial in the entire century <laughs> oh you know those judges all want to be there <laughs> yeah oh yeah. I, they're gonna be talking her up and down as soon as she gets there yes uh okay so here we go. Uh, Hopefully someone teaches her what a leading question is. God. Yeah. Someone call her out on it. That'd be good. Yeah. Cause, Cause that was, that was bad. Um, all right. Almost at it. Finding where I left off is, is always tough, especially when I have to redo reload everything. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Pina uh, pinnacle, Principal pondering doctor said she did work with men abuse as children. Oh no, I read that one. Damn it. Um, Amber's team hired a priest. Correct. Uh, Elmo voice. You did that one. Yep. Okay. I did that one. Did that one. <laughs> Finding. Oh gosh. Uh, that's the last one I read. Okay. Um, where's the next one to read then? Seth Hagler. No, I read that one too, because these are all the statements about her uh, writing the op-ed, which, again, a lot of people were like, oh, she admitted to writing the op-ed. Well, we know she wrote the op-ed. That's already been in testimony. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the big admission. The, the question will be, is the op-ed about Johnny Depp? But they've already gotten the fact that it is in there. I, mm -hmm. I just think it'll be funny to have her answer it. Um, Catherine H., here we go. Uh, Catherine H says she's really laying it on thick. No payment to the children's hospital, but says she volunteered with blind kids and uh, audited college level ASL courses. Nathaniel Curry, what's what's yeah, next? I, I, Did, I thought oh, it was ahead. weird. Is that true, An Andrea? That she like was a twelve year old auditing college classes. You know, I don't know that we have any confirmation of that. Okay, she, she was, a... she, you know, she was, she was a high school dropout. There, she has, um, she has some juvenile criminal history that is a little bit opaque because uh, Texas is one of these states that will seal that and uh, only unseal it under limited circumstances. Um, but there's evidence of, you know, uh, certainly a mugshot that is out in the public domain from when she was quite young. Um, there's a very lengthy uh, license suspension and um, a couple different records of, uh, of different types of, you know, cases that she had. They actually were on warrant status for quite a long period of time. And I believe it was not until right before um, she was uh, 
I, I don't remember if it was filming the rum diaries or going on the press tour, um, but that she went back and, and actually dealt with, dealt with those warrants. Um, so yeah, there's a whole shit show going on with, uh, with Amber's past in, in Texas that has been uh, very glossed over. Okay. Yeah. Cause she's almost sounding like an astronaut cowboy with this, like, Oh, I got my GED at 12 or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then everyone clapped. Pedro Cigar, thank you for the donation. Yes, did. Uh, Lancelot says, someone get a spray bottle for the cat lady. Hearing her ask if he used his tongue makes my skin crawl. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the, she's trying to weave a subtle grooming narrative uh, there early on. Oh, you know, he's doing all these things. Uh, again, setting up the, the history of what her doctor described as sexual violence, but you know, she just passed it off as flirting or whatever. Uh, that, that was nice. That was nice. Um, here we go. Single, where'd it go? Single malt killer. Every, when treating a man, every time she's treating a man, she is listing all the, or even when treating a man, she's listing all male perpetrators. Yep. Oh, Gonzo, this Depp guy sounds like a real sociopath giving people gifts and being respectful to them. Uh, what, if anything, this judge is a fucking retard. <laughs> it's not. Oh, Gonzo's not happy with the judge. Uh, oh, Gonzo says, imagine if they use pictures of the carpet to impeach her. Malik Fox, and she's spending a lot of time having to preface her testimony with variations of I'm having a hard time expressing this or it's a little hazy. I'm biased heavily, but I imagine at least one man in the jury is like, yeah, you're lying. Well, yeah, the, the other one that is really like the nightmare answer in most situations is what well, I know this sounds a little crazy. It sounds so crazy now. This sounds so silly now. Like, yes, it does sound crazy and silly. Thank you. Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it did then. Also, that that's the other. Well, it would have you know been would have crazy? said anything. Those fucking audios, Amber. <laughs> yeah, you you sound absolutely unhinged in them. Um, well, that that was that blew my mind. It, and I I thought about this as she was saying it. Uh, she described like leaving. Well, she wanted to leave the conflicts all the time. It's like, wait, no, we have audio where you specifically say that that's bad, that's weak, that's cowardly. Mm -hmm. And I, I yeah. think it plays right into her the the diagnosis from the doctor of the borderline personality, where they she will adopt the uh, the mannerisms of someone else. She's she's just taking Johnny Depp's story. When he's getting hit, he leaves. Now yes. she's suddenly leaving all the time. Yes, and I I do hope this is one thing. If they if they do get Doctor Curry uh, on for rebuttal, I really hope they ask her about Darvo. Okay, I mean you're just you're almost never going to see a better example of uh, of this phenomenon. Accuse accuse your accuse your victim of the things that you did. You know to to get something over on him. Yeah, we'll see. I man, I I hope i hope dr curry gets to come back and well one because the chat loves her but two because i think it'd be i think it'd be really good if she just took her apart squeeze louise high lord of something remember when dr muffins was talking about using very flowery lang lang flowery language while saying nothing i think i'm seeing it yes uh johnny arbert turd's testimony is a love affair from a delusional mind who wrote this sucks and was fired from harlequin romance uh tears bingo you called it uh next oh gosh i hate when this happens billy witch doctor what if anything equals agree or disagree for this judge obviously do all judges have a magic set of words like this uh yeah <laughs> i mean kind of i guess when you find the thing you just keep using the thing though i mean that's that's why they become like this and, and I think the judge has painted herself into a corner. She can't suddenly start taking these objections uh, on it, but it, w it really was a, mis a, a bad, a bad way to set this up. Really now it says explicit. Really? Did she forget she's reading a script? Um, next corpus delecti rackets. Watching this with my wife is one of many reasons I love being married to a psych major finishing her doctorate. She's just sitting here picking apart and destroying everything. A single thing that turd says it's hilarious. Well, that's the only advantage of being married to a psych major, I think. <laughs> the rest of it's just horrifying. Uh, I'm King Xerxes. I'm going out on a limb, but this sounds like an actress reading for a part. Yeah. 
it reminded me of PSAs uh, mm. about domestic violence. Like I, I expected like the dark lighting with the one strip of light, uh, her looking off camera the yes. whole time. Yeah. Was, Sarah McLaughlin's playing in the background. Yeah. Sirenia Sakari, her, her cheeks are sweating, not tears. She couldn't even get that. She couldn't get any moisture on her face. Uh, Caligula, if I'm laughing at Amber's acting shenanigans on the stand, how does the jury feel? Oof. Uh, who knows? T. Odom, can you please call Johnny's attorneys and let them know the door is open? Not sure they'll know. No, they know. Yeah. They know. Like the guy clearly tried to get that domestic violence yes. in. Uh, he was just shut down for whatever reason. Matt H. So either her or Johnny is flat out lying under oath. One is calm and collected. The other is animated and uncanny. Compare Amber's testimony to that of Christy Mack in the War Machine case. This is not believable. Well, look, anybody who got their ass kicked by War Machine uh, knows not like <laughs> there was no doubt that she got <laughs> tore up by him. Like, it, it, yeah, she looked like the aftermath of an MMA fight. It was bad. Not so pro Kitty. I don't know if, uh, if I just think she's a bad actress, so it just sounds like she's lying, or if she's become so unlikable, everything sounds like a lie. Joy Mace. She's way over dramatic. When I testified in my custody trial, I didn't add all these weird details she adds. I didn't want to talk about it, so I just stuck to facts. Well, she didn't want to talk about it either, Joy. That's Clearly, this she... is the hardest thing she's ever done. <laughs> the hardest thing she's ever done. I mean, she just did this over in the UK, but this is the this is the hardest. That was the hardest until now. Uh, Not getting beat was hard. Was, it's talking yeah, about it. None, none of the abuse was hard. It's reliving the abuse. Uh, Igor Slagathor says she acts like Will Smith slaps. <laughs> Paul Wolf, Miss Heard, could you please tell the court which of the four personalities on record are in court with us today? <laughs> <laughs> I love how the doctor is just like, yeah, that's not a big deal. It's, like, it's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Sybil. She, <laughs> she feels like she has different people warring inside of her. It's like, oh, but yeah, I mean, but who doesn't really when you think about it? Uh, the redneck ram, what if any cat boys get you all hot and bothered, Nick? <laughs> Objection leading. I'm just asking, what if any, Your Honor? Uh, oh my gosh. Jeff K. I hope they ask who was the op-ed about and hammer home the line about not being okay to hit anyone, uh, i.e. her charges of domestic violence. Love the stream. Hashtag unbreaded. Thank you. Dylan Tyson. Amber's testimony could make a great ad for Johnson's baby shampoo. No tears. John. She remembers precise details about events with Johnny Depp like she is reading a script, but she doesn't remember things about her personal life like the movie she was in during certain years. I'm not convinced she's a victim. Um, Johnny B. I have some mild PTSD from my time in Iraq, and when I try to recall stories, my voice gets all shaky, body gets chills, and starts shaking. It's hard for me to talk because I can't control it. Her testimony seems different to me. Yeah, and I I think when you when you look at what like a PTSD panic attack looks like, it, you got to look at Kyle Rittenhouse. I mean, he was he was unable to continue his testimony. Mm -hmm. Broke down on the stand. Uh. The media ripped him apart as as faking it. It didn't look fake to me. It didn't sound fake. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have a level of willingness to enter into indignity that I'm not sure that like a random 19 year old has. And and mm -hmm. and Amber Heard's uh, she doesn't look like like she's not she's not acting without dignity. Like she's yeah, not she, broken. She has too much self image. Yes. Yes. She doesn't know how to relate to what a victim feels like. She doesn't mm -hmm. know how to feel weak, how, how to actually, you know, internalize these yeah. things that she's trying to talk about in these abstract ways. Like, oh, I was so embarrassed. I was so guilty. I was so conflicted, you know, but she's not showing those things again. She's always show over tell, you know, talk is cheap. Um, but if you're not demonstrating to me, you know, these emotions, it's just not going to land. Yeah. Peter Watkins says, I told my therapist, those are mandated reporters. Um, easy lie. Shouse in the house. Quaaludes stopped being produced in 1983. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know anything about yes, that. Yes, this but. is a thing.
thing. This is a thing. It's so funny because Quaaludes came up in Evan Rachel Woods' case as well. They're trying to revive the Quaaludes for whatever reason. I think it's because of Cosby. Cosby. I don't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because, Cos- yeah, now they have a thing. First of all, it, it rings in the minds of other people who hear it. So you go, oh, yeah, Quaaludes, big problem. And and two, because, because they're li- like – they- kind of looks like they're lying and so if you're lying and you don't actually have facts you just go to some other story Mm -hmm. uh that's that's why i didn't know they had actually stopped manufacturing them that's great but maybe they just borrowed cosby's stash because yeah he had a lot might have had a lot he's like oh these are going out like he does the fire sale thing he bought futures (laughs) rocket surgeon it's like she is speaking in buzzwords but it doesn't feel like there's any emotions or attachment to what she's saying yes agree um I uh, read that one when it came through. Here we go. Uh Tarkina Meyer, Amber was writing the script to a chicken fl- to a chicken flick. If the jury is mostly male, fail. I think it's supposed to be a chick flick. Uh yeah, kind of. I, I don't know. It just felt like again, it felt like one of those infomercial testimonial things. It was it's weird. Mike, the dad Crosby, I'm behind catching up on one and a half speed. Amber sounds like she is portraying herself as a heroine, wondering if the cross going into her drug use, drinking uh, abuse will get her to snap. No, apparently she doesn't do drugs except for a little bit of mm-hmm. MDA and some mushrooms from time to yes. time. With the men in her apartment that she doesn't tell her husband about that she's definitely not cheating with. She's not right. capable of that. Mm-hmm. So you were doing ecstasy in an apartment with a man that's not your husband and you weren't cheating on him. Yeah, it's just two friends getting together in a dark place doing ecstasy. What? Very weird. DCV Titan. Didn't Johnny have a story about turd coming at him, knocking him off the couch, and him wondering how he was on the floor? All of turd's accusations always seem familiar from other sources. Personality disorder much. Penelope. When my ex choked me in front of our then 18-month-old son... The last thought I had before I passed out was for my baby and my daughters coming home from school and finding out their mother is dead. Amber Turd is a garbage human being. Damn. Uh, Top Muffin. That's the the type of stuff at trials. I'm sure Andrea knows too. That's what victims talk about. Not like, oh my God, the floor was so dirty or anything like that. They're like, I'm going to die and I don't want to die right now. Yes. No, they go through existential thoughts while looking at their breath in cars. Yes. What is the meaning of my next move? Uh, Top of Muffin says she said she used Quaaludes, extremely rare in the U.S. He could have obtained them, but it would have been very difficult. And every other drug we know he used is common in the U.S. Doubt he used those possible impeachment. You can't impeach it because there's you, so impeachment needs a prior and consistent statement uh, to to go against it. So unless she said well, I've never actually used Quaaludes. Uh, or, or I've never seen Quaaludes or something somewhere else, then you yeah. could, but. And also uh, they might just be being told these are Quaaludes, whatever they were is some type of downer or something that knocks people out. David Hader. Amber claimed she got smacked so hard, blood splattered on the wall, but will ha- but have no pics of the busted lip. Got a pick of the arm bruise though. Yep. Yep. That will be a theme. Speaking of looping, wait for the looping on the injuries that don't match the uh, the yes. accounts. Yes. For the image. She came up with that concept while she was auditing college classes. Like, look, <laughs> if you are grabbing someone hard enough to leave a bruise, it doesn't look like a, a, a large impact round. mark right there. Mm-hmm. It goes around. There's, it's the it's the yeah. space between the fingers that, that gets mm-hmm. pinched and swells. Yeah. Like that, it, it doesn't look like that. I've mm-hmm. seen uh, as as a foster parent, we had to look at all kinds of abuse uh, pictures and mm-hmm. images, and, and that's not what a grab looks like at all. Mm-hmm. And she's dainty enough; you would see the individual finger marks. You would think. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, the dad, Crosby, Amber Heard. I kept trying to leave every Amber Heard Johnny Depp recording. Why do you keep trying to leave, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> uh, married for. I, Jack Sparrow, testify under penalty of perjury that I have, in fact, not drunk any of the rum. Uh, <laughs> ne- next, we've got Rick Nikita says, because I believe the testimony of someone tripping on mushrooms and MDMA. 
you, she did have very vivid memories of her mushroom and MDMA trips. Um, I look, I've never done MDMA or ecstasy, but I've been to a couple raves in my day and I have seen people who are on significant amounts of ecstasy. And I mean, they are a, they are a heap. Like just, it's like they, they gas up and then they, and they're done and, and they're useless for until they're down or sleep it off or whatever. Johnny taking a handful of them. I cannot imagine that he's like, uh, turns into the Hulk there, but it's weird. And where was any of the cross exam of, of his security who allegedly changed his pants in front of Amber Heard? Where is this stuff? So do you yeah. remember when he got so, so, uh, intoxicated that he shit his pants and you had to change them in front of Amber Heard? Isn't that embarrassing? How often had you have, have you had to wipe shit off a man's ass? Like, Ask those questions. But of course it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the problem. They know the answer. That never happened. Yeah. Doug Murray rackets. When are they going to ask her about the first time she and Johnny Depp went to the drum circle at Bohemian Grove, Johnny Depp playing a guitar that looked like a hippie sandwich offering rum and pulls to Jobu. I, I don't know. Is that, is that real or is that? That's apocryphal. I, even, <laughs> I was going to say, I can't even tell if that's a joke anymore. Uh, Gates of above. I don't think Amber is the right person to talk about cleaning up bowels. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but again, she's bringing like a, the, the borderline personality. She's bringing something else. It like, it, it's a mimicry. Yes. It, uh, uh -huh. Tom the stories Bamore. have to grow. They must grow. Yes. We all had a kid in middle school who told stories just like this. So much BS. She is obviously a sociopath, desperate to make others feel emotions she doesn't understand because she's never felt them. Mechanical Elizabeth in Richard's voice. Your Honor, the Oscar for best on the stand performance goes to not this woman. It's clear she's just as terrible as an actress as she is a person. Um, guy says, I just want to point out the obvious difference between Amber and Kyle Rittenhouse crying on the stand. What does PTSD actually look like? Hmm. Hey, I had the same thought. Uh, all right. Ray Marshall. We just saw an example of why it took Johnny Johnny's intervention for her to get a job in Hollywood. She couldn't succeed if she did interpretive dance for the blind with how painful it was to watch. <laughs> uh, Lancelot, convenient that a lot of dead people know her details. Yep. Very simple. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't use the unavailable unavailability of the witness due to death as an exception to the hearsay rule to try and get in a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> it only lets them get in the prior deposition. And so Jerry Judge was deposed, but I believe it was in the Sun case. And so Amber was a party. She didn't participate. And so I don't believe they're going to be able to use that good diesel hrt did she have johnny saved in her phones as another name like a nickname yes because in screenshot of the text entered into evidence at the end of her testimony it said steve yeah so he was steve and she was slim johnny depp had testified to that that was their pet names based on some old movie i don't remember uh wolfram says so after the yacht trip he assaulted her in the cabin. What happened to he was passed out face down on the beach? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Also, I'm I'm confused. Okay. Can one of you piece this together for me? So he does this weird thing on the boat where he jumps dangerously, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lily a strange, Ro dangerous belly flop. Yes, Lily Rose is, is weeping openly because of the strange, dangerous belly flop. Inconsolable, <laughs> really. And then. Panicking. <laughs> almost a panic attack. Then they go back to the cabin where Johnny Depp assaults Amber Heard while they're alone. Then she's getting Lily Rose, who is still crying, and scoops her heroically into a helicopter. Like, where I I missed like what how this took place? Can because there seems like Lily Rose would have she not been with. Yeah. 
I'm like trying to figure out how this worked out. It was very weird yeah. to me. This this will be another loop. This is the classic Amber triangulation, you know, against against the folks who aren't there. She's trying to drag the children into it and kind of force Johnny to have to bring the kids into it to contest it. Um, this is also what she does with um, the Bahamas incident where she claims sexual assault. She claims that Jack was basically in the next room while this was happening. Um, it's It's a strategy on her part. It's it, it's so it's so confusing because I again I'm just trying to construct the timeline in my head, and I'm going. There's this huge gap, this gap of time where you're being assaulted in private. That Lily Rose isn't there. Why is she still crying as you're scooping her into a helicopter? Mm. Why are you taking her? It's the first time you've ever met her. Like this is such a weird chain of events that yeah. I don't think she adequately explained. And I'm guessing the jury had to be lost on that one too. Yeah. Uh, Mike, the dad says, does the depth team get to call rebuttal witnesses or must they rely upon cross now that they closed? Well, if the time management will allow it, they should have rebuttal time at the end. Rob price. So at the trailer park, she was on mushrooms and other drugs, then claims depth did a cavity search on her. It sounds more like severe hallucinations from the drugs. Heard is clearly the perpetrator of domestic violence. Caboose. I sent a link to your stream to my sister, Emma in Richard's voice. I'm sorry I brought you to this hellhole, but um, I like it here. Uh, so there you go. Curly Bap. They're still available in South Africa under the name Mandrax, so you can still get them. Oh, cool. Quaalude, South Africa. There you go, guys. Mm -hmm. Adam Trapp. Daniel Day-Lewis could research a party girl for one hour and method act better than her. <laughs> That's the Daniel Day-Lewis speed running challenge. He should start a YouTube series. Uh Fionuala Hussey McCarthy, Nick at all. You keep my head out of the fridge doing internet fasting or intermittent fasting, being glued to your daily chats. Love you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, I do intermittent fasting cause I don't have time to eat. So that's nice. Um, okay. That is the, those are the big chats. I'm going to do the rest of them, but of course I, I want to respect mm -hmm. y'all's time. You're welcome to stay, but if you need to go at any time, please feel, feel, feel free. Uh, unlike Amber Heard, who was shackled to her relationship with Johnny yes. Depp. Despite all the times when he was gone for days at a time, she just couldn't get away from him. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Actually, Nick, I, I'll take my chance. I'll, I gotta head out now. So sounds Thanks good. For buddy. Me on. Yep. See you, Andrea. Talk to you soon. See ya. Who boy. Uh, now we got to go back to here. Um, Oh gosh, I got to remember exactly where I left off on the smaller chats. Should be right about, okay, it should be pretty close here. Mm. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I just seen it. I think I only did like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oi, Nick, what's your favorite Eagles song? Can't hide oh, those line uh, eyes, baby. Did they they did running down a dream, right? Was that the Eagles? That was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Nick. Oh, shit, that oh was Tom Nick. Petty. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh let, hold on. I just gotta look at their discography real quick. I know it's long, but <laughs> as long as it's not desperado, you're safe. <laughs> no, uh take it easy. Take it easy. Yes. Uh no, wait, that's Jackson Brown live with the Eagles. Fuck. <laughs> All these songs my dad used to listen to in the car. Um, it's not Hotel California. That song is way too long. Pisses me off. Uh, okay, here we go. You know what? I'm going to go with uh, Hole in the World anyway. I know it's, it's kind of new, but I do like that song. So that's what I'm going to go with. Screw everybody. Uh, David Stowe, morning sunshine. Hope you got some sleep. I see you are here casually late and breaded. David Tate, if you had OBS, you wouldn't have needed to reboot. <laughs> I hate you sometimes. Doug Dimidome, you see that guy who got his arm removed after he attacked Dave Chappelle last night. Now I'm going to go watch that. Uh, I might watch it, watch it tonight on stream. Uh, Cheeky Mayor, do a Monday show with Carrie on Deprogrammed. Um, it, I was just on Deprogrammed with Carrie. I'd happy to go on again. Thermination to 2011 says, uh, are witnesses allowed to bring notes to the stand? No. 
no, they're, they can sometimes have some uh, things to ref refresh their recollection. Those have to be uh, done with permission by the lawyer. Um, That's why it was such a big deal with the expert that she was up there with, you know, a couple of boxes full of documents and stuff flipping through. And that's why Johnny's team was calling that out because it was not clear, you know, that she was refreshing her recollection as opposed yeah. to just reading her, her report. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was awful. <laughs> Is she just sitting there like paging through up? It was, that was Okay. Uh, Fat Monk, thanks for the entertainment. I'm excited for the Herrera for the Herrera in the future. Your collabs have been really enjoyable and a surprise crossover. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Anna Castells, uh, Johnny Depp's lawyers before cross examination. I can't wait to oppose this. The vodka haze. Are Amber Heard's lawyers doing a good job? Or are they working with a bad hand because their client isn't very honest and dodgy? I'm. I think they deserve some praise for the job that they're doing. Um, they do have a bad set of facts. Well, it seems like a bad set of facts, but they have, they have, they're in a weird place. They're strong on the law, bad on the facts. Uh, but I think they're, I think their in court performance is not bad. What they're um, not doing a very good job of is highlighting the facts that are useful for their interpretation of the law. It's really what you have to do when you have a strong legal defense is, is nail on those things that make it strong. The First Amendment stuff, if that's what they're going to hang their hat yes. on, you know, they, they really need to be hammering, you know, Amber's opinion, Amber's perspective. Um, and, and, you know, we, we aren't seeing anything like that so far. Yeah, they're in a battle of domestic violence, which I said at the beginning, and I still think is the wrong ultimate yes. strategy, but I think it's Amber's directed strategy. I agree. Um, because I feel like if Rottenborn had his way, he'd one, kill Elaine, and two, he would uh, he would just focus on the truth of the matter uh, uh, of the statements and the nature of opinion. Uh, like this is in yes. the opinion. It's an op ed. And sure, while op eds can allege uh, factual things, we know that under Virginia law, that that's possible. These are her opinions. Clearly, she believes that she is a victim of domestic violence. Clearly, she was stating that this factual thing happened where she became the face of domestic violence. She did stand up against it like you just hit on those things. And when you get Amber on the stand, I mean, you just go ahead and ask her questions. When you when you said this, why did you say this? Well, I felt like I was a victim of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because, you know, Johnny hit me on several occasions and, and treated me in an unacceptable way and made me feel like a prisoner in my own home. So when you said these things, uh, you, you're well, you th that's too leading. But but effectively, you elicit the testimony that she was speaking the truth or giving her opinion and that uh, that actually they tried to remove Johnny Depp's name from it not to hide from defamation, but to avoid publicly shaming him. They hoped yeah. that they could, they could avoid bringing him into it because they didn't want to taint the article with Johnny Depp, the articles about Amber Heard and her heroic stand. Like, yeah, that's what you want to elicit from these people. And, and they're, they're not going that way. But I mean, when you have a client who wants you to do a certain thing, you're beholden to them uh, to some extent. And, and that, to me, that seems like that's the issue. Jen Smith, Nick, will you be covering the Nicholas Cruz trial here in South Florida? I, whenever, whenever that is, that's going to be interesting because isn't the only question in that trial whether or not he gets a death penalty? I'm not sure. He's, he's pled I mean, guilty to the shooting. I, I don't know how you would beat the charge anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I. it depends on the timing. It depends on the timing. I don't know if I could take the chat simping for the judge in the Nic Nicholas Cruz trial, though. Oh, my gosh. That would be embarrassing. Is she a hottie? Yeah. Have you ever seen her? No, I haven't seen her. Here, I'll pull her up real quick. Oh, boy. So if I type Nicholas Cruz and then space into Google, the first recommended is judge. <laughs> uh, so here we go. So chat's already done its work then. <laughs> yeah, chat's chat's already they're they're getting ready for the SEO picture primed. <laughs> so here we go. So this is the judge in the Nicholas Cruz. Oh trial. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, your your chat's your chat's going wild on that one. I know. I don't know if I could deal with it for like <laughs> <laughs> weeks of trial. <laughs> the thirst is real. Uh <laughs> But we'll we'll see. It it really does depend on timing. I think it's interesting. I really want to cover uh, Ethan Crumbly's trial. That's a little bit later this year. Um, this distro and his parents. Oh, that's the one to watch, though. I think that's more interesting than his trial. Is his parents? I think there are really valid legal questions there. Distro thirty two. Deb's team needs to utterly destroy this expert to the point where she will never be called as an expert witness ever again. Oh, well, that's not obviously happen. that didn't happen. Yeah. And it wasn't anyway. I mean, this expert, she's she's mentioned she's testified in hundreds of cases because they know exactly yeah. who they're hiring. Yes. You're you're hiring the woman's advocate. And and yes. if that's what you need, that's who you pick. Uh I, I gotta give her credit. She's good at it. I mean, mm -hmm. she's very she's good at what she did. did. Uniflare, Uniflare, yo, try setting CPU affinity on your audio uh, DG exe process and task manager to a single core uncheck all but one uh okay i'll give that a shot isaac kozich says joe is basically monetizing other people's content contributing to the stereotype uh a little bit look joe asked permission to restream my stream and i know he asked permission to restream alita's uh and and he's commenting on our commentary i'm fine with it i have no problem with it i think joe's hilarious so he can do that all day Atomic Blast says, let's say I know a guy that used Coke and drank. The Coke overrides the alcohol. If Mr. Depp was too drunk to light the picture on fire, then he wasn't doing any Coke. The Coke high will overpower being drunk. Mandy Karavichis, Nick, I cheated on you and went to good logic because he needed a mod. He said I did good. I killed 10 porn bots and plugged all his guest channels and engaged chat. See, good, he trains me well. Well, good job. Good job, Mandy. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, Daphne Lansborough sent a You Are Amazing sticker. Thank you. Doug Murray. Rackets, that Bohemian Grove chair was a joke. My sense of humor is weird and <laughs> sucks most times. No, it's it's not you. You weren't the problem in that scenario. It's it's the lunacy of their relationship and all of these stories and where they happen. Like, okay, take out the wrist breaking from the weird drum circle trailer park hotel in the middle of nowhere. You still have a drum circle trailer park hotel in the middle of nowhere. That's freaking weird. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not you. So I didn't know if the Bohemian Grove was a real thing. <laughs> Thanks so much for helping make the miles. I drive all over this country. Great. Enjoy your 10 days off. You deserve it. Well, still have tomorrow and I'll still be streaming because I'm an idiot. Uh, stronger than stone. Did you see Dave Chappelle getting tackled on stage? Not yet. I am looking forward to it. Pro engineer. Hey mate, I hear you're having issues with your audio setup. The issue is obviously issue. You should switch your stream setup to stream provider. Thank you. Uh, flaming gaming, depending on what you, when you read this, how do you think depth's team will do slash has done on cross exam? Well, uh, I think Andrea's position was a little stronger than mine. Um, I thought they missed some, some things, but overall got a lot of facts into evidence. The big devastating miss was, was the domestic violence. I don't know how, I want to know how they missed it. I want to know mm -hmm. how that argument went down, um, mm -hmm. before I condemn the lawyers for it, but man, it seems like that should have been, that should have been in. I, I, I don't see how it's not based on what yeah. else has come into this, this, uh, case, but they, they do need to step it up. But if I'm excited that Camille is cross-examining Amber Heard, because that is going to be, uh, I think that's going to be a good showdown. Kate, I think smiled. she's been preparing for this for years. I mean, Camille has been on this case a long, long time. She, you know, she was in London with the team. Um, she knows exactly what, what she's getting. And uh, I mean, I know if I were Camille, I would be, I would be, I would be chomping at the bit right now. Oh yeah. Especially if Camille has any experience with domestic abuse personally and her background has like a personal vendetta against it. That'd be even, that'd be even juicier. Um, but, uh, or, or has like a friend or someone who has suffered. I mean, she's going to probably have had clients who have dealt with severe domestic abuse. Uh, it'll be, that'll be an, a really interesting thing. I'm, that's what I'm looking forward to. And it's probably not going to be for like another week and a half. Yeah. Um, K Dub smiles. No such thing as low level abuse claimed by Amber's team. Violence is violence. I do like the minimization of violence. I thought that was brilliantly done. 
Well, I mean, like, yeah, she punched him, but I mean, whatever. It's like he called her names, though. <laughs> Marta Genina says, I just finished yesterday's stream as it's midnight in AU. Should Depp's team be worried about the Disney witness for Heard and Depp's other sister? I don't know. What What's Depp's other sister supposed to testify to? Any idea? Uh, I, I don't know. No, we haven't heard much, uh, if anything, I think, from, from his other sister. Um, she was at the wedding, I believe. Um, I don't know that we know much more than that. Okay. So that'll be interesting. And the, the Disney person, look, uh, we, I mentioned this the other day on the Disney thing. The Disney or the corporate appointee who goes to testify is always this like person removed from any useful information, uh, at least at the management levels of corporations. Like they get this stack of documents that all read like official statements. So if they come and testify, it's like, no, we had not formed a deal with Johnny Depp. And then on cross, were you privy to the discussions between Johnny Depp and Jerry Bruckheimer or Johnny Depp's agent, Jerry Bruckheimer? No, you weren't. Of course not, because you work in HR on floor eight or whatever. They're not that useful of a statement. And, and that's why it was it was the right move. But it was annoying to watch them like talk about how Disney testified to this. It's like, yeah, but none of the people involved in the discussions are testifying here. Um, blues, your daddy says, what would you ask on cross today? Well, I mean, I would have tried really hard to get that domestic violence thing in. I think that was important. And then the other thing, as I stated, I've mostly answered this throughout the day, but the main thing I would have hit the bias every couple minutes, like every topic change, I would have re gone back to a bias question, uh, talking about her, her incessant use of men as perpetrators and, and women as victims. And then the other thing, uh, as I stated before, is I would have had the research assistant grab literally every answer that had gendered pronoun um, status for uh, that that she had said yesterday, and I would have I would have just read them to her and asked her if those were accurate statements that she made on the stand. Like it just remind the the jury that every single time she mentioned a perpetrator and a victim, it was male and female respectively. Um, and, and I would have just hit her with her own words on that. Even if it was like 15, 20 of them long, just read through each one. Um, men's rights activist Ethan Flash says, we need to get Flash to fight Lofty on the undercard for the Boogie versus Sam Hyde boxing match. Now he beat the brakes off of him. Frank, on jury duty today, oh, the irony of killing time in the assembly room watching a trial. Love the content. Thanks for all the good work. It's probably a good way to not have to be on the jury. Christopher Williams, where in the world did the sexual accusations come from? They came up uh, today, right? Like that's that's all new from my understanding. Because I yeah. feel like if there were, if these accusations were out there that he forcefully penetrated her looking, digging for cocaine, that probably would have been in the headlines for the past uh, six years somewhere. Um, that didn't even come out at the UK trial, right? You said we don't know because this is part of the confidential testimony. She was allowed uh, to sure. do this behind closed doors in the UK. Uh, I feel like that one would have leaked. I don't know. I just like that one would have come out somehow, maybe through a PR team or something like that, that there would have been some, some discussion of it. Thuggy TX crazy how she recorded all their relationship except for him beating her. Yeah. And any of any of the injuries, you know, she takes something like 30 selfies a day and not a single one of them has anything besides a bruise on her arm. Yeah. I, and I loved I loved when she was talking about how. Uh, what was it? She she got like hit. And or, or maybe it was the bruise on the arm, but she said, I, I, you know, I can't remember how many times he hit my face. It's like, what? wait. And you have no, no bruising on your face in the picture that you have. Yeah. She, he hit her so hard that, you know, blood from her lip flew onto the wall. Um, you know, which is going to be a, a pretty hard hit <laughs> and, uh, not a photo of that. Just the arm bruise. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Mo says, did Hughes not give correct notes there? She seemed to have withheld some notes that she was forced to give, uh, yesterday. So that was interesting. She didn't do the errata report on the deposition. Um, and then the, I mean, I think the, to me that the big thing with her test results was that 
big blank box on the lethal violence risk that has nothing in it at all. Yeah. That, I, and that, that was one of the places where I thought that, uh, that the cross exam should have spent some time. Like you wrote down, you're like, Oh, well you wrote it down. It just says depth, intimate partner violence. That, that looks like a contrived statement for the purposes of trial. Yeah. And, and in every other answer, you wrote down detailed notes about the specific things, but not here. It's just this miasma of intimate partner violence. Uh, okay. The realistic mystic Depp should buy Disney and rename it Sparrow Studios. Jossum, she is purposely exposing her right cheek that she claims Depp gave her the bruise on. Her shilling her being a victim to the jury seems to be disingenuous and overly deliberate. Uh, she's trying too hard. Fauci lied, puppies died. Nick, are you an extrovert in real life? Uh, I'm on personality tests. I always test right around 50, 50, 41, 50, uh, 49, 51, something like that. Um, I'm happy being alone and I'm also happy being in groups. So Chrissy Reed. Hi, Nick. I hope you're sin I hope you're okay. Sending love from the UK. I am. Thank you, Catherine. During the court break, I would love to see a no tie clip showing a show with legal bites Emily and others to compare notes so far. Uh, I was thinking about just that. We'll have to, we'll have to see what they're, what they're thinking. I'm, I'm not sure what their coverage looks like during the break. Praetor seven. Does the court steno record what said in sidebar? Yes. But I, I don't know if we can get access to those transcripts in any reasonable amount of time. Uh, Jamie McClement says tissues on herds tables. They're planning on tears. They didn't plan very well. <laughs> pro <laughs> pro engineer she forgot the visine <laughs> yeah <laughs> you gotta rub that onion that onion juice under your eyes and sit there yeah you gotta drop the contact right like that's what you got oh my contact fell out randomly i gotta get it off the floor and then you <laughs> pro engineer is it just me or is the judge basically nathan lane in costume <laughs> Oh, more like Rick Moranis, I think. Yeah, is, the is Rick the more... Moranis is such a good call. Yeah. 11 Bravo Crunchy. Nick reading Super Chats on Helium would be hilarious. Oh, God. Soda Can, you're the only person I'm sub to that continuously keeps on top of this situation via live streams. Thanks for the insight in the situation. Hey, thank you. Uh, I try. David Stowe, she has only testified against male-on-male -male violence from how it sounds. They need to ask if she testified for a man when the woman was the abuser. I think that kind of went unspoken, but I would have liked to see a more focused question on it. Yeah. Uh, I, or I would have liked them flat out say, you haven't, have you? Mm -hmm. And then when she says, yes, I did. And you say, you said in your testimony at that position that you couldn't remember the last time. So how do you even know? Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, RB, she never finds women to be perps. Men are always perps. Men are the only victims of other men, and women are only victims of men. That's obvious. Encon, can you balance the audio by turning yourself down individually, then turning everyone up master? Very hard to hear the lawyers. I This is probably sent before I got the volume adjusted properly. Again, doing all this without the ability to monitor the audio myself is, uh, it's, it's a fun challenge of StreamYard, but we're working on it. Mr. Shado, Dr. Hughes is going to verbally retaliate under pressure from an antagonizing male under cross. Excellent strategy. She didn't really do that, though. I, I wish she no. would have. B, thanks for the donation. Taco Jim, same-sex violence is a window into Amber's previous charges, isn't it? That would not, just bringing up same-sex violence from the doctor wouldn't do that. Um, Alde, Aldiosis, so Aldiosis, can I send you some candles from my new business, Nick? Where do I send them? At Seraphim Bright on Insta. Uh, you can, I have a PO box listed in the description of every live stream. Um, it's PO box 97. Pinkalo, the driving ape. She's not as confident at, in her work as Dr. Mommy slash and burn theory. Hey, Nick, when an attorney knows full well, a witness who's serving as a medical expert in a certain case has clear bias. What would your recommended strategy be? Which side is the attorney on? Like, cause they hired her for her clear bias. So they, they knew yes. that on, on Amber's side and Johnny's side knows that they did it. So, I mean, the, the thing you do is just highlight the bias as much as possible. The hell? Oh, my printer was making noise. Drew Addison, Nick, I've noticed a lot of cats showing up around my house lately, but I haven't even mentioned OBS yet. Even if it's clearly the solution to all your problems. Sneed, are witnesses expected to elaborate their answers when asked a question or can they just keep it closer to a yes, no response? They're supposed to answer to the extent of the question. If it's yes, no question, yes, no. If it's open-ended, 
talk as talk as far as you want to within the scope of the question. 11 Bravo Crunchy, hashtag sad sinking ship noises. Edgar's friendly civics teacher, her methodology is confirmation bias, nor Vanguard. So is Amber the one who threw poop at Russell Greer's sister's car? Also, since Russell goes after famous women, will he go after Amber? I Nothing would make me happier than uh, Russell Greer rescues Amber Heard from Johnny Depp's evil clutches arc. I mean, oh, Russell, start DMing her, please. God, that'd be <laughs> funny. I assume you don't know who Russell Greer is. I do not. You are so normal and I love it. It's, it's, it's great. Someday, someday I'll show you. Toby Jean Almy, as a sci -sl uh, psychology slash sociology grad, I see this as wildly inappropriate for the APA's president to become involved with either side of this. I'm absolutely disgusted. Victoria Appleseed, they still have Elon and James on the witness list for Amber. Do you still think they won't testify or they have to? Um, they, I do not believe Virginia can compel either of them to testify because they're not within the jurisdiction. They have they been deposed? Not that we know of. There was yeah. a there was talk early on that James Franco was trying to negotiate a confidential deposition. Um, but, but and so he had been a notice had been issued initially, uh, and then kind of fell off the radar for a long time. And then, um, just in the recent build up uh, to the case again, his name showed back up. Um, so you know, don't don't know if that ever happened or not. Elon was consistently, um, you know, notices were issued, um, but he appeared to evade service. No, there you go. Good job. He's, sorry, I was in space. <laughs> Couldn't do it. <laughs> I was driving my Tesla around the earth. Um, yeah. So the, uh, the other, the other question I have on sort of that thread, did you tell me that Whitney Heard did not finish her deposition. And so now there's a question on whether or not she'll be able to testify. Yeah. So this was one of the objections uh, that, that uh, Johnny's team raised um, to Amber Heard's witness list. And the, the nature of the objection was that Whitney sat for basically half the deposition, had some sort of unspecified medical emergency uh, left and didn't come back. And then uh, Amber's attorney was I, I guess, negotiating for her to come back, but only to be questioned by Amber's attorney. Um, so Johnny was arguing, you know, we, we need the opportunity to finish the deposition if she's going to be called as a witness. That was obviously addressed in limine, and we don't know how that's fleshed out. Yes, yeah, so that'll, that'll be interesting to see if they, I think if they lose her, that's a pretty big blow to the team. Um, Cause that she's one of the only allegations uh, against Johnny Depp because he allegedly punched her or pushed her down or something pushed was going to throw her down the stairs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and who wouldn't really R Simpson could Deb's team refer to Dr. Curry's statement on how a psychologist or a psychi a psychiatrist role is not to determine if an event happened. Keep it up, man. I mean, they can do that with her they, or they could have asked uh, the other expert. If she heard that statement, what her opinion was, but I, I would not bother with it because she clearly thought that, uh, that Dr. Curry's work was pointless anyway hate army watch the damning part of that was but wants to stay with depp meaning she considered leaving depp for franco slash and burn theory dr hughes seems like someone who got caught up in being the uh, uh the doctor with famous clients to the point that she's shed most of her professional integrity the the thing another thing that bothered me that they didn't go into on cross and this wasn't super important but they had they asked her about James Franco that she wrote under intimate relationships, but she drew a line. She's like, I drew a line though. And then they have Elon Musk who clearly was an intimate relationship on the same yeah. side as James Franco. And I don't know why they didn't go, but Elon Musk was an intimate relationship and he's on the same side, isn't he? Yeah. And just have her say yes, yeah. but no, you, you answer my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He's on the same side and then move on. Like I wanted just that punctuation. Daniel F. If Amber goes on the stand today, I'll poop on my own bed out of pure excitement. I've been waiting so long. Well, change your sheets, buddy. Evie Warner, this is not going the way I hoped. Ugh. Sejong the Great, I administered a diagnosis with no criteria. Great way to lose a license. Mr. Squiggles, did the doctor just hit on him? Maybe. Dr. Goldsilver, can you get CAPS 5 form to get yourself ready before an, uh, an appointment? Well, I imagine you could download a CAPS 5 form somewhere. There you go. <laughs> Somebody wanted to see the dog. So here's the dog. 
How's it going, pup? <laughs> That's a big man color. Rupert. He's been very good and quiet today, but uh, he's starting to get to his whiny point. Mom, <laughs> when are you going to be done? Mike Hoyer, is being crazy considered a traumatic event? Uh, Daryl Smith, the lawyer doing the cross right now sounds like Captain Cragen from Law & Order SVU. Mr. Squiggles, she was surprised when he asked about her engagement. She then made that comment, I wish I had my cheat sheet, and now the lawyer wants to go on break early. Something about to go down between those two. Uh, next, we have McGill. In my opinion, it is imperative to understand the importance of Amber's diagnosis via stringent testing of MPD and HD. She is playing this out now as per Curry, highly manipulated, sophisticated, and refined in deception. Johnny Rivers, I would fight in attorney in attorney to compete for that hot judge's favor. I want to give her a cavity search on J.K. Rowling's boat. I'd pay for that cruise's ship. If that's bad, let Office Squarehead, Officer Squarehead arrest me and throw away the key. Well, thank you, Johnny Rivers. That was disturbing. Roy Handy, thanks for the entertainment, Nikki. Thank you. Caleb Vernland, I bet Dr. Karen farts loud. <laughs> Robert Leather, expert says worst incident. Jury sees Amber Heard smirking. Uh, Caleb Vernland, I bet Dr. Karen farts long like a grandma. <laughs> Dude. Joseph Magnus. The unanswered question is how many times in the past month that's a zero as opposed to the general frequency, which she says is eight times per month. Well, there was some confusion about that because at the time the test is administered, she'd been broken up with Johnny Depp for three years or something. And so then some of the questions were framed within the past six months, month or year. And then other questions were framed within the past six months, months or year from some point within the relationship. And she didn't lay out very clearly which, when those times changed. And that was confusing. Yeah. She had the two tests where they both are dealing with within the last six months, within the last year or something like that. The caps five, um, she obviously concedes that these reports are not from within the past year, but she doesn't specify what time frame it is that that they're referring to. But then when it came to the um, uh, report of, uh, I, I forget the name of the test, but it's the, I think it was the conflict tactics scale um, that's within the last six months, you know, how often have these things happened? Uh, and you know, at, at that point, Amber is, is apparently referring to the, to the present tense when, or, it wasn't the conflict tactics. I think it was her own symptomology. Um, yeah. So anyway, just massive confusion about what exactly is Amber supposed to be referring to when she's answering this question. And why is this not documented? Documented Is this not supposed to be a replicable test that somebody else would be able to come back and review and, you know, analyze if it was uh, correctly, correctly performed? Right. And, and particularly when when you're going back to a previous date, what is the date? Because mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, you you would assume that the answers would be wildly different uh, depending on the date, especially when she said there are periods of peace and honeymoon and calm. It's like, well, OK, so if she had answered these questions during that honeymoon piece, then there would have been no concerns at all. Like so that changes the whole thing. So you just did you just cherry pick a date with what you determined to be the worst events? Like, how are you saying two to three times a month? If there are months that are on months that are off, like what, what's going on here? That, that was a mess. Uh, nudge. Would it be a good tactic to drag Dr. Karen's cross out in order to cut into Amber's direct time before the long break? Mm, I mean, you could, I, they, they could have spent at least a day with, with the doctor. Uh, if they, yeah, were a if they had day. a decent strategy, which they clearly didn't, you know, they certainly had yeah. the material to spend time on her. The problem is at this point, if they're not making effective use of their cross, they're just wasting their rebuttal time. So yeah, yeah. if they have a good cross exam, it's valuable. Um, but frankly, I feel like they wasted more time on this witness with the strategy they did have than was really called for. Right. Exactly. I don't know what the point of the PowerPoint presentation was, you know, just, just by way of an example. Um, we spent a lot of time on this PowerPoint presentation did not seem particularly impeaching to me. Um, so much more valuable stuff that they could have got into. Um, but the only thing I can think of with the presentation is they wanted to offer it as evidence for their, for their expert to do on rebuttal. I don't know what's in it. So I don't know how valuable that would be. 
Um, mm -hmm. And if she had not reviewed it prior uh, to, you know, during her uh, evaluation, which she did her evaluation first, so likely she wouldn't have. So if she didn't include that in her evaluation, she wouldn't have been able, they wouldn't have been able to offer it through her. So if they're trying to get it in, they get it in and then don't ask any questions. Then on rebuttal, they bring it up and she can tear it apart or, or something. But well, they only that, brought in the first page, though. It was Amber that brought in the entire thing, you know, and, right. and so yeah, only bringing in the too. first page to me, it just looked like a gotcha. It looked like a very weak and, and ineffective um, way of trying to show bias again when they just had so much more material to work with. You have her own words from yesterday to show mm -hmm. all of the bias you could ever want. I mean, uh, it that was that's great. And again, they didn't focus on this enough, but like all of your work outside of the courtroom is free, all of it, because you advocate in a very specific way to the point where people don't even need to interview you. They don't need to do anything because they know exactly what side you're going to fall on, don't mm -hmm. they? No, they go with my professional credentials. You'd agree that there's plenty of other people with similar credentials to you, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. yes, of course. But they hire you because they know you and they know how you're going to vote on the or you're going to determine yeah. on these things. Just they picked they Dr. Could've... Madison Avenue for a reason. Exactly. Uh, Nudge says, uh, wait, read that one. Sandy Pez, Nick, speak on Amber Heard and Elon's frozen. In 2017, born 422 to maybe leak pics before end of case to look softer. I saw a pic with court hair last week. Google details. Uh, I, so I guess this is uh, a baby, like um, an IVF baby or something that were or a surrogate. Because yeah, Amber she has, has she used a surrogate. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I don't know what the. I don't know if there was some grand plan to have the baby around for pictures for this trial. Uh, maybe. Who knows? Um, the landlord says, bring back mommy, Dr. Curry, David Stowe wife is finishing her PhD in psych. And she has been mes messaging me. Oh, I thought it said massaging me. I was like, dang, for the last two days, telling me how much she hates Dr. Hughes and how biased she is. Jill Jensen, uh, Jansen says this doctor must be removed because of proven bias. Mr. Squiggles there on break. Now let's see if the lawyer comes back with his tie on backwards. <laughs> Sandy, P Sandy Pez dry frozen baby they had to be real close by 2017 glenn shouldn't child protective services be alerted regarding amber's diagnosis drugs and violent behavior not a good environment for a kid to go up in uh no child protective services should only be alerted if there is a reasonable uh i don't know if it's reasonable suspicion but because it, it's public reports but if there's some sort of reason for people to believe the baby's in danger like actually in danger not potentially could be in danger at some future point um that's that's just uh i'm not i'm not a huge fan of that that thing will phoenix uh thank you for the donation Lan let's see jesse says from a law student is a doctor going doing a good job for a defendant yes yeah she did she did very well yes she did. addison how Addison Howard, great analysis of the case, but this viewer to like ratio is way off. Let's get him to the top of the feed. Hit that like button, y'all. Hit the like button. Bonus content. The waitress is a miss. The witness is a misandrous hammer and all she sees are abusive nails. The illustrious dude. She has PTSD from childhood. Not Johnny. Typical in borderline personality disorder cases. Could be why it's omitted in the notes as well. What's up, Runkle? Hey, did I miss anything when I was flying today? <laughs> uh, yeah, a little, a little. Just, uh, a couple of things happened. Yep. Yeah. yeah, just just Amber Heard taking the stand. That, that's all. Uh, yeah, we're just reading through super chats now, so uh, you're welcome to be here. Roscoe oh, well, P. You. Coltrane, would a mostly male jury be more favorable to a pretty female alleging victimhood, or more likely to identify with an actual male victim? I think the age. The age and backgrounds of that jury is going to matter. I heard that it's majority male between 25 and 35. I think the doctors of like, I think the doctor did well, but I think she's a real danger to that demographic. I think 25 to 35 year old men are, are the ones who are most, most uh, likely to be turned off by the idea that they might all be abusers. <laughs> I think, I think, Younger than 25, I think they could bite into that. Older than 35, I think you start to get into 
uh, the these sort of older notions of chivalry and respect that that would maybe you know get past that. But but I think that that's the dangerous age range for that doctor. But who knows? Uh, it, it could depend. It could change a lot on background. Cerebral palsy biker. Thank you for the lemon sticker. JB, they need to ask, have you ever had to reject a client because they were lying about being a victim? Uh, David Stowe says, say Aquaman uh, Bumbaclot in Jamaican accent. accent. Aquaman Bumbaclot. Uh, okay. Emily B. Hey, Peter, can we use her facial expressions in court to impeach the assertion that she's an actress? No. <laughs> <laughs> Self-impeaching. David, David Stowe. As someone who has to deal with a family member who self-harms, if they admit to doing it once, they are doing it regularly. It's embarrassing to admit. No, it was just once while she was a teenager a long time ago, and she just couldn't remember where it was on her body at all. Uh, that Again, that, that struck me as dishonest uh, from the doctor. Like, wait. Oh, and especially because she quoted Amber saying it was a stupid thing that I really regret and I never did it again or whatever. She said like an exact line. It's like, but you don't remember what appendage it was on or where <laughs> come on now. Uh, Redramax. So she said it in the context of scamber, not having a borderline personality disorder. Evie Warner, Warner, what the fuck? They aren't getting it in. What the fuck? Will Phoenix. Thank you for the donation again. Um, Darius Harvey, he seems scared slash not confident the whole time. I don't, I think that's just the way that guy talks. I think he yeah. has kind of that, that stunted gravelly sort of, sort of talk, which can sound like nerves, but I don't think it was. Steven Severin, a toast or a roast to my wife and I's fifth year wedding anniversary, got married on Star Wars Day and next year is Revenge of the Sixth. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> happy anniversary a toast to you guys five years strong and many more to come cheers did that mm. cross-examination go that badly i only caught a little tiny bit of it but it seemed like he was making headway i like andrea's atrocious. description of it better <laughs> it was atrocious it was possibly one of the worst cross-examinations i've ever seen <laughs> oh See, but there's a there's a difference of opinion uh, from Andrea to to the panel that we had here. Uh, we we didn't think it was that bad, but uh, but Andrea thought it was very very bad. So I think we can agree though that it was it was not effective. Uh, yeah. That that is for sure. That is for sure. But maybe I'm a too much of a softy. Well, and I'm judging it in fairness against the potential of what it could have been, just knowing the yeah. universe of what was out there. You know, to 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 be able to just push in her face and, and make her account for. Um, and so the fact that none of that happened is, uh, is just beyond disappointing for me. And see, that's a, that's a difference between us is, you know, a whole lot more of the background, uh, on this case than I do. And so like when you're talking about, well, they could have done this and this and this, it's like, well, well, shit, <laughs> now that you mentioned that, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that would have been good. Uh, but I, I don't know any of that. I'm just going off of what I see. So, uh, so there, what uh, I really so wanted to see them do is I wanted to see them go through this analysis. She had tried to identify all these categories of abuse, psychological abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, et cetera, et cetera. And implying that Johnny Depp has perpetrated all of these things against Amber Heard. I really wanted to see them turn the script on that and, you know, bring out the audios where Amber Heard is, is, you know, being a nasty little cunt, um, bring out, you know, yeah. the, the, the mean text messages, bring out Johnny Depp, you know, begging for his security guards to come and get him out of the room because she won't stop hitting him, bring out the photographs of Johnny Depp's injured face, all of these things that, that really support, um, your case that that is exactly what you want to be highlighting for the jury this is your opportunity to to put them out there front and center again so they didn't do that it was a great opportunity to be able to frame amber heard as the abuser because every single one of those things they have evidence of her doing they left that on the table and then it's it's just an open opportunity as well to point out how okay the the witness has accepted this particular version of events 
let's get into the contradictory evidence. You had to discount. She basically just did what Judge Nichol did. You know, you had to discount the police officers that came to the scene and saw nothing. You had to discount the independent witnesses who disagree. You had to, you know, discount the the note from um, from Monroe Tinker that says there's no injury at the same time that she's claiming to have two black eyes, a broken nose, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So just rub her nose in the fact of her own cherry picking of what she chose to rely on to support her her version of events. That's what I wanted to see. Then you go ahead and go back and hit her with the bias stuff about, oh, by the way, you've never even, you know, seen an abusive woman yeah. ever, have you? Great. End of story. Sit down. Um, Here's one. There was just so <laughs> many opportunities there and they took none of them. Please tell me yeah, they well, at least hit her with the, uh, the Amber Heard mocking, you know, nobody's, you know, will anybody believe that you're the abused no. victim here? They didn't play that audio, no. No, what? the only one they played was Amber Heard, uh, the one where, you know, she 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 did start a physical fight. Yeah, I did start a physical fight. Oh, no. Yeah. They, the jury oh. hasn't even heard yet. The jury hasn't even heard Amber Heard telling Johnny Depp to suck my dick. <laughs> you know, she said it like a hundred <laughs> times. Go, go jerk Travis off. You know, all of these just, just gross, abusive things. The jury has heard none of that so far. It's in evidence and they're not playing it. Because, yeah, I would have wanted to throw that in the expert's face and be like, you know, isn't that exactly what you're doing? And Yeah, all all of the times where she was calling him a coward and saying, you you know, you're trying to leave and you, you just want to leave and we need to fight. Like, we need to deal with this now and now and now and not letting him go. Yeah. And him saying, look, I'm just trying to get away and calm things down for a little bit. I'm just trying to get away. I'm just trying to get away. And let her tell the jury that that's his emotional manipulation and, and somehow sexual abuse, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and to give another example of where they, where they really dropped the ball, uh, just that was obvious that I, that I'm aware of uh, was, you know, he got her on the bottle throwing, right. And showed her the finger or whatever, and got her to say that throwing a bottle is never okay, which is fine. But it's like, is putting a cigarette out on someone's face, reactive violence. Yeah. Cause like it's in yeah. the same picture you're showing. It's the same event. And, and uh, we mentioned that at the time. It's like, well, why, why don't you mention putting a cigarette out on someone's face? Like that is, yeah. it's such a, it's a grossly abusive image. No one what about like spitting on well, it, and it's also you spit on him from the stairs. Is that reactive violence to spit on somebody? It's impossible to sell that. Like if he's laying there, the account is he's laying there on the ground injured, and she ashes the cigarette. Like it's impossible for that to be reactive violence. Like that's not that's not well, offensive. That's like just a, cruelty. A, of all of the defensive weapons you could choose, like in a defensive situation, a cigarette that is that is ember is the worst. Like <laughs> it's not helping you. You can pick up yeah. a table leg or anything like that, but it's like, nah, that, that doesn't <laughs> happen. You need the person in a submissive position to administer the burn. That's the whole point. That's why it's so demeaning, degrading, and horrible. It's a torture uh, implement, is what it comes it, down to. It's not exactly, uh, you know, it has no use as a weapon. In terms yeah. of any, you know, stopping a fight or whatever else, it's a torture implement. Johnny team, when cross examining Amber, need to ask her when, if ever, you've been arrested for. Oh wait, I read, I read that one. Caroline Ann, the way Johnny Depp's lawyer set that up kind of implies there was prior violence from Amber. If I was on the jury, that's what I'd assume. I mean, it kind of implies it because there's a credible allegation that involved an arrest for domestic violence. Uh, like you don't need to imply it. You get to sledgehammer that home if you do it right. And and yeah. for somewhere along the line, there was a failing or the judge simply has made a hard line ruling on that. And, and they're not ready to let that in. Like they, they need something really heavy, but it seemed like, it seemed like that judge should have let it in there. Yeah, I think so. Well, Jen Selfridge. I saw the well, direct and just, I was thinking the whole time, how do you, you know, you've got to be, it's got to be relevant to contradict this narrative that she's clearly spun for herself that is so hard to reconcile with all of the evidence that we've seen. So. Yeah. I mean, just all of the testimony about the abuse and how she's, she's a victim and, and uh, reactive violence. This wasn't reactive violence or was the, did she talk about the reactive violence of beating someone in 2009? Like, yeah. was that reactive <laughs> violence or was that, was that perpetrated violence? Can you explain that to us? 
Oh, she didn't even tell you about that. That's not a factor in your analysis. Oh, okay. Well, we can throw your report in the garbage and you can go after it. Well, and that's the other thing I would have gone to gone through if I could is she didn't tell you about this incident. She didn't tell you about that incident. She didn't tell you about this other incident. So what you're saying is that Miss Heard was dishonest with you and that you based your report on a dishonest report and your report's kind of crap, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Would you agree well, that the, the the value of your conclusions is only as good as the information you relied upon to draw them? Isn't that correct? And you'd agree <laughs> then that that means that it's only as good as Ms. Hurd is honest. <laughs> because that, I think, is the uh, the connection there is. Uh, yeah. Would you agree that you still get paid for your shoddy work? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Frog Frame says, here's some money to go buy Acquitted on Steam, Griff the Night Away. Uh, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Um, Jen Selfridge, Johnny should sell his courtroom doodles of Amber Heard's witnesses to make up for the 50 million she lost them. I'd buy them. I mean, I, Bay, I might bid on auction for one of those. Jimbe the boss, yo Nick, been watching since the lull suit. Just want to request a Drex and Buck stream. I want to see if Drex can get him wet. That's disgusting. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I I would love to do that stream. I don't know when Drex is coming out next, but uh, but when I find out, I I'd be happy to reach out to Buck Angel on that. Adam Trap, Amber's face. I should have just let Elon turn me into a robot. <laughs> CL Hunter, Jack Murphy blocked me. The only reason I think why is that I started a daily Jack Murphy quote on Twitter. I didn't even add him. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what he accomplished because he can still choose to see my tweets if he wants to. David Cobb, Amber clearly doesn't understand what it's like to get mad and stay that way rather than tether between emotional extremes. Uh, simp for thick, uh, thick, thick boy says there is no rest for the wicked. Scott Campbell uh, in Richard's voice. Your Honor, I'd like to inform the court that the cross of Amber Heard's therapist uh, stricken from the record and Nick Rakita should do a new <laughs> and much better cross. <laughs> no, I'd rather have Andrea do the cross. I would love to do that cross. Please let me do that cross. <laughs> uh CS says this would be acceptable testimony if she qualified her statements as it could be that or this could represent or is consistent with pretending she knows what went down makes her incredible. Well, there was a time where she flat out testified on Amber's behalf and like defended her. And it was like, dude, this is that's where they should have called attention to that from the judge, in my opinion. Yeah. And she was basically saying, like, here are the facts. And I have I've basically stood in as a judge. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I get, I was gritting my teeth through that going, Ugh, you can't have this in front of a jury. Yeah. Christopher Ruber. Thanks for the donation. Russell Eddie, big storms last night here in Virginia. Legend of dairy says, what if any <laughs> Mr. Shado day 14 train wreck, what can Depp do if losing this trial? I, Again, this the the cross exam of the doctor went poorly. I don't think Depp, I don't think Depp's victory relies on that doctor's testimony. I think the victory in this trial goes directly to the jury's impression of Johnny Depp on the witness stand versus the jury's impression of Amber Heard on the witness stand and who they find more credible. I mean, the experts are there to get facts in and diagnoses and all of that stuff and, and can quibble over it. But at the end of the day, if the jury believes Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp wins. And if the jury believes Amber Heard, Johnny Depp loses. And I think that expert might have been so dislikable because I have friends who are very much, uh, they were very much inclined to towards Miss Heard. Um, and they were saying that the expert was crap. So, uh, yeah. I, she came I across just as, yeah, she, she very had incredible. And, and Johnny Depp's expert, uh, Dr. Curry, I mean, she did not come across as incredible. In fact, and this is probably smart, addressed many of the negative aspects of Johnny Depp's uh, psyche, so to speak. The, this, his, his activities and behaviors um, were not, there wasn't so much gloss, I felt. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm looking at that rose tinted, but she just came across better to me. Aldrich Xavier, I could really see the bias on this judge not calling bull on this witness acting beyond her scope and using three syllabled words to draw the jury. I mean, but that's the lawyers that got to call that out. Yep. Um, Nightmare Zero, get ready for some cat lady squats. She's going to be sore for three days or more, depending on how long Amber is up there. Lol, 
I'll Lamau if the second or third day she has to has to ask the judge to remain seated due to sore. <laughs> what from all of the standing up from the objections that are coming on cross? Momo, this therapist is full of BS. Who would give their violent abuser a knife? Uh, light giver. Dave Chappelle was attacked last night in an event by a leftist. Uh, Uncle Russ, Nick didn't wish him a happy birthday. Hasta la vista, baby. Uh, Amy, when is rebuttal uh, at the end of um, Amber Heard's case in chief? If they if they have time a lot uh, allocated for it. Jen Nay, anyone else get the sense that Dr. Karen's demeanor changed a bit today? Maybe since learning of Amber's CDV yesterday and the public hates her now? I, I don't know. I, di I didn't see. I think the change in demeanor is explained by the change in questioner, uh, yeah. frankly. Uh, and also someone noted earlier that uh, she was facing the jury a lot yesterday. And today she was answering the um, lawyer. <laughs> she was not facing the jury. But uh, my explanation of that is you positive discussion on a direct exam goes to the jury. Negativity saying no to everything, denying things and, and equivocating that goes towards the lawyer. Personally, I think that's just a smart move. Andrew Hansen just saw an amazing tweet. They leaked the SCOTUS draft because they love killing things prematurely. <laughs> Paraphrase for character limits. Light giver. I want to know if Johnny really harassed directors or actors about Amber like the doc claimed. Well, if only any of those people had been deposed about it. Uh, the juice box. Hey, Nick, love the content. I am of the solemn opinion that Depp and Heard had an extreme BDSM relationship that went sour. Opinions? Uh, I, I don't think they had an extreme BDSM relationship. I, I don't I, think there's... I don't think that was a BDSM yeah. thing at all. Um, no. Uh, Heather Hanks, as actress, I'm sure she's practiced her testimony. You'd hope so. Uh, you you, you could act. Right. I, didn't, I don't think she did a great job. Sarah, too, has it been determined that the monster they talk about is actually Johnny and not the monster being the drugs? Well, I mean, I think I think Johnny's addiction being the monster is fine. That doesn't mean that an abusive man is the monster. That means that the monster is this thing that he struggles with, that he fights with, that takes control of him sometimes. That doesn't mean that when when he's under the influence of drugs that he goes and beats someone. So I, to me, like they're conflating the term monster with him wrestling with a monster internally and some monster coming, uh, manifesting and beating Amber Heard. So they're, they're borrowing the language and you can't get around it because he used the language. So they're going to take that out of context in the same way that they keep going back to the point part where it says, I cut off my left finger to remind myself not to cut off a finger again. When he, the, the finger that was cut off was on his right hand. So it wasn't yeah. his left finger, but they're like, see, he admitted to cutting off his finger. It's like, that's it's his other hand. Uh, Robert, uh, Gore Chanez, reach out to Asmongold and see if you can get him on your stream. He's been streaming the case on Twitch all week. Hilarious takes. Tarkina Meyer, this psychologist looks like Anna Mira, Ben Stiller's mom, but with a resting bitch face and not funny. The Amazing Jay, one thing I'll say about the expert is that her bias is obvious. She listed the time she's defended male victims, but you'll notice who she listed as the perpetrators. All of them were other men, not women. Incarnation Art, what do you think Mommy Muffin's toes are painted? Full color or French manicure? <laughs> scooter <laughs> i hate you guys uh alan v who says that nick puts a foley catheter in every am so that he can stream without pissing for 19 hours in a row now i usually get up and go to the bathroom and i really need to joseph magnus can't johnny depp's lawyer ask if amber heard if prior to her relationship with johnny depp she's ever been accused of domestic abuse even though it'll be objected they got to be real careful uh, the judge, if the judge made a strong ruling on the motion in limine, then you cannot, you do not want to bring that up without permission. Um, that can, that can really sour a judge on you. Uh, Dave E penguins are getting taller soon. They will be taller than people again. That's true. Um, principal wait, no read that one. Virtual is, do you think Depp's team is waiting to recall Dr. Curry so she can eviscerate Dr. Karen herself? Yeah, I I think they plan on doing that. They, well, they I think God they God knows they need the help. Yeah, and and I think I think uh, just the call out of Dr. Curry's work is as being shoddy. 
um, with a bunch of missing stuff on her forms gives ripe ground for assuming Dr. Curry did her work well, gives ripe ground for her to come in and talk about how not unshoddy of a job she did and how shoddy the other lady was saying, well, you know, I actually wrote all the notes down on my inventory. I actually took into account things and didn't expect uh, a test that's supposed to be repeatable to rely on someone else's uh, scattered, scattered thoughts, you know, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I think they probably should be bringing her on rebuttal, uh, assuming they have time. David Hamilton, Les camp counselor is repulsed by the idea of having her face near a dirty rug. I don't believe it. Hashtag boxer legal mommy killing it. Oh, I hate you. Donna V, please explain why Depp's team didn't destroy Don Hughes. Do you think they have something up their sleeve for rebuttal? Guys, um, this comes up in every trial. Uh, lawyers are not hiding the ball. There, there's no like up the sleeve, sleight of hand trickery because you may never get to that thing. Mm -hmm. So you play your cards all the time up front. You don't save anything. What if the witness gets hit by a bus tomorrow before you get them on the stand? And now your brilliant plan that relied on this person is gone. No, you, you, if you've got an opportunity, you take it and you play it as hard and fast as possible because you may not get another shot. Uh, any, anything could happen that would prevent it. So uh, anytime you're tempted to ask if a lawyer's just like, being coy or saving something yeah. for a big surprise. No. Also, no. we're not that smart and crafty. We're, we're really blunt objects that are used to just batter an idea in. It's, it's not, it, we're not, we're not supposed to be sliding in under the radar. If you've got a good point, you want to make it every single time you can make yes. it. Not like not yes. one big show. You want to, you want to make it your whole theme. The more times the, you can make that point, the better the better chance you're going to have of, you know, the jury is going to remember that point when they go into deliberations. Yeah, because when you make the, the big point, when you do your big reveal, what if a juror is sneezing? What if a juror <laughs> is remembering uh, the pain, the, the, like they're experiencing sciatica at the time? They're just not listening. Any number of things could distract a juror during your brilliant reveal. You want to hammer that like like a circus tent post man ting 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 over and over uh frog nation did you see the latest vid from popcorn planet no uh i've had andy on the show he seems like a nice guy but i i don't have time to watch other people's content on amber heard and johnny depp right now uh because it's it's all of my day um leslie squad re possible defense rebuttal amber heard's first witness is subject to recall would that mean they have rebuttal or can they recall for something else well she could be subject to recall for being called by Johnny Depp. Uh, well, but she can also be recalled in their case in chief later on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They could, they could call Amber. They could go through some other witnesses and they could call her back to, to do something else. Mm. To rehabilitate Amber from her cross. <laughs> that would be funny. Now let me tell you why that cross sounded crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Igster tail. Telly says, can you give an early Mother's Day shout out to my battle axe of a mom? Her name's Mayclift. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mayclift, happy early Mother's Day, you old battle axe. Uh, that is when it's said as a term of endearment is a sign of an iron lady who has been through enough to hold her own in any forum. Cheers to you. Happy Mother's Day. Mm. Uh, Andrew Wahoo, would you ever do a stream on Title Nine? Uh, sure. Who? I mean, Ooh, the stories Title I can tell. <laughs> a disaster, but well, maybe we should do a stream on Title IX. You could tell those stories. That'd oh be man, small town lawyer in a college town. Yeah, I can tell you stories about Title IX. <laughs> Igor Slagathor, how soon is the court transcript available for public view? Um, also, do they transcribe sidebar as well? Yes, they do transcribe sidebar as well. Will you stream transcript review if available? You usually have to pay for the transcript and they have to prepare it. Uh, I, I don't know how long that preparation takes. Um, that's probably going to vary by courtroom. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to, if they'll have it available anytime soon during the trial. It might be something they do later uh, if people want to buy it. And usually you're buying those transcripts for the purposes of appeal um, and they cost a a lot, a of lot, money. incredible a lot. amount sometimes. Yeah, yes. Th thousands of dollars per day. Uh, yes. sometimes. So, 
Um, Principal Pondering says, this is the last time I ever send you a super chat. You never read them. You rather read requests <laughs> to say things in weird voices than answer real questions. Expletive. If I could get a refund, I would. I, re I read every super chat on every show. So I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, maybe you leave before it gets read. That's possible. But if that, I, I don't ask anybody to send me anything. So if you don't want to send one, please don't. Uh, please do not. Winged Paragon. Why does Amber Heard 5% on the poll? Who's fapping wrong? <laughs> Our Ross. Here's the super chat. Since Principal Pondering is being a whiner, I'll pick up where they are leaving off. <laughs> okay, thanks. Automata. Couldn't the plaintiff recite the quote from Dr. Hughes and ask her if that comported with the materials that she reviewed without further comment? Uh, yes, they, they could. They could certainly recite any quote that she said and ask her about it. Uh, anything in, in the, in the thing. Um, and just real quick to that principal pondering person, I, I assume you're not still here, but the chats that come in, if I were to read them as they come in, you wouldn't hear any testimony at all. Uh, you wouldn't hear any questions, any testimony. They come in throughout the entire trial uh, almost constantly, which is wonderful. But um, you you wouldn't be able to understand what's going. It'd just be me reading over someone else talking, and and that busts up the flow so bad. Uh, Automata. Uh, wait, read that one. Jordan Wolf. I've been following you since Rittenhouse and love your live streams. Life is tough right now. Do you have any advice? Yes. When life is tough, do two things. Uh, one, go for easy victories, uh, things that you know that you are good at and bring you some joy so you can get that uh, get that little bit of, I don't know, call it dopamine, call it whatever you want, some encouragement, some positivity. And the other thing is to focus on you because uh, you're the only thing in your life that you can change. So uh, take, up a, take up a hobby, work out, do something to self-actualize and self-improve. And, um, and then as the storm blows past, uh, one, you'll you'll have something that's fulfilling that you've been working on. And two, it may help with the storm a little bit in the short term as well. So great advice, um, Nick. And on that note, I do have to head out. So <laughs> <laughs> I do well, thank appreciate you. it. Uh, <laughs> always having the chance to come on your show. So thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. Uh finally we got rid of the smartest person on the stream. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're, they're stuck with us. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's fluid art. Can you shout me out in Mark Richards? I have an abstract acrylic and resin art channel on YouTube and rumble much appreciated, appreciated for all you do. Yeah. Um, guys, you should check out Jessica's fluid art. I, it kind of sounds like a sex thing, but it's not, it's actually acrylic <laughs> and resin artwork channel on uh, YouTube also on rumble. Cause Supporting alternative tech is kind of important, um, but but give it a look. Uh, G says, make AK finish law school so he can join these. Yeah, Brandon Herrera. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> is he Not in law school? He went to law school. He he stopped going to law school. Ah, okay. Uh, and then he well, went and made a YouTube a channel move. with like <laughs> two million subscribers. So I think I think he picked correct. <laughs> yeah, no, I he made the right call. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, not so crabby. Hey, Rackets, can you give a happy birthday to my big, my dad, Big Crab? He's an amazing father, and we're both fans of your streams. I put him on your channel about a month ago. Much thanks. Happy birthday to Big Crab, raising a not so crabby son. I'm glad you guys enjoy the streams, and I love that I get to be part of uh, a father son. Well, I assume son, father son bonding time. And uh, may you guys have many more years of camaraderie and a growing relationship as it goes. Hmm. Reginald Banks, regardless of what happens, is Johnny ever going to get back into the movie industry and get back big time acting roles? I'm pessimistic on it, but he has won over public support so far so well that I think it's possible. I do think it's possible. I think uh, and, and if they can frame this, if they if they can get victory on the idea that this is a false narrative and they can rail against uh, the the exploitation of actual victims of domestic violence, I think he's got a shot. And cynically, I suspect it might also depend on how badly uh, the latest Aquaman movie does. Um, and I'm not, you know, telling people what to do, so please don't sue me, Aquaman uh, producers. But uh, I suspect that if Amber Heard becomes a toxic uh, property, that they might be more inclined to to cast uh, Depp again. Well, I'd, I'd say that you 
you shouldn't go see you shouldn't not see Aquaman because of Amber Heard, but you should just not see Aquaman because it's Aquaman and the DC movies largely have been absolute trash. So that's also no, no, fair. <laughs> no hate on Jason Momoa. I like him. He's fine. Uh, and if you could see Aquaman or if you could just maybe get the uh, the expurgated version with just Jason Momoa, that'd be fine. The ladies would buy that. That'd make trillions of dollars. Women would buy that all day. Like, oh, wait, Jason Momoa is shirtless again. <laughs> And I don't have to watch anybody else. Oh, wow. I'm in heaven. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think it's a, it's a really tough prospect to come back from being canceled because these, uh, these movie studios are, you know, reactive to this me too stuff in general. But the big thing for um, Johnny Depp, of course, is that look at who's going to testify for him. I mean, he's got like this Richard Marks guy seems to be a, hotshot lawyer like well connected in the industry has no problem coming in and testifying very favorably for johnny depp his his agent comes in uh and i mean these these guys are still there and these guys are still high up in the industry going to bat for him like that that should tell you something about the the willingness to to do this i i think johnny's probably still got tons of friends in the industry where like hands are tied because the studio can't be associated with this but if he wins, I think he's got a good shot. Yeah, it, I, it all. I'd love Go to ahead. see him back on back in the saddle because it's tragic. I've seen so many situations of guys um, who've been abused and end up as my clients because they get charged because they're, you know, they push or something, you know, or they're it's just a BS allegation and it ruins them. Yeah. Um, but but the heavy the heavy question that we will not be able to answer is what do studio execs think of Johnny Depp in closed doors in private uh, that that's what matters yeah. if they if they still like him in private then they'll have the ability to bring him back after things calm down and are they willing his, to gamble on him right i think it's a safe bet right now but we haven't finished this trial yet so uh, not applicable, applicable says struggle Elmo. No, Stephanie <laughs> King, please see tweet. I tagged you in showing footage of PR guy passing note to Amber Heard lawyer behind a sheet of paper. Um, again, unless Amber is directing communications in violation of the court's order, not to speak publicly on the trial. I, I don't see the problem with her handing him with them, handing him a note of any kind. Uh, you know, there could be any number of things on the note that would, I guess, be improper, but without, without more, just communicating with someone in the gallery during the court day, a note is a discreet way to do that without disturbing the court. So I don't see a problem with it. I'm not aware of any orders or laws that would prevent that from being a thing. There could be one. The judge could have issued an order or there could be a local rule that I'm not familiar with. But I, I think people are making a, a bunch out of that. Um, and I, mm -hmm. I don't see the problem. The note could just say you owe me another $10,000 and that's fine. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or the note could say, uh, go grab a sandwiches. You bitch, your headlines suck. Uh, it, who knows? <laughs> or, or it could be something like, Hey, uh, we'd love to see some data on how, how the social media response is going, you know, the next two days. Uh, and it, it could be a lot of stuff that is not improper at all. Yeah. Um, dank count. She's going to get depth to, uh, she's going to say Depp took her to Afghanistan to kill Ukrainian kids. That's why she got PTSD. <laughs> uh, Ruth, uh, Ruthushka says as bad as it sounds being married to Amber, remember that she is the sole legal parent of a child she bought through IVF and surrogacy. Well, uh, yeah, hopefully you, you hope that the baby is in good hands. Panagiotis, uh, says, uh, Panagiotis Gavithis. So this dumb question from a med student that knows Jack Potato about law. What kinds of objections can you make? P.S. Love the show. Started wasting my time here during Rittenhouse. Please live stream my future malpractice cases. Thanks. <laughs> happily, <laughs> happily. Just, just send me a note when they happen. Um, the objections that you make are based on the rules of evidence. Uh, the federal rules of evidence exist, and each state has largely adopted the federal rules with maybe some mild variations. But, um, you know, the common objections are leading questions hearsay, relevancy, uh, foundation, um, compound questions, uh, vague questions. Yeah. Gosh, there could be that, that those are the 
most common ones. Those are the big ones. There could there could certainly be some other ones, but uh, and then you'll have different shades of each thing that I just mentioned. But the, those are the big ones. But they're all from the rules of evidence. There are specific rules on what evidence is admissible and not, and you object to citing to the rule as to why this is not admissible. Uh, and when you hear someone just go objection. I did get through, I, I did win one time uh, with saying objection. And the judge said, what? And I said, are we serious? Sustained. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> got it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's, that's a, that's a rare occurrence. Usually you have to cite to a rule. As a very junior lawyer, or like an articling student, uh, I had an objection and I was like, objection, uh, hearsay. And the judge is like, no. Um, I think you meant relevance. I went, yes. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you're, you're correct. It's, <laughs> it's a bad question. <laughs> the online biz whiz. Thanks to the donation. Nexi redub the common myths vid. He with she uh, YouTube shorts. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Steampunker X do depths team avoid questions to experts because their answers may give Amber ideas on how to answer the same question. They want maximum fail by Amber. No, they, they avoid questions to the experts for one of two reasons. One, they don't have a good plan for the questions. Two, you may want to avoid, I mentioned this as a dangerous expert witness because she's a professional who's done this hundreds and hundreds of times. Yeah, You may want to just avoid letting her get good answers on things um, that she can explain away when you'd rather just leave the implication there. Uh, so that, that it kind of depends question by question. Online BizWiz, why is there no recross in this trial? If frankly, like the recross thing in in some of these criminal trials, I'm not sure why the hell there was recross at all. Uh, I've always just been familiar with direct cross and redirect, and like the, this recross thing um, has not been present in any courtroom that I've been in. But my experience is not expansive, so I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. But uh, this is just how the judge runs their court and judges do have discretion to allow that stuff. I think the, the recross and the redirect and the, or the re redirect and the re recross nonsense just gets way too burdensome uh, and cumulative. Jay Lama. The reason it didn't look like her nose was broken was because they took her nose and put it in her cheeks. Then she pooped on the medical records. Duh rackets. Simper Marine. Do you think the psychologist took this high level case thinking it would help her business, but now regrets her decision? Don Hughes, Don Hughes just put on a resume clinic for anybody else who's in this type of situation. No, I, I don't think like I know her, her page got review bombed or whatever, but the people going to Don Hughes, uh, paying for the Madison Avenue psychologist to testify on behalf of a battered woman, they're not concerned with a WebMD review. Like, and they know exactly what they're buying. Yes. Like, you don't end up with somebody like that by accident. You you yeah. shopped for that. The the review bombing of Don Hughes is actually probably a selling point for someone who's in Amber Heard's situation in the future. Yeah, it's, you know, if you go to her and you're coming away with and trying to say, oh, well, I thought I was getting somebody unbiased. It's about as plausible as when somebody's like, well, I thought I was buying flour in a little tiny baggie from you know, that guy on the street corner, like, no. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I mean, like, look, you, you want, you want a doctor, you want an expert who's going to testify for the merits of your case within uh, their professional credibility. Like you, you want them to be honest and truthful, but let's be honest, you're paying them. You're not going to give someone $50,000 to come up and say, no, actually Johnny Depp was a horrific abuse. <laughs> like you're yeah. not going to do that. Uh, so, uh, you want, you want the, it's this weird thing with the expert testimony industry. Um, there, there is a clear bias. Uh, it's, it's, all experts are unbiased and all experts throughout history have always happened to testify in agreement with the person who hired them. So um, it's there. really rare that you find, you know, like if you do people who do personal injury, there's experts who testify for like the plaintiff side and experts who testify for the defense side. And there's not a whole lot of crossover. And that's kind of, I think it's a problem with the whole expert industry. I would love to see some changes to that, but, uh, but I, I don't know how you do. 
Like, I don't know how you get the changes. I had a, I had a case with some genetic, I had, I didn't actually have to hire the expert. Uh, cause I didn't end up being the primary representative on the case, which was, thank God it was a disgusting mess. But, um, the, uh, there was some genetic evidence and I called an expert, uh, to see, cause it was like, okay, if we're going to fight, fight this, I got to hire a guy Let's call the expert, relay the evidence to him. And he said, don't hire me. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so uh, th there's, there's some honesty in the industry there. They, they know he didn't want, to, he's not going to take someone's money and then come and put them in prison. Right. Yeah. And I mean, often before you hire an expert, you'll sort of walk your theory of things past them and just mm -hmm. be like, Hey, is this possible? You know, my guy says he wasn't drunk. He was, you know, something else. And the expert might say, yeah, that's plausible or nah. And if it's the latter, you're not hiring the guy. Yeah. Uh, simple answer. Remember, everything's a store. Bit happy. I kind of worry that the jury won't remember most of Johnny's witnesses that would have spoken over three weeks earlier by the time the case is over. Is that a potential issue in the cases as long as this? Sure. Uh, it, it absolutely is. But you also have that rebuttal time to bring them back. Uh, you know, you get if they have a day or two of rebuttal to do some quick hits on important points. Then they'll they'll rectify that. Landlord, her acting is hilariously bad. Brandon McLean, the turd heard around the world. Uh, G says she should have hired B. Ivory. <laughs> Ghost Crusaders, daddy wasn't there to take me to the fair. The pronado, certainly interesting that she calls him Johnny, but he always called her Miss Heard. Uh, David Tate, Amber's dad painted houses, a.k.a. killed people. Damn. Satan the Sir, gaming in something, says struggle to find the words for how painful this is. Probably less painful than being beaten by your wife. Mo thought dad beat her smiles when she talks about him. Uh, remember at the same time, Johnny Depp's mother was horrific to him and he smiled and had fond feelings towards her up till the day that she died too. Uh, abuse is complicated. Very, very complicated, especially in parent child relationships. Yeah. Um, 200 watt studio. My dad had me break down uh, the horses down mentally <laughs> pepperoni, my melons shit is about to hit the bed. White Alakazam, right of reply, tagged me in a tweet about you sending cheese pizza to Nate. What do I have to do with this? Oh, uh, I, apparently I sent cheese. Okay. Sound, sounds good. Whatever. Uh, that uh, right of reply is a mentally handicapped, uh, insane person. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, this is he's a person worth, who... He's not worth thinking about, really. He's uh, Yeah, he... He's everywhere he can. He's he's uh, calling me a pedophile because I call child pornography child pornography. Because I mean, in that's the in, legal term generally. Well, apparently there's some place in the UK that doesn't use that term. So therefore, everybody else in the world should not. Which is, I mean, I guess. <sighs> I don't know. I I try not to think of that guy, and I'm pretty successful at it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry. So, so is everybody else in his life. Um, yeah, well. Geth Ralkin. <laughs> Geth Ralkin says they need to link her breaking horses with Depp being a horse she needed to break. Uh, Venray Lal, understandable. She'd want out of Catholic school ASAP, which is in holy water. Don't mix well. <laughs> Svenger McSpazzy. In the worlds of the shield hero, Bish, surname slut, has entered the trial. YouTube censoring me, so I can't send unless I censor. Darius Harvey, next she'll say she rescued small animals from forest fires. Dude, she kind of did. Uh, good call on that. I mean, she, she was a, a freaking saint doing all this stuff. And then she was the only one concerned when Johnny Depp is throwing Yorkies out the windows of the moving vehicles. Colonel Crayon, it was important for me to not be at home. So, Miss Heard, you remove yourself from abusive situations. Why did you cling to Johnny if he abused you? Uh, Zuma Dog, Amber Heard is the first is the female Jesus. She overcame. CS, is she really being narcissistic about her humility? Yes. Narcissists cannot turn that off. Um, the Riv, I was auditioning actor in LA and it is not possible to do 10 auditions a day via bus. Total lie. Oh, I didn't even catch that. I, I didn't even hear that line. That's good. Scott Campbell, <clears throat> Scott Campbell in Richard's voice. 
Miss Heard, did you purposely eat a Costco sized can of corn the day before you decided to drop the Cosby kids off on Johnny's pillow? Damn. I mean, Common it's clear she just drank like bottle after bottle of expensive red wine. Yeah, that's that's the grossest part of that picture is like that looks like red wine congealed into feces. Ugh. Uh, Tomlinson, note the hair towards judge down and obscuring side towards jury pinned back to show her face feels defensive. Con ass, long story short, she acted on the casting couch with Weinstein and his ilk. JK Wynn, you think hot lawyer objecting to throw Amber off and annoy her could be a strategy? Turd's face when they asked about her ex DV was a tell too. Oh, uh, look, Camille annoys Amber Heard by existing, I'm guessing. And yeah, I think I think Camille will be needling her throughout the whole thing. I think that's I think they want to make Amber Heard lose her cool on the stand. Absolutely. It it would be crazy not to try for it. And yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Thuggy TX, the way she describes her work and going into unnecessary detail reminds me of the Monica Rial depositions. Venray Lal, what's a no name? Was a no name actor. Who is this again? Eleven Bravo Crunchy Nick, how far from Mankato are you? Uh, several hours. I'll be driving through there tomorrow afternoon. I can bring the bottle of whiskey I bought for you. Sorry about the short notice. That's trucking. Yeah, I'm nowhere near Mankato. Three, four hours, something like that. I think. Lone Wolf 36S, sociopath, maybe maybe it's less, but I, I think it's long. Lone Wolf 36S, sociopaths tend to forget what character they are supposed to be playing, getting lost in the moment. It's why you can't win an argument against them without recording them. CS, why does it sound more like something Johnny would think that a 22-year-old would be into ma old men, obscure blues, and particular looks? Uh, uh, borderline personality disorder. J Blizz, thank you. Tor Theo, anyone else thinks she's moving about too much? She is moving about less than I thought she would. In the other instances I've seen Amber Heard, she is very animated and, and jittery. Definitely not from cocaine, I'm sure. But um, yeah, so <laughs> she she does move quite a bit, though. Not applicable. Was his tongue forked like yours is? Same species. Jay Bliss, she kept saying Johnny instead of Mr. Depp. It's odd. That's that's probably a, a strategy of some sort. Um, remember, she she's not trying to defame Johnny Depp is is part of her defense. Uh, she's just telling the truth. She's just telling the truth. And he's a broken person. Uh, Dalton Bebout, Miss Turd, when Johnny called you and informed you that you were the dream and told you you would be in the rum diary, where, if anywhere, was was the contract in that moment? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That'd be good. Made in Texas. We can all see her trying to paint him as a groomer. John Jackson. I've changed my mind now and believe that Johnny Depp hit her after 15 minutes of her on the stand. I already want to send this K this K hunt to the moon. Ryoji Mata. Can't wait to see her fake tears on cross. See you tonight, Nick. Oh, she didn't have any fake tears today, even though she cried like seven times. Yeah. I Alan heard she was all waterworks, but not actually paying the water bill. Yeah. Yep. Uh, she kept turning on the, and it off immediately. Like it's, it does not look good to me. Uh, Alan V, can you take a diva? You can take a diva out of the trailer park, but not the trailer park out of the diva. Ian Downham, to hear Amber Heard having PTSD makes me cringe. Sink, Amber, felt like there was electricity in the room. Me, dies of cringe. <laughs> not applicable. Don't date a horse owning a wesbian, cautionary tale. David Stowe, Heard's new PR team is hard at work. Story just broke that she paid the seven million in donations yesterday. Multiple news outlets are confirming. Where'd she get it? Where'd she get seven million dollars? That that's amazing. Uh, let's see. Um, Alexander Nelkin, he feel he made me feel rich. Then I got rich and didn't need him anymore. It's a show. I bet they got get back together. Orange red. In other words, Johnny let her into his world. Uh, clone. Clona Steve dream killer. Do you think herd will cop to the turd on direct, uh, get out in front of it, so to speak, maybe goodness gracious, uh, Dr. T uh, tetanus first question on cross. Hey, let me ask you this. You ever toss a prostitute off a bridge? Okay. I don't know if there's a story around that one or if it's just, <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I have no idea. Snuggy. Amber Heard's testimony sounds like a 14-year-old's first fan fiction. Over-descriptive, too fantastical, and way too scripted. Big E, chat. Try repeating Amber's testimony out loud with the same tone, expressions, and inflection. Feels completely unnatural, doesn't it? Subpar acting. Uh, Nicholas Cruiser. I think I actually saw sand pouring from her tear ducts. I definitely saw spider webs. Uh, <laughs> Entropy denied. Every account of dating him is about what he bought her. She said next to nothing about him as a person. Just interesting to note. Uh, Cindy Lou Hoot. She is trying to paint Johnny as a narcissist. Narcissists throw love bombs, then leave. The Uber geek. Her testimony makes her life before and at the beginning with Johnny seemed like she was living the sound of music. Ryan, if she was actually cooking, they would still be married. <laughs> No fear, 64. Hunter Thompson would have hated her. Too bad for Johnny Depp that a movie that was supposed to honor his late friend has such a negative connotation for him. Uh, Clona Steve Dream Killer cooks and cleans for him. She's a regular June cleavage. A funny creature, a fuzzy creature says she resembles Hope Solo in that she's probably a lunatic kind of way. <laughs> Cindy Lou Hoot, she's trying to paint Johnny as a narcissist. Poopy Oopy, hello, Your Honor. What if anything dismissed the case? What if anything with prejudice <laughs> uh, lagging? She tells a story that she clearly remembers fondly remembers that he's supposed to be evil and drops in a, it was intimidating though. Allie Richardson really mem memorized her notes from Johnny's testimony. The shallow words, colorful and magical used already paging Dr. Curry. Uh, Joseph Magnus Amber says Johnny made her feel like a million bucks. That's not much considering that's her yearly wine budget. <laughs> Mary, one, Mary, I expressionless for three weeks, 30 minutes into testifying a detailed storyteller who enjoys helping hearing impaired children emerges. I'm alarmed. Virtual Liz strategic makeup, bold liner lashes for big doe eyes until now where she has little eye makeup so she can cry without looking ugly, less contour blush. So her face looks rounder, younger, innocent. Yeah. I was thinking her face looked fat today. And and I didn't think her face looked fat yesterday, so that's uh that's interesting. I, I hadn't thought of of her intentionally uh, doing that, but I did think her, her lack of eye makeup uh, is telling. I don't think she wants to draw attention to her eyes when she cries because of the fake tears. Uh, Valendale, yeah, if she was, it's you think that an actor would be able to produce tears on command? <laughs> Only the good ones. Uh, they have to get into a really dark place to do it. Like every time I've heard an actor talk about like uh, when they have to cry for a scene, like the directors or whoever is helping them, like berates them and and brings them to like a, one of the lowest places in their lives that they ask about and get them into the mood of of being small and weak and, and sad and depressed. And she's and then, just never uh, had any bad experiences that she could tap on. <laughs> she just doesn't have a director there. <laughs> One thing to remember about Hollywood actors is they many of these scenes are shot in two minute intervals. Like they don't have to remember a script. They don't have to, uh, you know, put on these long performative pieces. I mean, being on being on the stand for four or five hours is way different than shooting scenes in Hollywood for the most part. Um, so so you can be the best actor in the world and and but be the best actor in the world a couple minutes at a time. And it'll look great on screen but it won't look great on, on, uh, in reality. Valendil really common for people with uh, borderline personality to idealize a relationship. There was never a love like this is said by every BPD person. Every time they dupe a new person into falling for them, Jesse Fender. Can I change my poll answer? No, <laughs> uh, not applicable. This person's daddy issues make me want to puke entropy denied. She's going to pull the same thing as she did with Dr. Muffin's PTSD testimony. Use every single stereotype of a bad relationship. Isn't she? Yes. Wing Paragon for old time's sake. Can we get a daddy? No. Pink collar, the driving ape and the razor for worst testimony before a judge goes to Torgo. The white says this is worse than calculation and er, calculon and Futurama. Julie Wilson, it must have been super bad to then marry him. Not believable. Right. A lot of the stuff she was testifying to as being so horrible and, and all of these doubts came before they were married by like a year. <laughs> Haley Simmons, a jar of cocaine or a jar of dirt. Pretty sure he had a jar of dirt. Somewhat saucy frog. Her testimony sounds like an audiobook reading for a novelization of a Hall Hallmark movie. 
deadly darkness. She's looking around so much, trying to gauge reactions. It's like she has to be moving around or looking around so she doesn't trip on her own lies. Next, see, Trump voice, 2023 Oscar, best actresses, Amber Heard in Girl on the Stand, acts, uh, in, in Girl on the Stand acts, Rotten Bottom in Flop Sweating Lawyer, <laughs> Mommy Doctor in Hamana, Hamana, Crazy Cat Lawyer in Ammonia, Fragrance, Delita Box, Wonderful, Beautiful People. Sentinel Rex, I got a jar of Coke. I got a jar of Coke. And guess what's inside it? Uh, Halo Millennium. Johnny's one of the biggest actors in the world, yet his testimony was far more real than whatever Miss Turd's putting on. It's so hard to take seriously. Shawnee Knox, she's making me want to fall asleep, unlike Johnny's testimony. Could it just be because she's unlikable? I think that has a lot to do with it. Wrestler Town, believe women. The landlord, she needs to get a refund from her acting coach, Mr. Shado, on the carpet, but it didn't hurt. Gotcha. Uh, INCZ. I always said she barely qualified as an actress, but holy hell, she's acting this up. Bravo, Amber Turd. Hope you get an Oscar for this performance. Uh, let's see. Alberto Bonsanto from Drama to Comedy in a Second. Arby Arby, it sounds like she's rehearsing a script. Am I wrong? Sam, she needs a mega pint of acting talent. <laughs> Mr. Bandito, end scene. All right, Amber, thanks. Don't call us. We'll call you. Mark David, her testimony is suddenly made into this uh, this into a leveled playing field, and now I'm terrified for this man. Oh, there's see, that's a different response. Yeah, I don't think her. Te I didn't buy her testimony, but if you did, it's de you know it's devastating if you believe her. So and I'm gonna have to catch up on it because I was on a plane, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the cross. So I'm gonna have to watch the uh, the testimony later and just make sure. But uh, you're gonna have a. a a decent amount of time because to, I don't think they're going to get to cross tomorrow. And then she's got, there's a 10 day break. Um, court resumes on Monday, the 16th. Oh, after and tomorrow. I'm going to be off shooting, uh, shooting a competition then. So <laughs> wonderful. Well, there you go. You, what you do is you, no, never mind. I won't say that. Cyrene is Her cheeks are sweating, not tears. Uh, Joshua Cornelius. She's auditioning to bring soap operas back. Todd Donson, no one talks like this outside of the movies. This is one hell of a monologue. Sergeant Orc, dark angels are morally superior to custodies. You shut your whore mouth. The third way, anyone notice her attorney is allowing her to testify in the narrative. We know what that means. They aren't going to help her perjury. Uh, there's there's not going to be any perjury. They, they might impeach, but uh, Diana B, look how fast she stopped crying. Yatin Argawal, I think Johnny just lost. Jerry loves a crybaby. I'm I'm not I'm not all in on that, but Ali Lenoir says, "Lol, oh boy, I would slap her right now too." Bubba Jones, Amber's last acting job, Zernax, Amber Turd Smollett, S Sam, this is a better script than the Rum Diaries. Gerard Garvin, Nick legit gives the best toast. Thank you, Walt Doney. Uh, thank you for the donation, Ryan. All this just sounds like bad what pad story. Stronger than stone. Am I biased or did I not see any tears from Amber? I didn't see any. I didn't see any at all. Um, Fauci lied. Puppies died. Women's intuition here. Amber is a lying, steaming pile of horse paste. Happy. This is a this is dad slapping her story, pinning it on JD. Oh, so dad is slapping in her story. Okay, gotcha. Owen Queering. I wonder which movie she took her script from. Maybe she used her powers as a succubus to steal Johnny's acting ability. Jesse <laughs> Fender. Going from normal to crying and back to normal reminds me of my ex-girlfriend's four-year-old with crocodile tears. Her voice loses its crying vibrato. It's like a switch being turned off and on again. Yeah, I have a four-year-old too. <laughs> that is exactly it. You see it with uh, like the narcissists and so forth where they're trying to put things on, but they forget that they don't really know how to do emotion right. And so they, uh, they switch it on and off really fast sometimes because they're trying to portray what they think people want to see. And sometimes on cross, if they're if they're not sort of paying attention, you can do things like throw them a facial expression that is off for their reaction. And sometimes they'll turn on a dime just to react to your facial. It's really weird. Some of them, um, it can be quite striking. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm wondering if they've got it like a psychiatrist or a psychologist out there to uh help coach the cross-examining lawyer for, well, for dealing. Yeah. With uh, Dr. Curry, uh, 
Dr. Mommy Muffins is there. She's she was there yesterday for the doctor testimony. I can only assume that she's watching Amber's testimony. I mean, if she's not, they're crazy to not yeah. have her uh, assessing that. But yeah, that's that's a that's a great great point. Um, and and yeah, figuring out how to how to work around that for Cross will be critical. Whatever says, why isn't Amber Heard ex-wife on the witness list? And why can't they just ask about Amber Heard's past relationships? They can ask about the past relationships, except for they're not really being super relevant here. Um, there's some relevance arguments, but the judge has ruled that those prior acts do not come in unless Amber Heard's team. And th that always comes with the caveat that unless the other side opens the door for it. So even going down that road, talk about those relationships. Objection, Your Honor, may we approach? And then they're going to go up and say, relevance, Your Honor, and also we know exactly where they're going with this. We know you exactly. You don't want to get bingered on that where you go in and, you know, try to bring it in through a, a, in a sneaky kind of way because you'll get the judge going, don't get brazen with me. Yeah. Now, Amber Heard talked about her previous uh, testimony. I think the door is open, but they're still going to need to convince the judge that the door is open uh, or they're going to have to plow through and get yelled at by the judge. But they have to wait for Cross of Amber to do that. Yeah. I think her saying, I know you never it's never OK to hit a woman or, and hit a man. I, th I think those lines from her talking about abuse specifically and knowing that it's not OK, I think that put any final final vestiges of of the door being closed to rest but they'll have to wait till it's amber's turn uh, till amber's on cross i'd certainly swing for it and i'm waiting if she's going to say something along the lines of uh you know uh i've never done anything like this or you know something like that or i've never been violent because uh, if she makes that kind of statement then that may open the door too Allison S says, as a juror, if you roll your eyes or react emotionally at Amber Heard's bad acting, do you get dismissed as a juror? Um, no. I mean, it, I guess if it's excessive and uh, distracting and is like intended to maybe convince other jurors of something. But I mean, if you're just sitting there, you go to a witness, they're not going to dismiss you for that. I mean, you're, you're allowed to interpret the testimony and give it credibility, but you should not be overly emotive in court, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't make a scene of it. Unless it seems like you're contaminating the pool somehow, like the, the jurors or um, outright biased. I mean, if you were scoffing openly or if you're interrupting things, I guess would be the other are the yeah. other circumstances I could see it. No guard says, can Dr. Mommy testify about her analysis of Heard's testimony? Maybe. Uh, I mean, maybe she is an expert and she can take those things. They can ask her if she's formed another expert opinion. Um, I don't know if that would be the best strategy or not, but uh, sure. Uh, again, I, I think there are other uses for her than that, because I think that that's going to look towards bias and stuff that, that they may not want to get into. But um Dr. Mommy in general coming back and rehabilitating uh, the criticisms of her and, and also, you know, reinforcing her use of, of tests and administering them properly. That's going to be, that's going to be big stuff. Catherine rocks. Hollywood almost happened in Jacksonville, Florida, the warm climate, striking natural surroundings, diversity of architecture, inexpensive labor and easy rail access attracted more than 30 movie studios. There you go. Oh, okay, cool. Um, one uh, one final thing on on Amber's ex-wife being on the witness list or not or whatever. Uh, why can't they just ask her? They can start to prod down like they can start asking questions to elicit that from Amber Heard, of course. Um, you know, you did you disclose all instances of domestic violence throughout your life to the do to your doctor? Right. Like she she came up here and testified that you you had never been involved in domestic violence so did you disclose all instances of domestic violence that you've been involved in with your doctor and if she said yes if she says yes oh really your doctor testified that you didn't uh you were in here and you heard your doctor testify that you had never been a a perpetrator of domestic violence right yes okay then uh so I, I don't know how they're going to approach it, but they have plenty of ways to to try it. But we have to wait for Cross. 
Uh, Mickey Will Walters, she's clearly acting. She's just chilling now after fake crying so much. This is so sad for actual victims who have to tell their story. Dan Raver, the inflection, her voice seems very disingenuous. I wonder if the jury will buy this uh, or be in favor of Johnny Depp's realistic testimony. Only time will tell. Musian87, I've got kids. I can spot crocodile tears a mile away. It's scary how fast she turns it on and off and on, but obvious. So redness or no redness or flushed cheeks, no red eyes. Haven't spotted a single tear. Uh, Rita Esther, thank you for the donation. Sing, Sling Blade says, uh, it's like watching an emotionless person acting like she has emotions. It's really weird to watch. Sonia Fowler, damn, it's going to suck to wait a week or more for Cross. I agree. Fauci lied puppies died. Sent uh, bats and turds. Thank you. <laughs> Den Desiree Richard, listening at work, remembering my time on the stand for something really happened as opposed to the theatrics we are witnessing right now. Maybe I'm biased, but that's not typical behavior. Gremlins Rage, where's that? I'd rather cut off my hand than hit you again. Text and evidence. Did I miss it or does it not exist like most of her claims? Yet yeah, she didn't disclose her text messages. So the only text messages we have are uh, ones that Johnny Depp sent. And it is interesting when she mentions texts from Johnny Depp that aren't in the record. Tortheo, he slapped her when she turned to look at him, or then she turned to look at him. Neo Cloud Zero, 2022 Oscar Worst Actress Award goes to Mega Pint. By the way, have you seen Umbrella Guy video on Amber Heard re releasing contacts? Uh, no. Raging Phoenix, we can all see how bad of an actress she is. These are the crocodile tears of a child trying to get out of punishment. Diaphanic, like sitting next to Ted Stryker in Airplane. Uh, Satoshi was a reptiloid. This is 100% just for the cameras so MSM can get nice clips. That's why she can blatantly contradict testimony from earlier today. Mr. Shado found it. What's love got to do with it? Tina Turner, Act 2, Scene 3. It's happening with Harper. He slapped her, and then she turned around to face him. What did he do? Reach around and slap her from behind somehow? Sure. Uh, Helen Queenie, I can't believe that he supposedly hit her that often and she never got any proof of it, never caught something even close to it on camera. And again, combine that with the fact that she takes numerous selfies a day. Yeah. Alejandra Villanueva, JD reminds me of my ex if her testimony is true. Otherwise, she's a monster up for this. Thanks for your coverage. Small Potatoes Gaming, can you imagine having to take a shot for each hearsay? <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Megapint. James Carrig. Do you have any friends that are psychologists that can watch the trial with you all to care, call her out on how genuine she is being on stand? Do you need a psychologist? I I don't feel like I need a psychologist to make that assessment. She I mean, does not. Yeah. Credibility is just, you know, we all sort of have an ability to look at that, but it might be useful just to see, to have somebody commenting about, Hey, this is a symptom of something, you know, but if they don't know her, they can't yeah. form an opinion on much about her, right? Like yeah. a psychologist who does not know Amber Heard can say, you know, this is kind of weird or whatever, but maybe what is weird is normal for her. Like it's weird for everybody else. And so a I, I don't know that a psychologist is going to be super useful in that beyond anyone else's normal intuitions, personally. Psychologist useful for talking about the doctor's perspectives, certainly. Yeah. But like Amber Heard's behavior, uh, you don't need anybody to tell you how to discern that, in my opinion. Um, Pink Hollow, the Driving Ape. I didn't know Quaaludes were still around in 2010s. Legend of Dairy, Quaalude, Johnny probably offered pudding pops. Bull Durham sounds like she's telling Johnny's story, but flipping the roles. Lord Kamina, Amber Heard, Johnny was on Uppers, Downers, Screamers, Laughers. Peter Watkins, I told my therapist, those, are, wait, I read that one. I swallow cum. Thanks for the donation. Chris West, I signed a petition to remove her from the movie. Uh, Alan Paxton, does her statement of knowing you don't hit a woman or anyone meet the threshold slash open the door for his team to mention previous abuse? I think combined with everything else, it does. I, I, it has to. Like at, at this point, I don't know how else the door is would be opened. Yeah, without really other history. than her saying, I have never hit somebody ever in my life. And specifically not on this date at this time. <laughs> yeah, like that's about as more specific as you can get. Mesmerizer says muffins for Camille. Uh, Boomer, wow. Excellent point from Total Babe Andrea. 
White Guy McGee. She talked about her telling her mom about how horrible Johnny Depp is, but doesn't Amber's mom like Johnny Depp? Well, she's dead. Uh, hashtag me poo. She a girl dog. Uh, Clonitzville. Clon Remember, she's she's got these great stories of what she told people who can never testify to what she told them. Her mom, uh, the the guy, the the bodyguard who's dead. Um, yeah. Clona Steve, dream killer. She's telling the same story, but she is switching herself for Johnny. Fascinating. SM, dirty carpet comment is playback to the housekeeper who ratted her out about the poo. Hilda, maybe. KW, I'm trying to hear her out. Amber is shrug, uh, shrugging at pain words, head shaking when recounting thoughts and nodding affirmatively at objections. I cannot wait to see body language panel pick this apart. An earache. Johnny got the jar of cocaine from the set of Blow. It wasn't real. Wrestler Town. Amber was born to act in movies specifically made to be shown on airplanes. BS. Has anybody <laughs> seen my vintage jar of cocaine? <laughs> I love that. She's like, well, I didn't know he was doing cocaine. He had a jar of cocaine out. Yeah. What else do you do with a jar of cocaine? Although well, I, mean, I put seen... googly eyes on my jar of cocaine. It just sits there <laughs> and hangs out with me. Um, I'm seeing people saying it was a prop from a movie and wasn't real cocaine. And that Seems plausible because having a jar of cocaine is a little much, but a jar is weird. I, I haven't seen blow in probably 20 years. I don't remember if there's a jar of cocaine or maybe it was 15. I don't know since it came out basically. Yeah. Uh, Termination. Amber said, Johnny cried. Was he watching Gundam? Yes. Black <laughs> tiger. Oh, oh, one feels so much sympathy for herds. Former assistant made in Texas. Trags low looking like Brandon Herrera's little uh, Trags Tragos law looking like Brandon Herrera's little brother snow plays as someone who experienced abuse suddenly from a parent. First time I was suddenly slapped. I did not notice the floor. I remember just the blank shock. There's no movie moment. Merrick uh, Kalajizek. I read that one. Kimberly Ashcraft. My ex fiance was abusive. I left him at the altar. He was nowhere near the level of abuse. Miss turd accuses Johnny of being in 2012 yet. She still married him. She's a terrible actor. Makes me nauseous. Groove Vandal. Re this morning's cross was the intent to get through quickly. So Amber Heard could be done before week break. One week to plan a cross could be more damaging. Uh, I don't think so. Personally. Uh, I, I, but maybe, maybe they are being conscious of the timetable with her. Mad artist number. Thank you for the donations. DE Poland as a union advocate that represents an arbitration. I would have objected to hearsay all over the place. The fantastical bloviating jury won't believe Jessica rabbit. It is so damned obvious. Red Lily art as a woman who suffered from abuse from her husband. She is describing a lot of what I experienced, but she is saying it in such an obviously prepared flowery manner. It makes me sick. CE. Thank you for the donation. Bo Stoker. I'm behind Yucca Valley where I was born has been infested by transplants from coastal cities. Locals hate them. I'm an architect uh, through regulation. They have destroyed construction. Google user uh, says on cross. Can they ask whether James Franco or Elon performed cavity searches? And if that triggered her PTSD or gave her the warm glow, Oh, Tarkina. Wait, Anthony Wilson walking on eggshells is a book about BPD. If Johnny's team can't get the door open, can they pose the question? Just leave it objected to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can risk getting yelled at. Certainly. Weren't you arrested in 2009 for domestic abuse and here object. Um, jump, 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 jump. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's one of those questions that they'll be waiting for and just they'll leap on that. You'll get about yeah. halfway through arrested before it's like gone, you know, shouting over. Yeah. I mean, remember the objection came at, tell me about uh, your marriage in 2009. Objection. <laughs> like That's, that's how quick that went or not. Tell me uh, it was, it was something about, did Amber tell you about her marriage in 2009 was the, was the question of the doctor is, it was immediate sidebar. Tasha Sharps, I seriously cannot get over how terrible Amber's acting is, how she comes across as entirely disingenuous. It's obvious she didn't get roles due to talent. Bo Stoker, this broad needs to go. Already found her address, contemplating posting it to our locals page. Architect, looking up property info is second nature. Moral advice, put her on blast locally. Who? Don't do it. What? I, I don't know what person you're talking about, but no, don't do it. Yeah, you don't want to do anything about a witness in a trial. That is a great way to end up uh, getting free accommodation in a very small room. Yeah. I, I, you might be talking about 
um, Amber Heard or something. Same same thing. Don't don't you don't need to post any any addresses like that. That's not uh, not acceptable. Stace on the case. Nick, look at side by side of Amber and Whitney and tell me that's not her sister's long face in the bruise pics. Guyver Mechton, Amber apparently has trouble blinking her tears into existence. Greg S, does she have a brand deal with Bex? Yeah, she kept mentioning Bex, a non-alcoholic beer, I think was the point there for Johnny Depp. Not applicable, mm -hmm. sickest part. She's describing her own bad behavior. Uh, Bartimus Carbolo, uh, Bo Stoker, please don't. Doxing her in the middle of trial would bring sympathy to her case, and the media would have a field day with violent and misogynist Depp fans. In exile, she doesn't name names to avoid impeachment. Yeah, of course. Danny B. Andrea, who'd win in a fight between you and Amber Heard. Uh, I think that's obvious. Uh, <laughs> I know yeah, where I my would. money is. Uh, Foley, Amber Heard says she leaves fights. Johnny Depp left fights, not her. Adopt a dog. If direct was this bad, Cross will be so much worse. Lady Butters, Amber Heard is proving Dr. Muffin's analysis to be even more accurate. In my opinion, that type of pain numbs you. You get straight to the point while discussing it. Scarpy the Strange, someone needs to sing, give me the old dazzle, ra give me the old razzle dazzle during your testimony. Danny, hey Nick, have you seen how she pauses and tries to mimic the way Johnny Depp talked during this hearing? Not all the time, but when she is trying to sound sentimental. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if I agree fully with that, but I can see it for sure. Zombie Spike Lee, what is the benefit of having your witness ramble on about memories as opposed to asking direct pointed questions? Build the narrative, make her personable. She has to be liked. She can't just get up there and do a bare recitation of the facts. She has to engender sympathy. She has to overcome all the testimony in the case so far, and she has to be liked. That's why I think it's a mistake to have her go second. I think they should have had some other people build bridges to where her testimony is from where Johnny's was. Uh, and I, th I think having her go second is a big risk. Last might have been the best place for her. Just build the story, yeah. build the story, build the story, and then she can come in and hopefully sell it. Uh yeah, I said Whitney first, her last, but there's some ambiguity about Whitney's testimony right now. So, so, but, but yeah, I, I still think her last. Why wouldn't you want her story the last thing the jury hears from you? And if the doctor was good, uh, leading off with the doctor was the right move. Um, I think that this doctor was too biased to really sell it to the average juror. I think the average person's yeah. going to be looking at that going, and I didn't see the cross. I, and normally cross is where you make headway on that. But just on direct, she was so, like, so biased, so obviously yeah. biased. And that's kind of why, you know, as much as I didn't see the cross, I'm sad to hear that they didn't bring the cross home. But I don't know that they needed to. Yeah, it's, you know, it well, might that, us, yeah, yeah, that. That's that's what I said. I mean, we can be critical of the cross exam and, and all of the and any mistakes or shortcomings that they had. But at the end of the day, to me, this is still Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. And that's what the jury's paying attention to. And and that's I, I do think it's a mistake to have her on so early. But I think the only thing I can think of is that they're worried that she will be unlikable and they need to actually let her be rehabbed by other witnesses. Yeah. It's it's a bad look because the, I think you're right there that they're trying to bury your reaction and say, well, sure, she's going to be stink. But look, these other people are going to back her up. But really, if you've got a good witness, you want to go the other way and right. you know, have the other witnesses build the story that she then puts a motion to and makes real. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Ashton, like Curry said, exaggeration and dramatization. 007 Angelo, Elaine, judge, can I show Amber this onion to refresh her memory? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. Wolfies, you know you were rich when you name your houses cool names like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Having a named house is awesome. Uh, B. Barber, bruises are very deceiving. I worked with a girl who had an iron deficiency and she would barely bump her arm and it would bruise really bad. Geth Ralkin, show bruise on arm to mom. Why not show bruises on face to mom? No amica cream on arm. Can't justify saying I had amica cream on face if she was trying to show bruises to mom. Uh, some sort of Russian runes.np4. Sorry, can you repeat for the jury one more time that he was smoking? Gee, her dad went to jail for a dog fighting ring, just saying. <laughs> Sam, how many cocaines did the Yorkie do exactly? 
uh, Smigdamp, why both uh, Turber and the Karen witnesses uh, looking at the jury when they talk haven't really seen anyone else do that as much lawyers instructions. Yeah. I mean, you want to, you want your witnesses to connect with the jury when they can. So if they can make eye contact and speak nicely to them, Amber Heard, it seems like someone who is, uh, I mean, I don't, again, I don't think her testimony is effective right now, but in general, I think she's a nice social chameleon. She's got, uh, she's schmoozes with people all the time. She has friends that she hangs around with. She doesn't seem to be an introvert. She's probably okay at connecting with people. Um, that, that just, you know, but if she's lying, that's still going to come through. Uh, Georgia at the lake, all dogs enjoy riding in cars with their heads out the window. Little dogs can't reach the window by themselves. Johnny felt sorry for them, gave them thrill and held on to them. Dog people know this. Not so pro kitty. She called them tabs of Barocca. Who says that? Drug user confirmed. Erica Picard, do you think the defense plans to leave Amber Heard's testimony hanging over the week-long break so that it's fresh on the jury's mind? Is that a good plan? Yes. Yes and yes. I think they do. Uh, make them come back to cross-exam. Um, uh, more Russian runes plus uh, .mp4. This is a scene in a movie, FFS. Jacob, doesn't this story contradict their own team's expert that abuse happens behind closed doors and not in front of people? Yes. Uh, but again, she's in making shit up mode. Nathan Klein, I just like the way it smells. Ark uh, Scott Eden says, I have my volume turned off. Can tell she's lying. <laughs> Jacob Lafoon, the only time she sounds authentic is when angry. Mulan Bane, she can't act for shit. Zero max, your honor. Objection, projection. Big E is crying Amber's vo in crying Amber's voice. Johnny's idol was Jeffrey Dahmer. One morning I woke up to him gnawing on my elbow like a chicken wing. There were five witnesses. But no, you can't you can't talk to them. <laughs> uh, gold coin, she hasn't even reached for a tissue. Baby said, Nick and Andrea, how do you think the jury is taking this? Do you think they're seeing what the public is that her stories are BS? Well, I mean, they are seeing what the public is. The question is, are they interpreting it the same way? I have no idea. Uh, Finn Frog, Amber using Calvin Ball style of testimony. Kyle, if she were a good actress, she'd be able to produce tears. Nasty Canada. I wonder if she was moist or dripping wet. Oh my God. Ugh. Some more runes. This will go down as her final acting performance. Lamau, Kate of smiles, no tears, instant recovery, no trembling lip. I'm a crier. I know what it looks like. This ain't it. TBT. She's going to cry in the car. Y'all. David A. Hamilton, this random woman who had this dramatic experience with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp can't be found. Yeah. Oh, so you, you missed this story, I think. Uh, Amber testified they were on a plane to Russia and the flight attendant came back and Johnny Depp gave the flight attendant uh, MDMA. And then the flight attendant was getting flirty with Amber Heard. So Johnny Depp grabbed her by the wrist, pinned her in place and said, do you know how much pressure it takes to break a human wrist? And this None of that is possible. <laughs> exactly. This flight attendant didn't sue or anything. Everything's fine after that, apparently. I mean, if you're a random flight attendant and somebody goes, hey, um, would you like some drugs on this flight? You're not taking it because they get drug tested all the time. And if they, you know, if they test positive, they're going to that that'll be the end of their career. So that part is just like, really? And yeah, uh, second, they could find out easily who that was. I think I don't, um, you know, they've got to know who was the crew on each flight. And third, yeah. you know, if Johnny Depp walked past right now and, you know, grabbed my arm and twisted it and uttered a threat, I'd be like, okay, Depp's buying me a boat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in, in, in damages, <laughs> like, <laughs> you, especially as a flight attendant, you'd probably get punitive damages on that. Like just because you would want to discourage uh, like this actor utilizing his power and position over some service employee. I mean, are you, are you kidding me? Stuck yeah. on a plane with them that can't even get away. I mean, the only way that doesn't turn into a court case is you get your lawyer to talk to their lawyer and you're like, so you're going to be writing a check with a whole lot of zeros in exchange for this NDA we're drafting up. Exactly. Uh, Dank Count Rittenhouse cried more than her. 
Roderick embarks or Roderick embarks a cartoon of Depp in a TSA outfit snapping his glove. Google user, he had me at cavity search. Flag Tiger 001. I think I read this novel. It was a cheap book. Hyper uh, Tyranitar says Dr. Hurd waving her multiverse, weaving her multiverse together. Uh, Cavaliers, I've seen high end school, I've seen high schoolers act better than this. Magician Sapphire, Amber looks like she's straining to take a dump. Uh, C14 Dog, she deserves a Razzie Award. Distro 32, Amber is trying to tug on my heartstrings. Unfortunately for her, I had those removed. DCV Titan, of course she can't squeeze one out. It's not a bed. <laughs> Melissa Hammaker, this is a slap in the face of all domestic violence survivors. So angering. Alex A, she can't squeeze one out on the stand, but she sure squeezed one out onto Johnny's bed. Hatchet, Amber sounds like she wrote this as her version of Fifty Shades of Grey. This just reeks of smutty book. Uh, 11 Bravo Crunchy. Nick, check Twitter DM. Ozzy Man Short. Uh, well, later. I'll check it. I'm not checking it now. Xerax or Xerax. Xernax? Xernax. What's the runner up to a Razzie? Amber deserves its second cousin three times removed for this performance. Jackie Collier. She just spews trite dialogue from a middle school short film. Logic here. Surely no one believes her story, especially with the exaggeration and attitude. Any human with common sense can smell that this is an act. I know I'm biased, but I can't see this either way. Cool man. Amber accusing someone else of having uncontrolled bowels is rich. Devin Adair. Real monsters can't cry. Ta Brian Miller and the Oscar for the greatest actress on the stand goes to Amber Turd. David Tate seriously hoping Amber Heard gets another role after pulling this never gets another role. Oh, uh, 200 watt studio. Easy to cry. Just don't blink until your eyes water. Chango 721 tug speed man cries better than Amber Turd. Steven Barone. What's the over under for how long they keep her up there on the stand? Uh, I think three days three days yeah i think she'll be at it for a while yeah i think three days is the over under mark i i'm going with the over though i think i think it'll be four to five siraj hack says it's a good thing amber heard can't act otherwise someone may have bought her story ma pop when she talks like this she sounds like greta thunberg saying you you took away my future it's just so nuts i feel sick watching it mysticism i prefer her personable early in the testimony but the bull has since gotten thigh deep kyle as the donald i loved him so much nobody ever loves someone else so much ever i don't think anybody's ever felt this kind of love i loved him so so much i loved him bigly wonderful person a, a tremendous man my johnny loved him sarah closing argument not a single tear was shed end of argument period SM, can they check for earpiece behind her hair? Uh, you better be real damn sure if you make an accusation like that. Yeah, that's um, you better not miss if you're doing that. Yeah. Piddly doops, this is why her big movie is underwater. You don't need to be able to show tears when nobody can see them anyway. Not that she knows how to make them. Caitlin McConnell, I can see what Dr. Curry was talking about when she said Amber speaks in a flowery yet shallow way. Wow. Sat Satoshi was a reptiloid. Depp's lawyer has excellent comedic timing with the objections. Jack Hutchison, they should remind her of the tissues during cross to bring attention to the lack of tears. Tatum, <laughs> yeah, that would be funny if Camille got up and said, here, you might need these, like as she was crying. <laughs> oh, you'd get in trouble for that, I think. Uh, you that could would be probably get away with it if you did it right. You know, just be like, hey, do you need this? And then, oh, no, okay. We'll, we'll keep mm. going then. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Um, K-Dub smiles. If she could act, he would be in trouble. This is really, really bad. Lauren Gee, open your hands, heard, and show us the onion. Alista Lebo, boo, not even Razzie worthy. Steven Vester, someone play Skyrim NPC music song, please. K-Dub smiles. I default to believing the female in abuse situations, and I'm not a Johnny Depp fan, but she is not believable. She just wants attention. Gary Levy looks like the Amica cream is working. Wonders covering up them tears. <laughs> uh, Jen Nay, we don't speak reminiscent of or lovingly of our abusers. Jamie McClement can't wait for tonight's memes. The black bin liner. If she's not careful, all that straining to cry, she may leave a deposit on the stand. Johnny Rivers, he broke her wrist, then actually crashed the plane. <laughs> Nick Chance, <laughs> Amber rehearsal. 
uh, Aiden Ramos. If I was Amber, I would have looked at Dr. Mommy for a few seconds and move a drop from my hoo-ha to my eyes to at least make it look like it was a tear. Oh, my God. Oh. Steven Barone, they're going to pull Prince Andrew. The new PR firm is writing it up as we speak. She is unable to sweat or produce tears. Johnny Rivers, the flight attendant, Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> Russia.mp4 chain smoker wrist breaker trip killer a memoir of Johnny Depp Richard Tybold uh, she is so scared she leaves and Depp gets mad but she is on tape pissed because he leaves she did not sound scared of him on the recording I'm confused yeah well that was her being strong uh, Yumimaru Amber Heard testimony sounds more like a badly written smutty fanfic than experience forced dialogue and erotic details inserted all over the place and feels awkward Oh my goodness, um, man! I'm I'm actually good. I'm running out of time. Uh, I I'm gonna have to go pick up my kids. Google user: How many people will Amber resurrect from the dead during her testimony? Mulan Bane Heard's atrocious acting performance is going to cost her entire net worth. Lol, hysterically comical. Josh Marohi, his hair whack, his gear whack, his jewelry whack, my head whack. Amber Heard probably. Uh, Jen Korea, I had a super chat speaking to Amber Heard's lies, but it seems YouTube supports lies and the suppression of free speech. Uh, Ruznikar says, when all those witnesses, when all those witnesses will be coming after 16? Yeah, they're not, none of them. None of them are coming. Uh, BB, I'm here for the dramatic reading of Gone Girl featuring the voice of Grumpy Turd. <laughs> Jen Korea. I'm going to try this again, rewording it. She's lying and you can't believe it. nothing. Somebody that does not believe in God says, which is funny. She's in court and you have to swear to God on an oath of truth. Furby Slayer, he pushed her up against the wall by her neck and her thoughts are her hurt feelings. Effing liar. David Stowe, I try to avoid ever heard acting in any roles, yet here I am watching her act way her act way an abuse script body language folks are going to shred this michael milano is it possible to have a defamation lawsuit born out of a defamation trial no you have litigation privilege yeah. so you cannot you cannot be sued for def defamation for testifying cuz otherwise you could never run a criminal trial right like i saw yeah. this guy rob the bank well if you said that and you were wrong in any other context you could be sued into oblivion but you need to be able to say that in a trial if that's what you actually thought. Yeah. Uh, silent calling rackets. You've been keeping me busy while at work. I've been a day late because my signal sucks, but I wanted to say why the hell does Amber Heard look like a melodramatic noir film flight attendant? <laughs> her, her style choices are beyond my comprehension. Dean. Oh, oh. The, uh, the outfit with like the, that looked like it was a plane. Yesterday's. Yeah. Talking about. That was the same. The, the the amazing thing about yesterday's outfit, it was the same outfit that Elon Musk wore the day before at the Met Gala. She that's got to be on purpose then. Like she's yeah. trying to make a statement yeah. with that. Dino, she does. She keeps doing that stupid little breathy stammer, head bob, eyebrow stitch, stitch move. It's so performative. I'm calling that a tell, a big tell. Not applicable. She's lying to look like a lesbian for sympathy points. Tortheo, the dog and belly flop story is bizarre. Yeah. Maria Deathy deals loved input from Andrea Burkhart. Thanks to all. Uh, Dagon three, Johnny Depp waved at the gallery at the end and 95% of the crowd smiled and waved back. Get wrecked. Turd Jensen Zeiger starting to think Johnny might've hit her. Her story sounds like BS, but needing to repeat everything eight times would drive me there. <laughs> Hearsay. Urban Phoenix Fox as an airline employee. It's a federal offense. If the flight attendant isn't sober there, they're there they are there for your safety warrior biatch her frown during the dog story is exactly the same as my eldest kid she is bipolar and narcissistic addict liar she is better sober amber is a liar mo very convenient that it looks like she never responded to any of those texts conveniently deleted well never never disclosed never disclosed um and with that guys i have to go pick up my kids there are more super chats to read and I will get them uh, to, tonight, tonight on the show. So I I, I hate postponing them, but uh, you guys have been sending in a ton of stuff and, and I just don't have any more time tonight. So um, we're already at 10 hours. So <laughs> Runkle, thank you for joining me to the chat. Thank you for joining me. Um, I will uh, I will see you all later tonight at uh, 11 p.m. if you want to come over to the show or tomorrow 
for the last day of testimony this week. Uh, anything you want to you want to say or shout out, Runkle? Oh, oh I'm, I'm putting you in the description, guys. Go check out Runkle's channel. Just uh, I'm gonna try to follow up on it, and this has been such a wild trial, but uh, yeah, uh, love the coverage. So yeah, it's it's uh it's great, man. And uh, guys, make sure you look out for Runkle's follow up if he posts any videos. Otherwise, uh, always always happy to have him here on the show. Um, to everybody, peace. Peace. Oh, he drinks a fair bit, but you realize that it just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted we'll laugh at this boomer Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter and Erland From the white shores of men to the hills of Glen Livet There's no one who explains the law This lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag about more of the broad spirits flow as the ones who get on the boat. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear us planning tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Limit, there's no one who explains the thought better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plentiful, from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Pass.